we halfway wow. there. No, that's, that song applies, but no. Uh, <laughs> no, not Welcome right now. To EFAP mini catch up for the anniversary episode, which at this point Woo! of this releasing was probably a little while ago. Hey, maybe this is after this, the next anniversary this gets released. Who knows? <laughs> we, um. Uh... We've been trying to get through all the catching up stuff while also getting through all those TV shows and all the coverage and all the Halloweeny stuff. And hey, maybe I'll have played Ragnarok by the time this is out. Oh my god! I hope it's good. This would be really depressing. I do too. It's really bad. I um, hope you had a great time. Yeah. So we are here to attempt at chronologically reading out and responding to every message we received during the. All right. Specifically, EFAP 200, our fourth oh anniversary. We, um, as I've just been pointed out, we're already a f past a fifth of the way to the next anniversary. Time. Uh, she's going quite quick, you know. Yep. Hopper. Destroys everything. We'll figure it out. Um, anyway, there's no reason not to simply get started. This is probably going to be maybe even a three-part mini. Um, it's going to be one of the long minis. People have been critical of the name mini for a long time for that reason. But you know what? Everything, length is Let relative. Them. Length is relative. Yeah. That's my yeah. that. Just try to counter that. You can't. So, the first I mean, one. Is, is length relative? Or is it just the length compared to other things is relative? Um, right? Because, like. I guess I should say. Because, like, long is relative. Yeah, but long like is relative. I guess is what I meant. Long and short. What would you call those measurements? Me no, I'm trying to. No. I'm trying to think like uh, relative measurements. Um, sort of. There's got to be a name for like long, short, tall. You know th those kinds of thighs. Thighs relevant? Is that what you're saying? Um, no, I wouldn't even say that because like uh, you you could measure size in a way that isn't relative. Like the size of the Earth isn't you know relative. Um, that, it, yeah, I, I, I I don't know, know what, what those mean, words yeah. are called. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll get our answer before. Whatever those are, it's relative. <laughs> those maybe are relative. have the same thought and will ask us, and then we won't have the answer for them, and then we'll be no closer to ascertaining the truth. I just hope there's an afterlife so I can ask for that, and then I get the answer. God is like, and then oh like, man, I know. I, I, my soul is at peace. Imagine my that's soul. what the afterlife is. He's like, so you had approximately 17,000 unanswered questions. We're going to get through every single one. Uh, and you're like, really? And he's like, yep, first one. When you were a kid, you were wobbling around and you said, well, what's that? That was the sun you were talking about. The sun. Very bright. Right up there. Wobbling around? <laughs> if, if it's wobbling around, it might not be the no, sun. No, I bet you were wobbling around because you were oh, a okay. toddler. Oh, yeah, all right. I just like the idea, oh, like, okay. oh, no, I didn't need that answer. And he's like, we're going through every one of them, okay? I can't know which ones you want to know the answer to now. We're going to have to go through all of them. So what was the meaning of life? Uh, we'll do that one at the end. All right, we'll wind, uh, wind everything down with the uh, meaning of life, yeah. So, the first message says, I grew up surrounded by EFAP. Happy 200 massives. Oh, thank you very much. Imagine, I, I'm glad that that meme is carrying on. I, I really like that. I mean, I said the, it earlier. How bad the dialogue was that it will be, that's what the show is remembered for, the I grew up surrounded by water. That, like, baffled the fuck out of me when I first heard him say that. I was like, why would you say what, What's wrong, wrong with you? I, I guess it wasn't on our recording, but earlier on, before we actually started recording this, I'd said I, we were talking about the weather and be and it, and it being overcast. And I said I grew up surrounded by clouds. So that <laughs> meme, it's got a lot of mileage in it yet. It's such a, it's like it's like, it's like okay, Grandpa. All yeah. right, sit back in your chair. Hopefully, we get a book of Boba Fett too. Oh my God, I just realized Book of Saw and Book of Boba Fett. Why? <laughs> Why are these names book a of thing? Book of Saw? Is yeah, that the next they, Saw they, movie? They called they called one of the Saw movies Spiral from the Book of Saw. From the Book of Saw. Oh, that was the Spiral title. Is Spiral from the Book of Saw. True, yes. I don't know why. Oh. Because the next one's probably just going to be called Saw 10. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> no, no, it'll be Saw X. They need to... Well, no, yes, but you'll be... People call it Saw 10. Uh, I, I just, they should do the subtitle route, right? That's like the best way to go. Saw Annihilation, Saw Retribution, sort of thing. Saw, uh, yeah. 
Uh, that's the subtitle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Saw, saw again. Saw once more. Well, why not? I don't know. He never saw this coming. Oh. This Maybe they'll just... just call it teeter totter instead of seesaw. Or just says woohoo, which I can understand. Pretty cool little anniversary. That's right. Yeah. Excitement abounds. Love you, my fellow N words. Slice and dice forever. Oh, oh absolutely. Enduring. Slice and dice is classic. That is enduring old. Me, it is old. That's, it is both. Like season early season one, slice and dice. Absolutely. But it's a, it's a good one. Wow, we and on my birthday no less. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Two hundred dollars for two hundred more EFAPs. Congratulations! Love you all. Here's to the future. Oh, well, thank thanks you. very very much. It's very kind of you. Thanks. Um, Ooh, wow. It's funny as well because if we actually get to like eighteen years of EFAP, that means someone could literally have grown up like from birth and was it us? on our content. Oh, yeah. you're right. Someone will. Someone out there will have grown up on our content. We'll be like those old shows that the old people talk about. I grew up on Sanford and Son, or I grew up on Green Acres. And that fapping show, like, I was there right in the beginning. I was there for Slice and Dice. I saw that stanky room from that man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I saw the rune skeleton on the wall. <laughs> Back in my day, I saw the dirty bed. Four hours podcasting to get. <laughs> in my day, get podcast me. goes long as 12 hours, even 24. Now you rap scallions with your YouTube shorts and your TikToks. Yeah, they run podcasts at like five minutes. That's that's the normal now. He's like, <laughs> yeah. don't know how you stand it. A tear just rolls yeah. down. The cheek. <laughs> well, life don't make much sense anymore. Been one hell of a journey with EFAP. I first found out about it when Jay was still Sin Sins, and he mentioned the episode cover Infinity War. I just had to get my wisdom teeth removed and proceeded to spend the week binging EFAP episodes. Hey, hey. A beautiful process. So here we are again. Always such a pleasure. For when you EFAP Jenny twice. I do. Got us in plenty of trouble. Oh, how we laughed sure did. and laughed. Except Twitter wasn't laughing. Circumstances. A... Talking with. <laughs> Portal 2 is great. I have to say about that. But uh, yes. Quite an event. We haven't covered Jenny since. We're going to have to. We got to keep it up. Otherwise, people might think we don't hate women. Doing everything. Um, Happy 200 with special guest Hassan's chair. That's crazy to think. We actually, it was, it was 150. That was a whole arc. 150 we did, uh, a, like a sort of parody of that. Oh, um, did, was that 150 that we did that? Yeah, that wasn't even 200. Oh my god. Wow. Crazy. Springy isn't a bird or a plague doctor. He's a tonberry. His nose is actually a detachable knife and the goo is fuel for his lamp. Congrats on 200. It's not the first time that Congrats. tonberry has been used to describe frickled. Well, it's the same color scheme. It's crazy. Like, it's... It is. It is pretty uncanny. Yeah. Well, that was that from Final Fantasy, right? Yes. I think it was Final Fantasy. Yeah. Final Fantasy is a series I have like zero familiarity yeah, with. Yeah. Likewise. Super duper. I mean, there's like fifth. Yeah, fifteen plus all spinoffs, right? Like yeah, tactics. At least all these like... other ones. Almost like get into Uncharted is pretty straightforward, but Final Fantasy. Yeah, just if I ask someone, one. which one do I start with? I imagine that I'll get all different answers. Um, I would imagine right because people have all their. I hear that like, I mean, seven's the really popular one, right? But I hear that six is really good. I uh, and then thirteen <laughs> onward was the one. Which that is the one with Titus? I isn't ten, right? Is it the? Is he the guy who goes ah ha ha ha? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, that's I think so. Kind of yeah, that was some like that. I don't know. I remember watching a friend play that one, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" The future of gaming, pal. The future of gaming? What? Two thousand one? Hell yeah! <laughs> the future <laughs> is now, old man. <laughs> oh dear. Happy two hundred, my favorite hate mongers of the toxic brood, creature of the long. 
the beast that ruins grandmas, and the green goo connoisseur, and of course, the failed German. He's not even, he's failing to be German? Damn. I wasn't meant to fail to be German, wow. Uh, what, what a loser. Thank you very much. Happy 200 massive tisms. May it be long and high rags. Hello. Happy 200 episodes, massives. I love every frame of this beautiful podcast. Much love from Brazil. Ooh. Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. hey. Uh, hi in, what's hi in Portuguese? Hello. I don't think you're correct about that. Oh, so I can't have an opinion now? Well, I mean, you can have an opinion. I'm just saying that your opinion may... I don't even know if that's correct or not. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's hola. <laughs> ah, that sounds about right. Hola. hola. No, hola. O-L-A. Let me try again. Hola. Hola. Is that it? Uh, you're doing close. The, you're doing the cool flip cool thing. What are you doing? You're doing the cool flip. Oh. Why are you putting so much emphasis on, on the non-existent age? Hola. There you go. I think I nailed it. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's hola. You say hola, it's Portuguese. Hola. 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 <laughs> Good Eve, what I'll say. And I'll say I'm from a different world, so. Let's go ahead and get robbed. <laughs> Could you imagine if you had, like, a really nerdy friend that when you go on some kind of, like, holiday, when he introduces himself to anyone else from the country, he's like, I am from a different realm. Please. A different do realm, that. and you're just there with you. Yeah, just like, oh my god. <laughs> You just picture it's always going to be uh, like that random, like hardworking guy who's just like, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about? And he's like, I, I'm from the land of England. And they're like, oh, <laughs> I come Sorry. from the States United. You have chocolate here? I come from the 13 colonies, except now there's 50. So, no, Fringy, uh, you I can finally say, I come from a land down under. I can, well, I, I can finally say that. Was this the first time that I was allowed to say that in all of all of my life? I didn't yeah. want to tell you, but we actually had laws against you saying that the mean ranks finally <laughs> repealed just before this episode started. Wow, that's very kind of you. Been working real hard on this, but yeah, we nailed it for you. I don't know if it's not pro take you up on, but you know, I appreciate it. Just right there. Happy two hundred episodes, massives! I love every fra. Oh, wait a minute! I read this one already from Brazil, isn't it? Yeah. We demand Pikeman and his degenerate storytelling. We are trying to set up an episode uh, with him to come on and cover something or other. But uh, yeah, awkward flames of, of how things work out uh, meant that I missed out on quite a few people, unfortunately. He's one of them. Um, emails, Discord, Twitter. You never know. What you find out sometimes when you rely on one of them for contact with anybody is that they'll be like, why didn't you try the other one? And it's like, oh shit, that's a thing that you're on? And I didn't because everyone like I think everybody's normal way to be contacted isn't based on where everyone else's is. It's just your own sort of perception. So, you know, you might get someone who's like, "Why didn't you just contact me on Flizzle Flazzle?" And you're like, "I don't, I don't even know what yeah, that right. is. I don't have it." <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh. And the funny thing is, you might be like, "Yeah, that's ridiculous and unreasonable." But sometimes when I'm like, "Oh, why didn't you just contact me on uh, Twitter or Discord?" The person is like, "I don't use either of them." And I'm like, "Oh right, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess right. a lot of people don't." So, okay. Um, 1.2 billion high rags for the best boob. Oh. Hi. Hey. So long, and thanks for all the faps, and here's to 200 more. Long live the toxic brood. Absolutely. Mm. You bet. After like two years, I finally caught up in time for 200. Thank all of you massives for more entertainment than I could ask for. What is your favorite word for each gender's privates? Okay, question. Um, I guess I don't feel particularly strongly. Um, <laughs> I find winky is funny. Yeah, I was about <laughs> to say, I don't like that word being used because I associate it with like a juvenile. Right, right. Because um, that's the kind of thing that it's called when it's you're like very, very young. a hilarious word, I think. Because your parents aren't going to say, oh yeah, that's your cock. <laughs> you <know>? Exactly. <laughs> um... In much the same way that you cannot refer to like a juvenile female's genitals as a as a pussy, that would be very um, that'll get you on a list, mm -hmm. you know. So Rightfully. yeah, um, I don't I don't really have I'm, I'm I don't like that. front butt. I don't like that. No, <laughs> I don't like the front butt. I don't like that. 
um, Willy is funny, but not sexually. Like a lot of these, a lot of the words can be funny. Like calling it your Willy is funny, uh, but it's not like sex sexy or arousing. If I was with someone, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pull out my Willy. <laughs> that sort of thing. Like it's funny. Makes you think of Simpsons. So. Like yeah. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, use it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and and even like penis isn't like sexy to say. It's it's too clinical. Um. Yeah. See this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really Harry, have anything. You got your answer out of that. Frankie had a lot to contribute to the discussion. Oh, I think it glitched. <laughs> I didn't hear Frankie say anything. So. Uh, yeah. Fringy, Fringy often comes to us with very strong opinions on the name of on, on the nomenclature for genitals. This one just says first dono. Thank you very much. Oh, well, that's awesome. Thanks very much. That's great. EFAP has made me feel great despair with some media, but enhanced my enjoyment of others by recognition of their quality. If I pay those causing me to suffer, then it seems only right that I support those creating good rat. Ah. Huh. Good rat, another Actual meme. Logic. Ages old. I'm glad that even the that that's the thing though. We we want you to appreciate the good stuff. Um, you know, all this negative stuff, if it can make you appreciate the good things, then that's that's yeah. really good. That's a good way to walk uh, walk away from it. Lord Longbong of Mugelington Abbey. Is there any good chance mm. of a Kong Fap? Of Peter Jackson's Ooh. Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'll be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Hello, Wagsies. Riches for the good boy. Oh, hello. Thank you very much. Um, every knows, right? day we come closer to that happening. In theory. In theory. So. Uh, and when it finally comes out, I just don't know what you're going to do, man. Like, you have to... Must be some other film you'd be interested in us covering, maybe. Find because... a new thing to ask us to watch every, every episode. The Long Kong. It might just be attacked at some point. Who can hmm. say for sure? I can't rule it out, that's for sure. Uh... I sure hope that Rings of Power is fun cringe because it sure ain't going to be good. Oh. <laughs> well, well, we have the answer for you now. We're speaking oh, from no. the future, we have seen the whole season and it's yes. often been said that it's far worse than we ever thought it was going to be. It was worse than I thought it would be. Yeah. yeah it was. I would say, I'd say that the first two episodes were about kind of what I was, you know, thinking it would sort of be. Yeah, yeah, I can um, agree with like that. Like a cheap imitation of the Lord of the Rings. And then they started doing things, and it got worse and worse and worse, and it I think found itself squarely in terrible territory. The whole, like, wasting time aspect of the first two episodes of just sort of meh, things are happening, I thought they would definitely get to the point of characterizing everybody. It's like the, you know, just slow start, but it's like we managed to spend most of the season not characterizing. Um, and yet relying on characterization at the same time. Totally, yeah. Uh, like the characters are all, baffling. like, shit, pretty much. Yeah, well, that show happened, and uh, let's just say I appreciate the two-year, potentially three-year gap, because we're going to need it for the next That'll season. be nice to not have to think long, about it for a while, yeah. Long time to recharge. Well, there'll be plenty of good things out on the way. I wonder what people will say about it in the meantime, especially when we get to about a year down the road, and we're kind of at that halfway point in between seasons. What Imagine will people meantime, even say, if anything at all? Time that, like... Like cruel and merciless, you know, but also funny. excessively prideful, so was, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't attack the weak. I was gonna say cruel, and then I was like, maybe that's way too strong. But thinking about it, I guess that is like you know, mean is kind of mean. Just cruel, it's but like for kids. It's, yeah, it's like uh, like and love. Uh, if you're mean, that's a watered down uh version of cruel yeah. you know like it's a cruel thing to torture animals it's not a mean thing you know it surpasses that yeah if you said it's it's mean to kick a dog it'd be like mean that ain't enough yeah it's like when one of when norm mcdonald says you know hitler was a real jerk you know that the joke is that it's being under mm -hmm. you know it's it's under intense for what it is happy birthday to the objectively oh, best podcast pardon me i got a phone call i have to grab this no problem. Oh, the literal next thing I could read was high wags. Oh, well. Well, let's talk about God of War. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you're probably in a better position to talk about it than I. 
Of course, but you've begun playing it. Uh, I have. Who knows where you are right now? You've not... likely finished it. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? What a what a fascinating franchise. But now all these bangers. But the gold impact. Curious what Ragnarok's gonna do. I wonder if they'll keep going after it or if they'll finally give up on wanting money. I guess the funny thing is like so tempting to to use it as a vehicle to just do whatever you want anyway. I think so. Yeah, it's a really strong high concept for a video game. But I wonder if they were to switch over to Egypt after this one, would they again switch up happening. the mechanics? Ah, uh, hmm. I wonder if they would switch up the mechanics or actually stick to this formula. I'd imagine they'd probably want to stick just because of uh, they're clearly invested in the storytelling thing more than they would. Yeah. Before. There's I that. saw it. Um, and I mean, this is it is its most successful, right? Like, God of War 4 is the best selling one. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. Even though, like, I think with each one that came out, it was like setting its own record, right? I assume 4 sold better than 3, sold better than 2, sold better than 1. I assume. I think. And except 3 sold better than Ascension. <laughs> Ascension right, Ascension is like well. a, this weird thing that happened. I, I don't know. I don't have much more information on that one. It's like this weird thing that happened. Yeah, that's my extensive review. Uh, that's fair enough. Um, by the way, I got two and a half hours. I need to go and do something at uh, five, so it's 2.30 now. So I got to... Uh, things pop up, I suppose. Very well. Uh, the next thing was high wags. That's what... Ah, hello. Also, hi, everyone else. Oh, hey. Hey, hey. Here's to many more hours of long. Oh yes, oh yeah, absolutely. Many, many, many more hours of long. We will many long more hours of long adventures. That's for sure. Uh, unless something terrible happens to our civilization, I mean, EFAP one thousand. Well, as far as I know, happens. So, hang in there. I mean, say that like, <laughs> like yes, a terrible civilization, but also any one of us three. That would also suck if uh, you know. They, 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 I would. Lightning strikes have happened. Yeah, but you're most likely to survive a lightning strike. Do you remember that shit where... Oh, fuck. Was, was it like Final Destination 1 where she looks out her window and there's a lightning strike and then uh, another... I think Rags you say like, oh, another close shave with death and just referencing lightning hit you. And then, and then Jay's like, you can survive a lightning strike. I remember like, getting triggered so hard. <laughs> I was just like, shut the fuck up. You can survive. You can survive getting hit by a car. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> I know! But yes, at the same time. <laughs> it's not instant death. All the time, guaranteed. You even referenced the gnarly scar. That's right, I did. I think the reason why there are so many passionate Sonic fans is because Sega is not protective of their IP at all. They just let fans do whatever they want with this character. I mean, I'm grateful they let us play with the fan games, unlike Nintendo. Um, that's just a good idea, from what I gather. Letting your fans sort of do whatever they want creatively, and you yeah. like more invested in the universe. Like Warhammer, you just you just let people do like all that stuff. And if they create something it. incredible, might want to consider canonizing it. <laughs> Be like, uh, uh. yeah, like I I know that's the the old Scrooge evil businessman approach, but it's yeah. actually like especially nowadays, like actually maybe take the stuff that the fans do that's What's... great and just fucking canonize. It's the ultimate honor for like a fan oh, yeah. if the if, if the company respectfully takes it and canonizes it. It's like, yeah, this this was this thing you made was so good and it's so well loved. We're legitimately canonizing it. And, and here's we're like we're we're gonna take it essentially. Here's a whole bunch of money. It's now canon. And as much as like, because because you could have a writer who's like, oh, I can't wait to make a fanfic because I just love this world so much. And then you're like, no, and you stamp on stamp on them. They can't create it let alone sell it of any in any way and then they go fine i'm gonna make my own story and then they're like successful and in some ways it's like oh well that's kind of a good result isn't it and it's like well it is for the the individual especially if they can get that off the ground but uh, ultimately i feel like the company and the ip lost out a little there and they didn't need to but i think it's out of a fear of it's the same fear that drives when when someone in your chat is like i'm streaming right now and blah 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 and then the streamer's like fuck you and bans them there was there was no worry there. 
you're fine. You weren't going to lose the IP or anything. Uh, as in lose the people's interest in the primary thing. Um, the main one I'm thinking about is the Metroid stuff, right? Didn't didn't they do like a full remake or whatever and then Nintendo squashed yeah, it? Yeah, not a Metroid 2 remake. And then about, I think a year later, their own Metroid 2 remake came out, so... Yeah. <laughs> Timing. Yeah. Uh, but the guy had been working on it for eight years. But but the I think the happy story was that he got a job at Moon Studios, the Ori uh, studio, uh, because of that remake, so... Well, that's something. Yeah. Because that's the thing, nice. there's been these examples of fan projects being a gateway for people to uh, get professional work. Mm -hmm. um, ad block penance for the year. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's a good way to ad think block. of it. Ad I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't blame you one little bit if you use ad block, just so we're all clear. If you use ad block, man, I cannot get angry at you because I use it myself. I totally get it. That's not even the but reason I would nice use. Time. I just think it's fair. Uh, ads are really annoying. And YouTube. That's why I started using them, because they got too fucking annoying. And they're only getting more annoying as time goes on. Oh, sometimes on my, I'm on my phone and I want to go I to was... a website. Jesus Christ, some of these websites, especially mobile ones, I feel like half of the screen is ads. Listen, I was, I was listening to the good old Chud, Lo Chud Logic coverage of something. I don't remember what it was. And yeah. he was talking about how he's he might, he's tempted. He might start doing the five minute unskippable ads. And I was like, oh my uh, god. Surely you can get a sponsorship, right? That's way better than doing like those kinds of ads, because with a sponsorship, you have a lot of control over the kind of thing you say and what you actually put out and you know especially if it's products you use you've got a lot of leeway to make a really good you know presumably a, yeah, a he, sponsorship but an ad saying, could though, be that, just um, anything saying like oh the amount of money you get from a five minute ad and it's like well but but it's a five minute ad <laughs> like that sounds so painful that is that a five minute ad to me says i will be back in five minutes i'm going to go use please the mute loo, the stream while or, the ad plays <laughs> or i i I'd, I'd, I'd use, yeah, I'd be using the loo or getting something to drink or just like stretching my legs or checking a bunch of other stuff. But, yeah. you know, you guys know um, <clears throat> if you watch those, they, these are really neat to watch. But on YouTube, they have a bunch of compilations of ads and commercials from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, cool. 90s, you know, noughties and all that sort of thing. And one thing I noticed is that, first off, ads from different eras can be really just interesting. They clearly were just done differently. Ads mm. used to be long. There used to be a lot of long ads. Um, when, the, when the Three Stooges would have this thing on the best type of uh, turtle wax for buffing your car. It was like, that was like, an, it was like a story or something. It was, it was like a legitimately long ad. And now we just get more shorter ones. Could be but because the long market's ads, saturated, took, right? Yeah, they, they took their time and they, they, they're just made differently. 90s well, ads were great. Attention though. spans, right, is the big thing. Our attention spans are shit. So you gotta um, grab people quick. Partially, yeah. And also now we have, we have, we had way less channels back in the day. I guess there was less people competing for the ads. That's what, well, that's, yeah, what I meant about saturation. Yeah, and and they seem to the, the construction of these ads, particularly when you get you know into the like fifties and sixties, they really tried to convince you, like they would like because they had more time to do it. It seems like they were legitimately trying to convince you that our brand is best because that that um like the psychology of advertising as a science wasn't nearly as dare I say refined as it is now where you know that that's a huge part of marketing back then it seemed more I guess sincere and honest uh in a way uh, where they really hmm. where they weren't I, I, I don't think it it give them a look if you ever have a time if you do get back to me on that because that's how I, I, I feel when I think of old ads, I think of smoking. The doctor says good for you. That's like kind of what I think about when it comes to old ads. I think that it's always been like well, first even and foremost, right. You want to convince somebody to a snake oil salesman is an is an old term as well. You know, 
Like, I don't know that anything... I think that what's changed is, like, strictly the attention span. I think that's the main thing. I don't know if I think the ads are any more or less honest now. If anything, they're probably more honest because there's more rules and stuff about what I you might, can and can't I'm not say saying... I might not say necessarily honest, but it looked like they were trying to legitimately get you to buy a product through trying to convince you as you would convince... I guess... I, guess, I think um, I... I of understand what you mean i guess i'm just like i don't know i i get the impression that nothing has really changed it's just attention span that's the impression i get like like it's kind of like how movie trailers now have that five second like no oh, here's what's gonna happen in the trailer right because i don't want you to skip the ad and they think that if they show you a bunch of crazy shit that that's enough like you're competing in a world where you know people click off a video super duper quick and there's shorts and tech talks and what's well, some the kind of thing on Twitter, I don't know. The years we've gone through is like it went from custom. Was it something to on demand, right? Like, like we've moved from uh, one format to another over the like our generation. Well, yeah, because streaming is on demand. You don't wait. Well, until everything, I like say, even every, yeah, every even down to like video, just yeah. eaten, uh, you know, DoorDash stuff. Like everything is just on demand, and it's unacceptable almost to our society now to not have your service right. be something we can yeah. just grab on a whim. Well, yeah, because television used to be, yeah, it's at 8.30. You're watching the show at, like, yeah. 8.30. You know? That's when it's on. Whereas now, it's like, what are you talking about? That's when it's on. It's on when I want it on. <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's, it's a catch of everything. Yeah. And there's uh, so many industries that are, like, reflecting that, right? Remember remember the several attempts we've had at streaming games? Mm -hmm. How's that doing these yeah. days? <laughs> Let's go with uh, Stadia, I... what do you mean? That worked out great. Uh, do you remember uh, it was... Um... What was the service called? You know, called? they refunded it... everybody everything, you know? If, if, you got a, if you got a Stadia and, like, games for it, Google is refunding everything. Wow. They're giving, like, everyone their money back. Wait, can they have so, the, the thing itself sorry, and the I money? Think, I, think this is, I think this is rags being sarcastic. Oh. No. I think... No, it, it legitimately oh, oh. isn't, because it's a, it's a service that requires Stadia as a product oh, to be yeah, functioning re... in order and to I get your games. Wait, everything. so you can have the Stadia and the games and the money back? Well, we you'll have, have the Stadia, right but it won't be able to do anything because right, right. Stadia is ending its support as Damn, for dude. the streaming and everything. So are they, are they're giving they everyone their money back. Oh, that is my understanding. Yes. Uh, I I didn't know that that was what was happening. Um, I was going to say, what is the hole that Stadia has burned inside their wallet at this point? Then. Oh, um, yeah, apparently they are offering refunds for any Stadia purchases. Okay. So, I mean, I, you yeah, don't get to say it much, right? but good guy, yeah. Google. Um, okay. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, wow. I guess I was cynical enough where I thought that that wouldn't be what happened. It's just like, oh, it's tough. <laughs> like, the service is done. Okay, that's, yeah, that's not bad. Well, yeah, for a second yeah, there, I was I like, is my sarcasm detected that off? <laughs> like... Maybe it says, it just, it speaks to my, my typical sarcasm. It's so refined that it, it is indistinguishable from earnestness. That's the British way. Yeah. Everyone always gets confused. The British way! The British are sarcastic on Go dry. Uh, I've been here since your TLJ rage, uh, rage sorry, and watched all EFAPs as they came out. You guys helped me get through a challenging period of my life. Happy 200. Oh, I'm very glad we were able to help with that. And it was a Thank wonderful you. 200. Absolutely. Well, yeah, the more time goes on, the more I, I still get floored by how long this whole thing is going, going you know? Uh, mm. I don't mean to use the word again, but it was on a whim that this whole thing got started, and it's been going now longer than... I don't know what the average length or health of a podcast is, but we've got to be in the upper 5% at this point. Like I think so. Um, we've got an incredible audience that seems to be extremely... Not, I mean, not just generous to help us out, but just the memes and the images that they make, the fucking videos, the animation. It's legitimately incredible. And I've never seen this from anyone else. Podcasts often, for some reason, my brain is opting for like the average health and length of a podcast can go for about a year. A lot of them do. And then it's like, well, this podcast kind of has completed its goal or whatever. Our one is, I don't know, it just keeps going. It just keeps talking the about goal stuff. never end. Yeah, we'll never get to the goal. I guess there is an infinite game element to the goal of EFAP, right? Like, when is when is the con when is the objective achieved? You know, what does that when media look is like? all so even when media would be, if it was all when fantastic, media, we'd still want to talk, talk about, about why it's good. Yeah, so that's the thing; it's it never ends. 
we want to conserve that you know quality we'd be talking this is why this is good this is why this is good da, 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 da. that's why i never worry that we'll come in we'll turn into like um you know, one of those ones i want to say collider i don't know if i'm being unfair but the kind you know like the nerd crew podcast yeah we'll never be like that because even if everything was amazing and People are like, wow, you're just shills for everything. It's like, yeah, but that's still not how we don't talk about it that way. We don't go, oh my god, it was so good when the third. We still want to be like, and so this represents his uh, overall journey through blah blah blah, and then blah blah. blah. Yeah. Not, not not trying to come across as we're somehow intellectual. I mean, literally that uh, we want to dig in really, really uh, far deep. And again, the word dry comes to mind, but we try and we try and spice it up. You know? All at the same time being like, let's dive in, boys. Both good and bad. Of which we've managed to pull off. Uh, remember remember Arcane? That was fun. That's mm. right. It was. Everything. There everywhere, are reasons why we like the things we do. And we can, uh, we can speak to that. I like to think that we are more than capable of doing so, yes. Um, though the world seems to opt for a preference of negative coverage. What everyone always talks about. I was just thinking with me, it's, it's always just going to be whichever I'm more passionate about at the time. Like, what would you rather cover? Rings of Power Season 2 or Arcane Season 2? It's like, easy to me. Not even close. And it's like, yes, but what about the fun of ripping apart Rings of Power? It's like, yeah, but... It's also really annoying. And long. Another yeah. Eight, eight hours of Rings of Power, Jesus Christ. Imagine. It's good to get both, though. I like uh, I like having that mix of both, appreciating the good, criticizing well, hey, maybe they'll, the bad. Maybe they'll come out at the same time next time. Arcane season oh, God, three rings that of power. Might, could that legitimately happen? That good. might happen. Just line up. Who knows? That could actually happen. Scary times. Wow. What a world. Thanks for EFAP, guys. Your analysis of writing has taught me a lot about writing in general, I guess. Uh, if I was any good at it, I might have tried to use some of those lessons to write a book. Thanks for 200 fun episodes. Also, high ranks. Oh, thanks very much. And hello to you. Uh, and just because you're not good at writing now, it doesn't mean you can't be good. Um, it's a skill like many things. Remember, there's always day one for writing a book. Start that day to day if you want. All right, notes. I don't know how one gets started. How does one get started writing a book? Bringing what's the idea there? Do you go Pro that probably? I think that you have a lot of options for the way that you could start a book. There's plenty of perspectives on where to begin, whether it's starting with characters or a theme or like some high concept. And of course, like once you even have a sense of like the idea that you have, whether to just jump straight into a first draft or outline. And even if you want to outline, do you want to go in depth or broad? I think it's just kind of the nature of creating anything is you have to just get started and then you'll figure it out as you go. You'll figure out a way to do it. And maybe you won't, but you'll still keep pushing through and, and working anyway. But the important part is to start. That's like the, that's the first step. You know, well begun is half done. Yeah. I think you should start with the middle of the second act, mainly just characterizing someone in the background. Place to start. Hmm. <laughs> so unconventional. It'll work, right? That's. First ever super chat. Been watching since around the Joker arc. Felt like it was about time to send something for all the fun times you guys provided. Happy 200th. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, 200 expletive episodes. I can just say fucking. Probably spend spell that in the forking, forking episodes. Who'd have thought? Here's to many more fantastic faps. My favorite kinds of faps are fantastic. Uh, it, I've decided to test my writing skills by making a script for a comic book that I've always wanted to make. I chose to create a reimagining of Sonic the Hedgehog because. I wanted to see how I can handle the most basic characters I can think of, and maybe fix some problems I've always had with the series. That's a good starting point, don't you think? Sure. Uh, yeah, potentially. I think fan uh, fiction using is something a... as a. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that's a good baseline because a lot of stuff is taken care. Of. You can do be more so be tweaking, but it's still more so you still have to build your own stuff a lot of the time, even with a fanfic. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it... safety wheels to some extent. Yeah, kind of. It's a really great way to get you into it 
especially because you can be working within, you know, like if, if you respect the characters in that world and you want to keep their personalities and things intact, then writing, you know, keeping them consistent is its own writing challenge that you can do, putting those characters into your own scenarios or places or uh, relationships or whatever. Congratulations, guys. Long live EFAP. Oh, yeah. Long has lived That's the plan. EFAP and long shall live. So far, so good. <clears throat> uh, congrats on 200 episodes, you beautiful massives. And to everyone, thank you for all the time and effort you put in. It's greatly appreciated. On to 300. On to 300. We're well on our way. Yeah, especially with the machine gunning of episodes lately. All the wonderful content the world has released for us. I, I legit get a sense of elation knowing that we are done with She-Hulk. Like, thank fuck. That yeah, show, it did be like shit. that. Like, it's someone, it was someone nice like, to be done really, with that. That show is now the one. It's like, I thought Loki, and it's just like, no, you don't understand. Like, they I find different lie. ways. They always find different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Let me ask you this. Were you more relieved that She-Hulk or Rings of Power was over? Rings of Power, because it's longer. It's more, but it is longer. I, in, like, my head thinks of, like, slog and swamp when we get to Rings of Power. She-Hulk is like a concentrated shotgun blast of silly, and it ends quickly. I think I was more relieved when She-Hulk was done. Um... Not sure if I can quite think of why, but I was more glad that we didn't have to cover She Hulk than I was more glad we didn't have to cover Rings of Power. I, but, I actually tell you which one. I don't know. I'm not sure which one was. Uh, yeah, I I can't quite really put it into a why right now, but. Well, I know. Massive congrats, you massive massives. Thank you. Thank you very much. You Hello, all helped EFAP. make oh. this possible. Hello, EFAP crew. I hope you guys get enough sleep. As Hi. someone who sleeps like sometimes like three hours, it's a horrible experience. Oh yeah, sleep's great. Yeah, good sleeps. Yeah, there's there there I had one of those moments uh a couple nights ago where you were just you got to the end of the day and you were just so ready to lie down and sleep, and then, oh, when you finally do. That's one of the best experiences incredible. in life, as far as I'm concerned. When you're incredibly tired, and then you go to sleep, very satisfying. Yeah. I'm not good at writing dialogue. All my characters keep talking the same, give too much exposition, or they say exactly how they feel. Do you have any writing advice on this? Try to, maybe you should write in the sense that characters don't necessarily want everyone else to know how they feel, but they still feel a certain way, and that will show through in their dialogue and how they interact with people. You don't want to, like, like um, if, you have, if you have that issue of characters being too blunt about everything, then say, all right, maybe... I should treat characters as if they want to guard their intentions or their emotional states a bit closer, uh, and that might even out a bit. But uh, maybe pay a lot of well, attention. Yeah, I guess if we were to distill it to, let's say that you have one scene. If you can enter into that scene with a clear understanding of what the objectives of each character is in that scene, that's probably going to help instantly. So if you know that one character specifically wants to get certain... Let's let's say it's a real simple one. You've got, I don't know, Bill and Bob. Bill wants to get information out of Bob. Uh, Bob would rather not spill that information. So, like, already you would imagine that Bill... I think I'm mixing them up. Bill was the first <laughs> one. I should have given them different names. But the guy who wants information... You should have picked, you, you should have picked simpler names than Bill and Bob. Yeah. Bill I, and really. Persephone. So you can possibly, you can I mean, possibly mix them up. But the but, but you would imagine that in that instance, one character is going to be more uh, one character is going to just be more guarded and maybe give more like curt responses, short, evasive, 
and that should come through in the dialogue. Meanwhile, the other character wants to keep the conversation going, and throughout it, he might want to find new ways of getting that information. Maybe at first he wants to be more subtle, but then as he gets more desperate, he's going to start being more uh, uh, overt. Like, that would be an example, I guess. Like, if you know what the characters want um, in a scene, that might be able to help uh, clarify what kind of dialogue to write for them. That's one of many ideas. Part of an issue a lot of people are going to have when writing is they have those two characters. You know exactly what you want the scene to end as. Say, for example, it's a, it's a, a realization because one of them gives away too much information, something like that. But you're just like, how do I get that to that point? Because that's all I want, but I need them to sound like they're actually getting there reasonably. And, and a little exercise you might be able to do, not to copy down the dialogue one-to-one, -one, but to at least see how it might turn out is grab two people. Say, for example, right now I'm like Fringy and Rex. You're playing well you could just use your own names who fucking cares i'd be like uh bring you stolen um money out of rags bank account and you're trying to hide that fact even though you've bought a new car which you shouldn't have been able to and rags is gradually figuring that out because he sees the car and uh he's quite an aggressive type of person and he feels backstabbed potentially so he's gonna try and dig it out of you and you've got to come up with something to counter the idea but then, um, you know, and then I'll drop something in the middle of you guys actually trying to play out that conversation that gives it away fully, like some kind of event maybe in the story, just to see how you can, you know, if you've got two people who are very um, invested in trying to come across as those characters, see what they come up with, because they'll be a completely new minds, but they're still trying to account for like that. Write with different people, see what kind of thing. And then, of course, yeah, write down anything, then look at it. Uh, after a, uh, this is something that seems to work for me with ice scripts as well. Is what I've written it and I don't like it. If I come back later and read it again, I'm like, oh, what's wrong here? Is this, this, this? The rest of it's fine. Then change it. And then maybe come back again later, read? and I'm like, oh, oh no, yeah. it looks yeah, it looks fine to me, sort of thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully all of those uh, can can lead you to some level of uh, progress in some way. Who knows? Um, I mean, of course, I guess. Uh... Think about the stories that you like and why those characters uh, seem like different people um, strictly from their dialogue. I mean, even look at a screenplay, right? Like if the ca if the actors themselves are bringing so much to it that it kind of makes it difficult for you to ascertain that. Look at a script. Why do the characters sound different? Yeah. So good luck. Don't give up. And hey, better to have dialogue that's a little clunky and expositional than no dialogue at all. We'll get there. Thoughts on bringing on Corbis on a stream? Who that? Uh, let me take a look. Corbis. You sound like a gamer. Uh, 38,000 subs. Uh... Video. There's only seven videos. I don't know any... I don't know about this. Yeah, afraid I'm not familiar. Yeah. Uh, just checking in to say I love you guys. Two hundred Canadian pennies for two hundred episodes. Very much. Oh, all right. I'll be a bigger payout next time around. Hell Get yeah. Get three hundred Canadian pennies. Well, two fifty, right? Oh, yeah, I suppose that's right. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Happy 200, you yeah. massive. Thank you very much. Thank you, absolutely. Happy 200. I don't know if you guys have expressed your opinions on Breath of the Wild before, but how do you feel about it, and if you're excited for the sequel? Hi, Rags. Hello. I am completely Never played unfamiliar Breath of, the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Fringy, this is all you. Yep. I really like it, and I'm looking forward to the new one. You hey. even like the way that weapons degrade? Is that something you like? No, Fringy? I don't like that. That's, That's what I thought. Not, I was a big fan of that. That's all I know about it. It's like the the really big old game. Lots of fun puzzles. You can complete it early or defeat Ganon early. Um, but that also there's just weapon degradation that everyone hates. Yeah. Um, I feel like there are better ways to incentivize people to use different weapons. Um... In fact, not only do I feel like that's the case, that's just, is, that's true. Like, there's, <laughs> there's other ways of doing it. Uh, I've never seen such weaponized autism for an intro before, and somehow it enthralled me more than anything Disney Marvel released in the past two years. Dude, the, all the 
crazy awesome intro videos that everyone ends up making for each app are always just mind boggling. Legitimately incredible. Can't even begin to understand how they make that kind of thing. It's nuts. Ooh. It's nuts. Greetings, Lord Longbone of Mubslington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to a mega fap? Haha, that's right. I want you to do an EFAP oh. movies on Mega Mind. <gasps> Not some silly monkey movie. It would be a movie fap oh. for the ages. Happy 200 and high ranks. Hello. Maybe we could I have. In... I've never seen Mega Mind. Oh, well. We could, we wow. could do some kind of arc for. Um, which, who made Mega Mind? DreamWorks? DreamWorks, right? Yeah, it's DreamWorks. Maybe maybe we can throw it in with Shrek. Yes, yeah. Shrek art. Why? Shark. We need to do the Shrek. Yeah. That'd be a lot of movies if we were doing the full DreamWorks. Yeah, arc. yeah, we got to be careful with that. Maybe we have to do a poll and see see what doesn't make it, what gets culled from the list. But I know Shrek would make it. Everyone would vote Shrek is love, Shrek is life, sort of. Thing. Shrek is love. Well, Shrek is love. All of them, including Shrek the Third. Uh, absolutely. That is a part of the Shrek I experience. Mean, I mean, I guess that's part of the fat movies experience, right? The bad ones, too. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. That's, uh... Entirely bad ones. Well, see, because people are still guessing what we, we've done for Halloween, and uh, some people yeah. were like, maybe it was Friday the 13th, and I'm like, dude, I really do want to do Friday the 13th because of how insane those get. There are be... many, many options for what we could watch, um, so... Hey, one day you'll know if your guess is correct. No doubt some of you are already right. correct, and some was of you it, are Was it incorrect. Halloween? Was it The Nightmare <gasps> on Elm Street? Was it Saw? Ooh. I saw several uh, guesses that it was Saw. I don't think... Saw I think Saw was mentioned guesses. as well in the uh, Final Destination ones. Maybe. Was it Paranormal saw. Activity? Oh, there's not Ooh, that many of those I've, ones. Yeah. How many are there? Is it four? I think there's like four or five. Thing. Four or five. Are there, any, like, are there any like paranormal activity colon and then other thing and it's like splintering off? I think off. so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing quite like like um yeah. I it's... I wonder how good those would make in terms of you know like commentary think, fodder. Yeah, I think um, in YMS or someone pointed out like I'm not sure those would work because we I don't could know talk about them, but I don't think we're gonna we be drawing much out of it. Or that would be a short Cloverfield. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The, the 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 three Cloverfield exactly. movies that there are. The three. Oh, God, ah, yeah. entirely disparate genres and tones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, because what one of them wasn't even a Cloverfield movie, right? The two that of them later on. And that was J.J. Abrams' idea, right? How can I make this more like Cloverfield? For some I don't. Reason? I think he bought it. I think he bought the he. Um, it was uh, Clo the. Something paradox. Oh, oh right. I, I thought you thought because Ten Cloverfield Lane had the same thing. It was it was its own movie, it, and then they made it a Cloverfield movie. Yeah, then I heard that he. It was like the so Netflix the thing. The Cloverfield films. Yeah, the ten. Uh, yeah, the Cloverfield paradox was like its own science Sci fiction film. Thing, yeah. Said it's a Cloverfield. That's another movie thing. that could have been cool, and it fucking sucked. Didn't we watch that? That's a lot of movies that could have been cool. It sucks. That's one of my uh... like. I've gaslit myself into thinking something happened. I know I watched it, but who did I watch it with? And I could have sworn you were there. Maybe Jay. Uh, and it was absolutely bizarre. It's an awful movie. It, 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 I was so excited to get a cool, creepy science fiction story, and it just is, what the fuck is this? What are we doing? What is this? What's going on? I'm pretty sure it's a perfect EFAP movies movie. So. Ooh, wow, yeah. We're up to like 41 of those now, EFAP movies. Yeah. Mm. Which, for anybody who enjoys those, if they've seen one and then they find out there's 40 of these, like, hell yeah. Oh my god. Lots Christmas. of them are double bills, too. Or triple bills, right. in the case of Cruella. Yeah. You need to do more of them. The Disney old versus new thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess Little Mermaid's next year, right? So that seems... <laughs> seems like a... Hell there's yeah. a lot of them. Like, Beauty and the Beast, and then... The, I Lady mean, the they, how many... There's a lot of remakes now, and it's. I think. Do I Lion watch King at some point. Back. Oh, do we? Yep. <laughs> do we have to? <laughs> oh, I don't like it. Oh, you have to watch then, The Lion King? To watch Alice in Wonderland and then Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland and then the sequel to Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. 
Alice Strikes Back. Oh, and then it would be the same with Sleeping Beauty and then Maleficent and then the sequel to Maleficent. Well, do we have to... Is that how it works? Because with Maleficent, that's like its own little thing that just involves that character. Nah, that counts. That counts. If I thought Cruella it was a reboot. Doesn't it tell it does them pretty count. much the same story, but there's a lot more of Maleficent's side of things? Uh, I, I thought it was like a prequel yeah, to I how could, she became evil or something. Oh, is it? Well, sure, but like then they made another one, right? And also, isn't she kind of like the protagonist of those films? Like, proper, yeah. like not even a villain but, perspective. It's kind of like Cruella, where she's like kind of. I get what Rags is saying, though. Like, in the, in the same vein that we wouldn't watch, I don't know, a, a Batman cartoon and then Joker as a as well, an adaptation. Well, but we watched, we watched 101 Dalmatians and then when we watched Cruella, I'd consider those what to be I'm exactly saying the is, same thing. Let's not lock ourselves into watching some of these things. I never, I never said that we had to. I'm just saying that if we had, if we had to do it, this is what it would look like: <laughs> is having to watch. Um, Who tends is having to watch yeah. maybe, Which, maybe. And I would want to take it easy. No, I, I'm, I'm actually fine with committing to doing all, but not like maybe one per year not, at most, because <laughs> these things the, the really are paid for. Cry with us while we watch our Disney classics just get just well yeah because watching the original 101 Dalmatians that was really cute and cool that was charming and, yeah and even the 90s the one was yeah the 90s charming. one is, I is such a dumb fucking era yeah. for movies yeah kind of great yeah, era as well like it's, I, well I guess it's because uh because 101 Dalmatians was kind of quaint in that it's revisiting an era of Disney that's like is quite dissimilar to what uh like Renaissance era was um like there was a certain vibe that film had that isn't uh as present in like the newer films so it's kind of yeah. neat whereas i guess in the case of like watching beauty and the beast it's like oh so watch like this excellent movie and then watch this shit movie you know <laughs> like it's just yeah it's, that's all yeah, it is milan just... was was a, a very it, it probably was the most stark of them that was milan um well, Lion King, I think, is... Um, I, I think uh, the thing that comes through is... Because so much done, of these remakes... But... The remakes are, like, pretty similar. As in, they'll have identical lines of dialogue, even. But then they just make these changes. It's like, oh, that's worse. That's, yeah, everything change, about it is worse. worse. Yep, what you just yeah, did. Like, every worse. change like, that you make is worse. Because I know Aladdin... It, you know how, like, at the end of Aladdin, the whole thing is that um, Aladdin tricks Jafar basically into trapping himself. He's like, yeah, you're not as powerful as the genie. Uh, and then he's like, yeah, I want to be an all-powerful genie. And even, even genie's like, uh, yeah, thanks. Right. Thanks. Aladdin. Good job, buddy. Like you ruined everything. And then it very quickly is like, yeah, you got what you wanted. You know, like you want to be a genie, you got it and everything that goes with it. And yeah, then like, and everything it, that goes it, with over. it. It's just over straight away. Like in the new film, they anything. draw it out way more. They draw it out so much more. First of all, they kind of give the win to Genie rather than Aladdin. They're like, oh yeah, gray area. You can use that to basically... Like, it's way better that Jafar actually wishes to be a Genie. It's like, good job, you idiot. Like, you actually doomed yourself. Like, you did it. You did it because you were so arrogant. Whereas in, like, the new one, it's kind of like... No, you kind of, like, totally did screw him over here. You really did trick him. Like, in a way that seems a bit... Hmm. And then the fact that they have to explain it very clearly, it's like, ah, yeah, genie without a master goes in their lamp. It's like, why did you? I got it. I got it. All right, <laughs> like, I got it. Yeah, it's I'm like, not actually a moron. You have to explain it, and then it gets really drawn out, and it's like really dramatic as well. Whereas in like Aladdin, it's really quick. It's like th it's there and it's over. Like you want. It's like yeah, you you're realizing it almost alongside Jafar. Like oh shit. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then it's like, there's a cool juxtaposition where like, it's got this swelling music as he's like phenomenal cosmic power. And as soon as he gets sucked into the lamp, it just cuts mm -hmm. to silence. He's like, it'd be the living space. living space. It's great. Whereas in the fucking the remake, it's really dramatic. It's like, ah, oh, you can't, you, you pulled the exact same things and you didn't even realize that the component pieces are all different and don't work as well. Yeah. And I, how are you so bad at copying? As for them yeah. being similar, I, I totally get what you're saying, but the Mulan one is just like, wow, you fucked with well, this story, Mulan didn't one. you? <laughs> Why'd you get rid of... I can't, I can't believe I've forgotten Eddie to Murphy. To make it more realistic, dragon. that's what they said. Why what, would Shifu? you get rid of him? He was, no, wait. Yeah, he yeah, was hilarious. Not Shifu. Uh, Shifu's king for no. Kung Fu Panda, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it was... Uh... I might forget his name. <laughs> ah. Like, I can't remember was, his give, name. Give, That's don't, nobody bizarre. check it. All three of our brains, we can I do was, this. I was about to check, but I... Um, 
I'm trying uh, to think of other characters. Uh, Mushu. Mushu, that's it. Yep. Mushu. Why would you get rid of Mushu? Why would oh, you do that? that? Dumbass Why would you do that? We got rid of <laughs> Mushu to make it more realistic, and we added some Dude, Phoenix he was, and Chi. I, I, he was I killing like us in the, uh, when we rewatched it. It's hilarious. He's like, an amazing that, character. That's kind of funny, right? That's too, that's not realistic enough. Meanwhile, Little Mermaid's going to have, I presume, a photorealistic Sebastian. It look horrifying. <laughs> it's going to look terrible. I mean, if, Gio, we didn't even see the Pinocchio thing. We and no, that's we the didn't. one that came out of the gate and everyone hated it. That one feels particular. Isn't it funny, by the way? Because, like, Disney's theme song is from Pinocchio. And, it, like, Pinocchio is a pretty important film in terms of Disney. It's like, ah, yeah, straight to Disney Plus. Yeah, all right, just throw it out there. Yeah, throw it out. I guess no Disney Plus really is that big or they weren't that confident i don't know it's hard to tell uh, with their decisions it's, um a matter of that you need stuff on disney plus to like to to the platform is really important to keep propping it up so i guess you just throw pinocchio onto it and that's because i mean it's like in the mix of these remakes some of them are just going straight to it was lady in the tramp went straight to disney plus i think yeah. they're making a peter pan reboot like uh remake as well that's going to disney plus it's just you need stuff on there to bolster it um i guess i just find it funny right that like pinocchio just sort of gets thrown out there and nobody cares when it's like that important when's bambi when's bambi gonna be remade they already Ugh. did dumbo snow white's coming soon as well um I did do dumbo a lot of see a lot you're you're saying some of these like lady and the tramp and dumbo and like oh yeah that's right they made that and instantly oh, faded way, into obscurity mm. the, and these are like robert zemeckis did pinocchio tim burton did dumbo like there's not you know what I mean? Like, even it feels like with the live action remakes, it's the same thing as, as what happens with the Marvel films. Like, you can bring in whoever, but ultimately what you're going to be churning out is like sludge. Because, yeah, like, Guy Ritchie on shit. Aladdin, what's that? I think Kenneth Branagh did like Cinderella. And it's like, where does any of this come through? Like, any of this sort of director's vision? How much can they really have when, like, especially with some of these now? Like, I'm pretty sure Cinderella deviates like a bit more from the original. Like, it doesn't have as many pulled directly lines of dialogue. But, like, now they're just basically doing, like, as close to one-to-one -one as you can get. Um, Kenneth Branagh, I'm pretty sure he felt like the Poirot movies were, like, really important. And really, like, I think he was a big fan of Poirot, so he was, like, taking them very seriously. Imagine it all being ruined by a cannibal. Well, yeah, because Death on the Nile, like, nobody cared. Nobody gave a shit about that one. I ended up watching it. It was Did you? fine. Fine, all right. What about you? Watched Murder on the Orient Express, right? And you said you thought that one was fine too. They're all, yeah, they're all this normal movies. I've right. only seen the old Mur uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I'm here. I didn't see his. Dude, this is fucking star studded though. That was uh, wow. Well, yeah, but now it's 19... knives out. That's where it's all. <laughs> it's the knives out. It feels like what? the same thing, actually. Yeah, where they're just like. Lots of famous people. I guess because it's um I could be wrong about this, but it's not too much of a commitment because they all it's also just standing well, it's an, sitting it's speaking. Cast, right? In like a limited setting. You can yeah, that's what I get. I'm saying like I wonder how long yeah. the turnaround is for the whole thing. A couple train cars, dress them up. Yeah. Well it's yeah. I mean that's murder on the Orient Express is like a bottle episode. Yeah. Well, a bottle episode. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's a Poirot story, essentially, so a lot of them, I mean, were. Uh, just, there was oh, the Poirot yeah. show. Yeah, like, trap them all in a room and go, I'm going to figure this out. That's right. It I was mean... you! And then they go, <gasps> and then he's like, no, I'm yeah. just doing the part where I shock you, you're not the actual killer. That's not you, just just, I'm, it was just a prank for a countdown. It was just, just a, I do not prank. I'm part. I do not pull pranks. I don't call him, just don't say he's French. I'm gonna That's do right. it. That's right. Belgian. Say the French don't word. Do don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. There I go. All right, anyway, next one. Well done, sons. Happy 200th. Hello. Father. Uh, it, is it as fun if Jay comes pre-kicked? Yeah, I'm afraid Jay was not able to make it for that. Unfortunate, but... Uh, a lot of Final Destination happenings with Jay the, the days. Enjoy that. We still got, at this point, some Final Destination fun times to come. Right. But by the time this is out, no. We'll be done. So, 
the arc complete. Right. Yeah. And then they the people who complete that are like, the... wow, they ever done this before? And you were like, oh. 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 Resident Evil. Now those movies are perfect EFAT movies. To the point Still got to see Monster Hunter. Ten years from now, we might just rewatch them. Last one. Honestly, you, you probably could. Because yeah. some of those I know I've seen before. You know, before we watched them, but I just uh -huh. couldn't remember like anything that was going to happen. Uh, two hundred pennies for all your thoughts. Also, hey rags. Hello, two hundred pennies is not enough to pay for all of my thoughts. I appreciate your generosity, but that exchange is not. Fair. I don't think they understand that. It's going to take a while for you to get out all your thoughts. So, a little yeah, just it will be. Well. Oof, you know, it's a lot of time as well. And you even survive? No, we're going to need to. Because every last, because every thought you provide will then probably generate more thoughts, won't it? Exactly. Tough one. First anniversary. Let the long begin. Also, high ranks. Hello. Wings quote of the day. You ever lose an Hello. animal as a little kid and you spend the next week or so not having that animal around? That's what I feel when I eat without a soda. Fuck. <laughs> 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 it's, it's sad that I believe that's truly how he feels. Especially oh. when it's comfort food. I need my wife to help me get through that. What? What? It's comfort oh. food and I need my wife to get me through that? So, if he's having comfort food and he's not able to get a soda, he'll experience the same kind of loss as you would losing a pet. And he needs his wife to help him with that. <laughs> uh, I... Need, need therapy. <laughs> Something, someone's got to... You need to stop eating and drinking terrible things all the time. You just stop pouring calories into your poor, poor body. Save a lot of money that way. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Mootle's dad. And Mootle's dad? Be fat Mootle's dad? Uh, happy 200 and for another 200 more. Howdy, Ragu, Fringus, Mubshli, and Mootle. To 26 hours, Dawn, help us. Yeah, I guess the yeah, totality of it does end up going to like 25 at least because we have two half-hour breaks. We will find a way to include them in future, I'm sure of it. They expand the stupid streaming cap from 11 and a bit hours. Then I can just play the video on the stream. Be a Bat whammon or whatever else. Still going. Because that's the only time that Rags and Fring are allowed to go to toilet. They can't do it in between. Mm. By law. You know, that's the realities. That's the sacrifices you got. Exactly. Uh, bonus. Wife comes to him crying, scared that her cancer might be back. Says, grow up and deal with it. Is that... Did, did is that, that actually true? happen? Because <laughs> even... The, Sometimes even I'm like, would Wings really? Wings, come on, man. Yeah, no, I know the automobile thing, but like, <laughs> it will never not be funny. Automobile rat. Automobile <laughs> <laughs> rat makes it funny. Rags, have you received your monthly thrust yet? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think that was the thing that ever really happened. Um, um, or maybe I misunderstood. It? I'm not sure. I had to get my monthly thrusts elsewhere. Uh, happy 200 years. Favorite video game song with lyrics, and I don't mean Latin chanting. I want something like DK Rap or Philistine. <laughs> um, um, well, favorite think... songs with lyrics. I'd include the Portal songs. One of them was referenced earlier. I really liked... Uh... Calling to the Night from Metal Gear Solid. Um, I cannot remember which one it was, but Calling to the Night was really good. Uh, also, Snake Eater is pretty darn good. I don't know much about Metal Gear Solid, but they got some fucking banger tunes in that. Can't say goodbye um, to yesterday. Really good. Let me see. That have Metal lyrics in them. Metal Gear Rising's got a lot of cool songs. Oh wow, that have that have lyrics in them. Yeah, uh, I know. that's tough because generally you don't get those in you know soundtracks for games because you're playing a game and you don't want to have lyrics often happening. Uh, you want to. Uh, Red Dead Redemption uh, Two has got a lot of great tracks that have lyrics in them. 
they're not li- uh, they're not lyrics, but there are some excellent vocals. Uh, is it Jesper Kid or Kide? Jesper Kid, I think, is uh, how you pronounce it. I oh, like Jesper the Assassin's Kid. Creed. Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed, yeah. yeah. A, two, a two is exactly the one that I was yeah. thinking of. <laughs> There's some great shit in Assassin's yeah. Creed Two. That one always stood out to me as having incredible music. He's doing the um, he's doing the uh, music for Dark Tide. And oh, okay. uh, the the music in that so far has been pretty uh, pretty banger. He's pretty great. He's very good. Yeah. Um, that's just what comes to mind though for songs that have actual lyrics in them. Uh, I'd have to think more on it. Otherwise. You guys do for entertainment what predator hunters do for children. Thank you for keeping media safe and fighting back against the morons and making me laugh quite frequently. Congrats on 200 episodes. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my first live EFAP. I started catching up after EFAP 100 and three days ago I finally watched every video on Moolah. Thank you all so much for the amazing memes, Bilbo, that helped me get through the university, or through university, with a Bachelors of Honors. Thank you all so much. Hi, Rags. Hello. Well, you congratulations. Get all right. Yeah, I mean, every video on Moolah, that, that is no small feat. A lot of hours. That is legitimately impressive to the point where I might not believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to get harder and harder when someone says, like, I'm just starting up. It's like you've got yeah, five years. There's no joke at this point. Five mm. years plus everything that we make and put out as you watch that five years yeah. of content. We act on some movies and everything, too. Yeah, that's right. Hello to all EFAP minus J. Wow. 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 Yeah, Hello, Massives. Congrats on 200 EFAPs, and here is to many more FAPs into the infinite. Hail to the Toxic Brood. Also, Mola, your MOM video was excellent. Truly a cataclysm of entertainment. Yes, it much. was. Uh, definitely did be doing that, that. That 200. We did do it. Which goal? Plenty more to come, I'd imagine. Congratulations on four years, you massives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for making it all happen. Thanks for the laughs and everything. Happy 200. Thank you. Absolutely. It was a good 200. There's a town in England called Wangford. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. oh we do so love to ford the wangs. Bonnie. Congrats on 200th anniversary. Recommending great games. Jessica O'Neill's Hard News. Being a Dick. Four Element Trainer. Paprika Trainer. Our Red Spring, Good Girl Gone Bad, Succulence, and others. Um, are these real? They sound like... I've never heard of any of these, <laughs> but like... Very I've well. never heard of them either. Alrighty. Happy Fapiversary! Thank you very much. Absolutely, thanks. EFAP Tradition, annual Jim Sterling video, and supermassive games on Halloween. Congrats on Zoo, Mauler, Rags, and Fringy. Congrats on the zoo. Did we, did we get well, a zoo? Well, is there an EFAP zoo? Uh, the zoo was no, it was not my labors that brought the zoo the into fruition. The we bought a zoo. Are we, are we Matt Damon? And mm. I was this at a time? We were all animals at one point. Our icons. Was hmm. that then? Mahler, were you like a, oh, a Malrus like or something? Or a stoat, right? I had a stoat one. Yeah, you had a stoat. Yeah, we were, we were a right proper zoo. We were a we were really quite a. We were an arc bound well, gaggle of stoats, critters. Stoats are like, uh, like, are they like weasels, weasels or otters? Yeah. Yeah. They're super Doomers. cute. They are. Doomers I, I was just wondering, yeah, yeah. They're, they're part of, oh, right. So they're part of the family that includes badgers and weasels. They're mustelids, right? Ferrets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like, like mustard. Yeah. Mustard, mustard lids. They are a really cool, just mustard like liberals. subcategory of animals like that they're, they're yeah. all great otters badges they're fantastic <laughs> i really like them they're cool critters uh 
Um, double bonus. You guys worry about happiness too much. I'm not trying to be happy. I'm trying to be fiscally stable. Happiness is not a perpetual state of mind. Happiness is a feeling. Oh my god. You get happy just... when you get a piece of cake. You get happy when you get an ice-cold Coca-Cola. You don't live in an eternal world of bliss. It's just not how it works. What is this? What was this in relation to? This this is a Wiggs quote, apparently. So, that's hilariously backwards. He's like, you don't need to worry about happiness. You need to worry about money. <laughs> like... I guess it's... Uh, that it sounds like someone narrowly. more interest. Oh, God. I guess, I don't know, it's like a very narrow perspective. Like, I guess if happiness strictly means, like, yeah, when you eat food that you like, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> do, 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 I mean, why do you care about money? You care about money to sustain, like, your lifestyle, which you believe makes you happy. Like, that's, in all roads lead to happiness. Pretty much. Or at least, at the very least, like, contentment or, or something along those lines. Like, a, what could best be described as some kind of positive feeling? That's like what all roads lead to. Is he actually like trying to say that that's not... Can you read that quote again? I need to hear it. I need, I need to give, give, I give just it to me. I just erased it. Sorry. Ugh. He, he, he basically said, you, ha you don't have to worry about happiness. You have to worry about money. I, I mean, that's, to what end? Like, <laughs> to what end are you trying to continue to exist? To the end of having oh, wait, money. I can... I can get half like, of it. He said, you guys worry about happiness too much. I'm not trying to be happy. I'm trying to be fiscally stable. Happiness is not a perpetual state of mind. Happiness is just a feeling. Well, sure, but, like, being fiscally stable can make you happy. Like, does he not understand that? Also, you, you, you need to have recreation. You need to have moments where you feel happy and motivated. Because if you well, don't no, have those moments... He has to play games he hates. He hates playing Call of Duty. He'd rather play Rainbow Six. <laughs> so like he doesn't know he doesn't know how that feels. I, I uh, guess it's just funny, right? Because the perspective that he presents is like, I feel like you're missing so many components. Like, I don't know. I don't know why you said that. Wings is is one of those people that you're really glad seems to be a shitty person. So that when you make fun of them and mock their existence, it doesn't feel bad. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, it's just like, he doesn't help himself, that's for sure. God damn, do we always have to start with this... This... F oh, fat fuck. They spelt it with PHs. Um, it's hey, the, the, we had an interesting conversation about difficulty. Talked about video games for a whole bunch. You guys like it when we talk about video games. Episode. Yeah! Oh, well, scorn. Everyone like that. I like video right. games. Yeah. <laughs> I like video games. Uh, boop. Boop, boop. Boop. 200 fantastically flamboyantly fabulous fappenings. Happy 200, lads. Here's to many more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Literally thought this dude's voice was Rags doing a crap British accent. <laughs> oh, wow. First off, my British impressions are impeccable. You would never be able to tell. I could have introduced you day one. I could have started with an accent from the Britain, and you would have just bought it the whole time. Yeah. Well, maybe. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. No question. Right. Uh, can one of you invade Metal's Forge and force him to watch Zulu? That film is fucking fantastic. Well, I mean, if I would ask be him, keen he on might... watching Zulu again. I haven't seen it in ages. Ask him to do a that forge on intense. Zulu, Rags. He'll be. Raw Jeep. I, w I wouldn't mind seeing it. Maybe, maybe I don't know. We need, we need to see something after we catch up on our things. Uh, no, Mauler. Not Jim Sterling. Please kick. Sorry, not. No, Kicking has not been. Can't. Kicking would be difficult. There's just too much to say. Thanks, Gratz. Good job. Keep up the good work. You're helping. TV is objectively better due to your work. Also, high rags. Hello. Oh, I said TY is objectively better, actually. So. Do they mean YT, YouTube, or do they mean... YouTube? The way. I don't know. If we're improving anything, that's good news. So much. Happy 200 to you massives. Also, Mola, when can we expect to see the supercut of all the ways you pronounced Benelict my cum patch in your MOM video? I think someone's already made that. Someone did that in the comments, I think. There's one, well, there's one in a YouTube video form as well. You can do the compilation. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah. 
that had to be that was a whole thing I had to sort out because uh, it's difficult to find ones that are not only unique but well some of them aren't unique because I I, I I like Bulbasaur uh, but it just you know some of them preferences what can you do I think my default is Bindi Dick Humperdink that was always kind of my uh... oh that was fucking hilarious I was talking to, on Real BBC about this um someone shared something in the Discord of like. They they stop watching the video because of the racism, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> what's the racism? Okay. Like, I'm curious. What is Here we it? Because I I genuinely don't know. I was like, what what would be the reference? And they were like, when it came to um, uh, America Chavez, the actress playing her, he like deliberately mispronounces her name just because he's like playing up the stereotype of you know a person from uh, the West can't understand names, or whatever. And and then the person was like, wait, so. You think he's racist because he like deliberately mispronounced a person's name, and they this person isn't from the West, or whatever, right? Yeah, and they were, yeah, you know, it doesn't do it with anybody from like the West. Do you any like? Do you, do you ever see him mispronounce a white male's character name? <laughs> it's just like, how far did you make it into this video? Curious, <laughs> and they were like, oh, you know, it's just just that because I I do the mispronouncing thing for her name. I think in the first like two minutes. And then I say her name properly throughout the whole video. Do you know whose name I don't say properly throughout pretty much the whole video? It's like, the main one, the main guy. I thought it was bizarre. I was like, oh, if anything, you'd probably say I hate white people, right? Or I hate Benedict Cumberbatch, which I don't. You must really hate white people, because, yeah. Well, if you hate him, you hate white people, obviously. Uh, he's you a cool fun man, and I wish he was in more things that were good. I do, too. It's crazy how much tolerable Jim was before he went mentally incense and started having wee-wee problems like Jay. Wow. Just rude. Pick both of them. Molly, you gay. Hi, Rags. Hello. Jim Sterling uh, was always a bit difficult to fully consume as a YouTube channel. It was always weird stuff, and I didn't agree with all the takes. Meanwhile, when it was someone like Total Biscuit, I could usually, even if I disagree, be like, I can totally see why you're saying that. Um, but I still appreciate all the work uh, Jim Sterling had done in relation for consumer advocacy. Consumer advocacy is very important. and um, Yes, it is. It's sad to look back on all of the like attempts at stemming the flow of really bad practices just to watch it overflow and win, basically. Like bad practices have pretty much taken over. A lot of what used to be surprising is now normal. Um, that's okay. Games, there's still good games coming out with good practices embedded. Yep, reward guess, the good. Yeah, what I'm talking about, like you know, pre-orders, crunch time, uh, hyper microtransaction focused games with like little content, games that are unfinished. All these sorts of things used to be shocking, but they're becoming more and more normal as time goes on, which sucks. Yeah, there are there are plenty and continue to be plenty of double A level and indie games that absolutely deserve your money. Uh you will not uh you you won't run out of them. So by all means, you want to reward those good companies who make the good stuff. And if yeah, it means sure. we get less triple A games, then well, maybe that's what needs to happen. Yeah. Um, the debate over difficulty in gaming mostly comes from a sense of entitlement. It's basically you want the game to cater to you rather than acting like an adult and realizing not all games are made for you. Happy anniversary. Um, it, I can't remember exactly oh. what our conclusion was, but uh, the rule of thumb is I want the author, so to speak, to have full control over how difficult their game is. Well, yeah, yeah right. I mean, like the developers can implement difficulty settings if that's if they feel that that's coherent with what they want to do. But if yeah. they choose not to, that's not like some great sin. It's a How choice. difficult games are are part of the expression of the creators. You know, they yeah, are. But I think that that's vision. often forgotten. I think that I don't know how much people factor that into like the creative expression of video games is the their interactivity in the sense of like how easy or difficult is it for you to even engage with any of this and i wouldn't like, want to wash it all away under the sense of like an annoying pride with a person like oh you just want to like say for example dark souls is the way that it is and then dark souls 2 is like it has that mario thing which is like would you like invincibility 
um, the second you die, and someone's like, that kind of makes it all really easy, and that's not at all what... Or maybe that's even embedded. That's just something you have. You're just invincible in the next game, and someone's like, oh. If someone said, oh my <laughs> god, you just can't accept games are for everybody, not just for you. Be like, that's pretty fair, though. There's an expectation there of what was going to be happening. Um, this is why new IPs, when they fuck around with whatever difficulty they want, are going to be much better off than when you do it to something that's established. Because people are like, well, wait, exactly. I'm buying this because I expect this, but now you're giving me this. And it's like, yeah. But you'll like it, because you can choose the difficulty you want to do. And uh, we went over this, just like there's this big old thing of social experience that's not the same, not shit, and taken from the potential thingy. For example, when Fringy says, oh, I beat God of War 2018, on normal difficulty, it's like, pfft, what even is that? Like the the baby difficulty? How could you? So he'll be. Yeah, I guess it, I guess that's the thing. Is like if somebody says to me, "I beat, I played this game and I really enjoyed it." It's like on what mode? Easy. It's like, oh, well, yeah, that means that I might not. <laughs> like you know, your uh, your perception of the game is going to be different based on what difficulty you play on. To some yeah. to some degree. That came up when, when I reviewed games more than films at the time. Just, uh, I've said before, that playing on the hardest difficulty will often get you to really understand what mechanics are working and what aren't, because you need them all to be very reactive and important. Like, every movement matters, sort of thing. And so you'll know. But if you play on the easiest difficulty, you might be like, well, there's nothing wrong with the shoot mechanics. Everything's just dying. And just... Even though even on the easiest, uh, you should be able to analyze it as well. It's just that when things are pushed to their limits and everything needs to be almost perfect. Um, harder difficulties can help you understand how well coded the game was or balanced it was. Exactly. How well does the difficulty... Like, yeah, what what happens if systems begin to break? You know? Like, when you play on diff different difficulty settings, it's like, hmm. Interesting question worth exploring. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, saying it's like down to a sense of entitlement. I don't think I wouldn't want to. I think that's a bit reductive. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the conversation eventually turned into. Because I think it's just the easy take to be like, "Oh, you guys just want everything to be the way that it always was." I think, yeah. I mean, there's some people who, you know, feel owed success, but it depends on who's talking. It might be the person. It might not be. It just depends. You got to listen to why they're bitching, essentially. I started watching when Nostalgia Critic's Lord of the Rings stream was live, and 200 is live on my birthday weekend. It's been a super fantastic ride. Congrats to everybody. Nostalgia no, thanks Critic very streams. much. I, I didn't know that. Does he? Uh -huh. I'm going to check immediately. Uh, Nostalgia Critic streams. Late, but here. Happy 200 part one. Thank you very much. This one just says money. <laughs> yeah. What are you laughing at? I, mm -hmm. I, apologies. Um, thank you for the super chat. I just, when you type in nostalgia, when you type in nostalgia critic stream, this is what pops up first. Oh, this made me laugh. He like makes, I guess he just makes a model of nostalgia critic and he's just <laughs> fucking funny. Is that Mario? Um, but, Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of Wario, the, the mustache. I do not know if Nostalgia Critic In the red streams. Tree. Only creates a Nostalgia Critic. Yeah, um, well, they said Lord of the Rings stream, so... I don't know. Unless they're referring to our coverage of Nostalgia Critic's Lord of the Rings form of a stream. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Oh yeah, they're saying that's when they started watching EFAP. I see. Ah. That was uh, one of the Halloweens ago, I think. Hard to say. Uh, do, do, do. Came here for the TRO drama. Can't be happier. God, that was like episode 9. 8, 9, 10, I think. That was, that was back in the day. That was back Five in the minute. day. A long time ago, yeah. Objectively speaking, in my subjective opinion, Byrax, also Mola, you outdid yourself with the mom video. Also, Pyro may be a longer man than you. True, could be. Maybe. Uh, Length isn't everything, though. Yes. 
That's true. Quality. Technique. But to be fair, I've heard he is a quality longman. I should check it out. Uh, read the hot dog lyrics in Fred Durst's voice. Who's Fred Durst? Oh. I know, I can't help you. That's not YouTube Fred, right? Fred Durst. Um... Is that YouTube Fred? I don't know who YouTube Fred is. Like the first big YouTuber? I I don't think so. He is. Let oh me no, see. that's a different guy. Who is Fred Dude? Born, but... He's an American rapper, singer, songwriter, actor, and director. He's the front man and lyricist of the new metal band oh, Limp, Limp Biscuit. Biscuit. Right. I don't know what he's like. That's just not familiar. I, I wouldn't know what I, the impression of his voice yeah. is. Very. I have no idea what Fred Durst sounds like. If we're talking accessibility options like colorblind mode, literally no one has a problem with that. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. nobody does. It, it's what, what you always have to do in these uh, discussions, particularly with, particularly with Jim, is this... Whenever possible to create confusion, confusing conflation between difficulty and accessibility, it will be done, and then those things will be mixed together later. I think yeah, that Jim was is annoying. very bad. Jim is very bad faith when it comes to this. It's not the first time that Jim's done this. It will, and it will not be the last. It is always a. It, it I guess he sees it as a very a venerable strategy, and it, it is incredibly fucking annoying. Why this discussion again? No, the answer is no. If someone wants an easier Mom. experience, mods are a thing. Also, why are we watching old Jim Sterling stuff? Also, cheers, guys. This is a, oh, the, the, the video I originally wanted to cover from Jim Sterling still hasn't been covered yet, outside of the privilege goggles one. They're always old, because there's, there's funny ones from in history that I've... There's still one more. And who knows, maybe then we'll break tradition and not start with the Jim Sterling. Always... Who are we to break with the tradition that we started? By accident. <laughs> we locked ourselves in. Um, also, saying mods are a thing, I don't know if that's a great argument because you could just say the reverse. Like, easy to mod it to make it harder. It's easy to mod it to make it easier. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't really, what I would say, address any core arguments that well. Dude, really, you can mod it to do anything. Happy 200. Started watching Near 100 and caught up last week. In that time, I got a girlfriend, graduated, moved abroad, and I'm starting my new job Monday. Here's a send for each hour of joy you brought me. Oh, wow. Um, that's, that's quite a bit happening. That's really excellent. You've been busy. Oh. Wasn't there a disabled guy who beat an Elden Ring boss with his chin? There's, I've seen a girl beat it with a banana, so, like, yeah, you can, you can do anything you want. When there's a will, there's a way. Kind of sums up humans well, doesn't it? Yeah, we do some crazy shit where if God mm -hmm. really were watching, he'd be like, whoa, you guys are nuts. Enough. And spins it off. <laughs> We're like, oh no. Like the sun is a lamp. All right, enough. Go sleep. I haven't been keeping up with EFAPs lately, but it's comforting to see that you are still live and fighting the good fight every week. Happy 200 episode milestone. Looking forward to EFAP episode 1000. Where? It'll be, it'll be some time from now. Or is it two years per hundred episodes? So, um, we got it. Yeah, 16 years. <laughs> but hey, maybe. Maybe we're still around at that point. Maybe. Reason not to be. Need the rags plushie. I want to do things to it. Uh -huh. Like put it on your shelf or on your computer. Yeah, just appreciate the look of them. Yeah, buy it for your friendos. Did y'all ever play Days Gone? Great characters and story with some really unique mechanics, but hampered by a small budget. Would still recommend. I have not Heard played that game. Uh, I, I don't know anything about it, really. I'm completely out of the loop. It's yeah. a zombie game, right? Zombie motorcycle uh, game, as far as I know, yeah. Zombie motorcycle, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that zombie motorcycle just... with Sam Whitwell, that's why. That's right, yeah. 
Gonna have to go to work, so I'll have to watch this later. Happy 200 episodes and high rags. Hello! It's so nuts. Because if someone had, like, just finished the anniversary and were like, well, now what's next? They'd already have 11 episodes of EFAP on top of, like, four EFAP movies, several minis. Wow. Uh, that, that, that content blast. Sanity. Uh, misunderstanding is the opposite of mansplaining. Oh, misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Aha. Oh, that might be not a bad way to, like, slap back in it. It's like, stop mansplaining. Well, stop misunderstanding. Oh, the, the Goodness. absolute war that'll break out. Um... You're welcome. Also, mutually, the inclusion of Wolf in the Multiverse Madness video put me over the moon. I missed that massive Ewok. Well, yeah. It's, 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 it, they were fun clips. Uh, especially for a movie that hideous. Next one. I swear, this will be the last time I do this. Long lads of Toxic, I beseech you. Look up Alley of Justice Garad Holg. For today only, this card has the best effect in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Jokes aside, thank you, crew, and stay long. We have to look up what? What's the name? Alright, um, I'll... Ally. Not Ally. Oh, my bad. Silly. Silly. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! card. Um, let me get you a picture of it. <laughs> Ally of Justice Garrett Hog. If this card battles a light monster, it gains 200 attack during the damage step only. All right. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar enough in New Year to know if that's funny or not. It's not funny. Um, I, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm not actually certain. Why we were told to cover this one. Um, yeah, I'm not actually certain. There might be a meme there that we're missing. There could be. If there is, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know what this meme is. Hey, Rags. Who hey. is a good boy? It's me. I am. I am. I, I, it's me. I am. I'm one. Yeah, that's me. Heir to the Empire is the best example of how an audiobook can elevate a story. Mark Thompson's performance is outstanding, and the use of sound effects and music from the films enhance it. I could definitely see that being the case, yeah. Though the thing is, uh, the sacrifice that's made there is that certain elements that could have been left up to the sort of reader are left unambiguous. That's always been the sort of trade-off with audiobooks. That well, you, you will... Especially with the, the readers that give um, voices to characters sort of thing. And there was a scream. <sighs> but but <sighs> now but you don't now you'll know whose scream it is potentially because, you know, it, the, the scream is a, a voice. Like, oh. You know, like, if you're reading it and it's like, you know, the esteemed Lord of Pastor Wizzles walking up and he says a thing, like, you can read it like, you know, hello there, my name is blah, blah. But if you have, like, an audiobook reader who goes... Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> and, you know, it, it like sets very different expectations of what kind of character it is just by reading how they speak things, obviously. So, yeah. audiobooks, some people but, complain about stuff like that. They're like, I don't like that this character is being made to sound this way. That's not the way I envision them. But if you like that, then that can be really great to listen oh, to. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Audiobook hinges a lot on the narrator in yep. a way that's just not going to be the case in a novel. And I could totally see someone being like, ew, special effects noises in my consumption of a book go away. Or someone could be like, no, that's really cool. It's an addition. Or atmosphere. Like, um, um yeah, I it's totally on how it's done. Yeah. Same goes for like having ambient music that changes per chapter, maybe. That's mm. specifically done. At that point, you, you're, the more you add of this, the more you're just going to be changing the format, I guess. But, you know, audiobook is it's very much its own thing. You get many versions sometimes in there. There's thoughts on More, is there a particular reason you stopped using tags for your videos ever since your Snyder Cut video? 
I, as far as I'm aware, they stop having tags in videos. Um, I know hashtags are in a, a thing, but I've never really touched them, except by accident. Um, but I remember when tags were all the rage, and then they just stopped uh, that option when you upload a video. Apparently the format for YouTube has changed again, by the way. Like the, the, the UI, but it hasn't changed. Uh, those things tend to roll out slowly, don't they? Like, you know, gradually, bit by bit. D -d 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 -d. Love you, EFAB. Thanks for the laugh and helping through tough times. Thank you very much for letting us know. Happy fourth anniversary, EFAB. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. Um, hey, I left a comment on your Doctor Strange video about the Charles vs. Wanda scene. I think you'd like it. Thank you very much. Um, I'd imagine you didn't like that scene because nobody did, but uh, it's being. Nobody. To be fair, I used to be like Jim and always played on easy mode, but then I grew a spine. Well, as much as it would be easy to sort of dismiss Jim as that being the motivation, I'm sure Jim, I, I'm pretty sure I remember Jim saying, like, loves being, uh, like, Dark Souls and stuff. Our difficulties and everything. I don't think it's that. Jim thinks he's being the champion for someone else. Hi, Rags. Hello. Been watching avidly since EFAP 11 and have seen all the Elder memes. You guys have made my work days quicker and sad days better. Now look up oh, Wawa and Sheets and pick which one looks better. There is a right pick. Wawa and Sheets? Yeah. Um, so I guess this is a, cause I don't have any, these are two stores. Uh-huh. Um, oh, it's can... apparently this is a, a meme thing, um, or, uh, to see which of wa sheets, S H E E T Z you... and Wawa W A. Are we what? comparing the icons or are we comparing something they make? I don't know what either of these stores, I I guess they're delis or like um, sort of fast food places. Are they gas station? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Wawa here. versus Sheets. Apparently, this is a whole thing. Convenience store battle. But that is, yeah, th we do not have a Wawa or a Sheets in uh, in Arkansas, or at least I've never I've never seen any. Or I don't I don't know what they are. Uh, yeah, I'm like their convenience store rivals. Maybe the um, maybe the difference it, it's like um, Walgreens and CVS. I don't know if you guys have those. We but have they're very very similar. Yeah, they're they're virtually the same thing, just slightly different. In fact, I think. Uh, I think that they used to be married. The uh, the who the, the the two founders of CVS and Walgreens they used wow. to be married political marriage. and I guess they split and they often try to put themselves next to each other, uh, the stores. But I I'm not sure how much of that is true. Yeah, I'm I like I, I them both. Yeah, I can't really give an answer for that one. I just got Alrighty. a lot of mileage out of both CVS and Walgreens, but I don't know anything about Wawa and Sheets. <laughs> Neither do I. Wawa and Sheets. Happy 200 episodes, EFAP. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah. much. Cheers. Hey. Yes. Hello, my fellow Toxic Brood. Congrats on 200 episodes. Keep up the great work. Here's to the next 200. Also, high rank. Hello. Thanks. Happy 200, lads. Here's to all the FMKs, Pokemons of the days, and every pedantic argument Rags has ever instigated. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Why do you act like Norm MacDonald? I still have characters so flumbojig. What? I don't know why you act like Norm MacDonald. I don't act like Norm MacDonald. I would never. Then I'm you sure are that Norm MacDonald. Some... I am the reincarnation of Norm Macdonald. Neat. When he died, I was born. I blossomed. Uh, finally having my fishing day. My day out fishing, sorry. Uh, 
Didn't realize this was happening. What a great day. Also, great unbridled vid, Molzy, and high rags and others. Hey. Oh, hello to you. Glad you enjoyed it. And what a great day fishing where you can just listen to. Oh, yes. Glad to be here for 200. I haven't been here in a long time, and I almost never catch you live, but I've loved the time I've spent with EFAP in the background, and I plan on keeping doing that. Sweet. Cool to know. We've been entertaining people for this long, you know? That is really awesome. Quite a while. Hell yeah, brothers. Four years of quality content. Thank you. Yeah. Do another four years. Throw another four. You'll be even. Uh, Rag's subtle sound of music reference made me smile. You bet. I'm glad you liked it. Me neither. Likewise. <clears throat> I don't remember it either. That's how subtle it was. Which well, means I might even make it again one day and not know that I've maybe. done it before. Won't that be fun? How do you solve a problem like Maria? I got it. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. How do you solve a problem like Maria? I don't know. I don't know. I want to feel better when I beat her, Mola 2022. I think that was me talking about Maria. Or maybe some. But... Yeah, you know, when you're beating someone, you feel good. You do. You do. You want the other person to feel, or the other thing to feel bad, not you. You're going to feel great. Can we get the secret of Mario's jump yet? No. The Too secret. Much of a secret. The chat. Cover it. The 40th president was Ronald. The 45th president is Donald. The 50th president will be Tonald. Wow. Pretty cool. Vote Tonald. He's wading into politics. He tried the YouTube thing. He got his uh, degree in uh, in oh, chefonomics. Oh, I'm gonna say YouTubeology. Or something. YouTubeology. Study in the all YouTube. Happy two hundred. Thank you for all the insight and entertainment. Oh, you're welcome very much. Uh, been here since before it was EFAP, and I'm so thankful for something to listen to while working. I'll watch you massives for at least the next 200. We can well, keep we, your attention. I really appreciate that. For another yeah, four that's, years, we'll have done something that's right. That's quite a promise to another 200. That's, uh, well, hey, we'll take it. You bet. Love you guys. Oh. How very nice of you. That's a very nice, that's a kind thing to say. Thank you. Happy 200 EFAP, and a shout out to all of the mods. Question, is everybody excited for Knives Out 2? You may address Ryan as the Glass Onion Knight. Uh, no, I'm not looking forward to it at all, because it'll come out and everyone's going to be like, oh, I can't believe that was so good, wow. Ah. Probably, yeah. And then we'll be like, oh, like, but this thing doesn't make sense, and this is just fucking shit, and this they literally, a lady throws up whenever someone tells a lie, like, fuck off. <laughs> so clever and funny. Super funny. Hi, Meeble, Fringo, and everyone not named Rag. Here's to a great 24 wow. hours. Also, check out the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh card ever made, Soitsu. S-O-I-T-S-U. Only... I think I know this one. Only EFAP 200 is worthy enough to see his power. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Could you uh, spell the card? S-O-I-T-S-U. Yes, I, so, uh, there is a, I think these came out with, I forget which one, but there's, uh, ba, 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 Soitsu, Oitsu, and Koitsu. And I think individually they are like worthless, but you can fuse, I think there's four. There's Aitsu, Koitsu, Soitsu, and I think Doitsu with a D, yeah, and you can fuse them into one. They're like little. They're like little men on little, little tiny featureless men on uh, like paper airplanes. Oh, and you can fuse them together to make a very very strong creature. All right. 
but individually they're like worthless. So these sought after are they rare? I do not know if they are rare. I would imagine that the individual members uh the the four individuals are not at all rare, but I would imagine that the fusion card that requires all of them is the rare one. But I might be wrong. Uh, let me... I'm a little it. silly. Okay, that's just my... So this power can only be properly understood. I have 200. Ooh. I love you all so much. The long man himself specifically. You've taught me how to analyze movies. The good people at EFAP have become my favorite. Rags, Fringy, Jay, and Drinker to make a few. Oh. The end of it. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, oh, all right. Good to I'm very hear. glad to hear Happy that. Here. We got some good peeps who hang out with us. It's the fourth E fappening, and I love it. Uh, congratulations on your fourth anniversary and episode two hundred E fap. Jim's entire argument is refuted by the evolution of TES from Daggerfall to Skyrim. Uh. Evolution of the Elder Scrolls from Daggerfall to Skyrim in terms of difficulty? I don't know. Familiar I, enough. Yeah, I got that. I, the first Elder Scrolls game I played was Oblivion. So I played Oblivion and Skyrim, and that's it. Right. That's my, that's my Elder Scrolls essentially history. I never played Blades, though. Or Daggerfall, oh, or oh, Morrowind. Like, that was the mobile game, right? That's right, that's the mobile game that everyone forgot Nobody about. Nobody ever talked about that, though, yeah. Totally forgotten. I think it was... It, it was pretty hated when it first came out, because people were excited for, like, actual Elder Scrolls kind of content, and then they come out with the, the mobile game, and it looks like this lame sort was of... Was that the era of... Uh, of, of uh... Diablo Immortal, or I think that was before. This was before, yeah. Uh, let <laughs> me know. actually check when it came out. I feel like, um, wasn't like Elder Scrolls 6 announced several years ago at this stage? Uh, well, March of 2019 was when Elder Scrolls Blades was released. So, it was about okay. that time. It feels like it was further back, but. It does, yeah. I mean, the next up is Starfield, though, right? Yep, which... Starfield, which doesn't look good, honestly. Um, uh, I don't know what I think of it. I think um, <laughs> I I don't typically I I don't typically judge a game harshly for not looking great, but I don't know Bethesda makes enough money that I think their game should look better than they do. Is that like a hot take, or is that? Um, like a perspective that their games look worse than they should for how much money they make. I feel like nobody I, said that for Call of Duty. I don't remember anybody saying that Call of Duty's graphical fidelity back in the day was fine. I just never remember people saying that. It's, and I can it, them like to like. Whenever they create a game, it's almost like they're creating a platform instead to be built mm -hmm. upon. Well, sure, but I mean, um, like Unreal does that, right? Like, Gears of War was kind of like the Unreal Engine 3 game, but, like, Unreal Engine 3 was an engine that everybody could use, and it looks really good at the time, anyway. I know, Same I goes. mean... I mean, Gears 5 looks incredible. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, really, it should, though, pretty... It, it's It's far down in my list of things that I would change about those games. Sure. But I'm not a graphically minded person in particular. But well, I suppose so, right, yeah, considering. I, I don't know. It's just something that I tend to think about whenever it's like, man, this is like an incredibly successful franchise, and franchises that make less money are able to push their fidelity higher. Um, I guess they want it to run across all sorts of different things. But do that do do Bethesda games run across all sorts of things very well? It, probably it, not. No, I mean, I, I think they run in that in that acceptable kind of area. Mm, but that's what I mean. <laughs> like, you but know, for how like, they look, 
I mean, if yeah. they if they want to try to levy the fact that there's so much in them and so much happening and so much can go on, it's like, I mean, sort of, yeah. but I don't know. Like, how complex is all of that stuff that is actually well, happening? I mean, I know that with Starfield, right, it was the meme that said that there'd be thousands of planets. It's like, so really, there's not, right? Like, there's really only like 10 or 15 real places to go to, and the rest of it's going to be like procedurally generated. Not to say I, that that's yeah. not necessarily going to be okay from a gameplay perspective. It's just like a thousand planets. No, you did not. You didn't build a thousand places that you can explore that are in depth. A bunch of those are just going to be empty or, you know, who knows Probably though. And also, in, the you'll start to notice the patterns. In these games. I think that considering how much first person shooting there is in like Fallout, I didn't play a lot of Fallout 4, but I remember not being happy with the mechanics, like in terms of shooting. It was so, fine. It was fine. That's that's the thing, though. But that's all you can like, say about it. Is it, it's a, a a drastic improvement over the shooting of previous Fallout games. Like it was okay. a night and day difference. It felt like it felt like a fine shooter, and it in mm -hmm. the shooting element was it was just that it was fine. Are the RPG mechanics good enough for it to just be fine? Um. I cannot recall. I don't. I don't. Th That's what I mean. It depends. I it's, def <laughs> it's definitely one of those some of its parts kinds of experiences. I suppose. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I. To you, be fair, I have. I would give Bethesda games like those ones that much of a shot. <laughs> so I, you know, maybe maybe they've got some hidden brilliance that uh that everybody else because you're a sees gaming the... racist. No, it's not yeah, that. It's, I just, I don't it's know. It's never made much bring of an impression on me. Um, I don't know well, what it is. It's, it's definitely kind of like, in, because that it, it's not a bad effect to have everything just sort of together, just elevates the whole experience. Um, yeah, of course. But there is some. I don't know. It's weird it, it, talking about those kinds of games. Is kind of weird. Because like Seven Days to Die is sort of my go-to game for that. For the overall being, when you put everything together, then it it's fun and I like it. The individual components I don't necessarily like at all by themselves. But you know when you're when you're walking around and doing stuff and fighting zombies and leveling up a character and sort of building stuff, it's like it all just sort of works. It all fits in with itself. And so mm -hmm. it gets like that completion bonus where, yeah, the, the individual parts of the armor or the, the puzzle or whatever you're putting together, they're not that special. But then you put in that last piece and it just sort of boom, like plus 10 for completion bonus. That's kind of how it how it works in a way. But I mean, as long as I think as long as Bethesda has their games be at least decent when they come out and very mod friendly, um, then they'll continue right. to survive and thrive honestly but i do wish that they would do a bit more work and um in, in some elements uh in some aspects uh however i need to use the loo so i will be right back uh, also hi rags kick j milk rhino ewok hello n words wumbo uh, language goes i i fully understand them Congratulations on your fourth anniversary and episode 200, Eve. Yeah, cheers. Rather exciting, isn't it? Uh, forgot to mention Anna. I have to send another super chat to mention her because I love her a lot and the Eve half she's on have been some of my favorites. Did she make it to 200? Did right? I can't remember either, actually. Yeah. Hard to keep track of these sorts of things. But yeah, they're always very unique, Eve apps that she pops on. The crazy stories of disliking water. And, uh, maybe that's a biological mutation that probably not worth testing uh, out, really. <laughs> to <laughs> like, dislike water. Like maybe this will be helpful for survival. It's like, it won't. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like, a dislike of water. Like, an act of dislike of water. Just, yeah. Uh... Any interest in the Red Rising trilogy? Some pretty good books, if I do say so myself. I hear that it's good. I'm pretty sure I own the audiobook for the first one, and I still haven't listened to it yet. I'm not familiar at all. 
Um, boop, boop, boop. Fun fact, Mola's MOM vid was done back in May. It just took this long to render. Seriously though, what kind of Bitcoin mining fan rig do you have to strap to your poor CPU? <laughs> uh, this, this computer really could use a rest, I think. It hates me. A little nap. Maybe long little nap, sleep. I think. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's got to go to bed, tuck when, himself in. When we finished rendering that, that MLM one, he was like, that's the last one, right, boss? And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last one, isn't it, buddy? Uh, is it? Hmm. Cheers from Polandia. P.S. Hello, Ragglefragu. Keep that one for me. Say hi. Will you guys cover Rings of Power? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know the answer to that question. Listen, you're in luck. We had probably... Well, it would have been... It's like five hours per two episodes, I think, so... A shit ton of coverage. Hmm. Hey, it was it was engaging. It was nice to have uh, different guest Aroonies on, and to be honest with you, that's more so what I'll be looking forward to when Season 2 comes around. Be like, Let's grab up Disbrew, little platoon, maybe Shad. On, have a chat about the greatness that was that show. I am back. Hello, Ragu Le Fragu. Hi! Also had a high rags coming. Oh, hello to that person. Thank you. Thanks, long men, for being on the sauce, on the steak, the cheese and the cake, the lace in the nightgown, and the point after the touchdown of critiques. Happy 200. Way to put it. Thank you. Uh, what is it about Jim that warrants a thrashing every anniversary stream? Also, congrats to you guys on year four. Super happy for you. Here's for more. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim could um, be a conversation starter. Jim's, Jim is certainly a conversation starter. Jim's a very, honestly, a pretty cruel person. We'll likely um, talk about video game difficulty a whole bunch well before EFAB ends again and again. So it's a common topic in the same way that a lot of uh, stuff about Adaptation comes up a lot. That, that never quite ends. Especially with whatever the hell's going on with DC now. Very curious to see. I think source material will be respected now. Superman is going to be a nice boy. So it's, it's James Gunn, right? He's getting put in charge of a lot of that? Yes. Uh, for those who do not well, know, he's, yeah. it's been long enough now so that I but Black Adam ends with Black Adam being visited by Henry Cavill and his Superman. And he's like, hey, you've been making noise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone's very happy about that. And it goes to show that, funnily enough, Snyder people are like, see, people want Snyder back. And it's like, um. Uh, no, I want Mark to be given a. F I want justice for Mark. Mark, <laughs> that's what I want. Mark, what? Oh, what did I say? Why did I say Mark? You thinking of Mark I Hamill know why. Luke? <laughs> I. So here's what I did. Instead of Cavill, I was thinking Hamill. Uh, Cavill Hamill, and so I said Mark Henry instead Hamill. of Henry. <laughs> Henry Hamill. <laughs> Henry Mark Hamill. <laughs> justice, justice for <laughs> Henry. Yeah, no, I agree. Justice for. And I'm very excited to see what James Gunn does with. Um, well, because it's James stuff. Gunn and Peter Safran as a who's, co. Who's that? He's producer. He produced like I think it was Aquaman, and then he's done some of the other ones that have come after that. So yeah. around that era, well, at least we got Gunn. Well, as I understand it, the 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 idea is that James Gunn is in charge of the creative side, and Safran is in charge of the like business side. Which okay. seems like it, I mean, that, that alone seems to me like, because I don't know that Kevin Feige is like a storyteller, um, more so than he is like a guy who he's, gets He's projects. a money man. He is the- Well, I guess, I guess he, he probably has CEO. a sense of broad strokes, but like, I imagine that it's surely going to be a good thing to have an actual storyteller, like, um- It'd be good to have an actual storyteller for the storytelling. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, that's weird. So yeah, that's uh, we'll we'll see what comes of that. I suppose it'll be interesting. 
I am an indie game dev working on my fifth game. I usually make challenging games. Some players do prefer a fine-tuned challenging experience. Every design decision will inevitably ex exclude some players from aesthetics to genre. True. Uh, there are a bit, I, I knew a guy once upon a time who just refused to play 2D games. He's like, no, fuck that. 3D is the future. I'm playing. Amazing. 2D sucks. Stuck in the past. So that excludes him, I guess, if you make a 2D game. <laughs> Surprised I've not gotten any reaction from either of you on this. They tell you about it every once in a while. Still surprising that someone would have that opinion, right? Of um, how 2D games are not good? Sorry, I blanked a bit. Yeah, the uh, 2D games yeah, are outclassed by 3D. I don't... That's, it's just such a bizarre take. I do not share that opinion whatsoever. Rare to find 2D games. with that opinion. Yeah, like I get why you might not like them. I totally understand. I um, I don't actually. <laughs> I don't know what it means no? to dislike two D games. I don't know what that means. You dislike um, all two D games, two D platformers, two D Metroidvanias, two D strategy games. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I don't understand that at all. It would be like if someone said to me, "I dislike animation." It's like, what are you talking about? Like, what what does that even mean? Well, Rags, you're all the, you're all the all weird I person exactly, whisperer. Yeah. Explain. I'm the weird person whisperer. Oh. You can explain for me why the why somebody why, why they might feel that, that perspective. way. Yeah. I th so and were, this is not my perspective. I if someone uh someone not liking 2D, like I I don't think that's crazy even though I vehemently disagree with it, but I guess somebody might feel like they're losing out by having, um, you know, one less dimension, or they feel like they, maybe they feel a bit too railroaded into an experience, or it's not free enough. Uh, maybe they don't like platforming mechanics that are simply two-dimensional. Maybe that doesn't appeal to them. Well, sure, but that uh, would be if we were talking reasons. just about 2D platformers, but there's lots of 2D to games. To that one, yeah, to that one, yeah. But well, so, like, if somebody said to me, I don't like 2D games, it's like, so, adventure games, it's like, well, I like the 3D ones, but not the 2D ones. Like, I don't... <laughs> I, I don't i don't get that i don't understand what that guess, would mean i guess there's a big enough difference between 3d games and 2d games that there's something there that they feel like they they've lost and that they don't like uh or they don't feel it's enough um, um i'm sure they would say that i just guess how much that would stand up if i just started presenting examples of 2d games like that i'm gonna find out that they dislike all of them or that they wouldn't even play any of them, you know? Because all I need is one example to the contrary, right? And then that kind of changes everything in terms of making a broad sweeping statement about an entire perspective of, like, video games. That's what I mean. I don't understand that. Like, to me, that does seem like saying, I dislike animation. It's like, what do you mean by that? You dislike when still images, uh, the illusion of movement by rapidly displaying still images. It's like, you dislike that overall. Hmm. I have a question. Do it. Yeah. Let's say that um, you had a species that had very, very good vision. Um, and to this species, you had really, really damn good vision. You would have to, like 24 frames wasn't enough, right? So if your vision got really, really good, would you need a higher frame rate necessarily to trick the brain into thinking it was motion? Uh, oh, like if, if like 24 frames per second wasn't good enough? Yeah. Like to if, them if, it looked like, uh, I get, I, like uh, well, I, I mean, the most important part is like the illusion of movement and that can be, cause I mean, for example, like animation can be done on twos, right? Where an image is actually lasting two frames instead of one. Um, it still gives off the illusion of movement, even if it's a different kind of movement. Mm -hmm. Um, so like if, if as low as 12 frames per second is good enough for an illusion of movement. I don't know. Yeah, like, I'm not sure what it looks like for uh, for that to not be the case for somebody, you know? I'm not sure. I mean, it's always different things, right? Because the reason why video games needs to be six is because, like, I'm playing this. Like, I, you know, the yeah, interactive it, nature of it. Yeah, because lag is real, yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. Whereas with the visual, where it's purely visual and no gameplay, then it's, you know, it's not as important.
Uh, 200, what a journey. Been here since one. However, DDLC is yet to be played. Damn. Guess there's still a long journey ahead. Here's to 200 more, you dumbos. Being here since episode one is legitimately an impressive thing. That was a long time ago. I've been here since. Oh, even earlier. I have. I have been here. We, yeah, we were, uh, yeah, we, uh, we were all here for that. The proto. Well, Fringy wasn't experience. here. Episode one. No, no. Absolutely. True. Hey, don't be that so mean to me. She's that wasn't mean. That was he was light he was cruelty. not the early bird. Light yeah. cruelty was it? <laughs> yeah. Light cruelty. Uh, fun fact: Onyx has a worse attack stat than Oddish. Funny. That's because um, Onyx is really big and Oddish is plant. So. This is actually a specific Reddit post. Onyx base attack power is lower than Oddish. Um, it's very... Yeah, that is, that is pretty odd-ish. Ah. <laughs> um, it has... It says it's going... What the fuck? I'm just clicking on this link here. Um, so the stats for... Oddish, it has Oddish has higher hit points, higher attack, a third of the defense, higher special attack, higher special defense, and less speed. Yeah, that seems weird. It's yeah, it just seems like it's just very strange. Hmm. Very strange. Mm. Growing up was poor. Friends had boglins, but we couldn't afford them. Jim Sterling is just showing off his privileged boglins. Oh, yeah. That's what, that's what the privileged do. They show off their gob. Bo 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 Jim has an insane amount of privilege. And the goggles to prove it. And the goggles to prove it. Uh, I buy sci -pi rags. Bread rags. Bread? You like bread, right? Love me some bread. I do. I do love bread. I really like bread. A delicious roll or some good toast. Uh, oh, man. I, li I like a good doughy pizza. Like Bread is great. I love me some bread. I try to avoid eating it too much, but... Uh, it's no potato, but mmm, that bread. Mm-hmm. You guys ever had tortellini? Probably. Let me get you a picture real quick. But uh, tortellini's good. I I uh, I had it last night actually. Stopped by the folks' place and uh, had some tortellini. That stuff's pretty good. Like me some tortellini. You can put all sorts of stuff in tortellini. You can put cheese in there. Maybe mushrooms. Maybe a little bit of you know of some sort of some like kind tortellini. of critter. Yeah. It's really great. I love me tortellini. And every tortellini is a. You know, you just you hit it with your fork and you just yump and it's very well portioned out. You know. To celebrate EFAP's 200 episode, today's animal of the day is one of my favorites, the spotted hyena. Have a great stream, Master. Spotted hyenas are very cool. Hyenas are cool, yeah. Hyenas are really cool critters. They're very strange. No, they laugh a lot and they only eat once... Everything else died on hunt. When they laugh, it's it's when they're nervous. When they make that laughing sound, it's because they're nervous. That's right. I uh pioneers get a bad rap. They're definitely one of those misunderstood Isn't it critters. Lion King is one of the things that didn't help with that. Yeah, one. it is. Lion King is lion propaganda against it really is. And also yeah. they have a better I think they have a a better success rate in hunting than lions do. I, yeah, so that's one of those fun facts is that, uh, like, um, the way that people perceive the success rate of animals when it comes to going out and hunting prey is, um, hyenas work together, so hyenas are very social animals, so they will work together to, to get their, uh, their prey, and they are, like, they're scavengers, but they will also hunt, right, they don't just yeah, they take do food to other yeah. people. Um, cause I mean, there's, uh, it's one of the more popular wildlife videos where it was, uh, a group of hyenas that actually managed to corner a lion. 
uh, and they probably would have uh, defeated him if not for his lion buddy showing up and, and scaring him off. Oh, yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. They're not canines, they're not felines, they're, they're hyena day. They're their own little thing. They're just weird, weird critters. Congrats on 200 massives. Hi, Rags. Hello! Uh, love to all you handsome massives. Since you're talking about Pokemon at the time of this Super Chat, which Pokemon would you oh. bring into your favorite games? Which Pokemon um, would I bring into, like, other games that aren't about Pokemon, I presume, is what that question means? Probably. I would like some kind of, um, and this isn't racial bias, uh, like most of my opinions are, but like a like a, a dog like Pokemon, some kind of quadruped that can be there for you to ride around as a mount, or it could be hanging out with you to like store stuff. You know, you could put stuff on him. Uh, he could be like an extra inventory, give you a little bit of support and call out, like a more supporty kind of role. And you know, like ah, oh, this is my my faithful companion. This is my. Um, so my uh, like my Growlithe or my Arcanine, something like that. You could get on them and you could ride to the next level or ride across the countryside, as almost maybe as a fast travel in a way. And he's got little saddle, yeah. little saddle bags on him. It's like, oh no, because you hate that when you're playing like an RPG or something. Oh no, my inventory's full. If only I had a little bit. Oh, of course, yeah, I got the saddle bags. I'm a little little boy over here. And you put that on there, and he could follow you around. Um, that was an interesting. Wait, I don't think about it. Go, go ahead. Last you choice. You can hang out with Kratos. <laughs> well, so I was thinking, like, I'm just sort of here thinking, what would it look like if you put certain Pokemon into different types of genre games, like a Blaziken fighting game or, like, you know, action game like Devil May Cry? Or, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe Blastoise in an action game would be cool. Like, uh... Picture Blastoise bro-fisting with Kratos. Blastoise is awesome. I uh I think he's cooler than Charizard. What do you think, Rank? Mm, I'm thinking. Like Charizard's Ooh. really cool. Blastoise, man. He's got cannons. <laughs> cannon, water cannons. I am very partial to Blastoise. Great, yeah, I think Venusaur cool. loses to both of them. Uh yes. Venusaur definitely loses. Um well uh, I don't think be, so. Uh, you're I don't acting. mean like I don't mean literally in the stats. Like in a fight? Oh, um, but no, because in a fight it's all you know, like Venusaur beats exactly. Um, I mean, who, who's, who's, who's your favorite cool factor as well? Who's your favorite starting Pokemon? Bulbasaur. No. Okay. Um, um, I no. Uh, or it would be Squirtle, I guess. Oh right. man. I need an answer. <sighs> Gosh, that that it just speaks to how well it's they're designed. Tough. It's tough. It like yeah. it's legitimately each one is a banger. Um, I would. What's say What's my squirt. favorite? I'm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, if we're if we're just going with the the starting, so like their first evolution, so Squirtle, Bulbasaur, uh, and Charmander. Well, oh, man, I don't know if I could pick. I'm le I, I legitimately really like that. Really like them all. Um, well, because if, if I get so you guys picked both Squirtle. both Squirtle. I, I think would go I'm with Squirtle. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm gonna go with Squirtle too as the first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm gonna so, go with Squirtle. Funnily enough, I find second generation really hard because Totodile and Cyndaquil is a tough one for me. I'm not sure which one I like more. Um, I really you like, like Bayleaf, whatever. Uh, I do, I do. I just really like Totodile and, and Cyndaquil. Um, I Totodile, am also... Totodile makes me smile, and Cyndaquil is is just the cutest. There's something that's very anthropomorphic about Totodile that I like. Yes, uh, yes. Bayleaf is I the so. second. That's Chikorita, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, Gr Do Grico was in third gen, so, yeah. So the, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with Totodile. There's a, something about him where he just, 
Oh, there's yeah. some about him. He's great. He he kind of sits into the same slot as like uh, Meowth, doesn't he? Yeah, he seems like a real, like a person almost. Yeah, a little bit. And plus, his back isn't on fire, so there mm. is some <laughs> element of that's like, oh, we can hang out. You're not a fire hazard wherever you go. As far as the, the final evolutions of the second gen, I really like the, the, the grass type one, whichever one that is. Um, of, the, of the final generation, or the final evolution, um, I feel like uh, the grass one really catches up. Well, the dinosaur one? Um, you might have to be a bit more specific. I guess all of them are kind of dinosaurs, aren't they? <laughs> the, 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 here, the, uh, uh, let me get you a picture here. The... I think this might be a bit low quality, but should serve the trick, but... Yeah, yeah Meganium, I think, is that one, right? Meganium? Oh, yeah, that, that'll help. Um, <laughs> man, look at what happens to Cyndaquil. He turns... Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I, it, funnily enough, I'm not as big a fan of the, the third evolution, like, in this particular grouping of any of them. Um, um, yeah, I don't really care for... Uh, I like the grass you know, one more. What's the name of the grass uh, one? Meganium. Well, if, um, we don't have to keep going through them, but Gen 3, out of Mudkip, Torchic, and, and Greco, or Greco, which, which one is... Uh... I'm less compelled by Let this, because it's a... already outside of my familiarity now. Let ah. me get you a picture, <laughs> because I, I, I know the one Fringy likes, and you'll know the one Fringy likes, too. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> uh, it, it's pretty funny, because I, uh, I picked Mudkip. I think I'm always blue. I like blue as a color. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I always pick Mudkip, but now... I think Torchic is my favorite when I look at him. I was about to say, I'm fantastic. probably going to go with the beard. He looks yeah, Torchic is cool. I, I like Rico as this well. Is a, this is a close one. This is, a, this is really it's a close one, it. honestly. Really cool Trico, well. Torchic, and Mudkip. I, is it, I thought it was Greco. Or is it Trico? Oh he, my god, uh, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Trico becomes Grove, uh, Grovile, ah, and then Skeptile. Yeah, that's, that's why I mixed them up. And then Torchic eventually turns into Blaziken, which is pretty cool. Torchic, yeah, wow. he goes from Torchic to Combuskin to Blaziken. Combuskin, like that's, come on, it's fantastic. <laughs> Combuskin and Blaziken. And then Mudkip uh, turns into, I can't remember. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with, uh, oh, I think I'm gonna go with Trico on this one. Okay, unconventional, yeah, because it's Torchic now. I think if you had asked me before, it would have been Mudkip, but man, Torchic, look, look at that fella. Look at him go. Look at how half he is. They're little, yeah, they're like little... Yeah, these, these ones are close. These ones are close. They're pretty good. I mean, it's, um, it's interesting to think about, right, because the starting Pokemon are kind of... Uh, I think that, like, you can... It, it's so important to nail the designs, like the visual these communication. Need to be, yeah, characters. like your mascots, essentially. Uh, essentially for each generation, yeah, they need to slot into some sort of clear categories. Um, of course, like, they all have, like, a blue, red, or, uh, or green color scheme, but, like, in terms of creating visually distinct, um, characters, and not only to have that be the case, but for them to start off usually pretty adorable, and then eventually reach a point where they, they come across as quite fierce, um, like, in the third generation. Like, to me, it just seems like a good example of, um... The importance of design, like visual communication in video games, because there's more that you have. I mean, Pikachu is pretty perfect, like in terms of a design Pikachu, for a mascot character. Yeah, um, he's pretty. Everyone knows Pikachu. He's a good, very approachable design. Mm -hmm. uh, for those, if if you do care, these are the Gen uh, Four. Yeah, so Gen Star Four, it's definitely. Uh, it's, I think it's Piplop. I think or Pip. That's the that's the penguin. So that's another easy choice. Yeah, for me, it's between the penguin and the turtle. Yeah, the, the monkey is not... Yeah, I don't know. The I, monkey looks weird, because I like the idea of the fire monkey. I like the idea of having a monkey creature, but yeah. the design is not... I think it's the head. The head looks... Like the weird eye things. I don't know what's going on with the eyes. It's kind of like his eyelids are peeled back <laughs> a little bit, and I can <laughs> see. Yeah, see it's very side. strange. Uh, and um, also... Uh, doesn't have that long tail on its first evolution. Mm. So what's yeah, uh, I, so once we get past Gen Four, this is where I'm gonna have no clue. So I'm, I'm almost curious a, now. Pretty much I'm all invested. learning. 
So, what's, okay. What's Gen 5 look like? This is Gen 5. Man. So, I, I feel like... I'm not, uh, not a fan of really any of them. I find the I water the... type to be particularly unappealing. Yeah, he looks like a sad clown. He looks ugly to me. Um, this... Whereas between between the grass one and... I'd probably go with the fire one. I think he... I like him the most. He's like a yeah, little I'm piggy. Yeah, i fire one for sure. Yeah. But yeah, that, uh, that water type. I'm gonna go with fire one too. Yeah, but with, I, I'm with not... With the water good. types, you, you got it every time. Every single time you nailed it. And then something went wrong. I guess they couldn't all be winners. <laughs> Kinda, <laughs> I think they've really got a pretty good job in general. That was a sad uh, cloud. Look at it. <laughs> we have, he is. We have generation six. Yeah, so that's X and Y, I think, which I briefly played. So, like, you'd think that I would really like the frog, but I don't know what's going on in the face it's, there. You know, the two white like, balls. Yeah, so the it's a frog, which is yeah. blue frog water. Okay, all right, it's fair enough. Yeah. Um, but then it's got the weird, fluffy. Yeah, I don't know what that neck. is. I think if you got rid of that, it would have been probably... Because I think I'm going with the tree one. I don't know exactly what he is, but I find the fox one to be a bit generic. Um, um, I don't know what it is. I find the fox to be bit. a little bit generic. Whereas the, 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 this, uh, this, this green fellow... High maintenance. Well, this green one, he, first of all, he looks quite happy, but also I'm sitting here yeah. trying to figure out what he is, which is almost like... like whereas I generally... Like I don't know, mold? he looks like a beaver. Yeah, Armadillo. like a mole with a little hat, you know? Like a little hat yeah, he, he's wearing. He kind of reminds me of sort of an armadillo. Well, I think Cyndaquil is more like an armadillo, right? Kind of? Like, kind of? Or maybe more like a, uh, um, I don't know. No. He looks like he rolls up into a little ball. I don't know. Yeah, he looks a little rolly. Yeah. And what's, what's, uh, what's Gen 7, then? Gen 7. Let me get you... I think that's Sun and Beast Moon, I think. I think that's Sun and Moon. Let me get you a good trio. Okay. Guys, I don't think we're in the Golden Age anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. The I mean, I, owl. I, it looks terrifying. I guess we're going to... The fire <laughs> cat, I guess, is it's what we're the going cat. with. It's probably the cat, it's yeah. Clearly yeah, the cat. The cat. I, I don't know not... how you make a seal not look fantastic and adorable. I don't know how you managed it, oh, but you derpy did it. Cloud. Yeah, he's kind of like a derpy seal cloud instead of like an adorable. Why would you? You could just make it like a baby seal, and that would have been perfect. You would have nailed it straight away. Just I don't know, give him like an antenna or something to make him look like a Pokemon or something. Or <laughs> just give him oh. like a, a little modifier instead of whatever you done here. I don't know what you did. Looks like a fucking like you'd be like, welcome to my humble. Yeah, mode. he does. Like, he oh, does. No. He's, look at him. He's staring into your soul. The cat's got the personality of the cat. Look at him. He looks so aloof. I love it. Yeah, the cat is very <laughs> much a cat. I like the cat, um, but everything yeah, it, else, yeah. It's easily the cat. And I, I'm not even, like, super into the cat, but it's clearly the cat, the fire it's cat. It's definitely the cat. Um, but uh, we've, we've got, that's Generation 7, and, you know, things haven't been great, but fucking Generation 8 coming in to save the day. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, remember, I think this one was all right, actually. Yeah, so like, I don't know, it got better, uh, I think. I like the bunny. And I, I don't know what it is with Sobble, I like him as well. He looks nice. I like Grookey. I like him. I like I Grookey like too. Yeah, he, I like him. He's got that monkey thing going on, and I'm I'm fond of my plant types. I, I really yeah. kind of like these guys. I think yeah. these I really like are... I like this set. It's something yeah. something got better. You 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 really fumbled in Gen six and seven, five six and seven. You dropped the ball, but then gets better. So let me give you the next. I think the new one is. Uh, I think the next one is the new one, right? The new one that's coming out. So they're not maybe. They're not out I don't yet. keep up with it. Um. <laughs> I like these ones too. So these ones are pretty good. That that cat that is that is the, the marijuana cat is pretty pretty. I like the feeling. I, I They're feel, all pretty like, good. Yeah, Quaxley, Fuecoco, he he's great. Sprigatito. He's yeah, just... these are all pretty good. Um, and yeah, I like the the, the ducks got this cool hairstyle. I think I go um, with the cat again. I like the I, cat. Yeah. There's an expectation a little bit that they can maybe take care of themselves as well, which would be 
There is or Coco. Oh, He's cool. I know. Look at his happy I'm, face. I'm thinking about him or the cat. I think I'm gonna go with the cat, but it's close. I really kind of like that middle one. I kind of want to see what these guys. Um, I don't think we know what they evolved to yet because I don't think it's out. We not. I think this oh, is the, okay. the one right. that's coming out. Just it's the newest teasers. one. Okay. So they they faltered pretty hard in the middle. <laughs> they uh, did. But and I think the, they got the latest ones at the end. Been, Oh yeah, the latest ones have been pretty darn. The latest two generations have been pretty good. I think it's. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, I, I think it's returning yeah. to like very distinctive predator. No, because no, I'm not sure if that's the case. Because it's like I don't know what happened with that clown <laughs> water type. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the clown water type and the seal that was in uh the that one like next to the crazy owl. Like that to me feels like a slam dunk, right? That you get a seal. It's like a water type Pokemon. It feels like it's easy, but I don't know what happened. They did something. It's like they fuse. You know how like seals will balance like a rubber ball. It's like they kind of fuse that into a clown nose for him. And I don't. I don't know. And that owl staring into my soul. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's I guess not, I don't mind that he's yeah. got a little bow tie leaf, like a leaf bow tie. But I don't know. Yeah, they they've just gotten better now. Like they've gotten back to the adorableness as well as uh like the sort of clear visual because um. That that for Coco, and I'm imagining like it's meant to be sort of infused a bit with like uh, he's got like a little like kind of a skeleton mask thing a little bit. Yeah, he's got a little. Like, I wonder a little, if he's got uh, that Day of the Dead sort of inspiration uh, coming through. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, also, but I'm. <laughs> yeah, these look great. These look, they all look great. Right. They all I look really like, like, like they have personality. <laughs> That's really great. I, the I water type. Like look at him. He's evolved into this slick <laughs> dude. <The> long man. <laughs> yeah, like a, a slimy man. salamander kind of thing, and you have the also, big gorilla, and then the you gorilla. have this, that one's this, great. I love how cute yeah, he is. That it's like that's me with a mold. Yeah, and then you got like this cool sort of ninja um, buddy. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Oh, what an adventure we've gone on. Yeah, this has been. <laughs> this has been pretty good. I didn't know about. Like, yeah, I wasn't super familiar with a lot Pokemon of these ones. And ages so i have i'm not gonna know, play the new one good. but hey at least the start take a lot to better. go to play a new pokemon game I'm like, Why? <laughs> i think so i think you're I just talking about this <laughs> this is pretty funny i just saw it in the images there <laughs> 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 that's really funny uh, <laughs> the middle one the middle one with the little rabbit ears on it. It's all to remind you that he is supposed to... <laughs> oh okay okay pokemon pokemon gotta catch him all uh, hyenas, Pokemans. Also, <sighs> please read the Pokedex entries for Dialga, my favorite Pokemon. Dialga Dial Pokedex. All right. Um, da, 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 da. so it seems to be already that there is a. Um, it has the power to control time. Oh. It uses its power to travel at will through the past and future. Government might want to do something about that. I think this is a special one, right? This is a, like a, isn't this supposed to be like a special Pokemon? Some legendary one or something? Imagine how casual that is. Just, oh yeah, by the way, there's a new Pokemon we got found. It's like, oh yeah, what one? It like, controls time. Oh. It's, it's, it's helped a bit by, I think, the fact it's supposed to be like one of a kind and legendary, I suppose. Keeps to itself, doesn't really fuck with time that much. Yeah. Dialga. Um, Dizzy Mouse, guy in chat, said the worst part of League was that it's good. I'm paying you to mock them. I don't know if it's good or bad. I have not played it. it must, there must be something good about it. If so many people play it and it's got so many, you know, people going back to it over and over, there must be some good thing about it. I assume. Waller is the league expert. I kind of am, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, it works. <laughs> like, 
uh, things do what you expect them to do. It's just, um, I don't even know if this is League's fault rather than just humans. Hyper competitive. But it is toxic as fuck, that game. Like, it just, everybody's so ready to hate everything that exists when you play it. League of Legends is so, yeah, like, it just. Chat could be so vicious sometimes. It could be literally like, uh, oh, what are you building? It's like this, like, you should build the other thing. It's like, fuck you, I'm build what I want. It's like, fuck you, man, oh, that's it, I'm trying, I'm gonna <laughs> kill, but, uh, I, I'll I tank the whole game. I think it might just game. be as simple as, you know, like, the game requires a level of cooperation that you don't typically have to have in, in other, like, there's such a level of cooperation that you need in a game like that to win, that yeah. it kind of breeds this competitive behavior that's a bit standoffish confrontational you get this fuck you i do what i want but you know yeah. you can't <laughs> like but and no so. no sympathy for new players either no down they go uh minus the intro song hour one of 24 there you go guys we made it up to hour one yay, oh, yay. woohoo doing great we're uh two and a <laughs> half hours into this but this is, by the way, why we, we doing this one live would probably be a mistake. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit impossible. Um, please cover why Love and Thunder was bad, and so was Ragnarok at some point. People are post hoc using the new film to call Ragnarok bad. I have seen the new film giving people an appreciation for Ragnarok. I, I mean, I, we, we did talk a little bit about this. Some people were like... A bit, yeah. Ragnarok was the same thing, and it's just like, you know it wasn't. It no, wasn't. It wasn't. Ragnarok it. had good, legitimately quite good stuff in it. It was all, I mean, and plus, it was funny. It was really funny. In Love and Thunder, there was nothing funny about it. I don't know if anyone nothing saw it, but um, it. Drinker actually did a video breaking down um, the comparison of the uh, sort of theater scene in both movies, and why one of them is, uh, is good and one of them is shit. And that's the kind of stuff we would have to do. Break down like the approach, because uh, Taika gave a shit about Ragnarok. I'm pretty sure. I would I would argue that from seeing it. I think he did. Yeah. Um, the jokes were much more character caused and and in line and and using the plot line to sort of develop it as you go along. There's problems in Ragnarok. I would even go as far as saying there may be tonal problems. But uh, Love and Thunder was a whole other thing. So. Just because a lot of similarities in how they were made, or rather who was making them, who was involved, it doesn't mean they were just as bad. Fuck, Love and Thunder was just horrible. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> that movie was shit. The last Super Chat was probably a video title. I assume that saying you could make that video. Um, Who knows, maybe someone will. Like I said, maybe. Drinker's got one that's kind of like it. If you search for it. Love and Thunder, drink it. We'll see it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Team Fortress 2 casual lobbies have been destroyed by swaths of bots. Oh. No, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that sucks. Loads of games end up victim to that because uh, they're not maintained. Or is that Chrome Cat video where, like, <laughs> what Team Fortress 2 where the developers were like, yeah, so one of the reasons the game took so long is because we're working really hard to figure out the visual style. With nine playable characters, each needed a distinct silhouette so you could identify them at a glance, and then it immediately cuts to all these goofy fucking hats and costumes yeah. that you can get in that game. And it's like, ah, oh, the death of art styles. Like, that's really the product of the live service landscape. You need to create costumes and stuff that are bombastic rather than, you know, like you actually need... appropriate to the aesthetic. So I gotta watch to it to be the, the craziest... video. I'm put it in yeah, it's great. Later. It's really good. Stick around right yeah. till the end. Those last couple of minutes, oof. They are. Uh, yeah, they hit you in the fees. Martin O'Donnell has a pinned comment on that video. He does. Yeah. Wow. He said, don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot for one brief shining moment that was known as Camelot. I mean, that's... Uh, it's something that I think is becoming more, and it's something that Crobcat highlights as well, which I really appreciate, is I think too many people put too much stock in the name of a studio, forgetting about the people that comprise the team. And that that's the, the most important part. Dude, everybody well, yeah, uh, in the comment section for Amity's Rebirth is like, where's the guy who wrote Soma? What are you guys doing? Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> well, yeah, At least um, he's making a survival horror game now, so that's yeah. really cool. 
Well, the thing in the case of, uh, I watched his Back for Blood and Left for Dead comparison and like the big yeah. marketing stick for Left for Dead, uh, for Back for Blood was from the team that made Left for Dead. And at the end of the video, he like shows a bunch of interviews of people talking about Left for Dead back in the day. The list of people who made Left for Dead and how many of them were still working at Total Rock, it was like five. It was like five yeah, or six people who were still working on it. Few. It's not the team that made Left for Dead. It just isn't. And it's the same yeah. with Bungie now. Like Bungie now, back in the day, it was what? A hundred people? Like a hundred, 125 people by the time that Reach came out. Um, now it's a team of like 800. A lot of those people left pretty early on. And a lot of the people who stayed are also not there anymore. It's just not the same team. Same with Bioware. Um, yeah. I guess to some extent you could say, well, if leadership remains, that's one thing. And to some extent it is, right? Like yeah, a lot of the people degree. who didn't work, like a lot of the people who didn't work, uh, who work on like Mario games now, obviously didn't work on Super Mario World, but you still got like Miyamoto and a lot of those are old guard people around in like producer roles. To some capacity, a lot of the old um, talent is still there in important roles. But like, I don't know, in the case of, yeah, like, like the the bungee that's making Destiny Two is not the bungee that made Halo Three. It just isn't. No. Nope. Sad, depressing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I was just trying to allude to. Like the frictional games that I was in love with is gone now. Like ain't mm -hmm. coming back. I was like, well, yeah. Sad. And that's the thing. You got to cherish them while they're still the team that's making great stuff. Um. And I guess that's the thing with, uh, like, smaller games, is that those teams are more likely to stay the same, right? Like, if you've got a, a small development studio of, like, five to ten people, how many of those people, you know, it, like, how how, you know, how many people need to change, right, before... Like, if, if some new team. game called, let's just say The Abyss comes out, uh, Rags, and it's made by Frictional, would you want to pick it up, or would you be like, mm. I mean, I'd, I'd be... If if this in this scenario you're not allowed to check out anything, trailer wise, I know it's a stupid hypothetical, but I assume you get my point. Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be good. There's a part of me that's curious, but I probably think, not. I think I'd have to rationalize that the only reason I would expect it to be good is based on stuff that's just not the case anymore. So I should be treating it like any other, and in fact, I shouldn't be treating it like any other. You're only as good as your latest thing, is what uh they say about artists, right? Um, yeah. Or at least in this case, that group. And if their last thing was Amnesia Rebirth, that's one of my most hated horror games of all time. So yeah, that game sucks. I should avoid. And then it's like, so in that case, then it would have to be a trailer that really meant it. Cool. If they had a trailer huh. and they said from the writer of Soba, I'd be like, okay, so you got it back. Okay. <laughs> like, all right. Well, at hmm. least we you'll probably have a good story. I'm thinking. So now you're making me think about uh, like as good as your last thing, Naughty Dog's last thing, <laughs> The Last of Us Two. Yeah. Hey man, there's there's an example as well. Like the founders of that studio haven't been there for ages, and a lot of the people who worked on like Uncharted and stuff aren't there anymore either. Uh, it was that battle. It was that Dice thing, right? Where it was like fifty percent of the people who worked on Twenty Forty Two. That was their first game at Dice, um, and that only and that like only about thirty percent of the people who worked on Battlefield One were still there. And it's like keep going further back. How many people who worked on Battlefield Three are still at Dice? Um. How much of the team do they comprise anymore, considering how much it expands? It's the team. It is not the logo on the building. It's the team. Yeah. Standing here, I sad. realize you were just like me. We wanted good <laughs> movies. <laughs> Happy EFAP 200. Many thanks to the three hosts, the long, the dog, and the frog. Hey. hey. More Metal Gear, reference, Metal Gear Rising <laughs> references. <laughs> You love to see it. This is my first super chat. Congrats, guys, on the four years and keep up the hard work. P.S. What are your thoughts on the Force Unleashed games? Uh, I played the uh, first one on Wii, and I thought it was me fun. Me too. Yeah. I have so... very positive things to say about the first one, even though I think I'd also have loads of criticisms. I quite hated the second one because of the story. Yeah. I don't remember what I had, had to say. It's a clone, right? Point. Isn't it a clone of Star Killer? It's just a really badly done, like, attempt at just doing the first one again. I think, and it's right. shorter, and like, nothing makes any sense anymore. Not that, like, necessarily the first one was great or anything. I don't know. I'd have to play them again to give like a stronger assessment. But I just remember when I when it came out, I was very excited, and then I was very disappointed. Good times. <sighs> Good times.
This is my first super chat. Congrats, guys, of the four years. Give the hard work. P.S. What are your thoughts on the Force Unleashed games? I played the first one on Wii, and Same I here. liked it. I enjoyed it. I did not play the second one, but I don't hear good things about it. 100% of the first one on 360, I'm pretty sure I loved it. Everything that I was looking for at the time as a Star Wars fan, video games. Retrospect, um, it's probably fine. I'm not sure how well it holds up. I haven't played it in so long. But I remember hating the second one. I think mainly I for the story. The second one. I always hear that it was uh, lamer and very short as well. Um, yes. Yeah, that was another thing I hated. The, the story was done within like six hours or some shit. I remember being like, hey. Or four, sorry. But I mean, it was, it was probably Jeez. because uh, I'm pretty sure The Force Unleashed was like far and away the most successful Star Wars game at the time that it came out. So they just tried to cobble yeah, something they, together really quick. It was definitely a vibe of let's just do it again. But hey, look, all right. I, uh, <laughs> that era of uh, Lucas, Lucas, um, Lucas Arts. Arts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then Star Wars 1313. And that was looking pretty cool. And then Disney came along. <laughs> And it's no more. And now, not only are uh, EA making uh, Star Wars games, but now they're going to be making Marvel games too. Apparently because of the Star Wars games have been such a success. <laughs> um, which I guess financially they did. I mean, yeah, damn. They probably have been like really successful financially, right? Well, because like, people quite liked um, All in Order. Um, yeah, I But I think, didn't, didn't our sort of peeps in our circles just find it... Um... Tolerable. I heard, yeah, I heard that it was it was uh, fine, um, that it wasn't like exceptional at what it was trying to be. Which maybe that was enough, right? Maybe it was yeah. story or something to carry people through, or maybe it's just like the fact that EA would release a single player Star Wars game with no microtransactions or anything was like enough to to be worthwhile, you know? Because yeah, I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't want to be too harsh to it. Stuff. I didn't play a lot, but I remember feeling like, well, this is a game, and that's fine. No. So, as part of the uh, the the EA deal, I'm pretty sure one of the games is going to be Iron Man, which feels like it's been way overdue to make an Iron Man game. Yeah, where the fuck was like that in Iron the Man. hype of Iron Man, guys? <laughs> which yeah, was yeah. it's uh, like 13 years oh, ago. Man. They probably should have made what that. If, what if it was the case that EA were like, ah, so Anthem was like the proof of concept that. Because, I mean, yeah. of all of all of the parts of Anthem that get shit on, the one thing that I hear is really good in that game is just flying around. Mm. <laughs> so maybe that maybe that was enough to damage... I, I guess it's just an Iron Man game feels like... Yeah, like, that feels, like, way more viable to me than a Superman game. I can, I can like, envision what an Iron Man game would look like. I imagine it would still be yeah. really hard to design levels and, and scenarios and to have it be balanced if he can go up in the air and fly around, like, freely. But like, damn, that seems like it could be a really cool game. Um, Developed by Electronic, well, published by Electronic Arts. So we'll you know. see. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, happy fourth anniversary. Did you know that Movie Bob did review games under the moniker The Game Overthinker? It's just as cringy as it sounds. You should check it out. Yeah, that was one of what he did years ago. Way that was one of his he, earlier things. He did have a level of approval and popularity from normal people at one point. Um, he even did the long breakdowns for movies and stuff. Did the really that good and really that bad. And I remember people were suggesting we watch his really that bad for the Snyder Batman Superman stuff. He's got videos for like all of them. I think Man of I know he's done it for Batman vs Superman at least. Um, right, and they're like probably the not long. cringe. They're probably his best things, from what I'm gathering. Uh, but obviously he's just gone nuts over the past probably <laughs> decade. I don't even know at this point. Yeah, he's gone. He has definitely gone nuts. So yeah, uh, He's I'm turned sure. into this evil villain. Hilariously YouTube evil YouTube really was his... Yeah, it's like making YouTube videos was his villain origin story. I would, I would say he's he's the kind of person that the, the word supervillain is suitable for, right? Like, Because it's like he's cartoony and nonsensical and says things that are he so beyond funny, absurd. And, and he, he looks funny. Yeah, and yeah. he says absurd things. Yeah, and he's got like this whole... It, like like all He's very unique. He's, yeah. His whole thing he's going. a very villainous persona. Like and all of love the tweets read like it's the... <laughs> It, it, it's what the, the evil monologue would be in the movie that the villain makes. It's perfect that Patrick Willems, of all people, like, 
randomly when talking about like what good reviewers are left you got movie bob it's just like what in the world <laughs> like, what? oh yeah he's great he's great um thunder s said piccadilly is peak game design shake my head oh my god you know i don't believe piccadilly you. don't remind me we all despise no, I hear that the Modern Warfare map. 2's got a new shit map. Oh, um, there's always a shit map, though, isn't there? <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's like one where it's like at the US-Mexico border and there's a whole bunch of, like, cars lined up, so sight lines are really awkward. There's lots of, like, funneling points, I think, for, um like, combat. I hear that that map is terrible. There's And that there's one other one that was, like, a remake of a map from Call of Duty 1 that everybody hates, this particular map, so... You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Every Call of Duty has this one abhorrent map that is just terribly designed and everybody hates and skips. And I thought that every remember, Call of Duty um, at this point had a trope of everyone has a shipment slash um, town yeah, now. They, they tend to, right? Like, because Modern Warfare 2 had Rust and then, yeah, there was Nuketown. And then there was a Nuketown in every single one. I can't mm. remember what Modern Warfare Three small map was. I know that their terrible map was Rundown. It was like New York, this big map. That was just unreadable. <laughs> um, like, just totally unreadable. And I think I only ever played on it three or four times because it always got skipped. Um, and then one oh, past fuck. that point, it got real of, hazy. You couldn't escape Piccadilly all the time in Modern Warfare, could you? Uh... Oh, it just kept showing up in the rotation. God, that was I horrible. Just, <laughs> it just kept showing up. Like, I don't, Nobody I don't wants to it. play you. <laughs> Why are you here? And I think eventually it became way harder to get it. it oh, man, it's just like... My memory of the maps in, uh, because I remember it was kind of a problem it, earlier on in Modern Warfare, and then I think I stopped playing after a few months, like, th th there weren't many great maps, um, by comparison to, like, the older games where there's so many great maps. Like, Black Ops has a lot of great maps, Modern Warfare 2 had plenty of great maps, COD 4 had a lot of good maps, something, I don't know, something went wrong. Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um... This podcast made me into the man I am today. Happy 200, boys. Also, hi, everybody, except Rags. Just kidding. Whoa. Hi, Rags. Oh, hey. Yeah, thanks. Uh, 200 more. Let's go. Well, yeah, we're well on the way. Probably. Yeah. On the way. I'm thinking so. That's the plan. Happy 200th. I've been here since the TLJ critique. Wolf and Rags I found a bit earlier, and I can't thank you enough for everything this podcast and your videos have done for me. To 200 more. Thanks very much. Glad you're here. Glad you enjoy them. It is fucking nuts at this point. To, to Like I said, it's only going to get more and more crazy as time goes on, but it's just like, oh yeah, remember when we met five years ago? Nope. Guys, remember the last Jedi? Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> remember the last Jedi. Remember how much worse things got? <laughs> wow. So, the film's so bad, it made many people reevaluate how they value film. <laughs> like, yeah. What? It is pretty crazy, isn't it? Like, it, it just happened for a lot of people. It's like, Fuck. There's something wrong here. <laughs> something I very can't wrong. Quite figure it out. What has happened? Congrats on stream 200, Mola, Rags, Fringy, Lads. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Talking about difficulties in games reminds me of the streamer who regularly streamed Dark Souls and Elden Ring, rage quitting at the final boss of the arena in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. <laughs> It, 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 I was talking to Free about this. I've been playing. Uh, I, I know it's not as Nintendo as those, but Mario Rabbids. Um, That's Nintendo adjacent. I the hardest. I recently beat the hardest challenge in the game. It was fucking difficult. Like to, and the way they do it in there is that you can fuck yourself. You can choose your whole team. You can choose. You can't even fully upgrade them. Let's say they have. They have like ten moves. Uh, you probably can fully upgrade them if you find every single orb, but I, I didn't. I found most orbs, like 95%. So it's like I could get about 85% of my moves unlocked. Um, now you have stuff that's like, you know, unlock Luigi's uh, drone strike sort of thing, and then you could upgrade the drone strike's damage, so it's like, oh, I'd want that. You can also upgrade his, like, standard total health. And so what I ended up doing was trying to get all of the damage upgrades and then just try and play well enough that I could survive because I wasn't getting hit very much. Um, and like that causes issues because uh, as much as the damage was amazing in that final challenge, you need everything. And it was like it was like ultimate challenge. I can't remember what they're called. I think they might be called impossible, but it's like uh, you know, escort Toad to the end of the map. This is like an XCOM style gameplay. Um, but 
as famously people may, may know, I, I'm not a fan of XCOM, but I'm a very big fan of Mario Rabbids <laughs> Kingdom Battle. <laughs> And yeah, you'd be like, escort Toad to the end of the map, and it's like, oh, I've done lots of escort missions, and it's like, turn limit 30. It's like, oh god. The map is like, enormous, and just absolutely yeah. stuffed with enemies. It's the final challenge, and it's like, good luck! And he's like, yeah. And um, I think, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, just, just just say that it was extremely difficult, and I wonder if kids would ever have a chance of being able to beat it. I was so gonna strategy. say that I think, um, like, it's kind of, with Nintendo games, there's obviously, it's pretty clear, and especially in, like, the Mario series, that there is this desire to make a game that's accessible, like, for everybody, that's, like, pretty easily approachable. And then even, like, on the main track, you know, as it scales up in difficulty, it doesn't get too hard at the end. But then, there's, like, the extra levels after the game, you know, like, after the main game, the extra levels, and that's where it starts to get really difficult. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, that's that's like a tradition that seems to carry through in a lot of Nintendo games is the main thing you can get through and 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 it's relatively straightforward and not too difficult. But then there'll always be parts that it's like, well, you can you can do that if you want. Nintendo still makes like post game stuff, you know, that's just part of the game. Where it's like, yeah, you beat it. Here's like fifty more levels. <laughs> go go do that. Um, yeah. Last thing, I'm, I'm going to be trying out the second one soon enough, and I'm looking forward to them starting out nice and easy, and Nintendo will be like, oh, you want to try the final boss? It's a little tough. Oh, you want to try the final <laughs> boss challenge version? You sure? You cool. Then you do. Oh, my God. Uh, Love your content, Muller and fellow members of the Toxic Brood. Found EFAP in 2020, but decided in February of this year to start watching from the beginning. Currently just finished EFAP 143. Got a long way to go, but loving every moment. Dawn's blessings. Yeah, I mean, he jokes about it, but like, uh, it's stacking up to be able to catch up on this TV show that is life. Yeah. yeah. Long while, and that's you know some people. Some people will be like, "I'm going to watch all of it and the minis." I'm going to, I'm going to, I like double Careful, the guys. time. <laughs> Careful. Um, I love how Final Fantasy XIV handles microtransactions. The store for them is not accessible in the game once. Sorry, not accessible in the game once. So ever, I think they mean whatsoever. And the only way I see the items in game is to go to N is to go in and lay in a bed, and it's cosmetic slash event stuff. So, do you guys know anything so about that? So it is in-game. No, I've got no clue. Yeah, because I, I was, was going to ask for the... Think about it. It's not accessible in-game once so ever, but you can see the items if you lay in a bed in the game. That sounds like it's accessible in the game. Unless they does, mean yeah, that seems... it's not accessible anywhere else. It's like like it's not a menu that you bring up, or you like have it's to not insistent. To to see it. Like, are you sure you don't want to buy some microtransactions? Brr, 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 brr. It's more so something you can find as like a, a bonus. But I mean, yeah, there's there's loads of approaches to all of it. That's um, better and worse. We haven't done a, a full on microtransactions discussion in a while, I think. Nor have I played enough modern video games to be able to compare to how much worse it's probably gotten. Yeah. To be honest with you, I like to avoid games that are heavy on microtransactions anyway. You never know when they'll pop up. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla were like that, Fringy. Well, like, what? I can't help you there. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got no context. You gotta remember, sometimes we'll be listening to this an indeterminate amount of time after. Yeah. After the, uh, stream. You know, that thing, you know, that you were talking about. Uh. 200. Shout out to Shuniko the Gremlin Queen. All right, yeah. High five, Gremlin Queen. The queen of all gremlins. Apparently, yeah. Uh, first super chat ever. So happy I got to pop in for the huge 200. Just finished the last three anniversaries, last week's two. Uh, oh, so they did oh, that last week. Sorry. You were here. And thanks for the first super chat. That's neat. And they said, thank you for making work better. No problem. You're very welcome. We're glad that we made your work better. Greetings, long brethren. I'm enjoying EFAP 200 and for many more to come. I also enjoyed the segments in MOM Rage with the Pizza Dog. 
Ah, that's probably Wolf. He likes pizza. All right. Close enough to a doggo, I suppose. Um, used to work in GameStop. You got to be eighteen with ID. Doom. This is referencing how it works for being given game game. access to games, but I was able. I think I was able to buy Resident Evil Four, uh, my first M game, before I was eighteen. Either they didn't really care, or maybe I had an adult with me so they could vouch for me. Right, might have been what the system was, but I, got, I don't know how strict they took that sort of thing. Got Resident Evil One on GameCube and Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance both too violent for me at the time but my parents didn't care and I was tall enough to convince the person of the thing that I was older um, always fun lots of games out there surprise me with their contents including but not limited to Predator Concrete Jungle where you stab people with spears and tear out their flesh and stuff and you're like oh my god they actually animated all this nice it was a fun game you know what you're there for I'm not good at Souls games, but I'm not going out to try and change it because I suck at it. People who complain about difficulty are dumb. Yeah, I mean, as I mean, their difficult games should exist, and a lot of people who like certain kinds of games are glad those kinds of games are difficult. Yeah, because we had I a whole mean, discussion about just, um, artistic expression that relates to difficulty, right? Because a lot of people don't which see I it that way. Which I think is central. It's that's central, I think, to the discussion is the. Uh, I just get the impression sometimes that difficulty is perceived as this like arbitrary metric in a game that can be adjusted on a whim and that that ought to be the case in every game um, rather than a decision on the part of the developers depending on what kind of uh, experiences they want to facilitate for players. Yeah, because um, the difficulty of a game absolutely will uh, determine your behavior in it. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it's... Um, I, I imagine... If, you, if in the case of uh, like the FromSoft games, I get the sense that there's a sort of meta to the uh, to the difficulty in the sense that any person you talk to, you know that they ultimately went up against the same thing as you. They may have had different you know weapons or different strategy, but ultimately they went up against the same foe as you. So there's like kind of an interesting sort of shared experience that can be facilitated with a consistent difficulty setting. It's just. I don't know, it's just, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, as far as I'm concerned, than every game should have it. It's like, mm, or well, they... It's, it's always bothering because, like, elitism and being wanting to feel better than other people is, like, a as, as an explanation for all of this just is lame to me. I'm just, come on. You can give it a bit more than that for thought instead of just assuming that I want it to be harder so I can beat it where you can't and then I can say I'm better than you. That's my whole thing. It's like, right. I mean, there may be some people who feel that way, but I mean, yeah, like, it is really easy to argue against the dumbest version of your opponent, you know? <laughs> or, like, the... I don't the know how to explain when, of your opponent. like I said, certain mechanics that show up in games are just, they disappoint when you're expecting to play for a challenge, and it's like... You know, uh, funnily enough, throughout Mario and Rabbids, they, uh, every single mission begins with an option to hit Y, and it gives your team full health and 50% extra max health. And I was just like, nah. Well, oh. yeah, it's uh, what kind of experience are people looking for um, in a games, in games, and especially in the case of a game with a story, the difficulty can be leveraged very deliberately um, in service of that story, and difficulty settings can seriously diminish the way that difficulty can be leveraged in that regard. Yeah. Easy mode for Twister where you just lay on the dots. I don't know if that's going to count, though. It's not going to be quite as fun. Who even playing I'm Twister at that about, point? I'm thinking about chess. Chess is really cool in the way that the difficulty of that, it's the same rule set every time. It just comes down to how, uh, how good how your, opponent, good your opponent, is. opponent is. Yeah, Yeah, that's the only difficulty of it, is how good is the person you're trying to beat. Kind of funny, by the way, because that... That summarizes the entire conversation where if you said easy mode on Twister is lying down, then someone else says, yeah, but you're not playing Twister at that point. It's like, there you go. That summarizes the whole thing. Like, yeah, I mean, Dark Souls are easy. Not. Well, you're not really playing Dark Souls at that point. It's like, how dare you? And it's like, well, but... Okay. It's how like, much whoa, of your it's... thing has to be changed so that it can be, you know, appealing to someone who wasn't into it in the first place? 
something that I don't think gets spoken about enough when it comes to that point is, you know, like if, if somebody reviews a video game and it's like, what difficulty did you play it on easy? It's like, I wasn't planning on playing it on that difficulty. So like your perspective is, is valuable only to a point now, depending on um, the level that you were playing at or your level of skill compared to mine. You know, like a, like a pro, in, in the same way, in the opposite, right? Like if a pro gamer or something reviews, like, um, like a competitive gamer reviews uh, the game that they're playing, it's like, well, that's not necessarily going to be helpful for me. It's a perspective that can be valuable for sure, but like just the different levels of play are going to, it just, it, you know, it, it changes um, how you perceive the game. It, it invariably will change uh, the quality of the game. Or like your experience of it anyway. Yeah. Uh, respect artistic vision for Sonic slash The Last of Us 2, but if it's too hard and I don't like it, that argument is stupid. I'm yeah, a lot of the... I mean, they're the ones who uh, often, you know, bitch about, oh, I can't believe that those... The uh, the, the audience, you know, the it, it's strange they try to make... Like, a, like they try to make the general populace some antagonistic force, but this, oh, I... This... this um. I think this, this they would they say, though, that, like, storytelling choices should be artistic only, and uh, that mechanical choices... Because you, you know this better than, than everyone, that it's always... It, uh, certain people will drift the conversation over to accessibility rather than difficulty. They will keep combining the two, and then they'll make it a moral thing of... Oh, yeah, to... that's, that's the... Yeah, that's, like, something Jim Sterling's been doing for years now. And yeah, and uh, it's um, but but there there will be, I mean, the hypocrisy will go further than that in terms of like yes, artistic vision and storytelling until it tells a story that I think is fucking bullshit, like uh, that that would likely come up too. And I think to a degree it'll apply to a lot of us, but um, I would like to assume that, you know, like if someone said, do you think it they should be allowed to have made Last of Us two the way that it is? Like yeah, of course. It's just that there's gonna be repercussions for this, <laughs> like when you yeah. It's just just, just like really TLJ, bad. it's the same thing. Well, I guess it's it's um it, it, generally it's better to say I don't like it rather than it shouldn't have been made this way. <laughs> like, yeah, if you're uh if you're yeah, because like those sort of ought claims about the choices that they should have made narratively or from a design standpoint, it's like you can talk about how they're good or bad, but telling people how they ought to do it, you know, like calm down. <laughs> Lord Longbon of Muslington Abbey, are you still planning for a Kong Fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? Please don't. At this point, the Kong Fab can't possibly live up to the hype. Also, high rags. Oh, hello. I don't that's, know. That's where I disagree. We, we might do a really good yeah, job. I disagree. I think I think the the Long the Long Kong will will be great when it comes around. Whatever that may be, that'll be an E Fab movies for the ages. I might even say. I would say that it would be get hype. Congrats on 200. Thank you for the many laughs and things I've been able to learn while e-fapping. Mola, don't sweat the losers. Long man good. I agree, long man. I'd say so. I'm pro-long. You guys knew. Long is pretty... Lo no, long is pretty neat. I'll give it that. I look forward to the CGI in Badgers animation. CGI in Badgers? Badgers animation? I, I do not know what that's referring to. At I mean, all. The only reference I have to Badgers yeah. is what I usually end up saying about Terminator. That Terminator was a mechanical badger sent from the future to... No, that if you need to transport weaponry and uh, as long oh, as yes, you cover it in flesh, just badger. put a pistol in a badger or whatever and then take it. Yeah. It's a simple solution. I mean, it, I mean, if if with stakes like these, yeah, hell yeah, you're gonna do some weird things. Happy two hundred, you nit pickers. Keep harvesting the nits. Sure, plenty more to come. The nit harvest. It's a it's a bumper crop this year. Mm. Hello, EFAP crew. Happy two hundred, and thank you for all the hard work you put into the channel and your own works. Two rags. I greatly enjoy your deep cut RLM references. Also, hi rags. Oh, hello. Thanks. I watch them a lot, so I, I know a lot of the references. And I'm glad that our editors also can get those references, too, depending on the, who they mm -hmm. are. It's nice to see that. The plane that goes into hell and stuff like that. 
I enjoy it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, the, the Final Destination arc all cleared up. Halloween of 2022 is over. And, uh, and it's right. It is November time. What a fun adventure time. that was. We have left Spooky Ween, and we have gone back into cozy pumpkin spice and um, hay bales and, uh, and, and autumn leaves. I feel like November gets torn between Christmas and Halloween. Like the opening half is like Halloween recovery, and then Christmas build up is the second half. November yeah, I mean, I love its own Christmas identity. Lot, but yeah, I I do wish that people would sort of respect November's, you know, being its its identity. It's being it, you know being its own thing. I love Christmas, but November is a really cool. Uh, it's a really cool time, though. He's I guess cool because guy, yeah. Fringy's in the Southern Hemisphere, it would it wouldn't be you know the same for him. Where, or or maybe it would, what because it's like, it's um, it's in between because uh because in the northern and southern hemisphere summers and winters are reversed, yeah. right? In terms of when they oh, show up, reversed, right? Yeah. So so I, for right now it's spring, but over over where you are it's uh, autumn or fall. Yeah. Yeah, like fall or autumn. Land. It autumn. is it is indeed fall. November is the fall month. It seems it's it's the it's that Thanksgiving is the it's the fall holiday. The yeah. It's not October. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess it depends because October is spooky, and November oh, yeah, you, is cozy. Part so of what the, I you got those two hardcore with with the October vibes is like all the leaves having fallen. Yeah. Like with yes. The spooky green. Because technically, um, winter in the northern hemisphere begins on December the twenty first, so Christmas. Pretty much kicks off winter, even though it might not necessarily depends on where you might be. Uh, over here, it's been very mild. Uh, we've had we've had very mild weather this year, so it doesn't feel like November. Um, but it it is odd to think that it's only winter begins and then four days later it's Christmas. Uh, guys, you always overthink reasons for Jim and lefties to complain. They're driven by Hegelian thought. The issue is that this isn't communism, so they complain until it's communism. That's it. We, wait, to be what? fair, what? our whole show is taking the argument for what it is and addressing it. Uh, well, yeah, what go, they oh, say is what they say. Like this mind reading thing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we'll ascribe motivations behind what we believe the argument is in truth, but like I do always want to take an argument for what it is, what it's said to I be. I think that's the way to do it. That's yeah, uh, yeah. When you start trying to infer intent, that's when you start to get into a weird, awkward area. Well, I mean, they do we it to us all the time. What we're given. We are dismissed because people are like, it's clear what they're up to. They're trying to create a yeah, system that makes all of their feelings is... correct and everyone else's feelings incorrect, which is so wrong. <laughs> like, you're not even close to our intention. Just like, yeah, good luck with that. Can you address what we actually said, please? So I'd rather do that for everyone else as well. Yeah. EFAP deciding to stop covering premium Jared content completely ruined their artistic vision. Hoping for one more this stream for old time's sake? I, th I, th I think we're all uh, good on that. I think the age of Jared is behind us. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a, the, a, the second age. Well, I guess it's not behind us because we have that Jared. fucking TV show that we have to watch. Yeah. Uh, two years. Thank God we get a break. Congrats on 200. I'm currently watching 122, so won't hear this for a while. I'm a frequent visitor to Wales. Any tourist spots you recommend, Mola? Um, Think of what would be in Wales that wouldn't be in other spots of Britain. Because obviously countryside stuff has got quite a lot to show off. But uh, there's not really big old fun landmarks and things to necessarily visit in Wales that isn't in other parts of Britain. So I'm assuming... This is because you live in Britain and you go into Wales, or the I guess sure, but um, hmm. I'd have to go and look at what 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 did, what did people outside of Wales like to look at when they come to Wales? They like to come, you look know, at sheep. Maybe have a look at the sheep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's something that my uh, dad had mentioned. He said, you know, I maybe one day we'll go to merry old England. You know. Fuck London and the cities and stuff. We're going to go out into the countryside. We're going to go out and visit all the little towns. Then we'll go to the next town where everyone's got a different accent. And then we'll go to the next little town. And we just go around all the pastures and all the fields and, you know, get that more pastoral, rural, mm. uh, you know, uh, experience, which is what I would be down for. I, uh, I would, I'd be big into that. Nor make it stop. 
Only doesn't six. doesn't whales have more sheep than people or something? Or is that like New Zealand or something? Um, so I'm pretty sure we looked into this because Wales is known for sheep and New Zealand is known for sheep, but also Australia has a lot of sheep. Yeah, they're all uh, like, yeah, they're we all, did talk about this. Before, they're all top scorers. They're all top scorers, but I think the ratio of sleep to people sleep, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> sheep to people. I think hold on, countries with most in Wales. Um, I've got it. I've got well, I've got the sheep per person. Uh, Wales uh, has three sheep per person. There is a Neat. yeah, uh, and you and Australia has more. Australia has three point yeah, three sheep that, per that's, person. I think that's what we concluded is that Australia mm -hmm. actually has it, and I'm pretty sure New Zealand's ratio is is really good as well. It is okay. <laughs> so here, if, the, if more sheep is better, here are the top sheep three. Ratio. The top three are Australia with three point three per person. New Zealand has 7.7 7 yeah. sheep per person. Yeah. <laughs> and right. the, the Falkland Islands has 200 sheep per person. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> the, the, the unsuspected. The Falkland Islands. Islands. Yeah. There's only 3,500 uh, people in the Falkland Islands, but it has 700,000 sheep. <laughs> Tony, if only they knew. It's like all those zebras being chased by lions. Like, man, if if y'all just realize that you outnumbered the lions six hundred and twelve to take one, on, yeah. then you, you can solve your problems. But they just don't think like that. Opinion on the overduct and ovary of avians. Overduct and aviary. Overduct ovary of avians. Oh, overduct. Um. It's like, uh, I mean, I, I have no opinions on it. I know they have like, I know birds have a, they have a cloaca. It all comes out in one, right? They, they don't have like different sets for males and females. It's just a general purpose hole that just sort of takes care of everything. But I don't, um, I don't yeah, really I have any have opinions on it. I, I like what we have going on personally, but I don't, I just don't. Birds aren't birds aren't sexy to me. I guess you know. I just it's just not something I think about. Crazy. Birds are beautiful, and they're oh look at the birds. Birds are great. Yeah, I like birds. Cool. Birds are really cool. You just made that. us watch Jim Sterling doing his aristocrat character in full makeup with the femboy voice and medieval music. Can I have all my money back? <laughs> Sorry, is that the is that the femboy voice? I don't. To you, is that the voice well, that's just femboy? Yeah, it's just supposed to be posh British, right? That's the idea. That's like yeah, hyper exaggerated posh British. That's not a femboy voice. No. If you if if we've all if done that voice that before, femboy, where we do the yeah. Oh dear, this is what is blue, blue, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not a femboy voice. If you think it is, then you're. Personal preference. You need education in the matter of femboyery. That's what that means. Absolutely. Uh, That's uh, weird. That's not the femboy voice. Congratulations, long man, on two hundred episodes. Remember to drink water and respect your parents. Of course. Definitely drink water and uh, yeah, uh, respect your parents if they are uh, respectable. Yeah, that's probably worth mentioning. It's like watching a pro sports team win and then claiming we won. It's fine if you enjoy it, but don't pretend you did something. It's oh, that I the sports thing is, yeah, it's a it's a sort of um, it's a sort of when it comes to I've never I was never into sports in terms of being a fan of sports. Like I would never put on a team's baseball cap and walk down the street and whenever I saw someone with the same team's baseball cap, you know, like we we had like this brotherhood. That that was never a thing for me. I was never into sports. Um it's so I I don't really know that kind of mindset. This sort of shared like you don't have a it's almost like being a fan is its own identity that exists independent of the sport itself almost. It's a it's a growth from the sport, but it's at the same time dependent on the sport existing and there being a commercial market behind it, but at the same time it's its own thing entirely. Um it's 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 tough to say. It's it's almost like people who watch um do you, do you think there's a parallel between people who are really into watching, you know, sports teams and people who might be fans of the same streamer. 
Perhaps. Like, oh, yeah, we we watch, you know, you and I. Oh, you watch Destiny? I watch Destiny, too. Yeah, I really like a stream and stuff. That's, 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 that. You that know, makes and, us and the that's same. Like something. Yeah. In, in a way, it's something we could share and bond over. Um, I get because because you have the ultimate umbrella of you and I both really like this sport. So that's one thing. And also mm -hmm. we enjoy this one particular sports team. So it makes it a little bit more specific. And that's always a good intro to anything in terms of like they must enjoy it for similar reasons. And if they don't, that'll be interesting to discuss anyway. Uh, you know, like you can't lose sort of thing. But then there's a good start. Yeah, I. I I wouldn't enjoy really it's like I'm not into sports, as I said, but I would be into like tailgating me. You know, it's it's Sunday. The football game's on uh, or it's Saturday and you're going out there and you're hanging out with your friends and you're you're cooking food and you're having, you know, a good social time. And the game is sort of what facilitates all of that happening. Like I'd be down and I'd be down for that. But um, the sports thing itself, you know, it's it's more the experience, you know. B -b -b Hello there, humans and humanoids. Also, hi, Rax. Hello. When will EFAP movies return? Keep up the good work. Well, I had five of them, I think. Six? There, oh. yeah, yeah. Enjoy those. Um, I've seen a lot of people commenting like, "Good God, I want Ethan movies back," and it's just like, "Yep, they they just they're tough to get completed, but my goodness, are they fun, aren't they?" <laughs> they're wonderful to watch. I love watching them. Up to forty-one episodes of Ethan movies, I think. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Da, da, da. Yu Gi Oh card of the day is Neck Hunter. <laughs> neck Hunter. Neck Hunter Yu Gi Oh! Oh, this card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this is one of the oldie boys. Let me copy and paste it for you. It, a lot of the cards seem to have, like I said, Yu Gi Oh! lacks that unified sort of design element to them. And a lot of them have, it's just like, a, it seems like a random monster design pasted on some abstract background. And yeah. that's it. Um, there's just, you know, a fiend that wields a mean sickle and fires devastating beams from its eyes. Okay. Wait, its eyes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I feel like someone uh, fucked up. Or maybe there's a secret <laughs> eye on the back of its head? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it has another eye. Maybe it's like it's, its name for his asshole or something. I don't, I don't know. know. I am very, you know... Uh... Oh, those old Yu-Gi-Oh days. It's one of the things I did appreciate about Magic the Gathering is that they're, especially with the sets, sets like, you know, Innistrad and stuff, there was, you could tell that all the cards sort of came from a particular, like, universe, a shared world. Um, so you'd see recurring symbols, recurring armors and characters and mentions of, you know, this, that, and the other thing in the sets that made it feel like they all belonged to each other. Like a set was really a set, a, a properly, you know, grouped together bunch of cards instead of just random shit. Yeah. Uh, hour two of 24. Are you making progress? Wait, was that something you something then for you? Oh, it's just kind of funny. Two hours. <laughs> it's like, yeah, how much more was there left? Yeah, just a handful, I'm sure. It'll be totally fine. What an adventure, coming all the way from TLJ and EFAP 12. Thank you for the eye-opening perspectives and teaching me how to become a better artist. Be proud of your achievements, you massive Hi, rags. Hello. Quite a lot of praise. Thank you very much. Hope things are going well. Mm-hmm. It's my birthday today. Congrats on the 200th. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> I hope you had a fun one. Balloons. Cake. Mm -hmm. Or whatever mm -hmm. else you, you humans do with birthdays happy fourth anniversary summer is almost over october is coming oh <laughs> october is coming gone. it's almost here guys are you ready for halloween, it's it's halloween. So close. that's something we need to do it's halloween arc halloween. with Orps bride night before christmas uh frank and weenie probably uh uh Oraline? Oraline, yeah I'm trying to think of what I else think we could I've... do. There was a Jack and the Giant Peach, right? That was also James and the Giant Peach. 
Yeah. <laughs> Jack and the Giant Beach. Yeah, James and the Giant Beach. I think it was going to say Jack and the Giant Beanstalk, and I was like, is that what they well, call it? Well, that's what I was thinking of. That's, that's, where, that's bean... where it all got fudged. It is a giant beanstalk. Yeah. That's yeah. where it all got fudged. I would be, um, I'd be down for watching those because I have only seen James and the Giant Peach and um, Nightmare Before Christmas. I haven't seen the others. I happen to love Coraline, so I would be on board with watching all of them. I think I've seen Coraline, but I hear it's really great. So it surprised me. I only checked it out casually. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh my god, that was great. Good stuff. But yeah, all right. Well, there you go. Coming soon or not, <laughs> someday. <laughs> Uh, happy 200, ya massive mother yuckers. Looking forward to four more years of pedantry, eloquence, and deep, deep analysis. What you gonna we get? We love deep analysis. It's That's what right. you gonna get. Anything is a dildo if you're brave enough, which is why my ass looks like post-nuke Hiroshima. Be brave, my friends. That's a Bilbo Baggins quote. It must have been, it, it must have been one of those uh, deleted scenes that never made it into the final. Could be in the appendices. I haven't read them. So. Yeah. So it could. It, so if it's in the appendices, then it might be in Rings of Power. They might have that. You know. But uh, no, games no. don't have to be fun, like Soma. Yeah, I don't think anyone would describe Soma as fun, but they would put an asterisk on it to explain. Well, yeah, fun yeah, is we too narrow. Generally, hour, say engaging. Kind of funny because like. Um, my brain when I'm thinking like Mario and Rabbids fun it's like absolutely God of War it's like what yes but you know and then Soma it's like I uh, no it's not it's not <laughs> and yet all three of them I consider to be top notch it's just like huh mm -hmm. EFAP it's amazing to think if how much this podcast has affected me I haven't been able to watch as much since some personal things have consumed my time thank you very much and I wish you all a great year also high rags thank you Hope everything's going all right, whatever it is you're up to. Greetings, Toxic Brood. Currently binging EFAP. Tumola, listening to you for dozens of hours has convinced me you're actually de-aged Charles Dance. <laughs> I wish. Okay. He's... Can you imagine Charles Dance on YouTube? That'd be... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could just pay him reviewing, to say things. Reviewing movies. <laughs> I want to see him review TLJ. It'd be funny. <laughs> Yeah, it would. Or oh, Mario Rabbids, why not? Come on, Charles, what do you have to say about it? We just pay him money to pace in a room for our movie a little bit and just be sort of ornery. Yeah, we just waste him. Duma, recall when you were 200% sure that Silco railed Jinx in the lake? I think he's a kissed, okay? <laughs> like, but yes, he was. you could see how he got there, but he was a bit off. Yeah. It off. He, he was, a, you can appreciate his conviction. I'll, say, I'll say what I said back then, which was, I feel like I would have remembered it if he had kissed her on the on the lippy root. Okay, that feels like something I would have forgotten. I'd probably find it a little awkward. Uh, oh no, Doomer is here, getting PTSD flashbacks to when Silco tongue blasted Jinx <laughs> Bolognese hole, jeez. <laughs> Bolognese hole. I can imagine Silco's voice saying Bolognese hole. I just want Arcane Season 2, gimme. Pick Duma, Duma sucks. Wow, so mean. Wow. Uh, Dara O'Brien's set about video games is relevant here. I remember watching that, but I haven't done it in ages. Uh, he's a funny dude. Refamiliarize myself. Um, you, the player, paid sixty dollars. You can do whatever you want, Jim Sterling. Not on a fracking multiplayer game. You are alternating other people's alterating. Sorry, altering other people's experiences. Who paid sixty two? Any mod that alters gameplay in a multiplayer setting is wrong. Um, I, I mean that's that that's a Sterling whole conversation, right? That though, right? I don't think anybody but, would be um, claiming they're talking about mods for multiplayer. No, I imagine that's generally going to apply to single player games. Um, in you terms could of have difficulty settings. Custom mods that actually change mechanics in multiplayer and everyone's allowed to do everything. Well, that would just be chaos. Like, uh, absolutely. That w w what hope could you have to balance games yeah. in that world? Uh, Tomato Anus does great speedrun breakdowns. Guest, maybe. Cool. Kind of fun to have a speedrunner on sometimes. 
talk about video yeah, games. Yeah, he can help us speed run. He could give us tips on how we can speed run an EFAP. Yeah. Happy 200, you toxic massives. My only critique for EFAP after 200 episodes is that I need more rags. Also, the blob for EFAP movies, maybe? I'm, I'm not against Which that. one? I assume they're talking about the Darabont one, but um, I'm bored. I like the idea yeah. of the blob. Yeah, we could watch them both back to back. That would be interesting to mm. get, you know, the old one from, oh, what was the original? Uh, 1958. I got So, yeah. The 58 and 88 one, yeah. What about games like Left 4 Dead, Resident Evil 4, and One Finger Death Punch? The better you do, the harder the game gets. That's what makes them so engaging. Is that an acceptable artistic vision? What we're we talking about, uh, I don't think we should lock that out as a experience the developer's trying to create, as opposed to no developer. We need alternative versions. Like, yeah, but this is what I want to make. And it's like, that's... Yeah. Need you to yeah, not do I'm that. not... I'm not too ready to start saying things like unacceptable artistic visions, um, but uh, yeah, we especially something like that. We're trying to avoid it as best we can. Yeah. Uh, this whole conversation about fun seems to be stop with the fandom hazing and banter. How dare you gatekeep my lowest common denominator inclination? Enjoy your year's super chat harvest, fellas. Thank you. And. Um... It, it, this is the thing, I don't want to go too hard on the other person's perspective as being like, you're just sad because you suck at video games. It's like, no, no, we can, we can find the, the happy medium of there are genuine concerns on both sides. There are yeah, people exactly. out there who really do fucking struggle. Like, if I try to get my fucking mum and dad to complete, I don't know, um, Resident Evil 4, they'd be like, this is incredibly difficult. And I'd be like, yeah, I guess so. And it would be on the easiest difficulty, they would be saying that. And, just because, yeah, they're so unfamiliar with games. And that locks them out of enjoying the story, potentially. And so, should it be that way? And it's like... No, oh, it's complicated. This one just says, press X to doubt. I wonder if we'll get further with that. X is doubt, F is respects. What are the other letters yeah. going to be? <laughs> press W <laughs> for forward. Why? Why was this just a cutscene? It was what? so funny. <laughs> Why did they make you press F? It's like a, it's like a real funeral this... for your best friend who got killed in war. He was like, ugh. The two I don't want to be here. best things that have related to that are one, that it did become a thing, and that people, like, without... People won't do it as a joke these days. They'll do it for real. Uh, they, will, they will throw an F into the chat when they want to pay respects. Like, uh, it's, it's culture... Like, internet culture has evolved to that point. As much as it's... Yeah. Done as jokes it's as well. Around the horn. Yeah, it's moved all the way back around to just being like, you press F. It's know. earned. It's um, earned its place to be a meme. Now I know I've told this on EFAP before, but I'll just say it again. Once per year or so, I think. Uh, Gary, huh. when introduced to the idea of press F to pay respects, had no clue where it was from. He just knew that was an internet thing. And he took it to literally mean you press F whenever there's respect to be given to anything. And so... You would literally, like, and I remember being on these streams just be like, what the fuck? You'd be like, uh, thank you so much to the mod, mod Rotics, and you'd name a couple of people who've been modding the chat to make sure it's safe, and you'd be like, can everyone just press F to pay respects to the mods, please? It's like, wait, what are you doing? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that everyone spam F, and I, and I was just like, wait, who died? <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, what do you mean it you died? Crazy, I was like, like, well, why else would, you know? Because... Press F to pay respects is like eight years old at this point as a meme. And Absolutely it's still, incredible. Well, that was the thing. Still... That came up as a conversation, like, of the matter of that. And then I was like, I think to ask Gary, I was like, do you guys even know where this came from? I think. <laughs> I, I can't remember. Know if... that this comes from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Gary absolutely did. And I was like, this is, this is actually hilarious how language works, I guess, because it's evolved now. Like, chat will spam F to let you know the stream is down. Stream that comes died, from yeah. Call of Duty. Like, what the fuck? Called, it comes from some developers standing around a table <laughs> like, alright, so put, like, yeah, make it so that you need to have the interact button to put your hand on the, the people... thing. It's like, should it be a cutscene? No, <laughs> This is a Call no. of Duty game. Interactive. Yeah, the people who buy... In a, the people excited for Call of Duty games, they're not going to be able to have the attention span to sit through a funeral. <laughs> We need to have something in there for them to do and press. They press F. QTE in a funeral. Like, what? Literally the 
only thing you do in that scene. The scene <laughs> plays out, and then you go up to the you go up to the fucking thing, and then you press F, and then you turn around, and the cutscene plays. Why would you make that interactive? Just, but they didn't know. They didn't know that that would become the meme that would that has more of an enduring legacy than their whole game. <laughs> that's the part that's really funny. Everyone remembers that. No one remembers the game's even about. Exactly. <laughs> wow. It's. <laughs> it's about Kevin Spacey or something. I don't know. Lol. Because I played through that whole game, and it was something about it was corporation about, it was, it was getting too powerful. Life. So if if that game was actually had a story that was worthwhile, it would have explored the soft power that a private military company could enforce on the world just by being such a powerful entity that is freely operating. Like, yeah, do it's the Metal Gear Solid thing, right? What doesn't Metal Gear Solid do the thing of like private military companies that essentially become nation states in themselves to exert some level of influence? That's what they should have done. But then in the end, it's like, lol, no, they're evil and they just invade the world, <laughs> they like go to war and then they blow up the Golden Gate Bridge. Because, of course, if you make any set piece, and in... is there any other landmark in San Francisco that like in a movie or a video game can be destroyed? Like Other than the Golden Gate Bridge, thing. Uh, you know the, the skyscraper thing, the the tallest building there, I think the 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 little pyramid shaped one. Like, have an action scene there, I guess. I'm sure. So, uh, uh, let, let me let me take a have look. An action scene in some have an action scene in Fresno or like Sacramento or something. There are other cities in California than San Francisco and L.A. Always L.A. Yeah. Well, it's act. It feels like it's more often San Francisco than LA, where you have some crazy set piece like that, doesn't it? Um, I don't know. For some reason, it defaults in my head to more so to LA than San Francisco, but uh, I think the films, one. like stories that are set in films, you default more to New York and LA than that. But I was so about like, to say New York yeah, is what comes to yeah. my mind. Brooklyn Bridge doesn't get blown up that much in movies, you know, <laughs> or like um, didn't get oh, it didn't a Godzilla movie. Yeah, that's the first thought I yeah. had too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, right. uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Matthew Broderick. And, and, and then Bane blew it up as well, didn't he? Oh, wait, yeah. that was the Gotham oh. bridge, though. <laughs> the Bane blew up. Yeah, because he blew up, he separated Bane Gotham bridge. as an island. Gotham was an island in that movie, wasn't it? Was it always an island? Kept it. No. Like I was going to say, <laughs> I, don't I, don't, I don't remember it being an island. Well, it's because it lost its identity, right? It gradually just became New York, whereas, like, the Batman actually made Gotham feel like a real city. So did yeah. Joel Schumacher, damn it. Well, he, he, yeah, did a, no, think, he did I a job. The films do create, like the Tim Burton films as well, like create yeah. a style for Gotham. And the Batman Begins kind of tried to do that. Yeah. Like there were places that were kind of like dingy and grimy. But then by The Dark Knight, it was just like New York they gave meets up. Chicago. I feel Joker like gave is, yeah. Joker gave Gotham more character than I think. Oh, yeah. uh, Batman Joker, movies. Joker went for the seventies New York vibe, which I think yeah. works well um, for selling. You remember in the Simpsons so. more the, when Homer went to, <laughs> to New York in the seventies? I do, yeah. And then, and then he he <laughs> he just goes there, and the first thing that happens is everybody keeps stealing his shit. Yeah. <laughs> And then a seagull steals it. And then I think like some rubbish gets dumped on him, throws it at this dude who chases him <laughs> with a big strut. And then he tries to climb up. Uh, he tries to climb up the ladder to the fire escape, but he's falling into a, a he's falling into a hole in the ground, a mad hole. God, that was a great episode. Anyway, next super chat. Do whatever you want with the game you paid for, unless it's removing pride flags. Um, well, yeah, but uh, people, to be fair, like, there are certain things you can do, and that people will be like, why are you doing that? And uh, there are plenty of reasonable reasons you can do all kinds of things, but like, let's just, you know, if someone actually said, like, I, I just want to remove the, the black characters from my game, okay? I find them a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, what? <laughs> It's just like, like incredibly I guess what I'm saying is like you know I'm I'm all for cu customization of like all kinds of stuff but if someone was to like do certain customizations they would be like why are you doing that <laughs> like what's <laughs> like hey man I just like modded you know what's what's going on buddy in Elden Ring magic is the easy mode well there's a lot of things that are easy mode in Elden Ring I didn't even use magic I don't think Metal did um. And depending, thought... go ahead. I thought magic was like the weird thing that generally people are told to 
not really do. As I understand, a lot of video games like Magic ends up being the broken part. Like Magic the often problem is, ends um, up being overpowered. I really hate like to say Fable. this, but like Elden Ring, just like a lot of From Software games, they don't make the enemies equipped to deal with Magic users. I think Magic is harder to deal with, like fundamentally anyway, than um. The game is than, built for the like melee, melee combat. Yeah, and then yeah. they introduce the magic stuff, and it mostly works okay. But there are some enemies where they, you just break them. To me, you that's... need to have a ma yeah. You need to have a magic system that's almost um, mechanically similar to or... to um like sort like bows and like how how an enemy would re react to an right. archer should be similar to how they react to like someone trying to throw a lightning bolt or something i think it's you. um i think it's just tricky right like if you it, you i don't know what you guys think but play it your way as like a mantra for video games i think is more complicated than a strict good thing um i think that i think that games can benefit tremendously from focus on uh on a specific gameplay style and yeah the more options you give a player the harder it becomes to manage the viability of all those yeah. options um like i i, I kind of maintain this and i uh this might be i don't know if this is controversial or not as a take, let's but find I think out I, mm. I think that fundamentally if you're making a stealth game every single encounter should be completable with stealth i don't think that there should be any forced action sequences uh, who would disagree with that I'm pretty sure Metal Gear Solid games have forced action sequences, and they're often heralded as well, great yeah, stealth games. Games, yeah, but I doubt those people would then say it has to be that way. They'd probably be like, "Oh, I'm cool." Oh uh, no, game. I. Uh, well, I guess it's. I, I guess I. My. I think Human Revolution would have been the game that made me go like, "This is the way that." Like, no, don't do that, because that was the biggest prop. Oh God, I remember playing that game, going through it super duper stealthy. And then I think it was like the second or third major boss in that game, I was stuck on it for like four hours because I just did not build my character to deal with uh, direct combat. Okay. I just didn't have the equipment. Um, and that was something that got fixed in the director's cut because it was like the biggest piece of criticism for that game. Mm -hmm. And funnily enough, Deus Ex is not a stealth game. Like Deus Ex is an action RPG, but it's so built around stealth mechanics. It was fun to do stealth, yeah. I well, going through I, Human I, Revolution, I I had a stealth run with no kills, and yeah, I was like, this, it was really fun. fun to play that way. Yeah, I I love my stealth games personally. Yeah, really. Like like, yeah, just to, to clarify, in like a basic sense, if if you were to be given a um a loadout option of you can focus your double pistols or shotgun or machine gun or right a sniper rifle and you can that's like right at the beginning and it's just a shooter campaign if i opt for sniper and it's like i like it when let's say there are five missions and the mission where most enemies are much further away and separated it's like oh the sniper is gonna in the same way that pokemon right like the first gym leader might be your easy one compared to the second because of the one you chosen when it gets fucked though is what you just described like if there's just a mission where several guys run right up to you and with the sniper, you're just like, so I'm fucked then. And, and it's just like, yeah. And it's like, so what was the point of giving me the option when... And then all like all the guides are like, no, go shotgun, shotgun. Everyone goes shotgun. Shotgun's just the best one. It's just the best throughout the whole... You don't want to be in a situation like that. It's like, don't don't be giving well, them options if some of them are just fucking useless. Deus Ex did the cool thing, and, and Mankind Divided did it as well. At the beginning of the game, they'd always be like, so you want to go lethal or non-lethal? Um, with your weapons, and when you pick lethal or non-lethal, it's like, okay, do you want long range or do you want short range? Like, do you want a, a stun gun or do you want a tranquilizer rifle? So, mm. like, out of the gate, it sets an expectation in your mind of, of multiple things. One, you have the choice of whether you want to kill people or spare them, and there probably are going to be consequences narratively for that, and uh, these levels are going to be designed to where there are advantages and disadvantages to long range and short range combat. Um, and that's something you need to think about. I guess, though, to expand on the the point of like action scenes, I think I'm I'm. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I'm totally okay with games having forced detection sequences, as long as they still give you the opportunity to get I... through those without direct combat. Yeah, to regain your stealth, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, so, like, so, like the oh shit moment stealth, happens. Like, oh, shit, yeah, and then you run. You away. have to run. Yeah. Yeah. And then but reacquire your stealth. Now people are prowling looking for you, but you're you're hidden, but they know you're around here somewhere and they're yeah. trying to find you. It's so the Batman. It feels like I... an action sequence, even though it is a stealth sequence. Yeah. And I, I think um I think something I would say is that 
my preference with a stealth game to incentivize people to play with stealth is to make your character vulnerable. That one guy, they can handle pretty easily. Two guys, it gets real hard. And three guys, it's like... I, I think that you should make it difficult to survive direct confrontations if you've been detected. Because oh, I think that there are ways that you, you can You must hate people getting access, accessibility to games. Sounds like difficulty to me. Well, it's, it's kind of funny, right? Like, with stealth games, when it comes to difficulty, it's kind of a complicated thing. Um, you could, like, you could have it be that, I don't know, the detection rate is different, but, like... That yeah, how really fast they detect you, by. what their cone of vision, you know, really is, you know, how, you know, how quickly they move around and how strict the patterns are to the environment, you know, yeah. things like that. You've got options. It's just that, um... Oh, yeah. I guess that's the thing with difficulty settings is like difficulty settings and what they will entail for every game is going to be different. Difficulty settings in a platformer, I think this is just true. Like in a lot of platformers, difficulty settings are, are really hard. That's why most platformers don't have difficulty settings because what does that look like? You still need to complete the jump. You have to be able to complete the jump. And even if you get the Tanuki suit, like in the, the white Tanuki suit that gives you longer jumps and vulnerability, you still got to be able to make the jumps. And there are certain types of, like, platforming obstacles that they can't, you can't be helped, right? Like, um, like, you know how Mario will often have the alternating where, like, it flips over, like, it flips after a certain amount of time? There's not much difficulty settings can do to help you achieve that without, like, curtailing the challenge entirely. Other games, it's way easier. Just give the enemy more health, give you less health, weapons deal more damage, maybe they're smarter. That's harder, but, like, that's an option. Some games, it's like, what the hell do you do? What can you do for people? There's like a base level of competency that's required to complete the objective in a way that's different from other games. Um, like in, in a sense, right, if we we're talking about uh, like in an XCOM style game, if there's like certain mission parameters that you have to complete, at the end of the day, you need to understand those parameters and execute them. That requires some base level of competency, a level of competency that it's not really possible for a game to give you. Like, a game can't give you the capacity to understand what your objective is and how you need to go about doing it um, without curtailing the challenge. Kind of like in a puzzle game, right? Th there comes a point where the only way they can help you is to just tell you how to complete yeah. the puzzle. And at that point, what are you playing? In some like, games, playing... again, the point where they'll do that now uh, for the oh, sake of accessibility. That, sure. but, but I guess the problem is that there has to be a cap on that before it's like... So, like, if you're playing Portal 2... And then it's like, press hint, and then it highlights where you need to shoot and exactly what you need to shoot, like which port, you know, like the portals and the locations you need to put them in, or like which type of gel you need to get on the floor first. How many times does it tell you that before you're not even playing the game anymore? You're just following Especially it. Especially in a post-internet society, where all that stuff's online anyway. Yeah, you could at least, that, that, that to me is almost better, right? To get to the point where you go, ah, I don't know, I'm going to search it up. Because at least you watch someone else maybe do it and you learn from that. And say, there's a... At least there's some effort on your part as opposed to just... Because imagine it, like, one step worse. It's like, hold X for X amount of time, and then it'll just it'll just run it for you. The, the computer will take over and shoot where it needs to shoot, and then go where it needs to go and be like, that was how it was done. Now, and they don't even say, now you do it. They just go, next one, I guess. Like, well, yeah. I think it's... That draws a clearer line when you have to leave the game and go to the internet and look up the answer. That is such a more defined and obvious line, and it requires the player to, to go outside of the game knowingly. It requires him to admit, I cannot do this. I am going outside of the game to get help that the game isn't really, you know, it, I'm going outside of the game. And it, I don't know, it, it that and it, it's it's different when you sort of make the player take that step. It's, it's almost like ad admitting defeat, and the player knows that they <laughs> they know it. They you know, know like, that yeah, they it's it's defeat. that it's not that they were helped through the game by the game in a way that feels like intentional. Like oh, the game's helping me through. It's okay. I'll go. It's like no. When you when you go to the internet and look up the solutions, it's like you you are admitting defeat and you know it. And that, you know, that that's an element when of the mindset that I think is important. Objective, when you've looked at that, you know what you did, and you, you feel know what bad. You did. Yeah, you know what you did. <laughs> Maybe and, you don't feel bad. You know, I mean, I I know. think it, you're just going to have some people who don't care at all. But I think for the most part, getting players to feel not bad, but kind of like the like sort of like a loser, but um, not in like I a guess, like a big uh, way. 
that's sort of the the thing that it, it's almost the weapon against it. There's there's certainly like an attitude that a game can present in terms of the way. I, I feel like Celeste has to be like one of the stronger examples. Celeste is really hard, um, but the game has a lot of like affirming messages like throughout it. Like you know, like when you die or when you pause or something. I don't know if it was when you die, but it would be like in the pause menu or like between levels, there'd be quotes like, this is hard, but you can do it. Or even things like if you want to like change the approach that you make with like difficulty settings, that's okay, effectively. You can have an attitude like that for a game that I think is valid. Um, I also think that you can have an attitude of, ha ha, you lost, fuck you, try again. <laughs> like it's, um, it's all contributes to like the feeling of what a game is and what it's striving to be. And I don't know that it's easy to say that one is necessarily better than the other but rather that they're just different approaches and mentalities that a game wants to foster in you. Well, yeah, we definitely want to you know, promote like... the uh, options for the player and everything. It's just, there is the, sometimes a sense of um, you lose an experience when you don't keep trying and then eventually win, as opposed to, I can't do this, I'm going to play on easy mode, fuck it. Yeah, and, and I think um, something that I mentioned it in the video that I made, video games are particularly well positioned to uh, evoke feelings of like success and failure in a way that's it's difficult for other mediums because it's it's you you did it like when you beat the boss it's like yes like fuck you you know like that yeah. kind of feeling that a, a film is not really gonna like it's it's going to be difficult for a film to get that out of you rather than you projecting it onto a different character um and i think that's i don't know when experience. i made it to the end of i'm thinking of ending things i went yes i made it to the whole thing all oh, right yeah good i don't job. think i was i don't think i said yes i think i was just yeah you're right we were we were deflated <laughs> and we were ready to just do anything <laughs> else yeah that was not a pleasant like that film to watch that was really i did not it enjoy not. that film no Congrats on 200. I would like to ask what Sterling thinks of MMO players using third-party tools to cheat out high-end raids, diminishing the achievement of beating the content and the devs of banning players for using those tools. I would imagine... Depends on what the tools are. Would, if... I imagine that Sterling would say that that's not, like, like in multiplayer. I just, I don't get the impression that that's the argument to be made. If you were using, essentially, hacks to get access to resources to... You need to know what the end goal is, essentially. Like, this is funny, right? If, let's say, for example, um, there's the final level that has, like, one of the most fun challenges in it, but the only way to unlock it is to get 1,000 cores, and you can buy the cores or you can grind. If I hack the game so I get all the cores so I can access that level and play it, I doubt most people would take too much issue with that. Be like, well, yeah, it's annoying that you have to grind so hard, so you kind of just quick to a sped through it. But if it's a game where you just want to get all the best weapons so that everything is easy, and so you hack it to do so. I think people would be like, why? why? What's the, I don't even blame. Um, mm. But then again, you know, playing like God Mode on Quake, for example, that's fun. But um, I've said this before as a comparison, like, that was really fun for about five minutes. Yeah, it's like playing Grand Theft Auto with cheats, right? Where you get, like, body armor, full health. Yeah. Or uh, like spawn in a tank, like the tank is. And they give you like constant five stars. You just fucking go yeah. to war. Like it's it's fun to break a game with, like in that sense and just go ham. Yeah, but that's a, that's your goal obviously is. a different. Well, it's just it's obviously going to be a different experience. Well, yeah, because uh, one of the worst would be like, normally. you know, you guys are competing to get the best score on some challenge mission, and then I get one that's like a million points better than both of you, and you're like, what the fuck? And I go, yeah, not bad. And then one day you like you're over my house playing the game and you see that I've got loads of cheats and hacks and stuff. And you're just like, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah, what? This <laughs> is like so. You just you just wanted the prestige. You just lied. And that's uh that's that's another thing that's going on. There's there's a sense of you want to be able to appreciate this the people for what they actually did versus what they're uh you know and and yeah people oh. will be like see and that's just cruel gatekeeping. It's like it's it's, it's not. The whole, because we were trying to explain this, the whole thing is when you say, like, oh man, I beat Dark Souls, and then someone else is like, yeah, I did it too with no enemies mode. It's like, that's not, we didn't play the same thing. It, it's yeah, the it's... meme, we are not alike. It is, it is a, it is a just. Like, wow, gatekeeper. It's, it's... You're like, no, reality. Yeah the, <laughs> like... yeah, the implication is that when I say I've beaten something, it means that I went through all the challenges and I, I, yeah, I, conquered them essentially that's what it means to say that i beat the game and when you say it you're talking about something entirely different you're talking about just because i crossed a finish line somewhere 
Yeah, it's like, oh, different. you beat um, Dead Space 2 on, uh, on a really hard difficulty? He's like, yeah, that's tough. Did you beat it on the one where you can only save twice or whatever it is? And it's like, no. Three it's times. Like, that's, I, yeah, uh, that's hardcore mode. Yeah, that's a that's a different experience again. And, and that's the thing. It's like, yeah, it's tough on the hardest difficulty, sure. But the the that kind of modifier. That you know, was the, something I was really happy to do. That's one of my... Because I, I have, um, at least on the Xbox 360, I got all of the achievements for the first and second Dead Space. I played those games a lot. I learned them... And you have to do a lot of prep for your hardcore run in Dead uh, Space yeah. 2 because you can only save three times. Um, and if you wisely. die, you go back to your last save. And you know, it's not like a huge deal, you know, but you, but when, you, when you're able to do it, you're like, yeah, I've, I've done everything. I've, I've completed all the challenges that this game has for me. Funny how all that works because, like, uh, I think for you had a... I don't, I, I don't know if you would have said this is the same thing, but... In God of War 2018, I, I bumped into two level six enemies when I was like a level, like half of one. I, I think I was super low. And everyone in chat when I was fighting them was like, don't you get it? You're not supposed to be here yet. You're not supposed to be killing these guys. And I was just like, yeah, no, I know. And then I keep going. And then, <laughs> know. you know, I like wanna... 10 minutes later, someone's like, does he actually not know that he's not supposed to kill these yet? And it's like, no, I know. I wish people would... Keep that in mind. I know what I'm doing is difficult. Uh, it, it's to the point where I need to hit both of them about, let's say, 150 times. And if either of them hit me once, I'm done. And it's an enclosed space, and they're not exactly slow. They're pretty slow, but there's one move they had that's really fast. Um, incredibly difficult. It took me, I think, an hour and a half. And I finally beat them. And so it was just like, why would you do that? As opposed to going to explore more, get better weapons, get better armor... And then coming back and just like clowning them easily, I was like, "Cause that's that's not even the same thing. That's just a, that's a different it's thing just at that a point." Different experience, yeah. I knew I could beat them, but it would take a lot from me, a lot of discipline and patience. And then I did it. And it's and if someone was like, "So it's just your ego," then I'd be like, I mean, "What what is defeating a challenge? I don't know." And uh, yeah, when you come across that in a lot of games, be like. It, it was happening throughout all of God of War 1, 2, and 3. Jesus Christ, every time it said, are you sure you don't want to change the difficulty to be lower? Never did that arrive in such a way that was helpful. I was just like, fuck off. No, I, I always hate it when a game does that. It's like, stop it. Mean. No. <laughs> it's really mean. I want to do it. You're saying I can't do it. I don't appreciate it. I like when a game says you want to bump up the difficulty. We see <laughs> yeah. the dispute. Like, I was infamous did that. I remember the first time I played it, they're like, yeah, you want to bump it up to hard? It's like, hell yeah, I want to bump it up to hard. If the game thinks I'm good enough to play it on hard difficulty, sure. That, was the thing, and that game is tough as balls on hard difficulty, but it's fun. They released the difficulties, I think, for uh, Ragnarok. There's five. Um, I'm going to try and go for the one below hardest, the one below Gimme God of War. Okay. See if I can pull this off, because uh, the the only ballads problem I care about. Because if I was if I was playing alone, I'd absolutely go for it, no hesitation. But when it's a stream, it's like I worry sometimes, yeah. like boring the fuck out of everybody, where I get stuck on certain things. You just get stuck for several hours, exactly. Because I was saying to people, it's like this: the Niflheim stuff is like horde mode in a sense, or Muspelheim, I guess. Both of them are kind of like that, and it's like I needed to farm both of them to get access, basically get the best stuff, so I could go and fight the Valkyrie Queen. And I was like. You guys aren't going to want to watch that, are you? There's some people like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes what's exciting to stream. Uh, it's like beating easy enemies for a little while. It's like... it wasn't easy, though. Fucking... Both of those areas were a bit of... I'm back. Whoa. I clapped when I saw it. 200 episodes. EFAP, EFAP, EFAP. Wow. Are y'all familiar with Dere's in stereotypes? Because Gardevoir is my favorite Pokemon, but she gives Yandere vibes. What's y'all's favorite type of Dere? I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what a Dere is. Yeah, then. No clue. Um, would love a supercut of Ruby Rose, Batwoman, and Mandalorian coverage. Supercut. Um, well, the Batwoman one, maybe that could happen someday when we finish it up. Which will happen. People are going to be surprised when that comes to an end. It could be years from now, but it'll happen. And as yep, for we'll get to it. Mandalorian, I was thinking of releasing a Mandalorian Season 2 supercut at least, because we hadn't actually gotten that one yet. I like the complete versions. Once everything comes out. Dude, Mandalorian Season 3 is on the way. Yeah, Coming. soon. I think it's like early next year, right? 
Yeah, so we still got there's so much meteor on the way still. This, this, yeah. uh, November is a tiny Something break, bigger. and I say that as if November isn't fucking Ragnarok. I'm like, <laughs> so. Yep. Rags, remember the Hell Regal in BF1 or BF3, BF4 servers that banned shotguns and the M16A3? Um, I remember the Hell Regal in Battlefield 1. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, it started out being too good, and I think they nerfed it a bit. And now, it, and then it became a lot more balanced, but it was always strong. Uh, the M16A3 in Battlefield 3 was always overpowered. Um, so, yeah, I hated that, how prominent that gun was in that game, because it was just so fucking good. He is mates? Yeah. Remember how the easy mode icon in Wolfenstein is BJ with a pacifier in his mouth? I do. Yeah. Well, people would refer to that as shaming now and that we shouldn't do it and it's horrible. So. I say bring back shaming. Yay. I thought it was people funny. People shamed. It is yeah, funny. It's, am it's amusing. Uh, Mola, thanks for yesterday's great discussion. It was so enjoyable. I hope all of you get to watch a Disney Plus show, The Mysterious Benedict Society. I've never heard of it. I've and never heard of it either. I'm not sure which discussion you're referring to, but if this was during the anniversary, then it would have been the day before. The day before the anniversary. Something, I'm sure. I cannot recall off the top of my head, no. Dragon's Dogma always taunted me with try again on easy mode after getting smashed by a chimera. Never did it, though. Yeah. A lot of the games don't have a tick box for, like, never show this message again. They just keep doing it. But sometimes it just makes me feel like it's a <laughs> troll. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, hey, you want to change difficulty? You fuck. Let me know. Just let me know. You're I'm loser. here. I'm right here. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> like, come on. Press it. You, you know you it. want to. No, I don't. It's, it's like that uh that game give up, that uh that flash game where it just has a giant button that says give up at the bottom yeah. if you find it too difficult. <laughs> Hour three of twenty-four. Wow. Considering Jim's physicality, I'd say his resistance to temptation is not very authentic. He would definitely feel a desire to turn it down. Hi Rags. <laughs> Hello. There's a, a feeling of advocating for those who would absolutely prefer to turn it down or whatever, as, as though they're like trodden on, but I just miss when we could go as far as actually in, actually implying. It's like, yeah, you just you suck at the game and you're angry and that they wouldn't have to take that incredibly personally. I was watching Ted Logic respond to a video recently where it's this guy who's saying like, online multiplayer is a hellscape, horrible, people on there mean to you, unacceptable, and Causing people yeah. to have anxiety when hitting start matchmaking. And it's just like, oh. What? Yes. Have anxiety yeah. when they. You, no. Yes. No. Yes. Come on. No. No. Well, anxiety I guess they. Anxiety when you hit I... to start matchmaking. It's funny because Chud Logic right. was like, with me when I hit start matchmaking, I can't fucking wait to get into a game because I don't know what I know. retards I'll be paired with and I can make fun <laughs> of. <laughs> 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 Just yeah. get back in there, you know? Get back get back in there and keep trying. Yeah, I'm 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 fine with the idea that some games give you anxiety based off of the kind of experience that they give, either if it's a spooky game or if it's a game that's super high stakes in terms of what you have to lose. Um but if it's just playing with other people in general makes you anxious, then like man. Uh, in the video, this guy me, tells a story about because uh, he goes from toxicity to just it's 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 men's problem. It's mainly white men's problem. It's toxicity from white yeah. males, and he says they, that um, white men specifically. Yeah, okay. yeah. He he's, he yeah. says it's uh he says predominantly white male. Sorry, Frankie, we got this. Yeah, we'll take. You can't speak on this. This is our thing. Belonging to a specific race of people. <laughs> you you wouldn't understand <laughs> toxicity in three sixty era, okay? We do because <laughs> yeah. we we're the we're the cause of it, but. Yeah, so he, he goes on to say he had a girlfriend or the whatever current girlfriend. She um she's playing some games and some guy sends her a message without knowing she's a girl saying like oh there's good stuff let's play more and then she's like yeah okay cool and they get into uh back and forth he eventually finds out she's a girl and he's like oh play like a co-op game or something she's like yeah okay, cool and then he says to test out this this guy's interest in you you should say hey is it cool if my boyfriend plays with me um. Let's see if he remains invested. And then the guy apparently responded like, yeah, hell yeah, no problem. 
and then uh, didn't make it to the time they were going to be playing, and then never turned up again, and then blocked you. And he was like, this is just embarrassing, shameful behavior, and you know, men need to do better, sort of thing. And it was funny, because Chad Lodge was like, well, I mean, if if he was interested in a, like, in that way, and then it's like, can our boyfriend, can my boyfriend play with us? I can totally see people being like, um, I'm right. <laughs> I, you're not <laughs> like, on the market, so I'll go elsewhere, because yeah, like, I, 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 I can that... never... That's not that bad. I was just like, whatever. You know, that's that's the, the most subtle way of being it's, it's basically a lot like. Meant to me that it's bad to pers like that if if you want to pursue like a romantic relationship with somebody and then you find out that that's not an option, like that you should then continue. People are allowed to like form the relationships or pursue relationships like as they please. I think if they're what not the... interested, then that's that's it, right? What the guy wants to sell, I think, is that if if she were a guy, he would have made a friend there and been like, woohoo, fun, fun, fun. But it was a girl, so he immediately Maybe. was like, I want to fuck you. And then found out she's off off the table and he's like, oh, now I don't have any value for you because you're a woman. Is that like, oh, I mean, I don't know if it's... Like, I just, uh, that's... genuinely, dude, for me, <laughs> if I met one of you guys, like, through Gears of War 2 or something, and I was like, this is fun, we should play about... And then, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, let's set up some co-op campaign, or let's set up some execution team 2v2s and stuff. And then one of you is just like, do you mind if I bring my girlfriend? I'd probably be like, uh... Blocked. How did the, how did the <laughs> podcast end? <laughs> it's just, well, it's just, yeah. it's just, like, because Chad was talking about it, it's like, that's just... It's just kind of weird, <laughs> like when you're like, "Hey, want to be a third wheel?" You're like, not really. Um, I was inviting you to play games. That uh, who who's the other person? But uh, yeah, you know. Uh, but at the same time, worst case scenario, the guy was like, "Ah, a girl who plays games, sweet." And then it's like she's taken. It's like, oh, like what a demon! I don't know how you survived. Um, you, I mean, you, I'm sure you, that I'm sure that this happens with um, like like if, if it was going the other way, if it was like a lesbian, right? You know, if 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 it was a girl who found another girl who was a lesbian, and she said, "Can I bring my?" You know, is it okay if our girlfriend joins us? I mean, sure, I'm I'm pretty certain the same thing would likely happen. Good chance, yeah. Well, the guy same would be thing curious with, enough you know, to inspect and ask questions just to. There's always a there's always a chance he could be just toxic in the other ways. Like, send me pictures of you guys together. Another video can be made about how evil men are. I guess it's just when you couch it in the context of online gaming, when like these sorts of interactions happen all the time, where a guy sees a girl that he's interested in, and then they're like, "Yeah, my boyfriend and I." It's like, ah, then that's and just this like, is a, it can be yeah, like, like, it can be cringe that relates to it and stuff. But at the same time, sure, like, yeah. no, I'm so bored of like She Hulk did this, where it's just like shaming men for even trying to <laughs> like. How dare well, men it, pursue women um, romantically? Well, I, yeah, like. I don't know. It just feels like we're in a particularly mean-spirited like era of, mm -hmm. of life right now. <laughs> um, it's funny the, the guy goes on like a pretty elongated rant about how women suffer in every way, shape, and form, down to literally just like someone in the call might go, "Wait, you're a girl?" And they'll go, "Yeah." That that alone is like described as this horrifying experience that no woman should have to deal with. And then I think Chud just pauses for a while and he's just like, "I'm just not going to talk to women anymore." <laughs> like that's the solution. I mean, that's um, well. Like, if you don't me, talk to women, this... then you're sexist for not talking to women. This, but this, this feels so dated, man. This feels like a description of online gaming in 2010, well, not it, like in 2022. If it's still around, know? I still would probably try to defend it a little bit. It's surprising when you come up. It's mostly guys when there's voice. Well, it's it's uh it's kind of those you know the the memes right where like I I'm not sure when it happened, but when it started getting said like it's 50 50 split for video games it's like well sure but when you break it down mobile gaming versus console and pc games yeah, yeah it's always that mobile down, thing that they chuck in games well yeah because with mobile games women uh do play mobile games more than men but for like first person shooters i'm pretty sure the ratio is like 10 to 1 uh, easily it just feels like um yeah. kind kindergarten almost shit maybe i'm being too dismissive but like you know kid pushes you you push them back done it pushes you, and then you go, I'm telling everybody, and then you get detention, and parents involved, and you're like, Jesus. <laughs> the comparison being, yeah. of course, someone says, um, there's a literal, like, house that you're assaulting together in whatever game, and then you're like, oh, you're in the kitchen, you must feel at home. But, like, the girl's playing with you, and then she fucking reports you, and you lose everything, versus just her being, like, you know, 
Like, uh, oh, you're in the oh, we're in the garage or the bathroom or something like that, you know. <laughs> if if, well, if the bitch can't like, clap back, she's weak. Yeah, like 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 if you're playing in the bathroom, it's like make sure to put the toilet seat down. You fucking idiot or something like just you barbarian, you know, yeah. Some banter, just some fun banter. But if someone to, could just... say something that mild and you just crumple up, there's like then you're just a weak person and I don't want to be around you. Like and a pause, and then yeah. how often do you even talk to women? Just like to, to that person, because like you can. It do all kinds of counters that, it, and the funny thing is, I way prefer seeing videos like that where where girls have snapbacks that are really witty. And it's just like, yeah, nice. pretty funny. It's good memes. But encouraging them to be like, report the, them for the toxicity. Stuff. It's like, oh for fuck's sake. Yeah, because dudes make fun of dudes like always. Uh -huh. It this isn't this isn't unusual. Look at Mel. Guy, it, it's just normal. It's run of the mill when it, when guys do this to other guys. But when it happens to a woman, it's it's like, oh, I can't believe. Can you believe that someone made fun of a woman on the internet? It's like, I'm well, sorry, but so guys. I feel like you highlighted this is part of what's annoyed about it is that a lot of girls will uh, put up their own sort of thing. That some other guy might come along and be like, it's cruel they did that to you. Let us let us make a video essay to defend you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, I'm fine. And he's like, no, no, what happened was wrong. You must be protected. Ooh. I mean, it's just, uh, it's kind of like the nature of online gaming, though, or just online spaces like that. There's mm. always going to be some level of toxicity, no matter what, uh, towards everybody, really, ultimately. Yeah. Like, there's always going to be, I don't know that there's any way to stop that. I think that that's, I think that that's an inevitable consequence of people it's competition. online yeah. in a space. Yeah, in a space where people are rowdy and competitive as well. Uh, in a in a relatively low consequence environment too, like it's just an it's... extremely low consequence. The stakes when you're playing a game with someone online are just like virtually non-existent. Pretty much, and I think that that encourages a certain type of behavior that is less likely to occur in real world interactions. And I think oh, yeah. that it's just yeah. about essentially as an individual, what you need to be able to do is to maneuver through that space in a way where you can be comfortable and happy. Um, and a lot of that comes down to understanding what the space is and um, trying not to let that shit, like, get beneath your skin. Like, if someone's being an asshole. So, I mean, even it's... now, who, who, even, who even uses, like, in-game chat anymore to, like, talk to each other in video games? That's the thing. So I, like another, I mean, it might still be alive and well in many games. It's just that I'm not playing them, so. Yeah, those yeah. aren't the ones I typically play. Um, generally, I mean, text chat on PC is a big thing, and people say sure. yeah. vile things to each other because it's it's a competitive game. And if someone, yeah, it, it, it it's it's that's just what people say. People say nasty things to each other. Anonymity plus and distance plus dehumanization plus like, yeah, from no series of yeah. buttons or numbers. It just yeah. It just, and that's well, the thing yeah, I'd like rather is uh, League of Legends. God prepare damn. people to deal with it instead of preparing people to report as much as possible and kill it all. Well, which I, is never going to work, yeah. but anyway. No, because uh, essentially you're trying to curb a behavior in humans that I think is just invariably brought out by these types of platforms. Um, I don't, I don't know that there's any changing that, and so especially when you come across like fucking twelve year olds who just want to see what happens when they say stuff like that. Exactly. So again, the best way to maneuver through that is to well, the best way to deal with it is to learn how to maneuver through it. Yeah, and then when yeah. you come across some random person saying kill yourself, you should just be like, who the fuck isn't it? They don't even know who I am. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're... And also, like, they're just some dipshit. Like, yeah. Yeah, this why this random person said to kill yourself. Well, why do you give that any level of mind? Any whatsoever? level of power. Yeah. yeah. Um Thanks for mentioning Bulletstorm in your Prey coverage. Underrated game. Yeah, it is underrated. I wouldn't mind playing Bulletstorm again. I remember fond memories of it. Uh, I Don't just PC? really like it when... Uh, yeah, but I think it was part of the Games for Windows Live thing, so I'm not sure if it's still, like... I don't know how that works now. Um, but I think it's on Steam, yeah. I, what, I, no, I, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is on Steam, but then still Games for Windows Live and everything. Um, that um, game you could cool. check and you can check and see if there's a workaround for it uh, because a lot of games are like that. Yeah, the, yeah, essentially, it's like what happens with um, uh, Resident Evil Five was you just run a program that tells the game that Windows Live is running, and then it just acts normally. The Bulletstorm Bullet Full Storm Clip Edition. Cool. The thing that it did that was cool that that games should that. I think a lot of games benefit from, especially like action games, because you see it in like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta is 
scoring systems that encourage you to do different things mechanically. Yeah. Like to to use different attacks and different weapons, that's the way to do it. Yeah, well, you can also um, do it with enemy types that are like, this enemy type is immune to your shield bash. You're going to need to use your, your trip it up with the thing first. And you're like, oh, okay. Or uh, I would say that I think I generally prefer it when the incentives are player originating rather than originating from the enemies. Um, like, I'm happy uh, with Because... Um, uh, I'm not sure. I think, um, I, I don't know that I like encountering an enemy that, for instance, I cannot use a weapon against. Like, it just doesn't deal any damage at all. Um, I think I generally prefer it if, uh, weapons are incentivized or de uh, disincentivized. You don't like any um, enemies that are invincible and more so defeated with environment? Uh, uh no, I... I, uh, I, I'm talking like, um, like if, if you've got an enemy, it's like, ah, that, that weapon doesn't work. You need to use the weapon with this elemental attack function. I generally prefer it when games find uh, other ways to depends. incentivize. Why? It depend, depends on how that's implemented for I me. Think, um, I think that I like it when a video game grants you access to your full arsenal of capabilities, and then you are given reasons to make choices about which weapons you use. Um, rather than being in an encounter where like a weapon is fundamentally is not going to work, um, I think that's I think that's a general preference I have from a design standpoint. Yeah, I was going to say I think I'm uh, going to agree with wherever Rags is probably going with it. It's going to be implementation for me because I'm actually happy with having played God of War recently. Right, it's like Blades of Chaos works on pretty much everything. Oh, it doesn't work on this guy because his shield is active. You're going to need to bash it open with your heavy weapons first. Then you can use whatever you want. Well, this, this guy is a spectral like, ghost. You've got to shine Helios's face into it first, and then you can use your blades. I don't mind that as much as like the the enemy that I encounter. Where it's like your axe doesn't work. You have to punch them. It's like oh, you don't I like that. Use my or axe. there's or there's nothing I, different about them. It's just that arbitrarily this weapon won't work. There's no like thing to beat him. It's so, just oh, you just can't use this gun. I don't I don't think I dislike it. I think that I simply prefer it when I always have the capacity to choose any weapon that I want to use and the choices are more softly encouraged well, or disincentivized. The example you just gave, I'm assuming it's God of War, and so for reference, Rags, what he's talking about is the all the first enemies you fight can be killed with the axe, but then you come across ice enemies from hell, um the equivalent for Norse anyway. And your axe yeah. is an ice axe, so it's the it just it like bounces off them. It doesn't work. You have to hit them with your fists until you get them to a stun range, and then you can insta kill them. Um, to me, that all. I mean, it, it yeah, like, it depends on how good the fist combat is. Like that would be the determining factor for me. Is like if if fists just sucked to use, and they were just bad and they weren't fun, then I would be oh yeah, it's like they're they're forcing me to use a weapon that's just shit to use, and I hate that. Um, that would be the thing that I would. So, uh, did I, did either of you guys play DMC Devil May Cry, the reboot, like Devil May Cry game? No, no. So in that game, it had uh, so like by comparison to the regular, like the proper series, that one had uh the the Yamada. Uh, fuck, I'm I'm mispronouncing it, aren't I? Uh, Yamato. No, yeah, Yamato is like the uh, that's like his main sword, and then there was basically ice weapons and um. And like lava weapons or fire weapons, if you want to call it. Um, the ice weapons were really fast. Oh no, it was angel and demon. So the angel ones were really fast and agile, and the demon ones were slower but more powerful. And then you would encounter enemies that were color coded for those weapons, so you couldn't use the demon one on the the light one, and vice versa. And it's like this is still like fun. I just don't know that I like when I <laughs> when you make me do this. More than I would like it if I could use any weapon against any enemy, um, and uh, and 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 rather my choices are more incentivized and disincentivized rather than locked, where I have to use a certain attack. I think that's a general preference. Yeah, because I'm not with you on that. I, I generally okay, sure. think it's a really good way to create dynamic difficulty and encourage players to um, experiment with more weaponry. I think that a good way to well, the reason why I brought it up is because I think that the the really good way to do it is like a point scoring system where you get bet more points for uh, using different strategies, or yeah, uh, you can I'm... do like what Ratchet and Clank does, where it's you you have an incentive to level up all of your weapons because 
uh, when you level up weapons, they gain new functionality, and there will come a point where your weapon is fully leveled, and using it is essentially not doing anything for you from the perspective of um, leveling anything up. And so that's like a way of... Inc you can use the same weapon throughout the entire game, but you're probably not going to have much fun uh, by comparison to... Because well, I was actually going to uh, say that I'm not sure how I felt about it with Dead Space. I enjoyed focusing the plasma cutter, but I actually think it's a, it's too OP in that game. If it was something I would probably balance, it would be to reduce and to encourage use of other weaponry in that game. Um, sure, but I, I think that's the thing, right? Encourage versus you must use a different weapon. Well, you do in certain portions, depending on what enemies you're dealing with. No, I... I mean, it's, when I that's say must, true. you know, like, it's it would be stupid not to, and so you can do the challenge mode, so to speak, of only Plasma Cutter, but there are, like, Mr. Invincible-type enemies. I guess that's the thing, is, I think it would be stupid not to is something that I would prefer to be a possibility rather than it is impossible to deal damage unless you use this specific type of weapon. Um, I, I just think it's the best way to... Look, it's the point system one, um, I can appreciate it, but I would... I find it way more preferable to be like, you're, the, the, you remember this enemy, it's the fist only one, this is the axe only one, and this one is a ranged one that, unless you throw the axe with limited damage, you're better off using Atreus's like, bow to sort that one out. And then you've got the element of, like, like with Halo or any other game, where it's like ordering which one you take out first is going to matter. And I, To me, it's just a whole other extra fun layer of like, oh yeah, i got to use fist for that one. Is that mm. more viable now, or is that more viable later? It's just, as opposed to... As long as you use fists and then you use axe, you'll get bonus um, XP or something. I'm okay with that. I just think that um, having it as a visual indicator as well as... Uh, it's justified in narrative as well. That's what I was saying that I think it's, it works. And then you realize that you're being pushed into using all the mechanics um, you know, it, with, without necessarily feeling that way. Because uh, I actually feel like the point system is more overt as a message to me of like, you should be switching it up so you get more points. I'm like, oh yeah, right. As opposed to Oh, it's the ice enemy. I need my fire weapons. Um, I guess I don't know if I would call it overt. I think because I, I guess it's overt in terms of what it's communicating to you. But like at the end of the day, it is like totally. I think that for a lot of players, if they get to the end of a level in Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, and then it's like, oh, I got a B. I think a lot of people will just be like, eh, okay, and then move on. But then like people who want to play it more will feel encouraged. Like, all right, I need to what bury I mean, it up. When I say overt, is the when I see the the ice enemy and I get out my fire weapon to kill it, that feels almost like it's just I'm immersed in the world or whatever. When it's like, make sure to use your fire and ice weapon on this rock monster because you get more points. That's like me much more of a clear like oh yeah the dev said i get more points if i do it that way there's nothing like um, that binds me to that well, other than that i don't think that but 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 the thing with like usually the point system is the dev isn't telling you any specific way they're just saying mix it up use different weapons that's usually how the scoring system works is that if you're using different attacks and different weapons then you will your modifiers are higher so like if I use the same combo over and over and over and over and over again on every enemy, it's like it's going to diminish how many points that I get each time I do it as opposed to because that was the system in Bulletstorm, right? It's like kick an enemy and skewer them on like a uh, cactus or like yeah. shoot them into an electric fence. But if you just keep kicking them into the cactus, the points go down and down and down. But if you vary it up, it's like a it's a, it's a really good example of a soft difficulty setting as far as I'm concerned, because there's no... There's no, like, strict reason why you have to do it, but, like, you're probably going to enjoy it more and feel more rewarded. It's yeah, that's why I'm saying I think I would prefer it being encouraged by enemy types than a point system, because um, it doesn't feel as uh, sure, but, but arbitrarily I mean, decided. In terms, of, in terms of enemy types, would you say that, that you prefer it when it is a strict you must use this weapon, or you will find that you will yield better results if you use this weapon? Um, I'm fine with either. Uh, well, I would. I, I guess I'm asking which one do you think that you would prefer? Generally? That's what. That's kind of. Well, when I'm off, like, which do you prefer? You know, this brand of water or this brand of water? I'm like, I don't actually know. I'm I'm, I'm pretty chill with both. I, I really don't have a preference uh, on that one because the axe. Um, there are certain moves you can use with the upgraded axe that work on hell enemies, especially the runic attacks. But I. Yeah. And if the game was like, well, there's a version we ran where nothing as sourced from the axe works on hell enemies. Um, would you have preferred that? It's like, well, it would have made it more difficult, and it would have encouraged me more so to keep track of my switching uh, weapons, but I think when I'm in the middle, like, in the zone, so to speak, and knocking out really big, awesome animated runic attacks, I would prefer not to just have a moment where it goes, ah, that didn't work. 
as opposed to doing maybe limited right. damage or something. So maybe in the minutiae I would prefer it that um, less damage as opposed to zero damage, but ultimately I don't think it would affect my experience overall that much. Yeah, fair enough. That seems like a logical uh, end point of this particularly long discussion. <laughs> well, what is EFAP if not that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind playing Bulletstorm again. We're trying to see about that at some point. So many games I gotta play. People were mentioning, uh, you know, like, how long until Prey 20, 2016 was that? Yeah, yeah, that, well, the original was 2006. I think the reboot was like 2017. Yeah, everyone wants me to play the rebooted one because. Uh, I keep hearing that one's good. Everyone's under the impression that they know that I'll like that from my preferences. For I think Rags, you said that before. I think it's like the well. System Shock esque kind of thing, right? The new Prey. Yeah, so. Um, Could be one of my favorites waiting to happen, so maybe. I'm still sad about Prey 2. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> still sad about it. Wanted to drop I really in. enjoyed Prey, though. It yeah, I only, only ever hear people love I it. Really, yeah, I, it, was, it was one of those games that I really liked playing and sort of getting lost in that, that little world and going around and managing things. Um, it, uh, I'm, I'm somewhat interested in Deathloop. I got other things right. that I would play before it, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably end up getting into it someday. Once I get well, this new I, PC, I will likely start to try and... I, I need to get myself in the mindset of play one new game. Like at, you know, now at, and then. Yeah, yeah every, make sure to have that game that you could, you know, go through, finish. I'm, uh, I have the same attitude with games and also with movies at the moment of, like, going through a list of films that I know that I need to see that I haven't yet, making it, like, a routine. Wanted to drop in and say happy 200. Won't be able to watch it because I'm at Wick. Also, as a DMC fan, it's funny, I instantly recognize Five's HUD. Keep on fapping forever and always. Oh yeah, probably with yeah, like the pop forever. up with the uh with the this point system, the scoring system. <laughs> I played maybe four hours total of DS one Bloodborne before giving up. Uh Elden Ring summons helped me learn to love genre. Now I'm going through Bloodborne and gonna revisit DS one later. Oh yeah, I mean any of these things can have any result. Um, of course. anything anybody would choose as a mechanic that destroys a game, there's someone out there who's like, oh, that's the one thing I liked about it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, been watching since episode four, and I'm glad to see you're all going strong. I'll be watching the VODs once they're posted, since I still need to finish the Doctor Strange video. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Is a long one. Good luck. I I think of player health as mistake allowance, whereas enemy health determines time to kill for those enemies. That's a that's an interesting way to think about it, in a sense. Yeah, like your damage is your health allowance. Uh, your health is yeah damage allowance in a sense. It was once um, uh, explored as a concept in a tabletop role playing game. You have your your hit points for your character. Your hit points is instead of thinking it uh, thinking about how resilient you are and how much damage you could take before you die hit points instead represents how many times you can essentially cheat grievous injury so if you have a whole bunch of armor and a lot of games have what uh, ac uh, which is your armor class and the higher your ac the more difficult you are to to hit you know to actually you know you know oomph so if you have you know a lot of armor and you're a very strong and big person and you have more hit points, essentially what that means is it's the more hits and smacks and attacks you can either avoid or that they'll glance off of you. Essentially, how many times you could cheat Grievous Injury until you get to the end of your HP and now your character is like wounded proper and you're out of the fight and you need medical attention. Uh, so and that's what came into mind with that super chat, it, kind of envisioning the system in your head uh, as that. What what are those? What does hit points really mean when we're talking about characters? Yes. Over the Dark Souls Two H Bomb Guy video, I think there's also health section open that way. Health is mistake allowance. D DS2 gives you way more mistake allowance. All of the thing that ties to difficulty as well. Healing systems and amount of healing changes everything in uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne. 
Yeah, that's why we. That's why when uh, the every once in a while when someone mentions that Fringy looks like a Tonberry, how it always sort of was something in, in Final Fantasy uh, Tactic, Tactics Advance. Uh, they moved the Tonberry moved very slow, but they had a specific move that would do ninety percent of your health. Mm. And so that was something you always had to be careful of because if doing damage for flat amounts is one thing, but doing damage on percentages is potentially a way to really uh, either balance or to make sure that enemies stay very uh, deadly with particular moves is that they do percentage of your health, not just flat uh, points of health damage. Uh, Uncharted 4 will change enemy AI and placement of enemies on different difficulties. They also replace enemy types with armored variants of the same enemy type. Generally great handling of difficulty. I think that that's a good way to do it instead of just bumping up health. That's decent, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I definitely cool. prefer that to just, oh, enemies are... T the enemies being tankier is one of my least favorite ways to make things more difficult. I don't like when I feel less powerful... I'd much prefer that you were more glass cannony overall and there was less room for mistakes instead of just you have to wail on enemies for longer. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, Killing Floor 2 is one of the best examples of making the difficulty higher. Yeah, new moves. Yeah, enemies yeah. move faster. They're more, you know, they're, they're deadlier versions of enemies and they do things that they wouldn't do on lower difficulties, yeah. Uh, it says bring it back, John. Exactly. I don't either. I think of player health as a mistake allowance. Oh, wait, sorry, I read that. Uh, that one. Um, congratulations, here's to five years, or oh, year five, sorry, of EFAP, which, yes, we are currently in. Oof, wow. I know. I prefer glass cannons over bullet sponges. Looking at you, the division. Yes. I prefer glass cannons to bullet sponges as well. Mm -hmm. There's, um, of course, this will change based on the game, but generally, I absolutely prefer um, uh, that. Yeah, because uh, you you just don't want to. It's just boring and dull when you have to hit enemies and hit them and hit them and hit them and hit them and blah 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 blah. And you just see that health bar chipping down little by little. It makes you feel weak and your weapons feel anemic and it's just not a good feeling. Um, yeah. Though. I, I'm generally the sort of person I'd rather fight um, a lot of weaker enemies like a swarm than fight a single big enemy. That's generally how I am in games. I really enjoy crowd controlling and, you know, being aware of all your surroundings so you don't get, you know, sw uh, you know surrounded by, you know, the, the hordes coming after you. And I like, you know, I, I, it's like like in Vermintide. I like it when you have a whole a host of rats or something in front of you and you swing a hammer. It just clobbers you know the, the ones in front but there you know there's a lot more all around you and you have to look for your openings in your own way and really be good with your footwork that's that that's something that i generally prefer um i hate to say this but the last of us 2 has good difficulty options you can change five aspects separately enemy ai ally ai damage resources and stealth first of all no hate to say it we're happy to recognize good elements of bad things bad elements of yeah, good things absolutely. all good Secondly, those being there is very much not conclusive until we know what it does in a significant way, right? Because the AI was already problematic as fuck when I played The Last of Us 2, uh, both enemy and ally, like having lots of issues. And not to say that it's um, unusual for games in general to have AI problems, it does happen. But many of them were fucking broken as hell in, in my playthrough. Um, as for what these changes do, for example, stealth. Like, imagine it's, like, you lower stealth and it just means the enemies don't see you anymore. Like, that's not exactly something I would praise about a difficulty change, you know? Yeah, it, it would have to be... Depends on how well, it's implemented. It's, yeah, it's like what we discussed earlier with how long does it take enemies to spot you could be something. It could be how wide is that cone of vision angle that enemies have. Um, yeah, I mean, those two options, just just having those to adjust for yourself would be... I mean, that, that gives you a lot of control, just those two things alone. Praise the cosmic chicken. My book contents PD the Dead Man's Life is finally out. I guess 
contents of the dead man's life. Maybe that's where it's supposed to be. Cool. Uh, if any toxic broodling is interested in contemporary no-holds-barred satire, as only our clown world can provide, please check it out on Right Field Books. Smaller, your MOM rage is good rat. Thank you. That, well, that was the thing I did the day before the anniversary, wasn't it? That's, I put that out. Uh, that was a wacky weekend. <laughs> Today is the 20th episode, 200th episode of EFAP. Alas, 200 episodes is far too short a time to live among to such excellent and admirable massives. Can't listen in today, but I will tomorrow when I drive from Washington State to Florida. Oh, That's a, a hell trip. of a drive. Yeah. It's a we very kept him company drive. the whole way. Probably, maybe. I don't know. Um, oh, the collectivist wants everyone to have the exact same experience. How very well original, Jim. That's not... I mean, I, th I imagine uh, Jim would conclude that it's a different experience to p complete these games on the hardest or lowest difficulties, but that you shouldn't be against that happening. Um, it wouldn't be the same experience. I don't think anybody could argue that. It's category. The whole point is to change it so that you wouldn't have to have the same experience, i.e. struggling through something that's difficult. So yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the argument. Um, Demon Knight Splatoon 3 hashtag Team Rock praise the dawn. Team Rock. All right. I guess, oh, it's at Rocks and Bottles, right? Is that what it was? Uh, no, it was it was Bricks and Bottles. Bricks and Bottles. Oh, okay. All right. A, br a, a brick is sort of like a rock. Most people say brick before rock, though, for bricks, you know? I think many people call them rocks. Look at that. Look at that lovely rock house over there. I was like, oh, you mean brick. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you're not going to paint your, you're not going to paint your rock house, are you? Please don't. It's a terrible trend, and I want it to die. Yeah. Uh, most game journalists only see games journalism as a stepping stone to real journalism, but get stuck in it and super bitter about it. It's sad. <laughs> it is interesting how many people do seem to be uh, kind of bitter, like angry at gamers. They're, they're, uh, they don't like gamers. They work in the gaming space, but they actively just seem to despise gamers. A lot of them don't like Amazing games. Amazing we didn't just see it with that Jim Sterling video I did, but like just this bitterness and this, this I mean, borderline cruelty and just disdain that he, that he has for gamers. Like, Jesus Christ, what happened to you? Correct, Jim. Normies ruin everything. Well, anything going mainstream just changes. Yeah, you got to be very careful when your thing goes mainstream. Mm, hour four of 24. Congrats on 200. Thank you. Tip for just, uh, just for reminding me of Mako. I love Mako. Mako? Oh, sure. How is it spelled? M A S K O, Mako, Mako, yeah. Who that? Uh, I don't know. It's a type of shark, the Mako shark. Uh, That's uh, all I know. Re four is at fault because of the incongruous story, but CV is worse, and it's a traditional survival horror. Re was never an amazing story, but still. CV. CV. Cool. I legitimately don't know either. I'd um, say what exactly point is being made here as well, because it seems. Like we might I. Need... Yeah, I don't know myself. Me. I am indeed sorry. What game with difficulty options do you think would benefit from a single catered difficulty option? Also high rank. A single catered difficulty option? Uh, so first off, hello. Um, but a single catered difficulty option. Kind of like Dark So are we Souls, talking like a... Where they only well, have one, but lots of other games go with multiple, like God of War. Like, would it be better? Oh, okay. So... So the, the game only has one difficulty 
Like it, you can't yeah. change the difficulty. It's only at one difficulty, but maybe it's like an adaptive kind of difficulty um, or something like that. Um, and they're saying what game would benefit from that? The thing is, I don't think one is better than the other. It's the execution. I quite like God exactly. of War's um, all the options. And it's like, yeah, but wouldn't you prefer it that they spent all their time into one difficulty to try and make it, you know, and, and it's like, would you want Dark Souls to have many? It's like, no, I, I just happy with both of them. I don't consider one better than the other, so it's kind of hard for me to say. Yeah, it's kind of like, what do you think is better, one genre versus another? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, it, Yeah, it all comes down to how it plays out in the game. I think my answer would end up being boring, like, oh, whatever we switch, I just hope it's really done well. And I guess, I... Cause if let's say, for example, I pick something with multiple difficulty options and I'm picking on it because I don't like the choices they made for the difference in difficulty, changing it to one difficulty that's catered is as much of a solution as fixing the options they had at the time. I'm basically saying I'm okay with both. Yeah, there is a game. You have games like Resident Evil 4, which as long as you're not on professional mode, um, have an adaptive sort of difficulty where the better you're doing, uh, there, there's like an internal difficulty and that difficulty slider changes based on how well you're doing. So it will measure the ammunition you have, um, the health items in your inventory, as far as I'm aware, how many times you're getting hit by enemies, and it can change based on that. Uh, similarly, in a game like RimWorld, the difficulty, you have uh, wealth points and you have raid points that you generate as you play. So the wealthier your colony is, and the more stuff you have, the value of all the things that are uh, essentially yours or on the map, uh, plus added the amount of colonists that you have, uh, da, 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 stuff like that. They generate wealth points and raid points, which add to the difficulty of raids and things like that, the difficulty of quests. Uh, so that had, there, there's an element of adaptive difficulty in that as well. So there's ways to do it, um, but I don't know if I I mean I ideally I really like the idea of a game that can quarter, that can sort of sense how good you are and be able to tailor a difficulty to you but it's all in the execution because if it tries to do that and it's not good at doing it then you could either you can potentially manipulate it very easily or you can manipulate it too much by accident without even meaning to um, so it's really good to have those solid, flat difficulty levels that you can just set, especially if they're supposed to be, like, milestones intended for progression. Um, like, like, Vermintide 2 uh, is a good example where you start out, it's, it's, a, a lot of roguelikes are like this, where you start out at difficulty 1, and then as you get better, as you either level up your characters or your abilities, or you go through the progression of, you know, your account, you go up to higher difficulties and higher difficulties and higher difficulties that are in the game slowly pushing you towards those higher difficulties. Um, that, you know, that's its own system as well. So hopefully that is a substantial enough answer for you. Well, they were looking for examples of games we would change. <laughs> so like games we would change the difficulty, but they already, like I, I'm trying to lay out is my issue is that I would I wouldn't want to change them from one type of difficulty format to another. It would just be making it better as it is, whatever format it's using. I mean, interesting enough, I mean, the Resident Evil 4 example, as I said, apart from professional mode, a professional mode doesn't have adaptive difficulty. It's always at its highest difficulty setting. And that's essentially what you play when you're really good at the game. After you beat it, you unlock professional mode. So that's removing that kind of adaptive difficulty and, uh, that's generally what, like I said, what you play when you get really good. Um, games where I'd add it to? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I legit don't know what games I'd add it to. I'd have to. I'd have to think about that. I have to think about games that I play that are maybe way too easy or don't have enough difficulty, like difficult content in them, for me to access. You take an MMO, for instance, right? There's plenty of MMOs, like you know, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars Two, where there's there's content in the game that's supposed to be a lot easier and chill. Like maybe if you're just roaming in 
open world, you know, just doing this and that. But then they've got the raids and the dungeons and the the more instanced, more structured content that limits the amount of players who can do them that are far more difficult by intention uh, so that you have purposefully different levels of difficulty to go through. Most of the time I'm more invested in tweaking current difficulties that exist. I don't think I've ever come across a game where I'm like, this needs a rehaul needs entirely. Overhaul. Yeah. At that I point, mean, I probably just think the game is bad. Yeah, I think so. Um, there might be games like that, but I've played so many games that just kind of thinking of one in particular doesn't really... Yeah, it doesn't really pop out to me because normally, right, if a game's too easy, I, I bump up the difficulty. Um... Now, how the difficulty's bumped up is its own discussion, uh, but yeah, nothing comes to mind at the moment. Come yum. Also, high rank. Oh, hello. Come yum to you. Hello, fellow G-Wids. Hello. Hi, gamer. Four years of EFAP gone, and hopefully many more to come. Cheers to the Toxic Brood, and here's to the endless fight against horrible media. Praise the dawn. Yeah. Absolutely. Play Sekiro, you flumbus. One day, for certain, I'll play this. Sekiro. Why didn't you play it? There is no... Ah. Fortunate circumstance. I play Tetris to look at the pretty blocks, Jimbo Baglands. Fair it enough. is a pretty it is a pretty block game. Especially in Tetris 99 with all of these different themes that you can have where you do have different types of blocks and different art styles. It's neat. Love you guys. Started watching rags with the PCMR stuff in junior high, snowballing to today with EFAP. Now I'm in college. You've all genuinely changed my life and the way I look at media while providing constant laughs. Happy 4th anniversary. Oh, all right. Good to hear. Very awesome. You, uh, you're getting on in life. You're growing all up. Don't worry. By the time you're in, you're a pensioner, you're rocking your old chair, we'll still be there. Because we will have recorded a whole 10 years worth of bonus EFAPs well after we Happen, trust me. Um, I'll be here when you guys read this in 2077. Here's to many more EFAPs. I just ordered the plushies. Greetings, Moolah. Kick rags and get John back. I'm sure you will see John again. Funnily enough, he's been on things since, so yeah. You... <clears throat> they're not actually talking about CJG John. They're talking about, uh. <laughs> this is the one oh, episode. John Halo. No, there's this one episode where you were gone for like the first five minutes and I said John's replacing you. J O H. Oh, I think I remember that. Everyone's a big fan of that, John. You didn't even say anything. It's weird how that happens, you know? Well, maybe they just want me to shut up. <gasps> Racism. Which won't happen, ever. Also, not allowed. was answered before 2077. It's 2022, so... Very cool. Mola, I primarily play Souls games for the challenge. Also, Mola plays Elden Ring on easy mode and doesn't replay it without Spirit Ashes. Um, to be fair, I... I didn't know that Spirit Ashes were an equivalent of easy mode, and I didn't use uh, Spirit Ashes on a couple of bosses. That's toward the end, but the thing is, you'll very much more likely see me replaying uh, Bloodborne Dark Souls, mainly those two, uh, before Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a little bit difficult to just casually replay, because I can like blast out a playthrough of Bloodborne in between one and two streams, oftentimes just one. Not necessarily, the Bloodborne, uh, Dark Souls usually too, but Elden Ring is like a behemoth, and to be honest with you, I don't have much of a desire to play it again. No, I, uh, uh, compared to the other entries, like I said, Bloodborne for me is like the most replayable. Not even sure why. But, uh, yeah, don't worry, I had plenty of challenge on Elden Ring, even with Spirit Ashes on a Tried to go hard on some bosses earlier than I was supposed to. It's all very strange. It's hilarious you say hard on. That's very funny, Mahler. Mm hmm You some kind of comedian? Yes. All right. Hard World at War veteran difficulty thrag, uh, frag throwing tournament. Japan levels were insane. Yeah, I, I kind of want to stream that because I think it's really funny. 
trying to actually complete that game on veteran. Trying to complete all the cards on veteran. Or it won't be frustrating at all. Probably. The key is to just advance forward as much as you can to get over those invisible tripwires so the enemies despawn behind you. And hide while your men go out. Get an opportunity. Maybe. Um. Oh, do you have a favorite editor on your vids, or are they all skilled in their own special way? Oh, they definitely bring their own flavors. We would have seen that in the, uh, the Doctor Mar Strange would never video. choose between his children. That would be what we call racism. You can't do that. Absolutely. Unfair. Racism is bad. Don't be racist. But of course, my favorite editor is me. I'm the bestest ever. Very true. I agree. 100%. My favorite game is The Last of Us for its characters and story. The gameplay is enjoyable enough to not detract. Didn't mean anything more than it had. Didn't need anything more than it had. I don't know if I disagree with that. Uh, agree with that. I think that that game could be dramatically improved with better mechanics. As like, I think The Last of Us One is almost clunky. Play it these days. The Last of Us Two is probably similar. Uh, that approach that. Naughty Dog have in, I assume, would have been developed first in Uncharted, right? That's... What specifically, sorry? The gameplay of The Last of Us. Versus, like... Uh, probably, yeah. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if that was sort of a, like a bit of a core framework. Obviously, there are some notable differences. Uh, they say it doesn't get in the way of The Last of Us as gameplay, but I still think that you could improve it and it would be Last of Us. Uh, yeah, of course. Six hours do better. Short man bad. Uh, either way, well, so this is hour five of 24, but then hours. So. Don't know which is which, but that's how far we are into the anniversary. Six hours out of 24. Not bad. Congratulations on 200. Here's to 200 more. Mauler. EFAP Gaming Deep Rock Galactic when? Getting quick before they completely ruin the atmosphere with silly tone shifts and community memes. Hi, Fringy. I don't uh, know how they could ruin the atmosphere with those. Those seem to be the atmosphere. Really kind of through and through, which I, which I really like about it. I think that game is a wonderful atmosphere. Point. A little bit busy right now with the whole Crimbus and the... Several things to catch up on, but I'm sure we'll get on top of some stuff and then figure out some times playing the video game. I'm gonna go to sleep now. I'll keep the stream going while I fall asleep. Please make no loud noises and otherwise have a lovely stream with lots of goo. Oh, well, fair enough. Enjoy your sleep. Yeah. Uh, his basement is like a ball pit of soda cans. Do Mrs. Diabeto at all. Uh, that can't be comfortable to jump into, right? Bull pit of soda cans. Uh, that sounds... No, sounds like a recipe for disaster, actually. Making me think of the Twitch con thing. Oh, I feel yeah. so bad for that lady. That's it's really bad. Which con lady? Oh, uh, the, the... Remember the, the foam pit where it was like... Too oh, shallow? yeah, right. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, oh, yeah. That. Final injury. Did she uh, get? Like, I don't know what's yeah. come of that, but I think she had to get like pretty significant surgery. That's um, what I heard. It's, yeah, it's, it's like a it's a it's a problem, like a lifelong issue. So I'm not I'm not sure what's gonna come of that or like Twitch and what's going on there. Um, be fair to Bob, guys. He probably can't crush the cans due to the gout. Well, you can do it with your hands still. Gout's for the feet, right? I actually don't know. Uh, gout? I think it's gout. something like that. It's some bone thing. I'm not sure. Please, EFAP, nerd sync, bat girl film, or Thor 2 video. Nerd sync? Also, bat girl didn't happen. It got removed. Uh, maybe, is it maybe like somebody that's like a YouTuber and they made a video about those films? Oh, maybe. Maybe they're called Nerd Sync and they did Thor 2? Why would they want us to talk? I don't care about Thor 2. <laughs> I don't care about Thor 2. As I said in my video, stop talking about Thor the Dark World. It's, uh, Organized Chaos kept bringing it up. 
Well, Thor the Dark World, uh, she <laughs> talking because... about a... Thor the Dark World just seems to be the, the film that a lot of people default to as the worst when they probably couldn't actually tell you anything about it. That's why um, they call it the not... Yeah, I guess. I, I, I guess I find it funny because it just can't be. It can't. Not now. <laughs> not after Phase 4. They have some not off bad shit in there with the, the portal things they have. Ah, um, uh, yes. The 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 whole like convergence or whatever it was called was really stupid. Um, but like I don't know, man. Multiverse breaks everything. But yeah, yeah it's not phase four bad. Um went downstairs to ask my sister. She chose Mauler. This result was expected. I don't know what the question was, but alright, fair enough. Uh, your voice and videos are very relaxing. Good, I suppose. Wings quote of the day. Double bonus. Or are we at triple now? Here are his chat rules. Number one, don't ask to change games. Number two, don't ask about my personal life. Number three, don't tell me to play for fun. Number four, my name is Geordie, nothing else. Number five, I don't joke around, so please don't attempt to joke around with me. Really? I think. Uh, really? I are those his rules? Well, I think they're just things that have been compiled based on what he said, right? Like, that he doesn't make jokes, and he doesn't like jokes, he doesn't tell jokes anymore. He does seem like the person who despises the idea that he's supposed to be a comedic streamer, wow. and not like a streamer you take seriously. Like, I'm an MLG yep. pro gamer YouTuber, not a jokey YouTuber. I don't think, I don't like, think it's like, I don't know, I think he draws some level of association between, like, jokes as, as jokes at his expense, and he can't deal with that. Um... Like, it's, it's, uh, because I'm pretty sure there's a thing where he says, like, I'm, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's the general thing, right? Call of Duty ruined his life, but he has to play it because that's the one that gets views. He is, uh, yeah, he's an, he's an interesting character, that Wings of Redemption. <laughs> uh, it's just funny when you lay out those quotes, though, like, I don't make jokes. Or, or there was a guy who's, uh, in his chat who said, like, Happy Thanksgiving. And, um, and then he said, I can't remember if he said, like, I'm not, like, celebrating Thanksgiving, and also you're, like, British, so I'm not even sure why you're asking me, <laughs> like, as if he was messing with him just because he was a British guy saying, like, happy Thanksgiving. Like, why would you say that to me? You don't celebrate it, so why would you tell that to me, an American? It's so bizarre. Cool. <laughs> it's, Damn. it's, uh, yeah. Uh... Dang it, CJ, I wanted Molly to vibly rip Acer a new one. Like a brand? Acer? A-C-E-R is a brand. It's like a computer brand, right? I thought. Adam Sandler's net worth is $420 billion. Is billion? A million, right? I could believe million, but not... Yeah, a million I could absolutely believe. I thought you said B, billion... That's what they wrote. Right, well, I don't believe right, it's that, billion. Not safe, right, because 420. Couldn't they have just said 420 million anyway? Maybe they it's like have. a like an Adam Sandler joke to say 420. Is it, though? I don't well, know. Well, it's, oh. it's, it's dumb and simplistic, so it's an Adam Sandler joke. Wow. I, mean, I haven't watched an Adam Sandler movie in so long. Like, I don't have great. a gauge. Well, I'm sure they're not, but like, I just don't have a gauge. <laughs> sure like, they're not. Like, well, I mean, it was it's uh, Jack and Jill, right? That's like the turning yeah. point. That's uh, you know, when um, when uh, uh Al, Pac Al Pacino was on a uh, like f he presented for the Game Awards for like best performance. A lot of people were making like some meme that was specifically from Jack and Jill, like about Dunkin' Donuts or something. Like, yeah, uh, and and Jack and Jill, I think he's the guy who he. Uh, the protagonist, Adam Sandler, is trying to get well, to be Jack, in a Dunkin' right? Donuts commercial. Yeah. Well, well, so I guess it's kind of amusing, right, that this 10-year-old film that everybody agrees is shit, that's like a meme that people use to refer to, like, Al Pacino. Like, and, and a fucking venerated actor. <laughs> like, it's just the nature of memes, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he's the one that agreed to do it, all right? Well, that's true. But then, it's kind of it's kind of funny because like I'm pretty sure that there's a joke in that film where like when he sees the the Dunkin' Donuts ad, he he says that like all copies of this need to be burnt, that nobody should ever see this. It's like the and Star Wars of, holiday special. 
Well, I guess it's just interesting because it's like, well, I guess the the, the consequence of Jack and Jill is that people refer to him as like a Dunkin' Donuts nickname, even though he's Al Pacino. Yeah, it's like, Dunk Dunkachino, right? Dunkachino, right. Don't Maybe he thinks that's it. funny. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he enjoys the meme. Hopefully Maybe he doesn't he does. care because he's got, he's got like, you know, he's got an Academy Award. He's He's fine. Allegedly. What's uh? What's your favorite? Do, do, do you prefer Dunkin' Donuts or... flavor? No, no, no. I I'm curious. Uh, the Godfather or, or Scarface? Which which do you prefer? I prefer Scarface. What about you, Rags? Well, I have seen neither of these films. Have you not seen Scarface? No, I have not. <laughs> I <haven't. laughs> he said no. I've seen neither of these films. You're like, wait a minute. I need to clarify one of them. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I, I do need. I need to see them. I just they're just films I haven't seen. I just haven't seen them. I prefer Scarface, which I think is not. Is that that's like not the the correct opinion, right? It's you meant to put the Godfather above that. Mm. I would imagine Godfather is a bit more venerated in a way. Uh, Scarface is pretty venerated. It's just that the Godfather has like a prestige. It's it's like one of the yeah. general like. It's one of those general films that a lot of people would put as, like, one of the best films of all time, if not the greatest. Um, but I prefer Scarface. Alrighty. Um, congratulations on EFAP 200. You guys make YouTube tolerable. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. And I'm glad we make the YouTubes tolerable for you. We're already at, like, coming close to episode 220 ourselves, right? Hopefully wow. we can catch up the super chats before we hit the next fucking anniversary, huh? But that that'd be great. Yeah. I caught up to you, long man. When I started watching EFAP, you were on about episode eighty-five. Did anyone on the panel watch or enjoy the Northman? I haven't seen it yet. I managed I haven't to seen not it see yet. it. Yeah, which is weird, but I only ever hear good things. So that. Put Quagsire on the EFAP 200 thumbnail. Do it. Quagsire. Springy, massively terrible MOM video. I could watch DS2 three times in the same time as your video, and then at least I wouldn't have been bored. Also, adorable mm. plushie. Also, y'all, is TDK bad, actually? TDK? TDK? Um, the Dark Knight? Oh. Well, I don't know why they would say that. Why would they ask this question? This is this is madness to ask if we think that the Dark Knight is actually bad. As far as I'm aware, Name, it's considered the greatest yeah. trilogy of all time, or one of them, right? It it is considered a, an incredible movie by Christopher Nolan, the quintessential Joker Batman film that is full of many plot elements, all of which definitely make sense and character decisions slash actions slash plans for escaping police stations that, that they I just saw people line talking up about match. It all makes sense. Batman with, uh, with Robert Pattinson. And they were criticizing both uh, Gordon and Alfred as being the worst iterations of those characters in all of Batman's adaptations. I do not agree Seems with excessive. that. Um, Seems excessive. And then there was uh, someone else commented like, we will never reach the greatness of uh, of the Nolan trilogy. Interesting, interesting. Perhaps we never will, wherever that level may or may not be. Allegedly, um, allegedly. Interesting, interesting question. I'm I'm curious why they might have asked it. Hmm. Joe is usually on point with games, but anything else is pure supertism. Joe, angry Joe. Dunkin' Donuts. I don't think those two things, but Duncan Jonuts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. As far as I'm aware, he's far better with games because his like movie his takes are sorted fucking out horseshit. Better yeah. for games or something. I don't know. Yeah, he, yeah. he's much his, more reacts as soon as he's seen the thing with films and TV, but with games, uh, he takes his time. It seems anyway. Yeah, he's uh, his his movie takes are they're not worth anyone's time. Uh, Angry Joe recently released a video whining that his fans called him out for being a hypocrite in his She-Hulk review. It's fun times. 
hypocrite yeah, well, on what specific i uh, will i guess i, I think he thought it was like good or something <laughs> yeah but is that hypocrisy or is that just like i don't know <laughs> like you just I don't, I don't know. know i guess it depends on what it actually is right like the, maybe there was specific yeah. criticisms that he levied at other things that she hulk didn't get criticism maybe for, but i mean it might have been that he just didn't notice potentially though i suppose it's we ended up your job in a review right? to notice as far as i know thought the show was shit overall uh, by the end, yeah. I can't remember. Uh, I want to say that he thought positively I, of it um, as I'm it began. Sure by the end, it, yeah, it like deteriorated, which, is, which uh, it should have deteriorated sooner, I suppose. With the first but, yeah. episode, yeah. It should have been very obvious from the get-go that that show was fucking trash. Yes. Rancid is a word I like to use for it. Uh, it's, a, it's a show that you could smell, and it smells bad. All hail the EFAP crew. Happy fourth anniversary. Thank you for the memories, tisms, and laughs. Keep up the good work. Love to you all. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for being here and watching. As an interlocutor, I have learned how oh. to feel. Whoa. Mm. It was a subreddit post that was like, I recently watched the debate on Blind Manor with Drinker and EFAP people, and I have to say it's incredibly disappointing that on one end you have Drinker explaining why he didn't like it, on the other, you have Efab trying to say why he should like it using like references of accuracy or whatever. It's like they don't understand that some people just have feelings about things. The fucking first response was just like they liked it. Like that 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 was their position informed by the what they were saying. I was just like, how the fuck did this that even happen as an interpretation? Like the we we don't just often go by exactly like a lot of the motivation to cover particular topics is motivated by how much we liked the thing or disliked the thing. I will say I didn't really feel much for Wakanda forever. It wouldn't have been like if there was anything. I there. felt I felt a lot. At the I same felt, time, um I felt boredom, you know felt hatred, um I felt sadness, sorrow. I boredom, think I fell hatred, into a, sadness, a great depression. So you'd say um, it's a success as a piece of art. It's making you feel. Yes, it it did. It it made me very emotional, which is a success, I think, on any metric. That's another one that was just it's just gone. Huh? Exactly. It. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna do the billion, is it? Oh, I guess uh, I haven't checked actually. I haven't checked in a while either. I would assume not, based off the last I heard. But based that on the lack movie of people was talking just... about it. What kind? Yeah. Of... And that's just sort of that was a wisp of smoke on a windy day. Um, yes, it, it feels like it's very much in keeping with the rest of Phase Four, and that like yeah. when it came out, there were plenty of tweets about how great it was, but like that all just sort of didn't materialize in like a long term discussion on that film, just... <clears throat> which is not the same for something. If we're going to compare to other superhero films, I feel like Batman was getting talked about for a while. Um, yeah. After it came out, you know, like it dominated so, discussions yeah. for like well over a month. A lot of uh, comparisons, a lot of, yeah. yeah it definitely won't be him. making a billion. I'm not even sure it'll make no, 800,000, uh, 800, 800 million, which uh, I think is indicative of like, there's no way, there's actually no way that Marvel's looking at that and are happy. There's no way. That's, yeah. uh, they probably expected that to get a billion. I did. I mean, the first one did. You did, so one, yeah. You know, Everything, it's yeah, just all, no, it's all trending <laughs> down, isn't it? Well, yeah, because Multiverse probably should have made more than a billion dollars. Uh, it probably should have, based on what it is as a premise, you know? Oh, look at this crazy, like, Marvel Multiverse shenanigans. I think they're like, oh, we should have had Stark in it. That was the mistake. He should have showed up in the Multiverse. Uh, Tony Stark as I... Iron Man. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I, <laughs> I Like, I'm not sure that... I don't know, because I know that there's we'll been, like, rumors wars. and stuff that, uh, oh, that, that things are going to get delayed, that, like, projects are going to slow down in an attempt to d do quality control, but I feel yeah. like, <laughs> I feel like it's, it's mis- it, not misguided, because it will yield positive results, but it's like, ah, so the problem is the VFX pipeline, it's like, that's, that's good if you're going to give them more time, um, that's good. Uh, and like, oh, well, you know, maybe like we need to spread it out so that like production is, is, isn't run thin. It's like, that's also good as long as the result is that people actually get well rested and not overworked like crazy. Uh, however, w what is your guys' perspective on like the screenplays in both the people that you're hiring to write them 
and methodology that they're using to craft them and writing them while production is underway. That's something that I can't remember. It was a. It was a, I can't remember that was which director Madness. said it. That was. I think that's all of them. Um, yeah, I suppose it's, you're I, probably right. It, it's pretty common at this point. I can't remember if uh, there was. I can't remember which director said it specifically, but they highlighted specifically that it seemed really like bizarre and indicative of bad things in the industry right now. That like it is a common practice to write screenplays while production is underway. It just seems so insane. Bizarre, like, yeah, to me. you can do that. Because, I mean, how many examples do we have of that yielding good results? Like, we've got, in recent memory, we got Fallout, Mission Impossible Fallout. It's, like, the only film off the top of my head <clears throat> that the screenplay wasn't complete when it, uh, when they were filming it, that, like, managed to come together into something great. Um, meanwhile, every other Marvel film. And then, of course, the problem that the writers don't talk to one another. Nobody knows what's going on in the broader universe. I don't know how you can hope to create a coherent shared universe when nobody even knows what's happening. And they'd be like, well, Kevin Feige knows. It's like, I don't, that's not good enough, evidently. Yeah, and if you break them um, up enough to the point where, like, you watch Wakanda Forever and you're like, what the hell did this have to do with Multiverse of Madness? And you watch Ant-Man, you're like, what did that have to do with the other two? If you, I think the average audience member might then watch Black Adam and be like, what did that have to do with Wakanda Forever? And when else is like, it's I not about that, yeah. Wakanda Forever. And you're like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, I'll probably have seen well, I think, um, <laughs> like, I think right? one of the benefits that they had during, like, the Infinity Saga, if that's what it's called now, is that as, as like, a, a an overarching plot thread, the stones are pretty useful. You can just have these six stones that keep popping up and have certain attributes, and you can have stories that incorporate them while also establishing where they are, like, who's in control of them and, and, and what they, you know, like, the, the <clears throat> general status of them. They're, like, a really easy tool to build a big universe because you don't have to deal with them too much, but you can use them in ways that are really easy. I think that's what I would emphasize is that like the infinity stones are really easy uh, to use to build up a broader story. By comparison, I don't know what I'm meant to be like assuming are the broader like pieces of this universe and what they're leading to. I don't know. Like, well, like give me you remember because I do. And saw that after credit scene and they reveal uh, in the desert Majolanir. Remember, remember? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was the post credit scene for Iron Man 2, right? And, and it was like, ooh, I know that, that's Thor! I know what that is, yeah, I know what that is. Like, it's, uh, whereas I guess now it's like... Now they're like, here's a like, whole alternate universe, multiversal Avengers that are doing, and, and you're just like, hmm. Yeah, like, it's getting hard to lap, and of course, if you're doing a big multiverse story, it's gonna become increasingly difficult for me to believe that this universe is super duper, like, this universe is the most specialist, super duperist universe of them all, which, uh, it was already bad enough when, like, Earth is the most important planet in the universe. Like, the vast majority of the heroes that are relevant to the story are all from Earth. The vast majority of them are American. It's like, you know, and then you just blow that up even more into a multiverse scale. It's like, aren't there any, like, heroes on, like, those far-flung, far more technologically advanced planets that we know exist out there in the galaxy and in the universe? Like, what do they have to say about all of the crazy shit going on, <laughs> like, that they know nothing about? Like, you're living on planet Fleeb or something, in, uh, we... in the world whirlpool galaxy, and, and and then you're just there like, oh, half of us are dead now, oh, what, what? Yeah, <laughs> like, um, what's happening? In relation to, like, the reveals and cameos and stuff, they used to, I don't think they realize, they have, like, a fraction of the power that they used to in revealing one character, one idea, one location, yeah, like one event. Well, I mean... The big thing was that watching Iron Man and then Thor's hammer was like, holy shit, you're not like the same thing. But then it's like, yes, they are. Uh, well, it's yeah, Marvel. Like I said, no, it's almost boring. But the thing is, you can always recover if you just have better writing, because we literally just saw it with God of War 2018 to Ragnarok, right? Like, you go through all of 2018, and then right at the end, they show you a guy has turned up. Who is it? And it's like, he's got yeah. a hammer. You're like, oh, and that's incredibly exciting, even though you knew that that was probably going to happen. But it's still exciting because you have faith in the series. Because yeah. if, if things were going well, right, like if things were working, um, in the MCU, like when I don't, who, who showed up at the end of Hercules, right, and Thor Love and Thunder, like if he showed up, that'd be exciting. But like, why would anybody be excited about that? That's yeah, like he gives a that shit. Movie. That's actually a pretty good example because someone could be like, see, that's just one guy, so they're kind of doing it right. Like, I think part of the problem with that is the surrounding context. I have no idea 
what even is happening in that fucking movie. What it like, even means to There's like a million yeah. gods in the god city, and Hercules is like, I'm gonna come for Thor now, and I'm just like, what well, does that even, what weight does that even have? I don't know. It's hard to know what weight anything has, because the sense of stakes is just, um, shot, like it's, it's, it's done. I don't, I don't know what stakes you, I'm meant to. When you kill Magdi, and then Modi comes back saying that Thor beat the fuck out of me for losing to you, sort of thing. And then you see yeah. Thor, and you're like, I killed his son well, and his brother. Yep. Like, you know, you have characters to latch onto, yeah. Yeah, huge weight. And then you know all the stories of how Thor's killed all of the giants and stuff. And then, oh, sorry, I'm just drifting into complimenting. So mm -hmm. fucking depressed that that is his legacy. He kills everything. What a great job they did. Yeah. Uh. And there's a, you know, there's a universe out there where the MCU is great and it gets into the multiverse stuff and it's just the most amazing thing ever. I mean, look, you, you know, know, everything ever all at once weird. was right next to DS2. Yeah. It was. So much more hot. Uh, did you, uh, <laughs> you hear that Iron Man got added to the, uh, National Film Reg Registry? I did not hear that. I didn't hear that, no. Yeah. Interesting. Also, apparently The Little Mermaid was too, but just now, which is kind of just surprising. Now. I, okay. I, that I figured that, that would have been there a while ago, I would have figured. Yeah, that's strange. You figured that that would have been there a while ago. Huh. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It makes sense for Iron Man to be on that. Like, there's no reason for it not to be. It's one of the most important films. Like, that's come out in like the last 20 years hour 6 of 24 this says didn't we read a one that uh well maybe a few people said it there's a hint of substance in the meanderings there's nothing to read from these checklists free to play games are always very slash overwhelming positive um i think that was when free we to play games the, are uh... always very overwhelmingly positive that's not true I wouldn't know. I haven't checked many. I just can't be true, especially these days with live service models and microtransactions and things. A lot of the times, that's the warning sign is that they're free to play. Try to yeah. get all of their money in different ways. There's no barrier to entry. I've always wanted to give back a little. Thank you so much for all the amazing entertainment and the uh, for changing my relationship with writing. Happy 200. It's been an amazing journey, gentlemen. Hi, Rags. Hello. Very much. Thanks. Um, caveman speak. Me not no graphic. Tell me now about graphics. Me not no graphics. What now? Everyone knows the Pong is the pinnacle of graphics. Oh, I think it's because we were talking about the, the those Steam reviews where they have a checklist for graphics. The uh, graphics was in oh, there, and we were yeah. like, "What exactly does that mean?" Uh huh. It could mean a lot of things. When it's just like graphics good or bad. Congrats, EFAP crew, on 200 episodes. Guest appearance from the Prophet Muhammad Wen. Oh, he hasn't got uh, Whenever he'd like yet. to show up, whenever he wants to. Uh, Send an email. Uh, but... Graces with his presence. How is everyone feeling about the Saints Row reboot and the developers' reaction to criticism? Very concerned for that IP's future. Only heard bad things. Yeah, I feel like you should be concerned. I've heard only pretty much terrible things about it. I pretty think uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the studio Volition has been folded into uh, Gearbox, so I'm not sure what that means in terms of them making more Saints Row games. Congrats on 200 episodes, and thank you all for making me think way too hard about my scripts. Also, Mauler, sorry Movie Bob won't watch your MOM review. Maybe next time use bigger words and put your voice at five times speed for him. Yeah, maybe. Right, longest sentences well, if you put your script. voice at five times speed, it'd be an hour-long video. Yeah, but you need Hopefully to make long. sure that your sentences run for, like, two paragraphs. That's the way Because to do that's it. good writing, when Balance. your sentences just run on for, like, 40 seconds. They just go, and they go, and they go, and they go, and there's no pause. There's no well, time he, for you to think about what you just uh, heard. He writes his sentences like legislation is written. If you've ever read, like, legislation, they have very long sentences, typically. Yeah. And, like, that's how he writes. 
but the reason why, but there's a, it's it's just like full stops, man. They're they're your friend, okay? Trust me, I believe in you. What full have they stops ever done help. for me? They made reading possible. Full stops are incredibly important. All right, fine. That would be interesting. Someone like if there was a language that just didn't use sentences and like independent clauses, they were just. They just kept going and going and going. I feel like that would be incomprehensible to the point that there would have been somebody even like 20,000 years ago who's like, stop! Okay, thank you, Jesus. Fuck. All right, what were you saying? <laughs> Holy shit, take a breath. I can't understand you when you get like this. Uh, person questions a door does not equal rags poop with no door. Person equals a door. Person equals... Or dog equals poop, no door? Person questions a door does not equal rags poop with no door. I do poop with door. Prefer a, a closed door. If anything, it's you more a, do a door. A door is do truly like more a door when it is closed than when it's open. You poop with a door. Yeah, I was about to say, like, it would probably be really difficult to get it between your butt crack, you know, to, to wipe If anything, it feels with. like it's getting in the way of the process. I poop with yeah. a door nearby that is closed. Ah. Well, okay, at that point, you've got a whole laundry point. list to set up of uh, what you're pooping with, right? You've got the floor and yeah. the cabinets. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm pooping, I'm pooping alongside them. Yeah. They're all, they're all their so cheering you on. Like, I'm buddy. pooping in the immediate presence of a closed door. Uh, eventually, all roads lead back to the long. Hmm. Yeah, something to think about. Hour seven of twenty-four. Progress being made. So. See, as the as the stream goes on, the frequency of super chats is less. Therefore, we in the future, when responding to them, technically speed up in terms of time covered. It's this whole thing. It's beautiful. Wow. Uh, cheers to three years and another three and even more three years after. Hmm. I'm game Indeed. if you guys are. Cheers to the years. I'm pro... I'm pro years. Hey, just got here. Happy 200th episode. Hope the never-ending stream of sludge you've spent the last 70-like episodes covering hasn't made you want to commit on life. And here's to 200 more. P.S. I rags. Hello! Dude, if I survived watching eight Static Man streams, I think I've got, like, I'm inoculated now inoculated thanks for these four years i've made so many friends learned so much about media and how to notice details better and reintroduced new and old creators and giving me experiences i'll never forget from the bottom of my heart thank you for everything take breaks oh thanks we will take breaks we thank do. you so very um, much our, yeah. appreciate it it's very kind and uh yeah when we hear about any inspirations we better it's all wonderful part of this big old thing we call this uh thank you for four great years of efapping also hi rags hello uh why wasn't arcane a 10 out of 10 also efap pirates of the caribbean trilogy uh we will do pirates of the caribbean at some point that's a definite and as for uh, arcane uh, not being uh, 10 uh, out of 10 because uh, uh, there are a couple uh, of problems in arcane a couple of flames a couple of a couple of flames here and there i can't quite remember one i remember the like didn't explosion go off right next to caitlin she was fine at some point yeah i think that was our uh that was i think the first because that's episode f um four? Episode four yeah. jinx has quite a so, bit of plot armor i think Fights yeah people she's she also does, yeah. she has like melee combat Abilities that don't quite match up. Match I think. her, but... yeah. She looks like she is. She looks like she's skinny as a fucking twig. She turns sideways and she disappears. She gets an excuse but... when she gets the shimmer, but before then, no real yeah. Reason. Before then, yeah, she should not be yeah able to do those sorts of things. I think Good there's price. there's a scene later on when she's um, after she meets up with Vi in the Undercity. Um, Again, in one of the later episodes, she's able to like telepathically dodge a blow from like some direction she's just clearly not looking in. Um, like she's supernatural, but it, it's just little things like that that sort of add up. 
I'm trying to think of if there were bigger things. I think there are. I just can't remember. Obviously, you were all quite quite fond of that. Show. Yeah. Uh, Mom review was good. Rant was much more entertaining than I would have been by the movie itself. Frongo plushie will be adorable sitting next to Mubes and Rags on the shelf, ready to object yeah. to tisms. <coughs> well, good. Happy to hear it. Yeah, they'll make a good trio. Um, it's as if he's just talking and mentioning buzzwords to attract the favor of the algorithm. It's just a load of nothing. So, don't know exactly who we're covering at that point that fulfills that, but I think a couple people would suffice in terms of the fulfilling requirement. But we covered a few things. It's hard to say. Uh, first 810 went by quick. Don Bless and High Rags. Hello. Oh, I guess they mean 8 hours and 10 minutes have gone by already. I don't know. Uh, it's a third of the way through. Have you seen Banshee? I'd like to see EFAP crew review my favorite TV show. It's fast-paced action show with some of my favorite characters. No. Never even heard of Banshee. But I was on a real BBC or an open bar, I think, where it was described. The idea is, the premise is, ex-con takes the identity of a sheriff of a small town to try and exist there or something. It could be interesting. I know that's uh that's uh synthetic man's moderation policy. It's banshee. Ha 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 We have fun. Uh Chuba Yum Yum, a new EFAP nemesis. Chuba Yum Yum could be an EFAP friendly. Sounds like a sounds like an like an Ewok maybe. I would hang out with Chuba. Chuba Yum Yum. That's definitely that's a Star Wars name. That's awesome. a Star Wars name, Chuba Yum Yum. I like a. Have you seen that meme from very much non Star Wars fans where it just says like, "Glub Shitto." Yeah, Glub Shitto is fucking. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I I had mentioned that it's weird actually that this gets brought up. I was on a call with some other friends, um, and we, we <laughs> I had mentioned that when we would talk about Star Wars, and he said how much he loves Glub Shitto. <laughs> they need to have name. a character called Glub Shitto at this point. Glub Shitto. <laughs> I saw when Babu oh Frick God, was first like, announced, they were like, Glub Shitto has come to life now. Babu Frick. <laughs> Glub Shitto. <laughs> I think they don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like these people. These don't worry. Star Wars theories will love it. We'll just throw in Glub Shitto in there. Glub Shitto will be a Jedi Master. He'll be He'll fine. soy face overseeing Glub Shitto. <laughs> uh, I certainly do not tip my brain off for Bloon's tower defense. That game requires a fuck ton of focus on harder difficulties. True. Yep. Tower defense yep, games can be very intensive. I, I know. Love them. In the there was a bunch of them in the, in the flat. I mean, there's. Still a bunch, of course, but especially in that Flash games <laughs> era, there hey, were dude, lots and ton. lots and lots of tower. Yeah, it was because uh, Blood's Tower Defense was a big one. Flash Element TD, I used to love. Vector TD which was, was based one. on. I want to say possibly World of Warcraft or something. No, I had some for the um, like the, the iPod oh, iPhone man. games. Now there were some good nostalgic. ones. Yeah, just getting nostalgic thinking about Flash games in the two thousands. Oof. The Last Stand was a zombie killing <laughs> game on Flash. It was really good. Uh, times. Yeah. It was. It was. Um, what was it? Uh, da, 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 da. Plans for Zombies was oh, an yeah. evolution of that tower defense game. Yeah. Remember the first Plants for Zombies? Man, that shit was good. That was old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, you, do you remember when they made the uh, third person like competitive multiplayer shooter? Yeah, which I heard it's really all right. Good. Yeah. yeah, I've heard uh, I've heard generally good things about it. It's interesting, yeah, an interesting idea. Garden Warfare, that's what it was called. Yeah. Garden Warfare, yeah. Of course, because I was I was back during like the Modern Warfare <laughs> being a big deal. Well, I guess mm. now Modern Warfare is a big deal again, I suppose. Um, hour eight of twenty four. Said that right. Okay, fine, it's fine. This guy is the straw man he's been trying to set on fire. Oh. Man, I don't even know who we were covering to make some. I don't even know. Um, just came back from a fireworks show to be greeted by the sight of Batwoman. Truly a great night. 
Ah, uh, yes, because we would have had Batwoman between the streets. Ah, oh, Batwoman. Oh, Batwoman. What even has become of watching oh, Batwoman? Beloved. I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on with Batwoman. So I will say... God, watching that first season was glorious, though. Apparently, the end of part one of three of... Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Because the next one says the start of part two. I'm guessing some donated that. Signify what event we are at. On we go. Uh, Batwoman's most important contribution in Injustice was when she died, lol. Uh, is this Injustice the game? Or like a... Wait, sorry, could you say that again? Batwoman's most important contribution to Injustice was when she died. Yeah, I think in the comics, like, she died, but it was in order to do the, like, thing that brings the heroes from the, the like, regular sort of universe to come over and save everyone. Oh, so, so she, like, it helped, is what you're saying? Like, yeah, like, uh, cause, cause I think, I, damn, I'm trying to remember, it was like, they needed, like, an interdimensional portal in the Injustice universe to bring over, like, good heroes from a different universe to, like, stop Superman. I think she was helping them, and then, like, as part of that, she got vaporized, but, like, that was that was while she was helping in the process of bringing over, like, the good heroes, so, yeah. So, like, in a sense, she ultimately helps, like, contribute to, like, the world being saved. Well, all right. Uh, somehow beautiful and unsettling at the same time. Batwoman, or Efab, or both. I do not know, yeah, I do not know. Reject live action. Embrace animation. I, I, I'm happy with that. It'd be nice to see some 2D animation. What do you... I don't even know what is it, what is, I saw that was. What does like a video game cutscene count as? 3D animation? Uh, that's animation. I Literally? mean, I don't know what I meant to... Yeah, that's animation. I mean, it's, unless they asking, film it with just... Like, actors, well, I mean, they do do motion capture, but it's still animation. Uh, like, it's you did say doo doo. That's very funny. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah of course it's like it's animation. We, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's animation. We can't call it live action. We're not going to be like those weirdos watching the Lion King. I mean, yeah. it is, it is animation, 3d animation. It's all animation. Yeah. Is that yeah. the two categories of everything? Animation uh, and not animation? Well, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's live action and there's animation. Else. Yeah, like, I think yeah. so. I think those are the two paths you can take because if you're talking about like claymation or things animation, of that nature, yeah. that's or... under the umbrella of animation. Of course, from animus, Latin for spirit, so it all kind of, you know, falls underneath the umbrella of giving, you know, movement to, you know, pictures. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not sure. I've never thought about that. It's kind of funny you brought it up, but like I don't see how there could be anything that isn't either like real life filmed or animation. If we're talking about motion pictures. Either you shot it or you created it, like using tools that aren't like you know real people. I'm gonna find yeah, a way in my like, head of you're either finding you're filming kind of life or you're bringing life to non-living things in a way. Uh, the problem is that like anything that you gave me that was middle ground would like I I, I feel like the, I don't see what a middle ground could possibly be because if it is something that is like a still thing that is being moved by like like through techniques, like that's animation, you know. Yeah, in the I, whether I, it's three animation this... or motion capture or claymation or hand drawn two D animation, like it's all animation. Yeah, and it's I don't in know what, the... I don't, yeah. I get, I get what you mean. It's kind of like you've you've had the thought of like, wait, is there anything other than live action or animation? Like, is there anything other than that? But I mean, not that I, I can think, think it all, of. Yeah, I think it all falls underneath the umbrella of being one or the other. Yeah. It is life, or it's giving life, uh, the, you know, the appearance of life. Yeah, like the appearance a, a of robot that's programmed to things. move on its own and we film, that would be live action. That's live action, of course, yeah. It's like if the movement comes from itself, or it's simulated by individual movements being put together frames. Well, I mean, well, I mean, of course, remember that, like, a film is a bunch of still images being displayed at a rate that's fast enough to simulate movement. Oh, yeah, that's not um, what I said, though. For the recording of person either the life comes from them or is given to them by like people moving them well so it's it's pretty funny because wikipedia does present it as a dichotomy live action is a form of cinematography that uses photography instead of animation 
Um, so I would say like puppetry is animation. Well, um, if you film it, it's live action. But I get what you mean. But I mean, it's it, like hmm. you can talk. Maybe puppetry hmm. is the one that creates the, I don't... the confusion. Well, I don't I... know why it would create confusion, though. Like if I shoot it on a camera, like that's live action. It's it's a real life like thing that I'm moving around. So I that guess, would be claimation, I guess you would too, say right? it's. Well, yeah, but so so the reason why I find that funny is because I was thinking about that too. Because the whole thing with claymation is it follows the same principles as like every other two D animation with frames. Right? Well, I mean, think about it this way, right? Two D animation when it came to like back in the day was was um uh like the cell you know where you put like you you've got like your film and then you've got like the cellophane uh with like the the little image that you needed like the new illustration take a picture move it out move it in like I mean. That was obviously made, like, in the real world. Like, it was a physical object that existed. Didn't change anything, though, right? Like, it's animation. It's, um... It's... it's Animation is 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 where it's it's still figures that are, like, made to be moving. Like, something that is still or motionless is made to move or appear that it's moving. I hope that was actually a product of the uh, of the like chat. Paul is still thinking. I feel like he's not satisfied. No, not at all. I'm thinking about the puppet example Rags gave from a monkey wrench in there. It actually the puppet one's weird for me because I could see it being considered both. Um, are we we're talking about like a like a like puppet master kind of typical like puppets? Uh, well, like I, mean, I guess it's his way to maybe think about it this way. Like, when you're watching, like, the Lego movie, and then you've got, like, the actual, like, animation, 3D animation, like, Lego stuff, and then, like, you cut to the scene where, where like, it's Will Ferrell and his kid is, like, playing with the little Lego figures. You wouldn't look at that and go, like, ah, oh, man, that's, like, animation right there. Like, he's, he's like, moving around the Lego figures as if they were, like, characters. That's well, puppetry. he's... Like... Yeah, but you wouldn't the... look at the so puppet I... movie go like ah but that's animation like him when he's moving the the little like lego figure that's animation but like him the surrounding context is live action like you wouldn't what say if that you... right so if you had a film of somebody uh like moving a like a claymation model if you had a film that well i mean back yeah i guess i'll him. give you we could we could use this as an example there was a um so there's the new pinocchio movie which i haven't watched yet but well no we're dating this <laughs> the the pinocchio movie by guillermo del toro that's stop motion animation um so obviously you know like you've got all of your figures take picture move them a little bit take a picture move a little bit take a picture and that's that's animation obviously but like if I was watching a behind the scenes thing where he then picks up like the little figure for the cricket and is like, hey, here's the cricket, da -da -da, look at him move. Like that's not animation. That's you're shooting him like on a camera, him doing something like in real life. And can what it, about those be both? special behind the scenes footage with a speed up process and so that you have the guy doing his stop motion animation but you still the hands coming yeah in so that's the one that i'm thinking about that's kind of interesting what you've created there is in a sense an animation you've got um, stop motion animation but also live action at the same time yeah which is I kind would, of which i'd is call the that both one. um because there's nothing um, mutually exclusive about the two that means it has to be one or the other you could have them existing in the same frames of either, you know, being recorded or, you know, whatever well, it is. I mean, like, yeah, I guess, like, if you're watching a film where a character is watching an animation on the screen, it's like, what is that? It's like a live-action film with an animation in it. Maybe that's, like, an easy way to say it. You're watching something that's live-action, but it's got an animation playing out inside of it. So, like, if you watch, I don't know, like, um, like if you're watching a behind-the-scenes on a Disney movie, and then you've got the animator mm -hmm. who's got the table with like all the sheets to do the yeah and he the, flips like, them yeah, yeah and you see yeah the, yeah yeah, like, yeah. Bell, i guess we should have just referenced the street. um framed roger rabbit that's that's the oh that's a hybrid oh yeah, That'd be yeah an you're right that's of course action animation hybrid of course you're right yeah um hmm yeah well, well so i don't know where, where else you'd go to get this satisfied? kind of discussion yeah mauler what about the puppet what is it about the puppet that's upsetting you i just explained it <laughs> Did we just explain it specifically? That is what when you do stop motion animation, you're moving stuff around. It is a form of a puppet. Uh, well, sure, but like I thought we were talking about like if you had like a sock puppet. It's like, hello, I'm you know I'm I'm Jim. I'm a sock. 
Well, so that'd be Mr. curious, right? What if you recorded a video of that, but then you slowed down the FPS enough and that it was recorded in such a way that it now gets choppier, but it simulates a form of movement? Uh, I don't know. Does that, would we say that, like, if we had, like, like converting live in action movement? into stop motion? I, I don't see how, I don't, I, like, that doesn't follow to me, I guess, as a notion, right. like. I'll do it nice and slow, right? I'm not going to Odin you here, but. If I have, okay. you know, it, 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 think of an absurd scenario. I'm recording, and every 24 seconds, I move him in a very slight way, but it's all live action. And then I chop it up to being one frame per 24 <laughs> frames instead. So it's slowed right down, but then crushed together, and so now it simulates actual movement. But it all came from a live action recording. Well, I mean, yeah, that's why wouldn't that be animation in the same way that, like, when they make Wallace and Gromit, those are real, like, objects. Because it's still, it's just a speed change on a live action recording. I think the uh, speed well, sure, but, like, I could just say right? that, like, the speed change of, like, when I'm making, when you're making a claymation or a stop motion animation is, like, all of these pictures that you've taken and then you just put them together. That's and knocking out speed, all the. Right? Like, what what I'm referring to though is nothing has changed in terms of people moving things around, like uh, the actual hands coming in to to alternate. It's like uh, the video is just in slow. We I don't we call it stop motion animation when we take a movie and slow it down. Ah uh, no, I no. Yeah, because stop feel like motion there's, is there's some distinct. Yeah. Well, I, I think I mean like I I'm not. Sh I would figure that what is sort of highlighted with stop motion is essentially that 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 like you've got um like you know clay figures How or create the puppets or any number of things yeah, that are like well it's just that they're, they're not moving an model. and then you got to manipulate yeah the model and then move it just a little bit take your picture move it a little bit take your picture move it a little bit take the picture I, I think I think there's almost baked into that this notion of like curation you know that like that's almost like an element that's baked into the notion of animation is this direct level of curation over the movement um in, in a manner well, that's like ex exceedingly deliberate. I mean, do we get this in? I mean, of course, it's easy to say this about old Ray Harryhausen movies like Valley of the Guanji and, you know, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, that sort of thing. Um, but when you have, like, what about just like typical CGI? You know, I mean, I guess it's more common than well, we think. So much that we don't think, even really I, think about it. Pretty much all I mean, CGI. I mean, that's actually cool CGI animation. Like yeah, when, um, it, like when Iron Man's flying around and shooting stuff, that's animation. Yeah, that's it's animation. Moving. And it, it, it exists alongside live action stuff so much that you don't even really think about it. Um, I guess, I guess, normal. well, I guess, I guess that's kind of highlighting the point, right? Is that like the distinction itself is sometimes very useful to identify and other times it's like, well, I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, it's all in service of a, of, of some form of entertainment, right? Cause yeah. like all it's video games is animation. Yeah. Every single video game is animation or has, anim well, no, probably every video game has some level of, <clears throat> some level of animation, like just even going through menus or something. There'd have um, to be I mean, a, um, it's almost like you'd have a choose your own adventure kind yeah, of style, like animation, a, of course, like that. When well, characters well, what stuff. if it was, what if it was a film? Oh, text, it was all like film. Uh, oh, well, you I mean, filmed I guess, all of the possibilities and you would choose which one is which, like instead right, well, of, I guess that'd you, be like an FMV, right? Like those FMV games that were like live action filming. Yeah. And um, if you, and as you could just make a everything. whole bunch of different recordings that were, oh, that could be one? super, you know, super in depth, detailed, and a lot of them, so that you really did have like hundreds of different alterations of what the characters do. But it, instead of it being, you know, rendered graphics or whatever, or you know, it, it, three well, models, you know, and whatnot, well, that's an interesting one now that you made me think about because I know that a lot of video games in the nineties would, yeah, uh, yeah, have, missed like, and things of that reference. nature, yeah. Well, I think Mortal Kombat, like the the characters, that was uh, photography that they put into the game. But I mean, I guess that would be an example, right? That's animation. You've got like still images that you took, and then you've integrated them into the game to simulate movement. What if if what what if it was well, if it was all game, like like I said, an entire game that's nothing but FMVs. It was well, I guess not even FMVs. It's like a movie. It's almost like um, like well, the I think the that's actors like that. Yeah, yeah, actors that have. There's no animation involved. It's all live action, um, and they just film all of the possibilities, and you just use a button input to 
do the possibilities essentially and the actors you know they they do all the thing like a film and they go until it's time for you to make another choice and it's all no no animation whatsoever and you can toss some for like the button like the ui you throw that in of course but that's you know separate from the thing itself but um but yeah i mean i guess supposedly you could have a video game that is that doesn't have graphics uh well, I mean, <clears throat> I guess the the problem is that if we're describing graphics as being like wholly artificial, like it's all graphics, right? Like in a sense, yeah, but watch, not in the sense of like graphics. no one looks at a movie and is like, wow, look at the. Oh, I guess they sort of do, but it, it, the video game graphics, not like. TV. But I feel like that's that's we're getting back into the same discussion that we're having here, right? Where it's like, well, it's all graphics. Like when I go watch a, a film, that's graphics. Like it's not graphics in the quint in the way that it's often used colloquially, but it's all graphics. Like, what is graphic design? It's just, like, imagery. That's that's what it describes. I guess maybe the argument would be that it's... No, actually, no. It would just be, yeah, that's what graphics are. It's just imagery. If part of this is to do with when it's defined creation or presentation. Or is a different... I'm curious about... <laughs> but a live-action movie inside a video game... Yeah, I mean, that's literally a thing in darkness, right? The darkness. Uh, uh, what was the? I'm pretty there sure was a... that's like a recent video game that was like highly acclaimed that was that, where it was all live action, but then you have like inputs, but it was all filmed. It was it was all real people. What was there? It was a video game, and I think it was called like the darkness. You're like a mob boss or mob mob guy who gets killed oh, well, and you get like oh, tentacles and everything. Speed. You know Need for Speed, like the old Need for Speed games where they had like live action like cutscenes. No, I'm I'm talking about there was a there was a full movie inside of the game that you could watch if you wanted to. I think like the protagonist was on the couch with his girlfriend, and if you wanted to just remain in that cutscene or remain there on the couch watching the movie, the whole movie would play on the TV. Oh, you know what? It's funny that you've said that because I just saw a thing on Twitter that High on Life like yeah. has that too. That has like four Probably. movies that you can do on TV. Got a oh. on one of them. Really? It's weird to see them of all people are doing this big old because they did a video recently where they did a big old Rick and Morty thing. It feels so well, odd because think... it's so like mainstream and almost iterative now. But RLM, the like hyper hipsters, are like doing collaborations. It feels really well, strange. Well, I mean. That... I, I get what you mean, I guess, but I think I think Rich Evans he just got like a voice in that game, right? I'd hope so. I fucking love listening to him say anything. I hope he says AIDS at some point. Well, well, I I don't know if he's if is he one of the guns, maybe because I mean that's maybe. what most of the celebrity because I got Michael Cusack is uh is knifey <laughs> the Australian knife who likes to stab and I I like how everybody got mad about that, but I just find it amusing. I don't know. I'm sorry. I find it amusing to have an Australian guy playing a knife who just enjoys stabbing <laughs> and says it. I was I ap apologies if you'd mentioned this while I was looking it up, um, but you had mentioned High on Life. Yeah, that's that's a that game has a full movie in it. <laughs> yeah, that's oh so yeah you didn't hear what I said. Okay, that was, I, I that's was why we I, brought up High on Life is because that okay. is an example of a game that's got a couple of full length movies in it. Okay, I got you. There's um there's one for yeah the one I was thinking about thinking of was uh To Kill a Mockingbird is in the game The Darkness. Oh uh, just, okay. Destroy All Humans the original had Plan Nine from Outer Space in it. Did it? Yeah. Oh wow. okay, interesting. Uh da da da. There is. I'm just going through this little. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I I feel like it's going to be interesting to watch the the discussions about high on life is because it seems like it's kind of the. Uh, it it seems like it's kind of the maybe like the point where people start to consider. I, I, a lot of people are saying that it is like Rick and Morty humor, but I I feel like that's kind of an interesting observation because it's like, but it it's kind of it's got parts of Rick and Morty humor by the looks of it. But like, also kind of not too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like forgetting that because I I don't think Dan Harmon has anything to do with that game. It's just Justin Roiland and like another team. Like, uh, it's we haven't seen it, but Solar Opposites is probably one that would be worthwhile to watch to see what it looks like when it's Justin Roiland and not Dan Harmon there. I mean, because I mean, I guess we got a litmus test. Like, Community is Dan Harmon without Justin Roiland, but Rick and Morty is the two of them together. 
what does it look like when it's just Justin Roiland as like the main creative voice and then it has guns that I, I guess uh, the thing with video games is that like man it you really like run a risk when you have lots of dialogue in a video game because like if people don't enjoy the dialogue it kind of can make the experience like very difficult oh yeah like if you, if you don't enjoy a game where a character is called knifey and just yells about how much he enjoys stabbing you know like if, if that's really annoying to you like you might not you might not well, want to play like that comedies. game that's like pretty much all comedies is man right, like a bad if comedy, the comedy doesn't hit yeah. it's the worst thing in the fucking universe is <laughs> yeah. a bad comedy god and damn again, and, and i mean of course when it's a video game it's a video game that's trying to be a comedy if you're not enjoying the comedy and you also need to have that while you're trying to play the game like that can be like uh that game's probably going to be incredibly divisive like if you don't enjoy the humor, like I, I feel, I feel like you're not gonna have any fun at all. I, yeah, I want to play it though. I want, I want to see for myself. Like I want to see if I, if I like it. I, th I think what I'm more interested in with that game is like, so putting to one side all of the gimmicks with like the fact that the guns talk and everything. Does it have fun combat? Like, is it fun to shoot the guns? Um, is it, is it, you know, is, is it strong as a shooter mechanically? <clears throat> It's one of Though the I... um, one of the reasons why Stanley Parable was so beloved when it came out is because what it was doing was done very well, and if it wasn't done very well, it'd be a fucking miserable well, game. I guess it's the it same as Portal, right? Like if insightful. Portal wasn't funny, well, if Portal wasn't funny, then it would still be like a really great puzzle game. Um, but I, I guess, like, I don't know, like if Gladys and Wheatley weren't saying funny and interesting things, maybe that wouldn't be as fun. I guess that's a game where it's like if the writing wasn't great, it wouldn't have been as encumbered as, as something good, like yeah. High on Life, um, where like if that if beloved. you don't find that funny, you probably can't play that game. Like it seems like it would be very difficult. Well, I mean, the fact that the whole the cake is a lie thing it took off and it was so big was because that the game's writing was so good and memorable and funny that sort of gave birth to that being shit a thing. Other worse uses of I. I, I think, um, <clears throat> I, uh, damn, I had, like, a train of thought there to do with, like, dialogue and, uh, oh, I think, um, I, I think something that is, uh, that seems to be more common now is that I think it used to be way more common that in, like, a video game, characters would talk in cutscenes, but when it was gameplay, they, like, never said anything. Um, yeah, like, Ratchet and Clank would probably be a good example. Like, those characters talk in cutscenes. But when it's gameplay, there's, like, never a moment where Clank chimes in to say something. Like, it's just pure gameplay. Until you hit a cutscene, and then they'll talk again to other people. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas in the new Ratchet and Clank games, they, like, are always talking. They they talk all the time, like, during gameplay. Well, yeah, and some people would call that a problem. But uh, I think it's, like, pretty obvious from playing 2018 and Ragnarok that... They probably decided early on, like, we got a lot of moving around to do, and climbing, and... Obviously, loading screens as well. We might need dialogue. What can we do to facilitate that when we have a character that doesn't really want to speak at all, and then a character who's his kid? It's like we throw in this uh, chaotic third element, and then we can get loads of conversations going. And then almost every time uh, you move through the Bifrost, or if you go to a particular loading area, like areas that you'll commonly end up, they have like end stock uh, conversations that are playing, and you can exhaust them all, and then it'll for the rest of the game, but the assumption, of course, is that you've uh, pretty much completed the game by the time you get through. Like, yeah, that was yeah. obviously placed there because they were like, we're just trying to avoid you getting bored, and so then comes in like, well, that's not going to work very well if everyone finds them annoying anyway. Well, I hope they don't. Well, I yeah, that's like the risk you run. If your characters are interesting and funny, or you know, like, then, um, then you'll be okay, but if they're not, like, you're in a lot of trouble. It's, yeah. um... I mean, it's because for as much as there have been complaints about Ragnarok with characters, like, telling you about puzzles and stuff, like, I would not want to lose any of those conversations that we get, like, as they're moving between different locations. Like, just, it, like, if the trade-off is that they, they give me the answer to puzzles or I get no conversations during, like, you know, traveling to places, I'll happily take them. Meanwhile, I guess to compare to another Sony cinematic game... Like, Horizon Forbidden West, every single time that you do anything in that game, like, Aloy will say where you need to go next, or, like, what you need to do. But there's nobody around, she's just talking to herself. I was actually about to say, does she and not have like, a companion? 
No, she's she's just saying it to herself. Like she's reminding herself it's, what she needs to do. It's, that one's um, weird because people talk to I talk to myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not a crazy Likewise. person. It's a mark of high intellect. Uh -huh. But how Is do it you actually can, or that that's legitimately what I've heard. I, I've heard it, right, generally right, people right. who tend to talk to themselves are it often is a sign of high intellect. I'm a very oh, high well, IQ self talker person too uh, myself. -er, so right. <laughs> uh, log that one away for later. Uh, point being, but people do talk to themselves, and it's normal for people to do that. So having a video game character talk to themselves, it always it's weird because it comes across oftentimes as like when like in when Atreus does it in some of the sections in God of War, it's like uh, this just seems really man. I don't I don't I don't like it. He like the way he's talking to himself isn't it just doesn't feel right. So the way so, that I would explain it is that when I was playing Forbidden West, it's like you're not talking to yourself, you're talking to me. You're telling me where I need to go. You're like Yeah, you, you gotta write it to here. really feel like the character is talking to the well, character, not the character is talking to the player. I feel like um it, it's it's kind of funny because even though those games didn't do it, Jack and Dax or Ratchet and Clank, the characters don't talk to each other during gameplay. Like, if they made those games now, it's it's easy, right? You just have Jack notice, or Dax to, like, notice or something, and then the two can talk about it. And then because, and, and hopefully if you've got, like, a dynamic that's set up that's entertaining, which is pretty easy when you've got two characters, right? Just give them, you just have your straight man and your wacky guy. Like, that's an yeah. easy combo, and then you can have them talk to each other. But then again, I don't know, it's, it's it, like, if I were making a video game, I'm not sure if I would want to uh, have the characters talk during gameplay. It feels like it's such a... It feels like I'd need to be very, very, very confident that the dialogue I've written is going to be, like, broadly entertaining. Though um, I will say, um, I, I would be interested, because one of my favorite games is, um, well, of course, Hellblade Sinua Sacrifice mm -hmm. is, very, is very relevant to this topic, though I would like you guys to, you know, play it at some time. It's not very long, but uh, to play it at some time and to see how that element of the story is done. Uh, it, it's done whether you think it's done well or not. Um. Oh, I've just thought of a, something that's relevant. Uh, you guys heard oh. of the game for Spoken that's coming out like in a month or two. For Spoken, it's the, one, it's the uh. one that got memes with the dialogue like a few months ago. Oh, the, that one. You know, like no. oh, like the dragons thing. Yeah. Um. Oh well. So that game has like the characters talking to each other in it, but the game includes an option to turn down the conversations to, like, only story essential, which is kind of funny because, like, I look at that and it's like, it's not great that you feel like you have to do that, like, in terms of it indicative of, like, your confidence in your own writing, but at the same time, like, that's probably a good idea to have an option in a game to, like, reduce dialogue um, to, like, story essential, like, in gameplay. I'm not sure. What do you what do you think about that? Like giving people the option to like reduce dialogue that is like meant to be advancing character, presumably, but is not like story essential. Given the conversations we've had about the nature of like essential and inessential uh, Leave scenes that to the and dialogue, author, if they really feel like their dialogue isn't important enough to be viewed, and therefore can be turned off. That is up to them. Uh, personally, I probably wouldn't make that in my game. Uh... What what would what would you do if everybody told you that they hated the dialogue though? Like they before it came out, you know, it's when when synthetic man says gonna... I hate listening to Mamiya talk. I'm like, okay. And if he said like there should be an option to turn it off, I'd be like, fuck no. That's, that's <laughs> the story that's happening there. If you don't like it, right. then don't fucking play it. I guess. Right. So it would just be like a matter of authorial intent. <clears throat> the author is telling you it's okay. I'm not upset. I think <laughs> if like if you guys if you two made a game and you had some character who talked to you a lot about the state of the world or whatever, and that you're like, we introduced this thing, you can turn him off if you don't like him. I would then be like, so you don't think he's necessary then? Right. Like, because why would it be in there unless you thought that it was important? And it's like if you guys said, yeah, no, he's just a bit of fun. Like, you can be turned on. I'm like, okay, it's just, um. I guess. I guess. Um, at what point do you say, like, can you turn? Can I turn off the story? You know, can I? I guess I, the equivalent yeah, of that is not I, playing the game or playing non-story mode, but it still right, feels weird, which, right? Like, but then again, I guess it's 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 on the other spectrum. You'd have like, because you know how like a lot of games now say, "Give me a story" is like easy mode because yeah. you're not really engaging with the mechanics much. Well, even skip cutscenes could be the equivalent of skipping or removing the story. 
Right, and like everybody hates unskippable cutscenes, don't they? Like Especially that's like a universally annoying thing. Yeah, I think part of it is it it's it's not generally like a mode of the game. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, remo uh, this is what I mean. removing a character entirely from being able to speak versus skipping their lines in the middle of a conversation because you've heard them before. Yeah. Something two different things. Yeah, yeah. Plus, because generally cutscenes, you can skip the each cutscene individually. You could choose to watch them if you want, so that option's kind of, you know, partially baked in, but it's up to you and the choice is yours, and it you know, in no way removes, you know, anything from anyone who doesn't... You know, I guess that's the thing, is, like, if you had written banter that was really funny and you knew it, you would never feel compelled to put in a button to make it so that people don't have to listen to it. Well, in the same way that you wouldn't want to be like, I mean, you can do this maybe on certain modes, but if someone was, everyone hated Bed of Chaos and Dark Souls developers updated it so you can play a mode without the Bed of Chaos. I feel like that's <laughs> strange. But okay. Well, because of course, it's it's kind of like, it, it's kind of a, a half measure, right? It's like, you know, there's the alternative of making it better. Exactly. The, the, <laughs> the thing that we feel like we're avoiding here is like, why are you removing this character from annoying dialogue I instead of just Trying to make better dialogue, I guess. Well, yeah, because I guess with Bed of Chaos, it's really stark. It's like, you're just avoiding the problem here. Like, you're 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 avoiding fixing something that you know is fucked, whereas with dialogue, it's like, oh, but you just don't like it. It's like, well, is that really it? Or is there, like, actually something wrong here that's worth addressing? I think this is um, something that Theo alludes to every once in a while, yeah, because a lot of people have the automatic... This is kind of like um, advice for writers that are noise. In the same vein as your character should always be the rest of the plot right you should always be the active participant in the same way it'd be like in in games player choice is always better like more choice equals better when it's like is that even true is, is that, that even... true yeah is it... how much it sounds pretty it, intuitive yeah. right like who doesn't love more choices for example like i don't know it, you're walking down a hallway and you see like a closed door it's like if that door were openable and there was stuff behind it that would be better it's like is that true that just improved the it's, game. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's um. I I in fact, man. Because now I'm thinking about Ratchet and Clank again. I remember that uh, it was a video where uh, it was a uh, gaming Brit was talking about why he thought Ratchet and Clank three was like overrated, which I disagree with. Um, and one of the points he made was like, you you'll notice like in Ratchet and Clank one and two, like usually when you get into a level, um, there's like two paths forward. I can't remember what he said specifically, but it was along the lines of, this is better, right? Like, this is this is just better, and I don't really need to explain why. He did explain mm. why. But, like, the conclusion was, two paths is better than one path, essentially. Um, which, I, f I feel like that's something that on its face is like, oh, yeah, of course, but, like, not really. Like, it depends. Um... It, like, I don't know that it's strictly better or worse that a Ratchet and Clank game gives you two paths or one path. Um, because, of course, the argument someone could make is like, well, yeah, but it's one very tightly choreographed, like, path that's going to be super engaging yeah. and, and, like, varied and disparate. Um, it, it's, it's ultimately, it's less a matter of, like, good or bad and more a matter of priorities. Do you want to emphasize to the player that when you get into a location that you're going to explore, like, this is your, you know, go, go look around and see what you can find versus this is what you're doing, um, go do it. Like, I don't know that you could say that one is necessarily better than the other. Um, but I think I think it's like a thing that if you present it to somebody, they'd be like, well, yeah, of course, two is better than one, right? Like, it gives you options. Um, but we've, I'm pretty sure we talked about this recently. Is um, I don't like it when stealth games let you go full-blown action hero and, like, make that a viable path. I think that stealth games should encourage stealth. And, and mm. the best way to encourage stealth is to disincentivize combat. I would just make it so that you're not very... As long as they design the game around whatever format they're going for, right? Like that's sort of where I am too. I'm fine um, with all guns blazing if they've built it so that it's rewarding in both ways. Um, I would. I guess I suppose that my counter to that would be if you've built it that way, that's cool. But I'm just telling you personally that my preference in a stealth game is when stealth is like the way to play. Let me ask um, you this: is is a stealth game like a genre argument where it should be descriptive? Uh, I that's an interesting question because th what I'm thinking about right now is Human Revolution was not great for action like that is a stealth that is way better as a stealth game than an action game Mankind Divided is like a lot better on an action standpoint um and but I mean the, the argument that they would make is yeah but we were never making a stealth game we were making an action RPG um we want to give players like 
the, the the whole point of that game is like emphasizing player choice. And so by creating one mode of play that is like heavily disincentivized or just not very fun, um, it's kind of like counter counterproductive in terms of like their goals as a game. But if you were like making a thief game and it's like, yeah, Garrett can just like go in with like and just kill everybody. He can pull out a sword and like do this crazy combat and lop people's heads off and stuff. It would just be like, man, that's like really weird. It just feels like it runs contrary to the notion of being a thief. That like you can just bl bl like blaze through all of these heavily. Maybe that would be There's like a difference an between a from, robber um, and a burglar. I, I guess it would be um maybe maybe there's like an argument that stems from like from like ludo narrative dissonance actually that like it 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 seems more congruent that um Adam Jensen depending on what abilities he can upgrade should be really proficient in combat. Meanwhile, yeah, because you can yeah. yeah you choose a yeah you essentially choose and a, he was a security guy like he's up, a, yeah and police officer as well um so like there's sort of you know like if it feels like um like it makes it's it's more viable with him being like robocop that he can essentially like build in spec into combat meanwhile yep. garrett is meant to be this very nimble thief like he's 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 a thief he's really good at sneaking can't just around change his skill set you know by yeah it's well yeah and it reflects in the way that he plays like if you play that game as a, as a stealth character like he's it's it's really satisfying but like the combat is not fun uh and he's not good at it like if there's two enemies that get to you it's like oh game over you're done like <laughs> you gotta run away you can't like fight two or more people Ooh, really is that acceptable to you then if combat. it's incredibly difficult but still possible um i i think that uh i think that i i don't like the idea that the still that like that uh being detected and, and like combat is impossible I think i think that that should always be like an option i just don't think it should be a very viable option like you can do that if you want but it's going to be like so fucking hard um because they want to encourage you to play in a certain way which is to play stealthily it's kind of like one of the yeah i'm i'm fine with that but i think my preference is like Mahler's, where i like a game that takes into account uh you know you, you having different options and tackling it in its own ways well um, i guess of course i'd rather what it... i would what i would emphasize is the level of options that you can afford somebody that are still stealth like that there's a breadth of options that are stealth yeah that are still have a robust a different set play of stealth style, mechanics, right like yeah don't give you me know, shitty you know, like, stealth mechanics. It it might even better for you to just not even bother if they're just crap mechanics. Well, that, that's kind if of you want it to be an action game. Like, just make it an action game. It's kind of the place where we're at now. That's really lame. Is that there aren't a lot of stealth games anymore? And I think the reason why there aren't a lot of stealth games is because a lot of third person action games have stealth elements, but it ain't the same. Like it's not like you don't have like Uncharted does not have the same stealth as Splinter Cell, or or like uh or Metal Gear Solid um or uh or thief like it, or, it just or, it ain't yeah, it ain't the same yeah. or or deus ex which is which is more so meant to be like trying to be an action rpg um i think i i know that i've said this and it's something that i would wholly maintain which is that i think that stealth games should never have forced combat ever i think that like a stealth game even if they have forced detection should always make it a viable option to get back into stealth uh, that probably like, happens all the time in stealth games where that's the thing. Oh, you've been like you've been, been detected, detected or the mission begins with, with it. you have yeah. to yeah, you have to escape now. Yes. But I, I don't want to be forced to fight or kill anyone. I, I uh I, I actually I really like it when stealth games give you like the ability to play through non lethally. Like that's always been something that I really like is when a stealth game gives you the option to go totally non lethal. Again um, though, with the forced combat example you gave, like wouldn't my answer is always just going to be if well, it depends how they implement it. What if it's like really good? Um, I would. The thing is, is that I don't know that I would be able to make like any strict, like, uh, totally uh, rock solid argument in favor of it. I think that it's kind of just runs contrary to, to like, I guess the uh, the general principle of of trying to create a stealth game, which is to essentially empower the player through in a sense, disempowering them, putting them in a position where they're incredibly vulnerable, and it's it's much more about using but your wits to win. at that wits point, it could to, just uh, not be win. that kind of game, right? Uh, well, it could just not be that kind of game. I, I guess I'd be happy to say that this is very much like one of the rare examples of me trying to appeal to a genre category to sort of yeah, guide I assume the decisions that are being made. To provide up, a particular if, experience. If someone said, like, I hate Shaun of the Dead because it's betraying horror by having so much comedy in it. And this one said, well, it is a horror comedy. And they'd be like, well, no, it's it's horror. And I don't, I don't like 
this whole injection of comedy into horror, I think it ruins the whole atmosphere. How am I supposed to be scared of when David gets torn to shreds, when this whole movie is fucking batshit nonsense, in terms of everyone, like, not taking it seriously? Why should I care when uh, any of them die? And it's just like, I'm, I'm sorry, man, that's the genre. If you don't care, you don't care. If you do care, you do. You can't say, like, oh, it just it shouldn't be comedy in this. It's ruining the horror. I think there's I mean, value I, I could, to having... Go for it, actually. Uh, yeah, I think there's value to having a lot of games that are not because I wouldn't even if they were all done well, I feel like I still wouldn't want to have every game as a mix. I would want games that are specifically stealth games I or think, specifically action games. What I think I would there's a lot of value to, is, uh, to that. I agree. Um, but and I and I think to expand on it, something I would add is that part of my argument stems from an understanding of just the reality of like how people the world behave that we in live games. in. Um, well, a couple of things. So I think the reality is that when you're making a game, you have to make choices about what you're going to focus on. It's just the nature of like creating any piece of art, especially one where multiple people are working on it. You have a budget and time frame. You got to make choices about what you're going to focus on, and it just seems that it's often. The games that focus very heavily on being a stealth game, if they can focus in on making that great, it has fantastic results. Meanwhile, when games try to spread out a little bit more and then build out like, oh yeah, the stealth's going to be viable, but so is going to be the action. Like, it can be like a, oh, like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, mine would be more of a, a, a pragmatic appeal as well as like an appeal to the things that I personally enjoy, which is like, when you've got limited time, and you need to you need to like figure out what you're going to focus on to make it great. I would just like prefer it if if there was more of a focus on making stealth games that are like very heavily about the stealth rather than play it your way. Um, like I, th I think an example I would highlight is I feel like Dishonored is a good example of this. I feel like Dishonored is um I like Dishonored, but like non-lethal stealth is kind of like man, you're not giving me a lot of options here. Um, and I feel like the reason why I don't have a lot of options is because a lot of the most fun and engaging stuff in that game is lethal combat. Um, uh, it's it's, it's kind of like a game... I don't know about Dishonored 2 so much, because I didn't play that one very much. Okay, yeah, yeah, Dishonored um, 2, I, the, my playthrough of it was a, uh, full stealth, non-lethal, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I, and I, I played as Cor... Well, you, you can play as either Corvo or the other one, and Corvo is definitely the more... It seems to be the more stealthy, the the person whose powers and abilities are more stealthy oriented, right? Um, and and I, I just really really enjoyed playing through that game in that way, similar to how I played through Human Revolution was like non lethal full stealth, and of, not um, only does it give you seem to give you so much more mileage out of the game, but it's just uh, I I really I really enjoyed that. Part of what I was trying to say about this with with Shaun of the Dead as a perception point, right? It'd be like you've rejected to comedy and you've ruined the horror when they would be like well no it was always comedy and horror in the same way that this you've just highlighted like a lot of games that go into stealth and they ruin it by having like action options i would say that there's plenty of examples where i think they they stapled the stealth on embarrassingly rather than the other oh way well sure but like yeah but that was what i was saying before one of the reasons why i think that there aren't stealth games anymore is because of a lot of like third person action adventure games that have very light stealth elements and, and then like the stealth is really lame but it's like almost viewed as ah, but you're happy, right? There's this is stealth, and it's like, but it's not though, is it really? Yeah, <laughs> like, that seems like a different not... problem. Well, no, I think I think that the reason why there aren't many stealth games anymore is because a lot of third person action adventure games have stealth elements, and for whatever reason, it's it's just I I don't know how else to see it because like from the '90s and the 2000s, there are a lot of stealth games, but with the turn of like the third person cinematic action adventure game, there's just a lot less of them now. Well, yeah, people are just um, less incentivized to make full stealth games. That's an obvious answer. Yes, and I think that the reason why that's happened is because there's, there might be there may well be a perception in the market of like, well, what are you talking about? There aren't stealth games. In Horizon Forbidden West, you like hide from the dinosaur robots, and then you, you go on the grass, and then you, you attack them from the grass. But like, it's missing all of the other elements that a lot of stealth games have, like being able to like move around um, incapacitated enemies. Or uh, leverage disguises like in Hitman, or um, or well, like a thing. whole bunch of. I would hope of nobody would actually tools. call Horizon a stealth game. In the same way that I hope. Uh, no I don't think anybody would call it a stealth, a stealth game. game. Some people might call The Last of Us a stealth game. I don't know. They I might would actually hope look action at adventure like... come before stealth in that one. Stealth uh, elements. Oh yeah, almost certainly. Almost certainly, they would. I. 
I I might be wrong in my perception of that, but that's what it feels like to me. That the reason why there aren't many stealth games anymore is because there was a perception that the likes of those games have sort of filled that market. Um, yeah, even though too even many though they are not around. a suitable substitute, they're not a substitute. You know, like the stealth in The Last of Us compared to the stealth in Hitman, it's absurd. But, but then again, I guess there's an example, right? Hitman is one of the few, like, stealth games that still feels like it's enduring today because I've been making new that was ones. the thing, I haven't looked into how stealth is doing. I, I assume there's still options in, like, the indie market uh, as well. There are, definitely, there are definitely stealth options in, like, indie market and middle market. It's just that back in the 2000s, it's like Splinter Cell, Metal Gear Solid, um, Hitman, uh, Thief, you know, kind of into the early 2000s. Like... They were games that were more prominent in the in like the landscape. Um, whereas now it's like I'm not sure what I would point to that is like sort of like a relatively big budget stealth game. They just don't seem to be around. Well, yeah, um, but coming back to, to the the choices thing, right? Like I I was trying to suggest that I'm fine with them as long as they implement them well. While you were like, I prefer a more focused. Just like that just sounds like you want more stealth oriented games as a primary genre. Title, but yeah, yeah. So the problem yeah, is just people much. aren't making them. Uh at the moment, it's it's just not in the. Uh, there's just there's just not many of them around. Yeah, which I guess uh, unfortunate reality of like you know in the same way that people are like too many Marvel is currently dominating the blah 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 and everyone's just like you have to wait until it's not. What else we can do? Uh, in terms, of I guess the thing is is um. I don't know. I feel like we need a um because everybody's been asking for a new Splinter Cell game for a long time, and I feel like it's never going to happen. Though I <coughs> I I heard that wasn't there a rumor recently that they are going to make a Splinter Cell remake. Well, I'd be um, curious to see if maybe, stealth still sells, right? Well, I guess it's it's kind of uh it's maybe maybe that will help because what we've seen with like Dead Space remake and and like Resident Evil. Because the Resident Evil 2 remake seemed to spur a lot of these, like, new third-person, uh, like, uh, survival horror kind of, like, resurgence, when that felt like it was a, a genre that was really, um, like, you had a lot of the sort of first-person, like, you know, amnesia and stuff like that, but now it, it feels like there's been a reminder that games like Dead Space are, are like, viable. Uh, completely but I completely forgot, I, I guess, yeah, I guess amnesia is, is, like, you have to do stealth throughout all of that, in a, in, in a sense. Oh, right, like, that those types of horror games have some level of, like, involved stealth elements. I mean, to, it, like, the primary <laughs> gameplay, I guess, it, realizing... It uh, more. what are your options, though, when it comes to, like, stealth in that game? What does it look like? Well, it's less to do with how many options there are with stealth, and more to do with how that's... Uh, like, once I list the options, it's like, what else have we even got? It's, like, not really much else. Oh, I see, right. Um, so, like, I guess that's an interesting one, right? Categorically, it has to, to like... fall into stealth, because there's not really much else it can do. Right. That was kind of the same with, like, Alien Isolation, right? Where, like, you didn't really have any viable options to fight the alien. So, well, like, in that sense, it was a stealth game. As much as that's true, you still had all of the android combat, and you had a whole weapon reload. Oh, okay, right. I didn't play the, I didn't play much of that game, so... Yeah, amnesia is, like, you get point. no weapons, a source of light, and about it. You run and hide, and run I, and hopefully don't disturb the enemy. I think that that can be, that can be engaging... As like a, a cool oh, absolutely, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I think I think what I like when I think about like a stealth game, like what is a really cool stealth game? It's like I get to play a character who is really adept at stealth. Probably not very good at combat, but that's okay because they have so many op. Oh, pardon me. They have so many options by way of stealth in terms of interacting with the environment to make it easier to maneuver through it. Uh, means of taking down enemies from afar or close up. Um, the ability to, to to have further interactions with the environment in terms of being able to distract enemies with objects or move uh, incapacitated enemies to make it easier to not be detected. Like a sort of longer term stealth strategy in a lot of these places. Because that's like a common thing, right? Where you knock somebody out, but you don't hide them. And then somebody sees them. It's like, oh, there's someone here. We are now in a heightened state of alertness for a while. Um, and you have to deal with that situation where there's kind of like a longer play and it's just like the general the the really the really exciting thing about stealth is just making it through like just managing to pull through and, and get something that you need um is, and, i don't, and I don't mean to keep pushing back but like saying stuff like um you know probably not very good at combat i'd just be like well unless they do it well right it's like probably has long range and short range options it's like well unless 
want, as long as they're done well. I'm fine with only short range options as long as they're done well, engaging. Like all the answers to these questions, I don't really care if it ends up being called a stealth game or not. I just want it to be good. So like, because what you're describing sounds like just additional mechanics on top of additional mechanics, which you can pretty much do with anything. Like, wouldn't God of War Ragnarok be better if Atreus had another bow that fired slower? Um, but well, the thing damage? is that I could just that there that there are games that exist that are trying to be a lot of these things uh, at once, and and end up being something really cool. Like that, this this like as a broad as a broad description of like a stealth game. There are a lot of games that fit into that category. Um. And that's just like a preference of mine. I just like that more. Um, and maybe I like it more because we haven't had that for a while. Um, but I, f I feel like it's a very unique experience that's super valuable. Um, that just hasn't, yeah, that just isn't very prevalent at the moment. And it's Pretty. worth considering that when you talk about video games, the more robust and balanced and fun that you make a particular mechanic in the game, the more you're sort of encouraging people to engage with it, and if your creative vision is to have a stealth experience, but you have a really amazing combat system in it, then you're almost kind of shooting yourself in the foot in terms of the creative vision that you have for your own game and what you want people yeah. to engage with. I mean, there's an irony it's, it's there, right? It's kind of how I feel about Dishonored. Like, that they've made so many options for combat that it's like, man, like... It's probably like the most fun way to play it, but it's not the way that I wanted to play it. And it's kind of like runs contrary to what you told me that you wanted to like sort of create. Well, and and on the odd. point of the robust thing, I'm not even sure if it's, I think we can see what's happening as a result of uh, what the people want, so to speak. Because I, I, I don't think us three really represent the uh, the common people for what what is, I don't mean that in, in a denigrating way. I mean, if you look at Ragnarok, right? A lot of people, Theo noticed it about my playthrough, Metal was doing it and... Uh, Static Man said he was doing it. Just dumping all of your your runic moves once you unlock them in the late game, and they mostly take care of a lot of enemies, if not the bosses. Like, why do they exist, and why do they do that when they could, instead of spending all their time in these runic moves, they could just make a much more complicated combat system? It's like, well, because it balances everything out. It's the cinematic moves that the average person can just press one button to activate and feel powerful uh, using. And it's like, when you watch six of those in a row with incredible particle effects and Kratos like yelling and all the enemies vaporizing as you use them. and you get all the biggest ones at the end it's just like gives off really satisfying experiences that people are really happy to buy while there are players out there including myself who are like if I get to learn all of these special combo moves with all of my weaponry I might be able to like do really well with just the axe and not using any special magical abilities but it would have been nice maybe if they'd given me more. I've said several times there's several options I think they missed out on, but ultimately, like, I imagine they're probably aware of that. And they were like, yeah, well, we get better results if we just get more runic moves in. We added a whole new weapon, and that's two extra runic moves, and they're all specific to a spear, and like, look what it's doing. It's, it's working, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, even though it's much simpler. It's just like, you press one button and it activates, and then it does all these things. Uh... It, it, I guess what I'm trying to get at is it almost sounds like the opposite of what we just recommended in terms of what you should do, and yet, is that going to be more or less popular? I wonder if stealth is actually a symptom of all of this. It's like, you have to make a pretty complicated and uh, specific kind of game. Is that even worth it right now at a AAA level? Go to appeal, get results. Um, I mean, that may that well point. be... What what a stealth game provides as, as like a... um as like a, a power fantasy is very different from a, like an action game. Yeah. Cause it's, I feel like stealth games and, and horror games have something in common in that like a lot of what they get out of the player is the disempowering of a, of a character. Um, and, but, but because you're disempowered, like the triumph is that much more satisfying. Like, um, like if, if Doom's power fantasy is being like the most powerful entity in that world, um, like, the power fantasy that a lot of stealth games would provide is essentially, like, being able to pull off something really, uh, really difficult, um, and doing so without being detected. Uh, like, if you add that as an element on top, that there's something very satisfying about that espionage, like, element. Um, I think that, I think that if, if you think about, if, if like, if I were making a, a stealth game and my objective was to make somebody feel empowered through being disempowered, like, to, that, that like, 
you feel really good about yourself because you maneuvered through this area totally undetected. You got every single thing that you could find. You learned a whole bunch about like this place and the people that were in it. Uh, and you achieved your objectives like really with, without like encountering any problems. The like to some level, that feeling of satisfaction may be diminished a little bit if you knew that there was always the option to just blow through and kill everybody um, and, and then get through. It's like, well, that would have been a lot faster and you would have gotten there and maybe that was way easier too. It's like, oh, I don't know. It feels like that might run contrary to my objectives uh, in terms of the game experience that I'm trying to create. It may well be that you create a combat experience that's really fun. It's just, oh, damn. Like, that that wasn't what I wanted. That wasn't my goal. That wasn't my intention. Um, and it diminishes something that uh, either I was going for or that I think that there was a player base that I wanted to appeal to would have wanted from that experience. I don't think there's any, like, strict argument to be made about what, like, a stealth game should be. I feel like any ought claim is I mean, going to be, like, no stuff all the way back at hell, There right? is no, a stealth game should be X. It's the, the game is X, and that could be considered yeah. stealth, depending on our genre. Well, that, that's kind of what I'm saying, is, like, it's it's all super normative when it's making appeals to, like, what a game ought to be. Of, I, get, I guess the problem is that if somebody says, I want to make a stealth game, if they say that is my express goal, then there would be ought statements that would follow that. If you want to make a stealth game, you ought to do this. As opposed to, I want to make a game and whatever it ends up being is what it is. Right? Like, whether you're using... Because genre is descriptive. Um, but some people will use genre in a prescriptive way. Like, in terms of their objectives when creating something. Whether it ends up being that is a totally different question, I suppose. But then that enters into a whole bunch of problems where it's like, I want to make a horror movie, but I am going to have a couple jokes in there. And they're like, well, you're making a horror comedy then. It's like, no, 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 not that many jokes. Like one or two, like right, yeah. Uh, 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 it, well, I mean, I guess these are inevitable problems of that somebody's stated objective, though, isn't it? Like, if if that's a goal that they want to have, is that they're going to run into difficulties if they state an objective? Well, the thing is, but I mean, I've, I've already made it simpler than it actually is. If someone said, "Yeah, you can have five jokes," but then more than that, it becomes a horror comedy. It's like, no, it doesn't. No, <laughs> it's not even an amount of jokes right, that turns from horror agrees. to horror comedy. Yeah. Horror comedy is more so referencing like a, a, an entire genre that's not even it's not horror but has comedy in it it's like a whole different tone and vibe horror comedy uh it, it's like an absurdity to it it's like the difference between alien and Shaun of the dead wouldn't it, like is horror horror comedy yeah horror comedy i would go as far as saying but there's there's way more right like it goes way further like the peter jackson horror movies i think it's called brain dead i can't remember what he made but they're they're of a horror comedy i think i i'd have to check them again because just a, an absurdity that that doesn't quite exist in the same way as like a horror movie with a couple of fun jokes in it. and so it, it, trying to understand that instead of just trying to make a coherent tone and a coherent set of characters it's just funny right because like a lot of us are inspired by bigger projects and it's like i want to make a fantasy like lord of the rings and then as you're making it you're like wouldn't it be a really cool twist if like aliens facilitate all of this and someone else goes we well, can't do that that's sci-fi and then you know um, and someone else is like well no just Whatever you think is working, go with it, and then we'll worry about the whatever genre it is. Point. I think that one of the reasons why I find genre to be interesting by, in games compared to films and TV shows is because I think genre, in terms of a video game, is like much more relevant than in a it's film an or a TV show. How you engage with it more directly. Um, I think I think it's just that that um, like, what is a first person shooter? It's like it's a game where you shoot things from a first person perspective. It's like got a very like. It's there's definitely like blurriness, right? Like it, it like in Deus Ex when you go into um, cover and it's third person, it's like, what does that mean? But ultimately, like there is first person shooting in this game. Um, like well, that's that also is a different it's, thing because we're talking about tonal genre versus like mechanical genre. Uh, sort of the difference between when you go to an art gallery and you're looking at a blue painting instead of telling someone this is a, you'd have to put blue on this painting. This is a painting that is it, it's a blue painting that you have to make you have to make it right cool. um movies don't really have the yeah. equivalent of fps versus rts versus third person or anything they yeah it's the it's oh well, other... sure but i mean i guess the reason why you bring that up is because like stealth is part of that like i would say that stealth is similar to those descriptions in some sense yeah the genre of a of, of a movie is you know how you you know it's what you see 
and it might you know it has something to do with your expectations sure oftentimes but it's is what you're watching as opposed to the genre of a video game which is really really it's like how you physically interact with a thing um which is a lot more inescapable it's actually making me think about the 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 mechanic of first person third person like your viewpoint versus the horror comedy fantasy adventure but then also how those things are engaged in the form of stealth being one that like describe because if i had said it's i guess stealth comes under like versus action versus adventure versus kind of like when you try to figure out certain dichotomies that exist right can you have like a first person third person shooter it's like i guess you could have both but you can't yeah. have them at the same time um and i guess it's kind of like yeah it would be the same with like it you know, it, 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 in a game where there is no stealth, that's not even a possibility. As soon as you mm -hmm. see enemies, you fight. Versus a game where well, what would it be called if the game meter. splits the screen in two and you've got a first person and third person view at the same time? Hmm. Uh, what does what does that mean? What does that even what does that look like? What I just oh, said, it right? probably looks uh, instead of a mini map, you it's just the view like instead of a. I mean, I, I guess Mahler describes it pretty succinctly. It's it like a split screen down the middle and one of the views is a first person view of what you're doing and the other side of the screen is a third person view of the same thing all right well then i guess that would be both of them at the same time then yeah <laughs> i mean it probably happens more often than we think where a mini map might be replaced by a drone footage or something like that and we also just see the player in that footage uh well i guess right like in, uh, I mean, in any map playing, is uh, sort of a third person yeah, view in a way <laughs> that's a bit more uh, abstract, but, you know. People are gonna be mean to us about this tangent, you know? They're gonna say, like, it's not obvious, you fucking One idiots. person's <laughs> gonna be so glad they got their money <laughs> for it. So, I don't remember yes. what it was. That, what I, was the, I, don't I think know we're far was. away from answering whatever this yeah. is. Whatever the question was, whoever you were, whatever brought us here. I can see these go. musings. They're just uh, random thoughts about categories and stuff. Yeah. I don't even know how we started, but we went a long way. Yeah. That is okay. Because this is like hour seven or something of this catch up. That's a guess. I have no idea which one it actually is. You know, I don't know. We're here. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, I guess, yeah, it came in. The, the super chat I read was reject live action, embrace animation. All oh, right, because we're talking about. How long that Stop feels motion like that versus ago, right? yeah, animation versus yeah, that does seem like it was an hour ago. That would be funny to have someone trace the listing of uh of conversation, how we, we move from one to the next to the next to the next. At one point we were talking about NPC dialogue. Oh god, you're right. I was in there somewhere. <laughs> you're right. We Not sure how we got there or how we moved away from it to our end point, but we Um Triple Bonus. So this is a, another quote from Wings. I don't like this game, you know. I don't like this game. I'm doing this just so I can get four hours done so I can shut the stream down and go cry. Aww. Nice. Um, damn. I wonder what one he was talking about. I wonder if Wings liked Ragnarok. Did he play Ragnarok? I think so. I no. think he would associate really well with a depressed, fat character with family issues. Oh, but Thor dies at the end. We all die at the end. Uh, 50 cents for each anniversary. Congrats. Oh, thanks. Rhino milk for all. Hello, all. Love you all. May the dawn's light shine upon you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, Gary, I know you know I'm shadow banned. Just ask Alex Jones. Shadow banned from YouTube? Chat or from all the thing? Shadow banned from the Imagine God shadow banned you. Oh, what would that even look like for God to show? Well, I guess ghost. it would be. It's like you're you're like the like in movies and stuff. You're the ghost version, where people just like you're dead, but you don't know it in a sense. Where I guess well, people be, just don't you react. You have to be a literal to you. ghost, and you can't. But the, the, okay, so the problem is, it needs to be that you're talking, and you can't necessarily tell no one's hearing you. Kind of, yeah. Or Which you have to try really, really hard to get people's attention. Because if you're shadow banned, a lot of the times you can interact with people. It's just really difficult. Like the system's working against you. So you would be like if 
it, you'd have to like almost go up and like touch people to get them to notice you. You're so much, uh, you you just yeah. seem so non-distinct as an entity that people don't even really know you're there until you like physically cause them some kind of intense sensation, like yelling at them in their face, That's actually, shaking um, them, bumping up against them. There's a Doctor Who tech thing. It's it's in the David Tennant Martha season where they, he invents a thing. I think he calls it a perception filter or something, but basically the idea is that you wear this like necklacey thing and if anyone looks toward your direction, they get put off from seeing you. They just don't really register you. They just sort of they see nothing think, almost. It's not invisibility, but it's basically like putting it's just off putting whatever is there. I think there's a similar spell. I forget what it was in some some sort of fantasy or whatever. I don't know if it was I don't think it's Harry Potter, but it might be like a Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder sort of thing. A kind of spell that doesn't make you invincible. It just alters the perception of the people around you to where they just don't care or they just don't even think to really notice you. You're just sort of always around but no one you know no one just sort of cares i suppose yeah which is sort of like uh it's it's an invisibility adjacent sort of thing um you're just so normal and mundane that you're just supposed to be there and no one cares about it which is an interesting you know alternative to you know just casting invisibility Wow, is it really another anniversary stream already? It doesn't even feel oh like it was God. that long ago when I started watching EFAP all the way back in the single digit episode. Congrats on wow. reaching two hundred. You are a you are a veteran. You've seen some shit. Oh, the times have changed since then. Venerated classic EFAP enjoyer. You know, I haven't heard the word venerated very much at all, and I've heard it four times. Yeah. I say it a decent amount of times, I think. I say it more than most. A heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you. This year hasn't been easy with the stress of senior year, figuring out what I want to do in life and the passing of my dog, but EFAP has helped. Oh, we're very glad to, very glad to help you. It's very good right. thing to hear. Since this mm -hmm. came in a decent while ago, whatever it is you're up to these days, it's going super well. Senior year of, that'll be high school, I assume? Could be. In college, I know. Mm. Oh, God, yeah. Hope you're having fun, whatever it is you ended up deciding to study. Wolf is the opposite of Ethan Ralph. He cares about his family and doesn't let internet hatred consume him. Uh, Ralph's an interesting character. Indeed. Uh, not this time. Not late this time. Happy 200 part 2. Thank you. Yeah, well, we need to be on time because we need to go to sleep. You know, like you, you start late, then uh, you have to stay up a little. Late. It's like super awkward way to start the anniversaries, right? Because the preference is all three of us start as soon as we wake up. Yeah. And the opening hour is more so us just like getting coffee slash waking up. Uh, ordered my plushies. Congrats and love you, massives. Oh yeah. Screw Pedro, vote for Don. Yeah, I mean, Don for president, I guess. Seems like a, he seems like a guy that I could, uh, yeah. He, he's seen some stuff. You know, he knows the value of being kind to others. Perfectly reasonable drawing that's simple enough to understand. Meme repository. Allow me to introduce myself. Oh, yes. He has interpretations, yes. Congratulations to the long men from a jaw of orange marmalade. Was hoping to catch more of this live, but my bad my bed calls out to me. Hope you all have an amazing two hundredth episode and here's to many more. Also Your hi dog. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, hello. I hope you slept okay. Yeah, I guess is the implication that they stayed for the like ten hours at this point and oh, yeah. maybe yeah. Um I heard Joss Whedon doesn't like Punisher because he just solves his problems by unaliving people, and that's boring. Is that really all he has to say on Punisher? Because that would be lame. It's gotta be more complicated than that, right? Surely. But, well, because it's not only... Let's pretend for a second that that actually is Punisher. It's like, well then, you can make that more interesting, can't you? Yeah, exactly. Like, why would you pretend like it's just the dead end? But, or, um, or, or, I mean, 
of course, the easy one. Put him up against a character with a different uh, viewpoint, like Daredevil. Just put those two together. How does he deal with a creature that he can't kill? Yeah. You know, like... What happens when he runs out of bullets? What's he gonna do? Yeah, this... You know what's funny? <laughs> I could see people being like, you can't put Punisher in a position where he can't kill the enemy. In the same way that you oh, can't put God, Batman in a position. Same with Batman, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think people would better understand our whole goal with creating dramatic situations if we brought up Punisher. We'd be like, the interesting things for Punisher then would be that he comes up against enemies that he... Someone who's related to him, or someone who can't be killed, or someone where he runs out of the ability to end their lives. Like, these are all... Well, I mean, I don't know. How about the hypothetical of, like, I don't know, like, if you kill me, a bomb explodes and, like, a hundred innocent people die. You know, like it's why it's my heart or something. You just you, that's how it works. Yeah, you can't Damon's kill me. Switch. But if you let Ooh. him leave, he's gonna keep serial murdering people or something. Right. So, like, what choice is this character? I mean, it's it's a, that's obviously a ridiculous example. But like <laughs> the, the nature of the nature of a lot of what 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 makes a character really interesting a lot of the time is this is who they are and this is what they believe. We got to put them in a situation that directly challenges their perspective. Um, yeah, it's, that's, it's in the same that's way like, that we always run hypotheticals. It's what I, I it's like I said, it's what they did with Kratos. Like some people got upset by it, right? We read out the example, but they were like, Kratos was correct in the first game when he said close your heart. And it's like, close your heart to people who are trying to kill you. And it's like, okay, but what if you come across someone who's trying to kill you because they were forced to do it? Did you just close your heart to them? Exactly like And yeah, Kratos obviously is, uh... decided, no, you shouldn't actually. No. I was wrong. Yeah, that that like the the perspective that I presented to you worked then. It doesn't work now. There, there is an incompatibility that needs to be reconciled. Well, the the way I would put it is, it was insufficient. It's it's applicable for a lot of like ninety five percent of the time something. Yeah, like it's not you. an all encompassing. Yeah, there's uh, just a little bit yeah. I need to add because there's times where certain other things happen. And yeah, I, I I think that's the way to do it. And it creates really fucking powerful payoffs where it's like shit. I didn't think about this. I didn't see how this could happen. In the same that when Batman's is like, I will never kill. It's like it's okay to see him kill someone in a scenario that's hyper specific, and he accepts that. Like, yeah, there are times where it's going to be because the principle isn't about uh, whether or not you kill. It's it's about like trying to prevent damage. Like it, it usually comes under some other reason, right? Like he doesn't want to create more of what happened to him as a child or something, or he doesn't mm -hmm. he doesn't want to become the enemies he's trying to stop. Like there's something underneath, but you wouldn't say he's become the enemy's trying to stop by killing someone to save thousands of others. Wouldn't be like, oh, that makes him a criminal now. He's like, well, I mean... Uh, and I suppose that's for the story to deal with, but... Um, why not? Why not do it? The funny thing is, like, I, I just hate the response that we can't put him in that scenario. It's like, no, give me a more interesting that's answer. That's absurd to say can't put him in a scenario that challenges him. That's like... That because in the case of Batman, like when people like you can't do that, it's like so you you just don't want to have that story. Then you just don't want to deal with it. Well, and you, and you know, like uh, another way people try to get out of it is like if he pulls the lever, he didn't do anything. It's still the joke of the did by setting up the scenario. Now, not going to the the crazier hypothetical where it absolutely is his responsibility only. The one with the Joker is interesting because if it were five of my family members, um, or. I guess, uh, some kid or something, and Batman chose to save my five and then said, really, it wasn't me, it was Joker that set all that up? I'd be like, no, I know, but you still made the right decision and thank you for doing it. You saved five. You know what I mean? Like, I would never have seen that scenario and been like, well, Batman has nothing to do with any of that and I don't even need to see or talk to him about any of it if he was the mm -hmm. one that pulled the lever and saved the five family members. Of course, I consider him responsible, at least to some extent. But then, of course, we, we had to come up with the hypothetical where it's exclusively his fault. Faulty technology. Yeah. I saw a tweet the other day um, saying, like, everyone only hates Snyder's work because he, he finally made Superman relatable, and I wanted to kill myself. Superman's yeah, always been relatable. That's, like, that's... It's, <laughs> that's the, 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 part of the point? The, well, I'm happy to concede well, Clark yeah. Kent, like, the human side of him is the relatable yeah. side. The the Superman, the one who's hyper-strong and just saves everything, is, like, not necessarily... You know, like, get digging into that far. We we relate to the, the human that was brought up by his parents to do good, like, of course. I guess the thing is, is that there's always, like... Because sometimes, like, in some stories, it's presented that kind of... A lot of stories will sort of agree that with Batman, Bruce Wayne is the alter ego, right? Batman is who he actually is. That's, yeah. like, a, a lot of the time, that's kind of the agreement. Um... 
Whereas I think with with Clark, it's it it varies. Some stories will present it as like in some sense, Clark Kent is like the personality he presents to the world to conceal that he's Superman. But other times, it's in fact a lot of the time, it's like well, Clark Kent is who he is. Like it is core. It's funny you say that, right? Uh, because of Kill Bill, uh, he makes the speech about how the special uh, thing yeah, about Superman yeah, is, yeah. which a lot of people take issue with. Because yeah, it's kind of funny. Batman, I think it totally applies to that he at his core is Batman, that Bruce is something he makes to get through the days and stuff, even though we will refer to the human as Bruce. Um, but Superman's aspect is like, Superman is this... Uh, it, it, it's funny because it, it, it's a source of uh, expressing like really awesome meaning within these things, but then if you use the wrong words in the wrong ways at certain points, it'll like completely damage someone else's perception of how they've built it all up. So got to be careful, right? right? Is, is That's what I'm saying, because... Yeah, I remember people being like, Bill was fucking wrong. He's got it backwards. He's not even talking about the right hero. It was like, I mean, probably understand what he's trying to get at, though, right? Yeah, like the the notion. But yeah, I mean, man. yeah, it's, it's uh, the idea that Superman wasn't relatable. It's like that. It's like Rag said, that was like actually kind of the point is that he's actually incredibly relatable because his. Yeah, like, sure, in terms of like his superpowers and, and like his, his history and connection to Krypton and stuff, all of that's crazy. But, like, he grew up in a small town on a farm, like, with regular human parents. It's kind of yeah, like the idea the... is he's, he is, he's a human being. He's not an alien. Emphasizing his alien nature is, is to miss the point. Which is kind of, like, it's the thing that's now made me, like, really dislike the interpretation yeah, the of Snyder Superman. Stuff. Is yeah. that it's so much... And a lot of stories do this. I get... It is a pet peeve, and I know it is. But it bugs the hell out of me when characters refer to Clark as Kal El. Like yeah. it, that's not his name. His he name wouldn't is Clark. want to be called that. No, uh, he wouldn't want to be called well, that. His name forget, is Clark. Right? People think this is like a source argument. It's like no, no, no. It's when you are brought up on Earth since a baby. Yep. And then it's the same for us. If we were told we're from Krypton, actually, we wouldn't do what he does. We would be like, what? Exactly. I don't even know what that it's means like, exactly. But also, like, I lived on Earth with human parents and human friends. Like, the human beings here are the people that I have a connection exactly. to. Like, Krypton is this place that doesn't really mean anything to me. Or, or not that it doesn't mean anything. Like, of course, he would probably want to know about it and doesn't know what happened to, me, to like, like, his birth parents and everything. Maybe, well, it's or... just, if the dichotomy is Earth or Krypton, it's it's Earth. He's gonna he's gonna yeah. go for Earth. Earth that's is like my home. He actually lived. Krypton um, had his chance, his right? <laughs> <laughs> Why did they do that? Why did they make? Oh, there's why did they make this why, did they why did why did Zod make him drown in a pool of skulls? What the fuck was that? Because there's so many <laughs> bad guys. Fuck it. So many batshit decisions in that movie. Isn't it cool uh, yeah. to have Superman? Because it's visual. Isn't it cool to see him falling into a river of skulls? That's what happened. Yeah, the, the imagery of him falling into a river of skulls. And they so thought that cool. Was cool. That's Superman. Isn't that weird? Edgy and <laughs> lame. Well, Super edgy. Yeah. Anyone else remember that old Flash animation, Dick Figures? Nostalgia yes. always hits different. I do. Uh, I remember that. And it's funny that that's nostalgic, but yeah, that's over 10 years old, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure that one of the guys who worked on that is actually like the head of story or involved in some capacity on the Mario movie. Um, kind of interesting. I mean, as for dick figures, I was, yeah, that's, that's really funny to me. <laughs> I, it's incredibly juvenile and stupid, but, like, that doesn't, that's, it's funny. Speaking of lived a happy live, when are we going to get an EFAP gaming of live alive? Live alive? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know, I don't know. I've never heard of it. A great Gothic phone peen session on EFAP 200. Yep. Just got on the stream, fell asleep drunk. How drunk are you fuckers? All love. I don't think... It, did, did, did. Uh, didn't drink during... As far as I... I might have had, like, a beer or something. Uh, but I, I don't... I, I didn't get I drunk for that. I point. No. I can't remember. Probably not. Probably not for the 24-hour stream. Because uh, it can make you a bit sleepy. And it's not what I'm looking to have... Uh, and these marathon seshes. I mistakenly congratulated you on three years when it's actually four. How could I be so <gasps> foolish? Fool. Fool that you are. Okay. You made things right, yeah, though, so that's okay, yeah. Hope you guys had a happy 200 years. Yeah, it's been crazy, too.
Can't believe it's been 200 years already. Still going strong. Yeah. 300 years. It's crazy. Have y'all ever been like, we are so done with this uh, idiot fucking, no, no F. Stopped watching? Oh, what is the closest you've ever been to stop watching, I guess? Have we ever stopped watching a video out of pure just like, eh? Um, yeah, we did. With uh, Wolf and Jay. Remember? Which one? Which one? It was uh, Neon Demon. No, I think they mean video on EFAM, not... Oh, oh, because I think it's interesting because I think that is one of the very few movies I've... I don't know if I've ever given up on a movie before apart from that. Dude, you know what's so, crazy, though? You saying that to me? We have up on Peacemaker. Almost, like, built that memory up for me in my head because it was almost deleted. It was, like, in the recycle bin. And then yeah, you, you just I, I'm it actually out surprised. There. I'm surprised I remembered. But we, what did we watch after that? Uh, we watched... Um, it was on... I watched, we watched it through Discord, I think. Uh, you showed it. What was it? What did we watch instead? It wasn't Seven Psycho Pass, was it? No, this we we watched. No, this was this was after Seven Psychopaths. Um, what did we watch instead? It was. I think I was. Oh, uh, it follows. Oh, that was a movie I was glad to see. Warts and Something all. we recently gave up. We 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 stopped watching Peacemaker partway through episode two or three. Was it? I, I just want to clarify. They're asking. They specifically said like an idiot, as oh. in like watching our YouTube. Oh, uh, I can't remember if we have. I we haven't. We haven't private. We um, tend not to. It, usually, we don't give up because uh, it might be that something gets recontextualized as you go on, give them their fair shake, so to speak. But um, a lot of the time, it can be. I, th I think there's a lot of coverage where in the last like third of the video we are just like exhausted. yeah we're just we're ready to check out like if if a video is very iterative over and over and over on the same things it offers nothing new it just says stuff over and over if it's repetitive over and over all the time repetitive over and over we we really don't like that um uh but yeah i think that would be something i don't remember specifically who of course it's happened but off the top of my head i can't remember specific videos some, though, they keep you they keep you reeled in uh, to the very end. As a forty three year old suffering from chronic depression since my teenage years, you guys have brought so much joy in both good and bad times. Heartfelt thanks. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. Excellent. That's very that's wonderful. Glad to hear about the latter part. Sorry about the former, but hey, hope you. Kicking mm. on, they say. Uh, this just says Etu rags. What you did. Dab someone in the back, maybe, in, a, in <laughs> an image. Etu rags. Etu rags. That's Etu rags. Amusing. Check out the black phone. It's a pretty great thriller. Also, hi, Dor. Hello. Maybe we will. EFAP games pivot to Fortnite when? Never. I'm not interested in playing Fortnite, no. Vampire Survivors is next Super Chat catch-up game. No, I have not played Vampire Survivors before. Not familiar. Uh, he is the Mothra in that situation. He is, but all right. It's currently 1 a.m. August 28th, my birthday, and EFAP 200 is still going, and you guys decide to play Gartic Phone. Man, it's the best B-Day gift ever. Currently smoking on the ganja and dying, y'all is funny as hell. We often have fun with Gartic Phone to the point where we probably should play it again soon. Draw some more we, fun yeah. images. We do need to play that. It has been a while. My favorite cinema is that Mafia movie where Joe Pesci plays a loose cannon that messes everything up. Also, hi, ER. The Goodfellas we're talking about? I do not know. So many Mafia films to, to get watching. For you. Mafia. Another great year of content from you guys. Keep it up, you massives. And your multiverse video was awesome, long man. Onwards to 250. Also, uwu rags. Oh, ooh-woo, to you. Uh, 
That man is playing Galaga. Amazing line. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's funny. Uh, Bridget is a dude. Don't know what that's referencing. Uh, it's probably, uh, I guess, Bridget. No hmm. clue who that is, though. The Aussies are here. I like to think Fringy, oh. Shad, and Meme live on the same street and fight the emus together. Happy 200, everyone. Oh. Well, that's just like a regular occurrence. You get up in the morning and you, you put down the emu uprising and then <laughs> get on with your day. Bend them off. Have a drink on me, Mubsley. Happy 200 and to a thousand more. A thousand more. Yeah, I mean... It's I, possible. I, honestly? That'd be, that'd be 20 I, years. I'd say, yeah, that's absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. Don't discount it. Yeah, meaning 16 years until we reach episode 1000, right? Something like that, uh, yeah. Well, that'd be, yeah, we'll I'm see. down for it. Yeah. Let me see how that goes. If things carry on like this, I, I'd i say yeah. Well, the thing is, I'm what, of this age, and I've been talking extensively about movies since I was, like, super young. So I don't see why I wouldn't keep going at this point. Uh, hate Mulris, Raggleton, and Frogald, and Happy 200. It. Started watching yep. new Massives in 2020, just before lockdown. Thanks for the 1.2 billion hours of entertainment. You did it all wow, right. Wow, that's a that lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Yeah, I mean, we kept everything going throughout that entire era of the, of the lock. It's not mostly done now. It's everywhere unlocked. It's been... It, it never got really bad around here. We never had lockdowns here, so... Um... I assume things are pretty much back to normal. They certainly are here. They have been for a long time. Uh, hey guys, I've been watching all backlogs of all EFAP content the last month, currently on episode 54. Thank you for everything, and all guests, and especially the hosts. Hope Wolf is doing great. Uh, someone did a slow-mo breakdown of the Book of Boba Fett final fight. Not even the extras in the background died when they got shot. It's just resetting between cuts. That oh, shit, yeah. That shit was rushed. They didn't totally give a shit. They, they did not give a shit. They had their Mos Eisley or whatever, Mos, Mos whatever fucking set that they have like three streets on and they just filmed them back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> oh, Christ. God. That show was expensive, though. No excuse. They don't make an like Kenobi felt like the same shit. It felt more expensive, uh, but still. Kenobi did feel more expensive, but still. But I mean, hey, it only took a couple of months for everybody to come around to it being terrible. <laughs> I wish that we were all in agreement when it came out, but uh, Fury wouldn't even have been able to give orders because Fury was a spy. Cap is a soldier. He's the one with actual live combat experience. I assume we could. Oh, yeah, I think Avengers they're talking about video. the scene. The scene where uh, Captain America's giving the orders to the police officers. Oh, right, because the suggestion would be that Fury could have done it or something. I mean, I guess he could have, but like Captain America's the one with frontline combat experience, so he's probably the guy yeah, he... who should be doing it, which is the point that the chatter, I think, is making. Well, the thing, yeah, Fury might actually have the authority to be able to do it, but like storytelling wise, for where everyone is at the time and what everybody characterized as, it makes complete sense that Cap would do it. Exactly. Yep. Besides, what means by, uh, does Fury have to even contact them, you know? Well, maybe he does. Well, like, the scenario specifically of like a chief or whoever that guy was on the, the ground looking at the alien invasion being like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, of course, mm. Cap coming in and telling him personally what to do. Tell him what to do. Good moment. Yeah. Yep. Somehow that's part of the references for how Cap is like sucks, and Joss Whedon clearly hated him. That video was so weird. <laughs> yeah, that was bizarre. Remember in True Lies when Arnold tries to lie about the nuke? Imagine the alien's bomb. The alien's bomb being asked about it in the same way. I know it's a snow cone make. Dude, I need to rewatch True Lies. I remember loving it. I do too. It. Been a while. Yes, good. I should watch it too then. How many zebras did Gothrak save? Gorthrak. Gorthrak? Oh. Seven. Plenty. Enough. At least, at least one, so that he's sympathetic, right? Definitely a decent amount of zebras. Zebras, as some zebras. would call them. Yeah, you say, zebras. You say zebras? That's what they're called. Yeah, zebra. 
That's what I'm pretty sure that's how they're pronounced. In some parts of the world. Yeah, but in the in the ones that are saying it correctly, yes. Well, for them. Yeah. It's, it's well, there, this is. Them. Yeah, because because Wikipedia says that the U.S. pronunciation is Zebrez. or Zebrez. Zebrez? Well, because it's an upside down e, Brez? which I presume means bra. Z- <laughs> we say we say zebra. Zebras. Zebra. Zebras. <laughs> zebra. Though it's important to note that we only say zebras when we're referring to more than one. Right. So there's a zebra and then zebras. Is that how? It's... No, it's we just say zebra and zebras. Okay. That's because it's it's zebra. Yeah, that's the UK pronunciation. Like, and also ask, but I guess we're not cakes. important enough to get a Wikipedia. Oh wait, no. Uh, there, there's like a on Wikipedia when you when uh they got a little thing that has all of the distinctions between. I guess the the bigger the big boys of English, which is the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. Sorry, New Zealand. You don't get put on this graph. Well, it's just got all the different colors for uh uh oh different. So like you know how color is spelt and center, realize, analyze. Because in America, you guys use Z's often when we would use an S for something like that. Gary gets annoyed by seeing extra. You in color every once in a while. Really, he's reading it. He's like, no, it says. So to make fun of it, whenever he sees it like that, he goes color, and I'm just like, what do oh. you say, flower as well? Yeah, like, yeah, we well, do. Flower. We go to the store and get some flower. Uh, I, you have to yeah, roll the R at the end. Racism. Oh, no, right, yeah, flower. because we're we're in Middle Earth. Yep. Flower. I can't do it. I it's can one do it of the things I just don't like. I don't like Middle when Earth? people. What do you mean you R's? don't like it? You don't like. I don't what, like you when don't people find roll it interesting their R's. And cool sometimes. No. <laughs> oh, maybe I. There in a circle. I mean, maybe. isn't it with some some languages? It just seems to be baked into a uh, baked into it. So like so, some people from certain nationalities, when they speak in English, it's just baked in, kind of an interesting difference, I suppose. I I, I I what I don't I, like. Is... I find it fun. I, I kind of like it. I don't like it in, in Lord of the Rings, but... Yeah, uh, in Lord of the Rings, life, it comes I, across as... I think it's as... kind of neat. Well, in Rings of Power, it comes across as fucking pretentious. Oh, yeah, sorry. Rings um, of Power. Yes, say, guys, it's but, like, I was... Um, I, I, think, I think it's super cringe when people who... They try to adopt, like, elements of accents of other languages. Like, when fucking Theo rolls his R's in Sekiro... Um, he's when he says Sekiro. Yeah, but he's like, like no, whoa. quit, you weeb trash. I, do, I don't... So, I, I'm not sure that Mexi- I agree with that. With that rags. I think, uh... I, I, um... I think that it's kind of neat that he's trying to say he's Sekiro. He's pronouncing it accurately. What's wrong with that? Yeah, like Absolute he's saying... Don't you're you say getting it, mad at... Rags, you're don't getting you say melee? At, you don't say melee, do you? As far as... Is it not pronounced... When, I don't know. It came from I, the French. I say melee. We're not pronouncing it, like, automatically how we would. It's melee, yeah, but and so people say melee and they're wrong. It doesn't come from the English language. So we're just, we're just, yeah, it's, it's how it's No, said. it's specific, yeah, the, it's specifically the R rolling. Yeah, but isn't that, isn't, isn't that, um, that's how it's said. Like, that's what it is. It's Sekiro. That's how you oh, say it. Oh, don't you do it. No, don't do it. Don't. That, uh, that's, do it again. that's the correct uh, pronunciation. No, don't. Sekiro. No, uh, no, don't. Uh, what? Uh, it's it's no. like in, uh, in Death Note. Oh, well, so, so Rags, Rags, have you seen the Death Note, uh, like, dub? Have you seen that? No. So, uh, one of the, one of the pseudonyms for, uh, for Light is, uh, is Kira, but it's, uh, it's spelled K-I-R-A. Uh, and all did. of the actors who are, well, so, do you think it's bad when the actors in the dub are saying Kira, Kira, instead of, like, Kira? It's always cringe, you think they should regardless say Kira, of context. Even though the actual word is Kira. Like uh, that's what it is. Are you getting? I'm like, you, I'm like, what, whenever, you, it's what, like, what it's argument like saying do you have? Me. What argument do you have for it's why you shouldn't say argument. it like that? Why do you think it's but, cringe? Do you think it's it cringe that you say melee baked, instead of melee? I it's can, baked into the fabric of the universe. Yeah, I can. Hit the equivalent of his argument for is him just waving the American flag in your face. That's what it would be. <laughs> Specifically, yeah, like I our role. Uh, there should be a law. Why? Why you have no argument? I'm sorry. Uh, the argument is that it's cringe. <laughs> <laughs> the argument is that it's cringe that people try to say case, things the way that they're said. Like uh, they try to say the words as they're actually meant. 
Uh, do you, do you get mad if somebody says Volkswagen? Does that piss you off, or do you not care about that one? Uh, I don't. I don't care about that one. If you don't, why, there's no argument. It's the same thing. <laughs> well, there's no rolling R in Volks, Volkswagen. So it's okay to say W's like V's, but it's not okay to roll your R on an R. You know, that's exactly correct. Okay. Well, all right. You yeah. don't. You won't maintain this argument though, because there are plenty rolling of words that are French to. Uh, do, how how do you do you say do you get do you think it's cringe if somebody says ambiance? No, because there's not a rolling R in there. Okay. The only time I'll accept a rolled R is when people are going. Oh, so you Jesus. are inconsistent then. <laughs> so yeah, you're even. No, more I'm very consistent. That that's my one X. No, that that's I'm very consistent in that. That's my one exception. We learned a lot today. We have. Yeah, we have. The, the one thing that you need to do to piss rags off is to roll your R's. Right. Talk to him about Sekudo, and then mm, see him ah, break oh, out. It's like... Uh, I don't you know. know how you can fault somebody for making the effort to try and pronounce it correctly. When oh, we have Theo I back, can... I'm going to ask him all about that game. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about Sekudo, Shadows uh. Die Twice. <laughs> Please, tell us everything you can that you know about Sekudo. Uh. This man's ability to forget what he just wrote in this video is clearly his audition to be a writer for the MCU. Oh, Ooh, who are we covering? That would be the Captain America guy. I think that Captain America is hated by Joss Whedon. Oh, his evidence okay. being <laughs> Avengers, where Captain America is pretty cool throughout. Oh, yeah, I, I remember we we were very impressed with that video. Oh, yeah, it was very cool. Very cool. agreeing with it completely. Glorthnak. Cool. Finally, mm. out battle will be a legendary. Long have I hunted you for this hour of reckoning. Cap, I don't even know who you are. I, now I'm pretty sure that uh, Tai Lung's quote just ends on our battle will be legendary. I don't remember that second part, unless it's a different speech. As far as I know, yeah, he does say our battle will be legendary. Our battle will cuts. be legendary. Yeah. And then Tigress just attacks him. <laughs> <laughs> Tylog is entertaining. He's Isn't he voiced just... by Ian McShane? Yes, he is. So cool. He uh yeah, he 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 uh he was he was working hard on that one. He he put he put a lot into that performance. Obscure comic villain of the day, Arcade. Novels jigsaw with a carnival games flair, has an amusement park called Murder World. It's showtime. I know Marvel's this guy. Jigsaw. Marvel has a jigsaw. He's called Jigsaw. He's the he's the Punisher guy, villain. Does he like kidnap people and put them into? No, no, no. He, 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 uh, he's just he's just an ass. He, wow, the he's other guy's also. Ass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's uh. I all I remember is because I I it was in the show. There's Jigsaw, and the reason why he becomes Jigsaw is uh, cause um Punisher drags his face down broken glass. Um, and so his face gets all scarred up, and I think that's why he's called Jigsaw, is because his face is scarred, like it's kind of pieced together. He should have called himself like Glass Glassface. I like how if they I, kill I don't people, but he... with a gimmick, you, you have a better view of them. <laughs> no, because I, I, I guess it's like, um, what does it mean when you say somebody is just that? As well, I think what Maul is more, trying right? to say is that disabilities are a gimmick and people should fucking tone it down. No, right. he said he's just an ass. That means he doesn't have a gimmick. Wow. Well, his gimmick is, I guess, that his face is kind of like pieced together. <laughs> That's my gimmick. <laughs> I'm horribly disfigured. <laughs> my gimmick is I'm ugly. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, hey, I, look, I appreciate his very positive that. That, was, that was the people who created the character. That's not my fault. Did they know. say it was his gimmick, or do you just like, oh, that's I, his gimmick? Yeah, that's I don't be something what, you put on. Him. Maybe on, the writers were like, no, be... the jigsaw thing comes from other stuff, not from his face being all I fucked guess, up. I guess this is well. I guess it is. It, it, it's, there's probably not many people in the world who could say that my gimmick is I got my face dragged down a, a pane of broken glass, and that's why I look like this. Though that was in the show. I don't know what it is in the comic. Well, either um, way, I know of arcade because of uh, the lion go through murder world. I think, but. Wait, uh, but who who's he a villain of? Because I don't think I've heard of Arcade. Um, I don't remember. That's the thing, right? Because you get you get spammed all the villains in that game. I don't. Ah, uh, right. So it's hard like... to tell who's. Yeah. Who's I think one of the what? earlier ones you fight was Fing Fang Foom, and I remember being like, "What the fuck?" Oh, right. the, uh, Fang uh, fuck? The, the the guy, the guy, the 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 very old character. No, he's like a dragon. 
Oh, oh, wait. Is which one? Is he? Is he like the Iron Fist dragon? Yeah, yeah. Um, Fing Fang Foom is like a dragon thing. I wonder if he's like the dragon the Iron Fist fights. Well, there or was something, cause... Uh, there was bait as to whether or not Fing Fang Foom was going to show up in Shang Chi, but I don't think he did. Like uh, you know we'll that giant dragon at the end. Sequel. I think some people speculate yeah. that, that was Fing Fang Foom. Oh, uh, okay. It's 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 so amusing to me because in in like Luke Cage, he's talking to like Iron Fist. It's like you fought a dragon. Come on, that's ridiculous. It's like you can't say that in the world that you live in. Like <laughs> the, it's, it's ridiculous that you fought a dragon. There were aliens. Exactly. Your skin is bulletproof, my man. Like this is a this is a crazy world. All right. Morbin Hawken time. All right. It's what, more like Stephen Hawkins, time. but Morbius. Oh, I remember the it... Hawkin memes. Yeah, Might come up flying more around more. in his like wheelchair. I yeah. guess like yeah. Morbius. No, I wonder well, if they're was... gonna make another one. Oh, fuck! What were the? There was there was some really funny memes. It was to do with Cap hanging on the end of. It wasn't this something like? Oh, I remember. I think I've got it right. So it was the, the uh, Joss Whedon clearly made Cap an idiot because he was hanging on the edge of the helicarrier, almost falling out. Remember. And it was like, oh, yeah. so you getting thrown off a helicarrier and grabbing a rope to stay attached just means you're stupid. And then we were like, what if Stephen Hawking... Like, <laughs> I remember yeah, that, yeah. yeah now In I the remember. EFAP memes, some people had put... <laughs> put <laughs> Stephen Hawking holding on by, like, a rope to the, yeah, <laughs> the helicarrier. It was some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Just the mental image, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, followed up on. with the actual images of it. Good times. <laughs> I can imagine him like going, "Ah, no, pull me back!" And it's a little chair while he holds on to the rope with the other hand. Hello, all oh. our Ewoks. Oh, hello. Been an that E-fapper. means. Speaking of uh, speaking of memes that have some legs, uh, that that Ewok one is. That's thanks to Ooh, Quentin, that's got that some one. stay in power. That's right. That was from the Rise of Skywalker when that came out. Whoa. Oof. Been an EFAPA since episode one. Love your content. Uh, these anniversaries are always my favorite. Speaking of, what's your favorite mm -hmm. media from the past year? Ooh. Favorite well, media might be from the past year. So, answering right now, it really probably would be Ragnarok. Uh, Answering from we watched then. Arcane this year, but that's uh, from last year. So well, I, I love I don't know. Arcane, but I do like I value Ragnarok above it. Arcane, the high that high is... scorer. But the thing is, if we knock out Ragnarok and answer from when this question was asked, it probably would be Arcane. Actually, It'd be at least one of the top. It's legitimately tough for me to say if it was a game. Oddly enough, wow it. It might be Battlefield Five, because because you know, 2042 comes out, it's shit. I'm like, okay, I'll try Five. I never tried Five, got that, and then I really, really liked it, and I still play it. So, and and I just and I play it with friends, and we have a great time playing that game, and I have so much joy playing this game. It might, I might go to Battlefield Five. Which might sound weird, because I've, I've liked so many things. Like, I've really liked Ragnarok. I never played it. And then there's, you know, all the things that we've watched. Obviously, Wakanda Forever and Thor Love and Thunder. Super high on the list. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Um, I can almost remember things about them. You say Arcane? Uh, I might be Ragnarok. I'm not sure. Oh, I meant disqualifying Ragnarok, though. That was uh disqualifying Ragnarok and Arcane because if it was with disqualifying Ragnarok would be Arcane, yeah, right. Um, that's definitely um, up there, yeah. Glad you enjoy the anniversaries. Try and get them as 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 high energy as possible throughout all those hours. But man, when that twenty fourth one kicks over, it's like my <laughs> bed. Yeah. Uh, sending another super chat because my We Smash meme got noticed live by my favorite YouTubers. You guys made my day. Happy 200. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you for the wonderful meme. This one just says what Doomsie said, but cheaper. All right. Mm. So, 
It sounds nice. like he wants Cap to be a Mary Sue more than a compelling character. Uh, he clearly wanted Cap to have more moments of being awesome and tough and unbeatable and stuff when I found Cap to be thoroughly interesting as the the guy who's sitting with a god and a technological marvel uh, being like, I'm just a guy, but I'm fast and I'm strong and I'm courageous and I'm smart. He was kind of like the Batman for that movie. Especially considering Thor and stuff. But then, you know, you still have Black Widow and Hawkeye at the end. Uh, this man said Captain America isn't smart, but then also used a scene that shows Iron Man, the smartest man in the world, defer to Captain America for strategy, and Cap comes up with a plan in seconds. It's really hard to twist that in a way that means Cap is stupid. The, the best argument he had was that Iron Man had to give him permission, though. That's, that's the, ridiculous. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what that is. That's, that's, that's Cap saying, you do it, Cap. I can't. Like, or rather, you're better than, at it than me. I think it's really good to throw it in because those two are the obvious choices for leaders and Tony's saying, you do it. Good stuff. Andy Captain America. Oh, that'd be, that'd be the, the hero name for Hawking as, as, as Cap, I think. Uh, Andy Captain Hawken, the Iron Chair Monger. <laughs> Great name. His worst yeah, enemy would be chair. worst enemy would be the chair guy from Falcon of the Winter Soldier. Fuck, do you remember that? <laughs> I do. Christ, that's right. Oh, Falcon. What the hell were they thinking? No idea. Chair Devil, the Silent Avenger. He rides in on <laughs> Chair Force One. He puts all the criminals <laughs> down, and then in brackets, syndrome. Locks them away in the chromo zone. Oh my god. <laughs> the chromo zone. Oh, that's actually really funny. The chromo zone. Uh, subjectively, Age of Ultron is my favorite Avengers movie. Objectively, it could have been better. To put it nicely. I think that's part of why I hate that movie a little bit, is, how, is what was stolen from us. In terms of what, how, how fucking good that could have been. Ultron could have been so... Yeah, he, he could have been, been so cool. But he is not. <laughs> is not. Dr. Hawken and the multi-stories of Morbin Steps. Alright. Captain Hawking. But spelt as Haw. Possibility. Cheer Devil versus Stairmaster. I think Cheer Devil is better. Cheer Devil versus Stairmaster. Cheer Devil is <laughs> Daredevil's really Daredevil good. Daredevil is perfect. <laughs> Daredevil is. I think that's one that like, agreed during the EFAP was just yes, what his name was. is. Yeah. Now he's Daredevil. I yes, think we would die at that point. Yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So who are funnier? Oh. Marvel fanboys, Zack Snyder fanboys, or Sony fanboys? Funnier. Uh, Probably the Zack uh, ones, right? Yeah, probably. They're yeah. pretty funny. The thing about the Marvel ones is that they typically just, they're just standard fan people. They're like, this stuff is awesome. You're just trying to hate on it to hate. But like the Snyder ones, you often find them going like, he created some of the most incredible art that we've ever had. Been. I, I think it's the lack of self-awareness is, uh, is, is just really funny with, with the Snyder ones. Uh, they've been talking about the blip like it was a minor inconvenience whenever it does get brought up. Yep. Yeah, you're lucky to get that, to be honest. Uh, Captain Hawkin, the Phantom Limus. Limbus, the Phantom Limbus. What's it? How's it spelled? Uh, Lim and then apostrophe U. Oh, um, I don't know. Like the Elven bread. Perhaps. All right, it's Steer Wars time. I gotta tap out for it. Y'all have a good night slash day. Our our counter person, I think, even went to sleep. Yeah. We'll right. Just want to say thanks for the four years of content. You've helped me get through some dark times. Here's to another four years. Also high rank. Hello. Thank you very much. We will still be around in that amount of time. Things. For fuck's sake, ER, let someone else speak for a minute. Yeah, he just talks and talks and talks. 
other people desperate to get a word in, but uh, brute accent on the e is the vocative, vocative, the addressing form of the name Brutus. Fringe would indeed work as the vocative of fringy. Salve rage. Oh, I think it was et to fring. <laughs> yeah, et that's to right. fringe. It just becomes fringe. <laughs> Et Brute to fringe. fringe, maybe? I think it was, that was, yeah, et to fringe. Yeah. I uh, don't know if that's how it actually works, but... <laughs> I don't know. Hi all, gutted that I can't catch this live since I'm on vacation with my family, but I wanted to say thank you all for everything you've done. I found you all through rags about three years ago when I was very depressed, out of a job, and going through the joys of job hunting. Comparing MOM... Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Uh, you guys were the only thing that kept me smiling during those times, and I'll always be grateful for that. Since then, I found a job uh, that I love, and I'm now the assistant director of my department. Stay long, and of course, hi, Rags. Oh, hello! Well, that's wonderful news. Oh, yeah, it, glad to hear, man. Well, absolutely. And you're, uh, you're out of that worse estate and into a better one. Uh, comparing Multiverse of Madness to McDonald's is insulting to McDonald's. I agree with that, actually. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, like McDonald's, like, they have some things that are fine. I mean, like, the Coke there is good, you know, and the Sprite, you know, that that's that's good. Um, they, you know, they follow they health codes. They don't insult your intelligence when you walk in. I mean, you're in there. You've done that to yourself. So, um, yeah, you know, they have bathrooms where you can, you know, yeah, that they, they serves flush, a function. As far as I know, the toilets in there. Yeah. I agree. I would never. I would never tarnish the good name of McDonald's by comparing it to Multiverse of Madness. I ended up watching that video you sent me. Good. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Basically, the, there was like a promotion of kind of like lottery style thing with McDonald's where you could win money and a guy who had access to like a higher level of it security wise just put I'll like years. I'll post it for Fringy to watch. It's uh, 26 minutes, but it's legitimately quite interesting. Oh, he changed the thumbnail. But uh, yeah, the um, yeah, that's an interesting video. Kira TV, if anybody's interested in it themselves, just search Kira yes. TV, the McDonald's Monopoly scan. Yeah. It's the first thing that pops up on YouTube when you type in uh, McDonald's Monopoly. It's an uh, interesting video. OT fans need to get off their high horse. Star Wars is only so loved because it came out when we were kids. The writing and story are really unimaginative. <laughs> Why is Star Wars as successful as it was? Because it came out when we were kids. Probably because it came out at the perfect time while also being incredible escapist piece of media and then also being pretty damn good, right? Like having New Hope and Empire double whammy of also being way ahead of its budget, so to speak, as in like something what that they achieved at the time was incredible like from a spectacle standpoint, yeah yeah, like 1977 and also like plenty of people who watched it and liked it were adults so <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> just to, like, this, my dad has talked about going to see Star Wars in 1977 and he just like it's difficult for him to explain how much it blew everyone away he's like no one had seen anything like this before it was like revolutionary it was yes, it, it was, was amazing was. to go and see yeah. that at the theater people would see it just over and over just 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 to be able to see that sort of thing well there's a reason um, why adjusted for inflation i think it's the second highest grossing film of all time um, after Titanic, after or gone, after? No, gone with the wind, gone, gone with the wind, with wind is the highest growth. Uh, uh, adjusted for yeah, that's an I old one. Uh, I need to see Gone with the Wind. I've not I haven't seen, seen it that actually one. either. Yeah, that's of one the of big, those ones where it's like yeah. I think the big four old classics being uh, Wizard of Oz, uh, Wizard of Oz, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. sorry, you not, Gone with the Wind, Casablanca, with right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm saying like there's. There's like the four. Oh yeah, it's Citizen Kane, Wizard of Oz, right. Casablanca, and Gone with the Wind. They're like those four oldie golden classics, sort of. Um, right, like kind of in the of same way that there are like certain books that you're supposed to have read, like at some point in your life. Yeah, like the dictionary 
front to back, uh, yeah. full thing. Oh, and everyone. also, as it turns out, so the the list of highest grossing when adjusted for inflation is Gone with the Wind is number one, and then Avatar is number two, and then okay. Titanic, that and then Star been, Wars. Uh, and then Endgame, at number five, but Star Wars ahead of it. And then The Sound of Music, then E.T., then The Ten Commandments. Sound of Music. Uh, Doctor Doctor Svago? I haven't heard Doctor of that, Doctor Zhivago? Zhivago, yeah. Doctor Zhivago, yeah. Uh, and then Fourth see. Awakens. Fourth Awakens, number ten. Uh, we need to get into the habit of, like, maybe if once a week we could kind of knock out a, yeah, a classic, that's, a that's, classic uh, movie. That's something I, I plan on doing uh, is just making sure that, like, once a week there's, like, a, a classic movie that I haven't seen that I, I just make sure that I'm I'm watching to build up those references. What was the last one you did? Uh, the last one that I watched that was, like, an older movie? Yeah. Uh... <sighs> Damn, I'm I'm just trying to recall what it would have been. I know I watched Citizen Kane a little while ago. Um, did you watch it with us, or did we? No, no, no. I just watched it. I just okay checked it out, and I was impressed by it a lot. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. Uh, yeah, because my I answer to that question is a is, uh, is Casablanca, a movie that if you haven't seen it, you need to, because I really liked Casablanca quite a bit. I, I want to see it. Yeah, that's in one fact. If seen, if we do this weekly like classic movie catch up, I would I would like to probably start with that, even though I've seen it. I'd be up for that. Hey sure. man, as I soon as we like, clear I... our schedules of all the other things yeah. we've got to do, hooray! Well, uh, yeah, because there's I got got to go watch Avatar two at some stage. Got to watch Avatar at some point. I, I... Oh, I oh yeah, it, before... yeah. I have to watch Avatar two also. Uh, nonsensical movies shouldn't be pre pre nonsensical movies shouldn't be predicated in a universe that makes sense. Scary movies work because the universe is always nonsensical. Okay, you're losing me straight away. Okay, uh, yeah, we, yeah. So okay, so <laughs> let's let let's nip the obvious one of the bud. There's, I I'm pretty sure that in real life you can have scary things happening. Uh, well, yeah, it's not a uh, my assumption it's not a crazy is they're like absurd word to there's have no a scary such thing as ghosts movie. or monster blah, blah, blah and it's like okay, but. That doesn't make a world nonsensical, like having supernatural no, shit in it. Yeah. Um, I don't even. I'm not even sure. Not what that you even you need say, that for horror movies, of course. When you say nonsensical movies shouldn't be in a universe that makes sense, I'm not even sure what that means. Do they mean like that you can't have an absurd story set in a universe that's otherwise like trying very hard to be grounded? The thing is, you can always contextualize know. it. Like, of course. But, yeah. What if it's a dream? Yeah, like drug induced. Now ridiculous. Yeah. What if it's them watching a TV show and then like it pans out? It's like, yeah, that TV show was crazy. Huh? Because anyway, otherwise, back to like the regular world. If you're just highlighting like you know a, a breach in rules, it's just like oh, that's just standard good old incongruence. You know, yeah. same reason that we want congruence and everything. Um, is that they they follow on with saying screw people who like trash, they don't deserve respect. <laughs> I'm not 100 okay. percent sure what's happening. All right. I don't. <laughs> I don't agree with that. I. I love. There's some. I love Batman and Robin, and I love the Resident <laughs> Evil movies. They're the just. Room. They're wonderful. Bad B movies. I just. They have a special place in my heart. Hilarious. Yeah, but the thing about them is, like, if someone said, like, so you'd encourage them to be made, it's like, well, you can't. They don't get made. It gets worse when they're made intentionally, right? Like if. If yeah. You see this with the uh, the follow up stuff Tommy Wiseau did and Birdemic's follow ups. Like when the director is aware, it's not as funny. Yeah. It's yeah. The Part of the joy comes from the... it. Yeah. Being That's... earnest and sincere. Have you have you guys seen the behind the scenes for Birdemic two? Have you seen those? I think I have. I can't remember. Was it YMS or? Was it YMS? Um, I'm not sure what it, it was. So the thing that was really funny about it was um because the director I can't remember his name. Uh, but there was James a where... Was that his name? Yeah, yeah. He did. Oh, okay. uh, he did Birdemic, Birdemic Two afterwards. But he also did the lesser known Replica. Um. Well, so the, what happened was he was on set arguing with like I don't know, like first assistant director or uh, somebody on set, and um, <laughs> and like there's this part where they're sort of getting into an argument. And then, like, he, 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 like, screams at the guy's face, like, I'm the creator of the franchise, don't embarrass me, like, again. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really funny, because it's, like, the creator of the Birdemic franchise, dude, calm down. 
I get well because it did make a, a decent chunk of money considering its budget. I guess it must have, right? Uh, well, I mean, it, I I think it cost like ten thousand dollars. Like he saved up some money to film it, and then I don't know what what would be the box office gross of be, like Birdemic two. I suppose it wouldn't <laughs> necessarily have a good box office, but like people buying it online or, or supporting it through whatever thing. Like I don't know because obviously. Uh, they made a second one, so I guess like the, I don't I don't even know. I, I'm trying to think of how it would have gained success because YMS is one of the main reasons it got exposure as well, right? I assume. Uh probably, yeah. Um Your celebratory animal of the day is the Halitrophus Masi. Masi. Halitrophus Masi. Happy two hundred lads, and here's to two hundred more. Stay massive and Don bless you all. You have a Halitrefs. Marcy, uh, it's a uh, it's a jellyfish, yeah. Oh, um, interesting. What does it want as many jellyfish are. What does it want? It probably just wants to just float around, and I don't even know what a jellyfish eat. Do they just strain the ocean for like I nutrients? Have no or something? idea. Are jellyfish immortal? I I <clears throat> think so. There's something about that where some jellyfish, because of the way that their cells self repair and stuff, they that they're like legitimately immortal. That the decay in cells is not necessarily um, Good you know, for that. necessary. Uh, what do jellyfish eat? Autophils. Jellyfish eat many different types of things, such as small plants, phytoplankton, uh, co uh, copepods, crustacean zooplankton, fish eggs, and other small fish called larvae. They also eat the planktonic eggs and young stages of many kinds of marine animals. Maybe they just absorb it like goo. Maybe. Hey. Uh, bump. Bump. Here's to 200 more. Stay massive and Don bless you all. Well, I'm surprised you didn't mention this. The MCU is infinite, which means dreamwalking's always happening and incursions should have killed everyone. Um, it's It's so fucking annoying, all of it is. Because, like, I gave the benefit of the doubt, but the problem is it just creates more problems. You know the whole, like, the second the Scarlet Witch is chasing America, and they say America is one of a kind? Like, why am I not seeing thousands upon thousands of Scarlet Witches chasing her? Exactly, because presumably if there's, like, an infinite universe of infinite possibilities, there are many, 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 many of these there's things happening all at once. Yeah, yeah, if like it's, I said, many. Possible, it's infinite. <laughs> yeah, if if anything's possible, it happens an infinite amount of times. Yeah. So there should be an infinite amount of yeah, Scarlet Witches chasing an infinite amount of Doctor Stranges across an infinite amount of multiverses. And then of course, remember, any... if you see it once, it's going to be something that happens an infinite amount of times. It was part of the argument I was trying to make about the Darkhold, right? Whereas like. She destroyed it in every universe. Like, okay, but she didn't destroy what it was drawn from in every universe, which was the temple, except for the one that she was in. But then, if every universe retranscribes it and then Dream walks into our world to then transcribe it from their world's dark hold, basically we just undo everything that she just did. I don't even know how you can do that. How does she have the power to destroy it in every universe? That's just something they made up. I don't even know what the hell <laughs> it's that's Magic, bitch. Mean, we yeah. ain't gotta, like, explain shit. Fuck it. Well, that's the funny thing, that's right? That's basically the idea, yeah. Like, she we can, don't have uh, to explain it. Everything she does in that movie is bullshit, but that's one of those ones where I would be like, you made that up. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking made that up. God damn it. It's so, like... Every the, the the idea of like dreams are looking into other universes. Why did they? Why 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 would you make that the way that it works? Because it's cool. Why are you being such? It's a not little cool. Dingus? It's it's. What does that even mean? It means that like you have a psychic connection between dimensions and universes with your alternate selves. How uh, like what what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Like what like what no. does that look like? Cool. Wow. What? What? Do, how do you explain dreams where it's totally surreal and ridiculous? Is that like actually happening? Yep. That's Even if it's an impossibility. Ridiculousness. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Do Do people often have dreams of being paint? Yeah. Is that like a common thing? A dream Don't where you? you're sent to paint. Your paint dreams. 
Uh, I, you know how it started. It was just like, what if Dreaming was just ult universe? How cool is that? And they're like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'd be great. Uh, but, but my best buddy had his wedding, so I missed a lot of 200, but he is very happy, and soon I will keep up this stream. Off to 200 more. Best community. Oh, that's great. Good for him. The old yeah. ball and chain. Hopefully it's still going strong. Hopefully. This says eat my money. I guess we could by oh, exchanging well, it for I'm supposed to. goods of goods and services. Yeah. Uh, Rags, Brokeback Mountain is Cheer Devil's Lair. Oh. Brokeback Mountain <laughs> is Cheer Devil's Lair. <laughs> he lives a, he's a very self-loathing superhero. I can't forget what made me this way. Hey, yeah, that's the kind of thing, right? That's the thing with Batman and Bats, right? Uh, Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2 are amazing. 3, not so much. Kung Fu Panda off. We should. Imagine if Jay was here right now with all you talking about movies you like. I haven't seen most of these. Yeah, there was that meme, right? Once Upon a Time where Wolf asked Jay like a huge list and most of the answers wouldn't. <laughs> a lack of understanding of uh. ultra. Um, a Batwoman parody of Hey Mickey. Hey Jacob. Hey. Oh, fuck. How does it Hey Mickey? Song, right? Uh, I don't know. Hey Mickey, know. you so fine, you so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Alright, that one. Uh, hey oh, Mickey. No. This just says, Hey Jacob, uh, you're so fine, and you blow my mind. Hey Jacob. That's hey Jacob. Hey Jacob. I thought they were going to involve the Desert Eagle somehow with the blow my mind. I rags at the end. Hello. Hello, current panel. Have you seen Primer 2004? It is a very unique time travel film. Better than Looper, for sure. Heads up, don't watch it half asleep. Also, hello to oh. all the guests. Hmm. Uh, very much a complicated and very serious take on trying to make a story work with time travel. It ain't playing around mechanics and that. I've never seen that movie. Uh, I have, but not for, I think, since 2004. Uh, where do you guys stand on Blade Runner? We're very pro Blade Runner. We're yeah. very, yeah, very pro Blade Runner, yes. I, I don't know if there's anything else you were looking for us to say. <laughs> like, it's, it's very <laughs> I like, good. I like it a lot. I respect it. Um, I guess the, maybe the hot take is I really hate Blade Runner 2049. Um, I think I bad. see the thing is, is that I watched it and I liked it, but I haven't watched it since. And all I've heard is from people who I trust is that it's actually pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I just don't I like, know what to think about that. Movie, I don't remember. Honestly. Yeah, um, I'm not as passionate about Blade Runner as I am about some of my other favorites. And uh, I just I had it. I've said this before. I had Blade Runner 2049 broken down to me by someone who was Blade Runner. And I was like, holy shit, that film's awful. They were like, yes, it never should have been. And I, that's that's a sentiment you might find online. You, I've found people who say 49 is better than the originals. That existed. I think take. that, yeah, that is sentiment. That, that I remember hearing that when it came out, like people saying that. And yeah, that is one of those things where it's like, careful. <laughs> careful. Yes, be All right. Speaking of overrated movies, overrated movies, sorry, Dark Knight, hate it. What? Dark Knight? You think that the Dark Knight is overrated? Damn. That person thinks huh. that. Yeah. Really? Well, they said. Why, yeah. why would anybody think that the Dark Knight is overrated? I guess because it's really, really, really loved. They don't think yeah, it should be Yeah, but I mean, loved. that's for good reason, right? Um. Like, what? What movies deserve it versus... Do is there any amount right. of love that can be given to... I mean, after all, it's like Wonder Woman said, it's not about deserve, it's about what you believe and she believes in love. To which Eric said that I will destroy you. Which was deserve quite poignant. Deserve ain't got nothing to do by with the it. Way, by the way, I will say, it's, it's not about deserve as an incredibly clunky sentence. Like, yes. it's not yeah. about deserve. Isn't that weird? I'm pretty sure yeah, that's it's, what it's, she said. Yeah, it's the shitty version of Unforgiven. Um, what? What would I say? What do you mean? The the deserved ain't got nothing to do with oh, it. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, sure. See, yeah, that, like, that, <laughs> that's actually accurate to the speech, though. I suppose. Yeah. Like, it's, you could argue a lot of the way they speak in like the Western type stuff is clunky, but like it's accurate. 
meanwhile it's, yeah it's yeah. vulgar yeah it's yeah. it it's got it's it's got a vulgar flow to it i wouldn't call it clunky it's it's got that it's got the normal people talk you know all right. How the hell are you guys still awake? I watched your show last night and it was lasted six hours. I went to sleep, woke up, and you guys are still streaming for another six hours. Holy moly. Wow. Congrats on five years. Hi, Rags. Hello, and uh, you're welcome. Thanks for making it possible. Good stuff. We, yeah, we have to do the full 24. Apparently a rule has been stuck. We should have we should have made the rule. Just 15 hours. 15 hours, specifically. Very meaningful choice, trust me. Um, four years? You guys have been doing this for almost half a decade. Yeah. I know, right? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. These eras. Hey guys, glad to see you doing well and still streaming, by the way. Have you guys checked out RRR? If not, I highly recommend checking it out. It was a fantastic experience. Uh, not yet, mm. I haven't. RRR, I've not Plenty of people it. recommend it, including Metal. The hmm. definitely an EFAP movies movie. Oh, okay. I'm drinking at the pub, watching EFAP 200. Found you guys through the drinker about two years ago. Thank you, Mola, Fringy, and Hi Rag. Hello. Hey. ELJ and MOM entertained a lot of people. Now what? Probably someone talking about how entertaining a movie is is something to do with how good it is. Or how, you know, it's some mark of quality that it's popular or very entertaining for a lot of people. Well, you know, we see that, that can up every once in a while. Come from it. I think it's still valuable information in terms of yeah, sure. what to think about. Because we usually but, I mean, try yeah. answers, yeah. right? When, when yeah. we have something that's really well written, we don't tend to wonder why it's successful, if it is. But when something's successful and it's absolute dog shit, it's like, hmm, why then? Kind of a question. Mm, yeah. What is it doing that's appealing to people? End game is like, oh, well, we all pretty much know the answer to that. It's not yeah, a bad one. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Avatar is like, huh? <laughs> yeah, that one's a little bit more perplexing. Is Especially it? for the level of success. Yeah, I'd say so. Hmm. It's kind of weird it's that a film that was so successful has such a small cultural footprint, you know? Like, nobody really talks about Avatar or, like, specific scenes in it. I just think that it all has to do with just the spectacle. There's nothing to it that, you know, that, that's any deeper than that. No one can tell you the characters are really much of the plot or anything. It's just, wow, wasn't that scene really cool? Wasn't that amazing? I don't know that anybody just offhand references. You remember that scene in Avatar? Like, it was just not happen. No. It's just that movie everyone saw that one time years ago. Like, yeah, it was a pretty movie. Anyway. Um, The Room has a lot of attention, but it's not an objectively good movie. Fun, absolutely, but not good in spite of its attention. I'm not sure what have prompted this discussion, but The Room is obviously one of the biggest examples of that has success that nobody's saying is well made. Yeah, other people say it's entertaining that isn't good. Like the fact that that's something that you can square away. It's like, yeah, I enjoyed it, but like, pfft, you know. Yeah, and even to the point where you don't want it, you you appreciate it, its existence the way that it is. You wouldn't want it to change. Mm -hmm. Value that experience. Though I suppose there's a great interest in like, what if in an alternate universe, The Room was one of the best dramas ever made, and then which of those two movies should exist, or would you prefer to exist? Hmm. I think a lot of people would find that question difficult to answer. <laughs> I think it would be difficult. Yeah. I guess you could just of hypotheticals of like maybe lord of the rings is too good to make that question but like if you could only have one it's the room or some well acclaimed like good movie right like um it's like the the mm. answer surely is obvious that it's the good movie it's like well and ain't that plenty interesting of really good that movies might that not just pick the good one by. yeah well that's the thing right it's uh the room is very unique in what it is and we we wouldn't want it to go <laughs> we want it to stay <laughs> Uh, Picard episode 6 was pretty decent Picard I've only heard it's horrible I've only yeah, heard it's time. horrible I don't even know if that's about season 1 or 2 uh, Woke up and tuned in to enjoy an EFAP tradition Rags giving tech support to somebody who's echoing 
Happy 200, guys. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, it's, it is often Rags in history of EFAB that uh, does a one-on-one -on -one with the person trying to solve their tech problems whenever they come in and nothing's working. I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not a computer man. So that's not good if you're getting advice from me. <laughs> um, Rags, is this a character moment? Adam has a Biden moment. I remember Adam and Sitch popping on. We had that mm -hmm. big old writing discussion. Yep. <clears throat> everyone, everyone, including ER, is against us. It has to be conflict first, not consistency. People don't know yeah. that they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because whatever they, I think Adam and Sitch think the same of us, but like when we describe like the core fundamentals that they think like we're we're accidentally describing conflict. But I've always felt like it's kind of like chicken in the egg to a lot of people. It's like, which one is coming first? The design of the conflict, like having conflict there and then you figure out the consistency, or is it that you don't have anything without consistency anyway? So it's always going to be the foundation. Well, I feel like it is the foundation. What does it mean to have a great conflict that is inconsistent or incoherent? Well, they would say, what does it mean to be consistent without conflict? Um, I don't know the the sausage roll story. <laughs> I well, That's I still feel I like, like you have something. You know, it, it just we need to figure out what people mean by conflict. That's the answer to that question. Yeah, probably that we need to sort of agree on our definition of conflict. You know, like Kratos when he's just like distraught, staring at that that pouch. If someone said like, "Well, the conflict there is," and explains it all, and I'd just be like, "Yeah," but. If you wanted to get really broad and just be like, well, nothing's happening there that's conflicting. So, you know, if that's the problem with conflicts, like, is it just everything? Is it everything all the time? In which case, it well, feels yeah, a little bit unfair because continuity is like just stuff making sense. That's all. And that's what you use to tell the difference between conflict and not conflict. You'd have to have that. Yeah. How do you even well, know? So, you know we, we've, we've talked about it a lot. Fundamentally, there is no simpler definition of a story than an account of a sequence of events. Like, there's a sequence. It's, like, fundamental. And there is no sequence without continuity of some <clears> sort. Like, that's inextricable. Yeah, and if someone said, like, you can't have an event without conflict or something, then it would get really annoying to figure out the definition. Uh, well, yeah, because at that point, what do we mean by conflict? <laughs> yeah. As opposed to what we mean by continuity, which is kind of like everybody knows exactly what that means. It means A leads to B. It's and I suppose what's amusing is, like, you know, it's like, how can you have interest without conflict? And it's like, I don't know, man. Lots of stuff. Interest is, things. yeah, it's it's complicated as opposed to, like, continuity by comparison. Adam's voice giving off strong Southern Poverty call center vibes. I guess because his, his shit was breaking at that point. I don't know. Right. Happy 200, everyone. I can't watch as it's my GF's birthday today. Best, f oh, and my best friend oh. tomorrow and mine Tuesday. Wow. Well, I guess we know who your real friends are. What's a yeah? Apparently, jeez. Um, but yeah, happy birthday to all. Uh, why didn't Kyle Ben force freeze Ray in battle? He's on the. Because don't think about it. Well, if you remember right, like he force freezes and knocks her out in the middle of the movie, and then he force freezes and throws her into a tree at the end, and then that just doesn't well, work anymore as a possibility. Part That's what happened battle when you need your good guy to survive instead of going for a kill shot or something you throw him the bad guy throws the good guy part of what we talked it's about like, before you need there to be an it's like the hyperspace cabin cars you kind of force users using that shit on each other because it just makes us all wonder why they're not always using it on each other yeah um, pretty much and then you just randomly have him not use it and it's like uh, now now yeah you've it, made me think about it even more well, it's the reason why it feels like it all was a lot simpler when it was force push, force pull, you know, force choke and lightning. Like when it when it was real simple. But then yeah, when it's like, oh, you can freeze, you know, shots in midair. It's like, okay. Uh, when and I can get, just you... pull knowledge out of your mind. Yeah, force pull knowledge out of people. Well, and even oh, like I said, it goes back to even Dooku, like force choking and lifting Obi Wan. It's just like, can you? That's something you could do. That, that just that feels not quite right. That feels like you could. That, I mean, how do they ever have a chance against you? Hmm. Because he, he doesn't do it to Anakin. Okay. I guess Anakin's too powerful or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, the the more it's just, it's kind of the nature of like writing, the more stuff that you throw on top, 
the more variables you have to account for. And it's just tricky. You would imagine it like you're juggling and each new variable is a new ball that you have to try and balance like with, while you're juggling. And like you can do it. And if you juggle all of those balls, it's really, really impressive. But if you screw it up, it's pretty embarrassing too, <laughs> in a sense. Yep. Uh, Mr. Mubly, will RLM stop drinking the tism juice? Oh yeah, because we covered their, uh, their opinions Kenobi. on Obi-Wan Kenobi. That was, that was weird and yeah, was really, strange, but yeah, hey. It was really bad. Somehow they really liked it. Uh, at least, uh, I was about to say at least Jade is. Like, no, I'm pretty sure both of them did, right? As in all, uh, there are three of them. Oh, there was, th oh yeah, all three of them. Like, okay, well. Yeah. Like Jay and, uh, Rich. And I don't think they've covered Andor. I'd have to check. Um, but hopefully. I would hope that they would have some positive things to say. Presumably. I mean, you know, that's why I'm hearing from the people who have seen it is that it's solid. Most of the disdain I see towards Andor now is from people who didn't get past, like, episode three and stuff. And it's like, okay. Hmm. Yoda, who the hell are you talking about? There's nobody there. Luke. Don't want this to be made, but all right. This one just says, frankly, I'd watch it. All right. Fair enough. But did you get to look at women? I Ooh. saw one of the top comments on the Synthetic Man EFAP was like, we went from you get to look at women to at least you get to kill women. Nice. We've evolved. Uh, RLM made their careers off the back of the prequels being the worst Star Wars media ever made. Thus, they rebel at the idea of anything being worse. Which is weird you because do wonder. technically the foundation for us was the sequels, and someone said, "Well, you're never going to be willing to concede that uh, TLJ or Boba, uh, sorry, TLJ or Rise of Skywalker is uh, better than anything else Disney make." And I'd be like, "I don't know, Boba Fett and Kenobi really do, you know, they they create quite a challenge to that title. They are uh, special in their badness." Yeah, hard to say, but uh. They, uh, they very much do hate the prequels to this day. Uh, Red Letter hurting you again, boys. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I, mean, it, I don't know why it can't just be that we covered them and disagreed. That's all. A lot of people yeah. want it to be more serious than that. It's just like, no, I mean, I still watch them. Yeah, absolutely. They just made really bad videos on Kenobi. Can't watch live, and I hate to miss the party of the year. I love you all. Hi, Rags. Straddle my face. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. You know it. That's why has, we're all here. Has anyone seen the Oral Noughts cut of Star Wars? No, I have not. No. Nope. Um, someone on Discord said it. What does that mean for Ray Palpatine? What does what mean? Also, unless you're asking a general question of like, what does it mean for Ray going forward that she's a Palpatine? It's like, I mean, I imagine when, when they take her character further, whoever writers with having to do that, they'll probably try and do something with the fact that she's a Palpatine. Yeah, who knows what that'll be, because I don't know anything about, like, who Rey is as a person, or what she thinks or really feels about anything, so... Yeah, she's a good person. She, can be she got, different three, she she got okay. three movies as well. But she's I just don't know the protagonist, about her. yeah. Well, don't she don't know anything about she her. She's a good person, though. I know that much. That's good. You want... That's good. Except it's good when she blew up good. Chewie by accident, but then didn't. Oh, that was... Yeah, I guess that was an accident. You know how that happens. It happens. Happy 200 laddies and lasses. Stay long and good luck for the last stretch. May the dawn be in thy heart and the rhino milk be in thy hand. Thank you. Thank you. I don't mm. know where we're at in terms of the actual coverage. So assuming it'll be given uh, in the form of clues. Progress with these. Uh, Mubler, what software do you use to write your scripts and how do you organize and keep track of everything you do? It's honestly really impressive. It's as lame and annoying as you could imagine. So, you're an example for the DS2 stuff, right? I would, it, it would all Word, Microsoft Word, and then I'd have like main script. No, sorry, it would start with main notes. I think I've explained this before. It's it's absolutely mind numbing sometimes, but it does work. That's why I use it. We got like, uh, I, well, I guess I'll say it with a movie, right? You go through the movie, and I just note, make loads of notes. They're all just done uh, on the fly. Then I'll categorize the notes into sections and chronological. Uh, and then watch the movie again, but start writing the script and keeping an eye on the notes. So it's like two of me working at the same time to think about it. Then uh, if there's going to be a third document, it's likely going to be references to things in like third party or meta. Um, 
And then I might have a secondary, like, when I'm redrafting the script, depending on how, how crazy I want to make the redraft. For example, I, I've said this before, but if I've had a script that was written years ago, I will likely do a, a harsh full redraft, like where I'm rewriting it while reading it from a different document. Uh, it's me from two years ago and me right now, we have different ideas about how to write a script, you know, how it goes. Mm. Um, and that's, that's, like, that's like the simplest. When it's like a game, it gets way more complicated. Or like the TFA project was insanely huge because I had to manage loads of different resources. So I just, basically it's another weird doc for every time a new section of kind of thinking has to come about. And then when I'm writing, because I've got three monitors, it would be like six word docs that are just plastered across all the screens so I can see everything at once and keep everything in track. And then I'll properly label everything. I think I've said this before, but it'll be like, you know, um, and that would be the worst thing ever, wouldn't it? And then I have to play a clip. I'll, you know, have a reference to where it's stored in terms of my computer, what time, what name, and uh, what vibe I'm going for. So that I can see all that when I'm editing then and be like, okay, I understand. Um, and it's been extremely useful in terms of streamlining the process. Uh, the Synthetic Man uh, cut, that, that edit, when I was making it ready for refab, I was telling these guys as I was doing it, like, I was at, like, full power, and uh, I knew that if, if I dropped it for even a couple of days, the entire project would fall apart, because I would forget where I put everything. I did it all basically from memory, not noting everything. Gets the job done faster, but it's at risk of, like, detonating if you're, if I lose interest in it for even a day. I won't remember where right. everything is. But yeah, um, it's long, it's laborious, but it ends up having pretty solid results. Gotta stay motivated. Uh, obviously, everyone else has different modes of working, but I, I mine tends to be like as, as simplistic as you could imagine, just making notes of where everything is. Um... To be fair, we don't have any clue what led Luke to the ba bedside. He could have seen Kylo killing squirrels and stuff. He probably did kill squirrels and stuff. Yeah, he probably did. That's how it starts out, squirrels. with little animals. Oh no, Doom is back again. Now I can't stop thinking about Jinx and Silco sliding the skin bus into Tuna Town. Oh no, make it stab. <laughs> Never heard that. Never heard it described that way. No, that's okay. He he was just... He, he, he misread that scene. It's okay. Alright, yeah, misread. It happens. It happens. So, um, I got off work in bartending in LA. I saw Mauler's post. Anyway, I guess I'm a chill out here. Mauler, I don't know how you do it, but you're the only person I can watch a six-hour YouTube video. Well, I uh, try to make it so that it's uh, not mind-numbingly boring, but apparently I even fail with that with some. Because then it can be a sleep aid. Doubles up. Fullness is always there. Uh... Also, Drinker, You're My Boy Blue, Star Wars Girls, Stay Fly Girl, Shadowversity, I hope everything is well with you. Hope your staff is well, too. I don't know the rest. My apologies, but thanks. All right. Well, they will appreciate that. Absolutely. I'm sure they do. I am now convinced that they have never watched Star Wars at all, not even the OT. Okay, it's... They had some janky opinions. No beans. Just, just some. One right. or two. They've seen, One or they've two. seen Star Three. Wars. It's they have seen the War of the Stars. The Star War. Uh, boring, wood-toned characters like Luke are unbearable to watch. Damn. What? Jeez. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, I'm sorry that you think that he's unbearable to watch. Wood-toned? Does it mean like how like a, like a, a brown is a, just a dull sort of... I, I, I imagine they're trying to aim toward him being wooden as a character, but I, I still don't really... Wood toned. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I, I. Well, I'll take that. I'll take wood toned Luke from the OT over. Yeah. Like consistently contradictory, constantly Luke that sucks. Easy uh, anyways, choice. I was watching this with Data and Spark from season five TNG. I loved it. Hi, Doggo. Hello. Hi, Rags. Hello. Happy 200th episode, you supremely talented people. Oh. Oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, thanks for the years of entertainment and also being cool people. Have some sandwich money. Thank you very much. I do like me some sandwiches. A more short would probably be at least ten minutes. Yes, uh, whatever the maximum count is, I'd probably use that. I don't know, what, what yeah, is the maximum I think it is ten be? minutes is the max. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm not certain, though, but I think it might be it. 
Springy's taking a stand for all Greenoids. I can't remember what that would have been in relation to. Seems like a worthy endeavor. Christian Bale has been cast as Edgy the Hedgy Law. Wait, is, I'm assuming that's a meme, right? Like Shadow? I figure that's a meme. I'm pretty sure that they... We don't know who Shadow the Hedgehog yet. I would love it if they <laughs> did that and made him do his Batman voice. Um, I am the darkness. Yeah, that'd be pretty... I mean, it's gonna be a meme, no matter what. DS Mom is about Wanda's journey to become a MILF. Well, it makes sense, right? Because she has sex with a robot? And then she has kids somehow. Though that never really got thought about. We just assumed there must be a human vision or something. I don't know. Wow, he just wasn't relevant to that story at all. Like, nope. they didn't care. He served the purpose that he had in one division, and now he's out for some time, I suppose. Well, he's getting Vision Quest, right? Well, I, yeah, I guess. But, I mean, who knows, right? Like, if, if like, what's happening with Marvel anymore, if they're actually going to, like go ahead with, like, ten projects a year, or if they're gonna slow down. Uh, hey, Joe, have you ever had your best friend make a weapon specifically designed to take you down? Oh, well, this is... I immediately think of Angry Joe, but... Is there anybody we have I was thinking Joker of Angry Joe, Joe as well. <laughs> I don't know who else, yeah. Those idiots who say, I don't care, don't even know what I don't care even means. Seriously, if you ask what they mean, they struggle to answer. Oh. Most people know what it means, right? It's just they often use it wrong. What? Well, I don't know. No, I don't care. I, oh, yeah, of course, right? Because if you say I don't care, it's like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hello, roast Angry Joe's rant and him attacking YouTubers on your channel about him being attacked for their She-Hulk review, please. Oh, we did bring up a clip of him reviewing She-Hulk, yeah, I remember. Oh, that must be it, yeah. Well, I mean, he it's changed no his mind game. on that one. Oh, yeah. Eat, sleep, EFAP, repeat. Yep, the way. So, three body problem, interesting and engaging within its own narrative, but I feel like it's fairly empty beyond its premise, i.e. purpose... Propose some alien circumstances which life emerges and thrives. Uh, I don't know. What is the three-body problem? Um, I've heard it before. Um, it is the... It is a... Um, okay, so the three-body problem in astronomy, it's the problem of determining the motion of three celestial bodies moving under no influence other than that of their mutual gravitation. No general solution of this problem, or the more general problem involving more than three bodies, is possible as the motion of the bodies quickly becomes chaotic. So I don't... It's something about astronomy and gravity. I just... I'm not familiar with it. I just don't know. I'm not the Either one to, am I. Uh, time for the galley finale. All right. Galley uh, finale. Futurama arc when? It's coming back again. I don't it is what, coming back, What a Futurama yeah. arc would look like. Well, but just watching the whole show. I guess so. And then <laughs> no. just saying it's funny. <laughs> Talking about how great it is. Yeah. Um, I'm going back to watch all of EFAP for a third time. I need help on 61 at the moment. Oh, sorry. They mean I need help. I'm on 61 there's no help needed. That's company right there. Hope you're enjoying. Three times and not even bored? That's that's the sign of approval. Quadruple bonus. This would be a oh. Wings quote, I'm guessing. I got a headache. I'm hot. My sugar's low. Someone drank all my Pepsi. I gotta drink diet fucking Pepsi and I don't want to play card. <laughs> Someone drank all of his Pepsi and he's forced to drink diet Pepsi? That's horrible. Oh no. <laughs> You're not gonna play Call of Duty. So sorry. I hope you made it. Oh, what a what a what a difficult life. Oh wait, Doom is here for part three as well. Great. Now I gotta keep thinking about how he thought Silco speared Jinx's bearded clam. Thanks. Bearded clam. The interesting ways to describe these events, but that I guess means we're on part three of of the. Well, were we already? I don't even remember. But there you go. I cannot yeah. remember now. Happy 200th. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Fringy, since you're the moral backbone, what are your thoughts on Rwanda's race relations? I don't know anything about the uh, situation in Rwanda. I just, I just couldn't tell you. I just don't know. Well, they asked Fringy, so. Yeah, so we're doing the next Super Chat, right? Oh, all right. I never missed the big streams live before, but here since episode one. But sigh, work to be done. Congrats, lads. Well, thanks. Um, oh, I'm, I guess they're saying they never usually miss the big streams, but they had to do work, and that, that's a okay. That's, be, that's fair. Totally we'll be fair. waiting for you. You won't hold that one against you. Yeah, we're nice like that. We allow people to go to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other others might not, mm -hmm. but you know we understand what it's like. We understand the grind. Oh yes, the Sigma male grind set. Yes. Uh, just woke up in time for the ending. Happy two hundred part three. Getting there. Uh, any upcoming games y'all are looking forward to? Have a good sleep when you get there. Ooh, let's let's date well, this video. That's um, funny, isn't it? Yeah, we were looking forward to Ragnarok, Callisto Protocol, and Scorn. Those are three big ones. Yeah, and one out of the three turned out to be pretty good, it seems. Uh, well, that would be interesting, right? To go back to us at that time and say, one of them will be bad enough that you make an EFAP ripping it apart. One of them will be so bad, you have zero coverage because none of you ended up playing it. It was so broken on launch. And one of them is considered by you guys to be one of the best stories told in, in a video game. Yeah, if we were told that, it'd be like, oh shit, which do we even want to be, you know? Which... <laughs> hmm. I, you see, for me, if I was told that, I'd be like, all right, Ragnarok won't be broken on release. That's not going to be Ragnarok. Cause... That would be legitimately right. weird if it was. And then, as for best story ever in gaming, it's like, that could be Scorn. Could be that they do something crazy and interesting with could it. Could be. Yeah. Seems doubtful it would be Callisto Protocol, but I mean, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I, I'd i put them all in the running for that, potentially, based off of what we knew at the time. Yeah, that would have been worrying, though, to know that we're going to lose two out of three. Hard to believe that one, I guess, had a story, one didn't have <laughs> a story, and the other had an amazing story, so. So, what, what, but what are the, what are the, the most anticipated games right now? Dead Space and RE4 remakes? Yeah. I yeah, feel like probably, uh, yeah. yeah, probably those. Just funny, um, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. Remakes of um, old games. I, uh, so, I mean, Spider Man 2 is coming out next year, but we don't know anything about it. So I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, there's more than that, I know. I, I'm blanking at the moment. Um, well, d d wait, Mola, do you play Pikmin? Do you like Pikmin? I think Pikmin is cool. You're making a Pikmin 4. That's coming out next year. <clears throat> well, there you go. Don't know anything about it, but... <laughs> yeah, that's happening. That'll be on the Nintendo Switch. Yes. And I guess it's... it's. I'm wondering if, like... Because the Switch is going to be six years old, um, like, next year. I reckon we're going to so, be getting a oh, new console fast. announcement soon. Uh, I mean, I feel like they need to update. Like, it's it's getting a little bit like, man, you are... Especially now that PlayStation 5 is out, it's like, man, you are, you are like, old technology. Long um, in the tooth. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, especially, especially if there's meant to be this whole Call of Duty for 10 years on, like, Nintendo. <laughs> like, you need then a system again, to the, run it. It might be the cloud version that they've been doing for a few games that they've released on there, which that's kind of an interesting thing in terms of like media preservation, everything that you can buy like games for a console, but like the game that you purchase is cloud only. So it's like, I guess that game only works as long as there's a server that enables you to play it. Or a system that will allow you to play it. Yeah, because what happens when like online stops and you have a cloud-based game like that you can only play on the cloud, it doesn't run on the physical hardware. Well, what happens when you're, I mean, when you get, you know, it relies entirely on people making systems that are, you know, backwards compatible with these digital versions, you know, mm. um, which probably won't be an issue. Um, they probably are very forwards thinking in that regard, but you would hope so. You, you do wonder. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's, thank you for asking. Uh, Mola, so far people love the MOM video on Reddit. The, the only Reddit that's going to like that video is the EFAP one. <laughs> like, every other one will be like, this guy talking about a movie for longer than the movie. That's that ridiculous. isn't allowed. 
That's bad. You failed at being a reviewer. You know what? Waller would probably fail essays in university. <laughs> I don't understand why everyone always references that. It's like, okay. Very strong opinions on the length of a video. They they have knowledge from the heavens that it can only be so many minutes long. It just feels very, like they're, they're so confident to... when they say that. They're so confident. It feels like they're trying to appeal as well to like some idea of like we should be doing a YouTube video length based on essay length in school. And it's like what? That's such no, a weird like, argument. It's like you can do whatever you want. Like what's <laughs> like why is length being bound by like what you would have had to write for a high school essay? Well, such a weird every... Like, oh you would fail. It's like, well good thing you're not writing an essay for high school. Like <laughs> And every time someone they like makes a long video and they're like, Well that's different though. That's different. Mm. That's different. That's that's really well thought out. And that, I mean it has to be that long or else they're gonna lose track on the uh you know, on, on all the details and things, you know? They have substance. Yeah. Mahler just, he just talks about the plot for five hours. That's all he does. Oh, well. I know this because I've heard seen, about it. They will have seen the organized chaos covers. That's what, they, they, they're like criticism of our approach is that they can only talk about plot. And I'm just like, tell me something about the writing that you think we should talk about that we haven't talked about. I'd be curious to know what it is that we missed. And it's not, I'm not talking about like a specific element, I'm talking about like a, a, a topic type. Because you know for a fact that they would say like, do they ever talk about themes? Do they? Do they even know what they are? Have they taught, do they have any media? The themes. A That's the... When you started on YouTube, did you need to practice to remove filler words from your speech? Or did you always speak without saying um or like? I guess they're talking about podcasting versus scripting, because of course it's not hard to remove thumbs and likes from scripting but yeah. uh yeah I, I would say if you even compare me to the first efab episodes to now i'm hoping i i have noticeably improved my approach to thinking. i like I to think that. i yeah i hope i have as well um i know i've changed the pronunciation of some of my words to make them easier to understand uh just like a conscious effort to try and come across as more digestible to the average ear because of course we cover a lot of people who couldn't give less of a fuck uh, which they is... clearly don't care at all. It just doesn't <laughs> yeah. even factor into their minds when they're sitting down and writing things down or speaking. They just don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah, which is a shame. Ums and likes still show up. That's just not something I can never it get rid happens. of. Whatever yeah. I need to rely on to give me more time to express myself, I get those. You know, yeah, I, uh, I guess the answer to the question is though, I do try and make a conscious effort to sound better. Um, not because I want like like not in the same way that Closer Look does, which is a strange decision. Um, but we've said before we're not against people turning on a voice that they don't actually have to sound better. Well, I mean, as long as it sounds better, that's <laughs> yeah. Like instead of it. sounding cringier, that's a bit weird or just absurd. Um, and you do come across people where you're like, "Are you putting on? Are you putting on a voice?" I don't know. Um. Uh, I've always I've always found the like Cosmo Variety Hour's voice compared to his like candid sort of real life videos. He sounds like he's doing something weird with his voice. The heavy vocal fry. Uh, I, I can't stand listening to it. It's so obnoxious. I don't see how people can deal with it. I don't know. I guess some people really like it. I don't know. I suppose. A lot of people on the poll sure do seem to find joy in Duma thinking Silco and Jinx played hide this German sausage. Why is it German? I don't know. Why German? S Silco a Silco's German? not German. I think so. He wasn't. I don't think no, Germany exists in that uh, world anyway. I don't opinion. think so. <laughs> Enemy was not mid, it was ceiling necklace inducing. Uh oh. Oh, they're talking about the intro song. For uh, Arcane. I wonder if they'll keep that mm -hmm. for season two. Or maybe they'll make a new one, but it will it will definitely be Imagine Dragons. <laughs> oh yeah. Imagine Dragons will probably have as many as three songs attached to that whole thing. Imagine Dragons. They've got a very good relationship with uh Riot. With uh yeah. They seem to be big fans of that game. Which I get which I mean that's that's cool, right? If they're yeah. like passionate and invested in it. Who said I spent money to watch the bad content? I always find that funny. A lot of people are like, you guys spend money to watch these things that you're telling people not to get. It's like, first of all, you can do that. 
plenty of with, with charisma, but apparently, why do you always assume that? Change. Hmm. Hey gang, can't watch this amazing stream live as I'm in Wales with the GF and the internet is garbage in this country. We'll catch up always when back. Love all you guys and the work you do. Keep it up. High rags. You bet. Hello. Um, I, For a second there, I thought they would just try to say they can't catch the stream because they're in Wales. And that just means you can't watch streams. You don't have yeah. internet access. It's like, oh, damn it. Just isn't, they just hasn't gotten here yet, you know? Yeah. Um, hope you had fun. And you when we catch up and everything. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have been waiting for getting their messages addressed from, from this episode, and so we're getting there, folks, or at least it'll be, when you listen to this, it'll be done, so. Yeah, that's right. We will have arrived. We will yeah. have gotten there by then. But until then, we're getting there. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Rags. Hi, Wolf. Hello. Can't believe you're still going, you mad bar stewards. Have some pennies for the pot, and happy fourth to all the EFAB crew. Also, hi rags, you sexy fuka. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Very kind. Hello there, EFAB crew, and guests that may still be around. Happy fourth, and thank you for all the years of faffing. Uh, when taking notes on media, what exactly do you look out for specifically in something well-written? Having trouble, but maybe just me being nervous to start a channel? Just what we um, do for criticism in reverse, basically. Kind of. Check and see if lines have subtext or alternative meanings, or if there's different interpretations to anything being said. Check and see if there are good callbacks to previous information. Um, make Something sure the I would characters say are... Is, uh, I would sound like you had more. I was going to say, make sure characters are acting consistently, like a character shouldn't... You should it, you shouldn't get those well wait a minute moments you know where you just can't believe that a character is doing something. I would say that uh, something that I uh, I tend to feel is the case in in really strong stories is a really clear sense of structure. Um, that that like that there's a there's an intentionality like a deliberateness to a lot of the writing decisions that have been made that comes through very clearly. Um, whether that's whether that's reincorporation foreshadowing subtext parallels those sorts of things uh, tend to be indicative of something that's really well thought out um something that's well thought out and um well realized um i guess the problem is that it's uh like in terms of i guess giving someone advice on how to notice that it's like i'm not i'm not sure like that there would be advice on noticing that because for me it's generally like a sense that i get with something um like if we took, for example, something like The Father as like a really strong, like a, a very well written story. That's like a film that it's it's so clear the the manner in which like these scenes have been set out and what characters are saying and, and that it's building up to something that like that comes through very clearly. Um, but I guess the way that you would explain how that comes through clearly is by pointing to specific things in a scene and then connecting them to other things that you've seen in that scene or elsewhere. Like when you can draw connections between different parts of a story, that's um, that's like the best way to try and illustrate when something is working, or alternatively when something isn't working. Yeah, I mean the my main thing is just going to be uh, find any examples of thing making sense, and the more difficult slash higher variable it is, the more praise usually ends up going on for it. It's like yeah, we managed to pull that off. The more cohesive everything is. The binded the more it adheres to its own existence it's just uh that's the difficult part of writing the more you write the longer your story the more difficult it is to keep everything juggled as was said before yeah because as a as a human being <clears throat> you know when someone's writing a story they have certain objectives in mind by comparison to like the real world where things happen and like th things happen and they have cause and effect and whatever that means to people is kind of up to them when someone's writing a story that they're, they're creating the characters and the sequence in service of their goals and i feel like the, the distinction between a good story and a bad story or one of them at the very least is actually being able to achieve those narrative goals rather than fumbling them where it's like i can see what you were going for but like it just doesn't follow to another 200 more baby yeah hopefully right absolutely we i want it out, to what, happen knocked out 18 so yeah so we're getting there <laughs> Yeah, give us a sec. We'll do it. Congrats on 200. Really helped me out, y'all. Oh, I'm Good glad I helped you out. Congrats, and thank you for all the fun, gentlemen. Thank you. Having fun with it. Absolutely. 
I think Anna has a new theme for her calendar. Don't know what that's referencing, but mm, sure. I I don't know. Is this a Chuck Tingle reading? Oh, that'd be when we were looking at the Reddit posts about um, the, the people having sex with Breaking Bad memes. That was when uh, Chud Logic jumped on. Oh, right, right. Hello, long man. Congrats, gents. Oi, raggers. All hail the dawn and jab and kick J. Well, hi to you. All those things can be done. I, for one, find this clown love beautiful and hope there will one day come a little clown boy out of it. Oh, yeah, there was the clown love, the clown sex. I remember. Honking the horns and stuff. I remember. Good. Duma just left. Now I don't have to keep thinking about Silco and Jinx riding the baloney pony anymore. This is just all, from the, all from the guy. same guy. It's gotta be, yeah. <laughs> Happy 200 e fappers. Thank you very much. Hello, and uh, yeah, thanks for yeah. Happy 200 to you. Someone's posted a little heart. Ooh, I like hearts. Um, oh, the Breaking Bad Reddit uh thing just reminded me. Mauler, could you be so kind and read this out in your best Mike Ehrman Trout voice, please? And please use actual swear words, not the abbreviation. Okay. Kind of confusing. So you got like they've. I guess that's that's supposed to be fucking. Oh, the idea here is to read out like a quote from Wings, but as Mike Ehrmantraut. Um, <laughs> it's, the uh, it's the surgery one that it literally puts dog whimper in uh, uh, apostrophe or whatever, like the sound. Oh no. Oh, after I haven't done Mike's voice in ages. What he's like? Uh, um, what's I wanted, I wanted, I wanted this surgery, <laughs> guys. I wanted it so. <laughs> I wanted it so. <laughs> I'm you, sorry. you, and your I'll, pride. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. I wanted it so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't take this noise. I got well because the the actual noise is <laughs> like that's the noise. But what does that sound like? Trying to figure out what Mike would it. say. Yeah, does Mike make that noise or does he make <laughs> a different one? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't, I can't do it. Take I can't it no take more, take more, man. Shit no more, man. I just wanted to. I, I did not see a slip back into the wings accent. <laughs> All I, I wanted I to just do wanted, was like, I was I was lonely. I just wanted to get on and have a good stream. Maybe have a good time. Maybe have a good game. I mean, dude, you got it so then, close. Do you know this quote like back to back? Oh know. yeah, of course. Because I think yeah, that it's it is the um, best one. He's a wings of uh, redemption historian. historian. It's, it's, well, it's that one specifically. <laughs> that one is just it's too memorable. I'm just fucking lonely. I just want to fucking. Stream. Have yeah, a good time. Go. Maybe have a good game. I hate my life. <laughs> well, sorry. No, because I'm so it, sorry. You, you gotta. It's it. It's it's it's, it's, it's such an, arts, an interesting yeah. like clip, isn't it? Like just the fact, like like the fact that he, just after he started crying, he like throws his controller as he does <laughs> because he just keeps throwing the, controller. the dog whimper is thinking. <laughs> That's that was the thing that sealed its fate as like one the of the <laughs> most iconic memes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went camping for two days, and now there are two episodes of Batwoman uploaded, an unbridled rage, and they're still streaming. Praise be the long. Oh yeah, that'd be quite a content blast if you uh, missed out on a few. All at once. We need to shame people liking bad content. Saying people are allowed to like bad stuff is unethical because it promotes complacency of idiocy. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, a bit excessive, I'd say. I think that takes it a little too far, because I can understand there are uh, worse consequences when we don't try to discourage, like, shittier stuff. But at the same time, there are a lot of people who aren't engaging in media the same way that we would like everyone to sort of... Take, you know, like, we want to take it seriously, we want it to be better, we think it's important, but... Plenty of people live their lives being like, you know, dealing with like their just families go watch or the whatever. Movie, you know? Yeah, you the... just go to the movies to watch a fun like action movie and some spectacle. You know, there's plenty of people who are just go and watch that or just want some light entertainment. And I don't blame and them. That's totally fine. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's got their preferences. Ultimately, like, I'm not really going to expect everybody to take it as seriously as I do. I think the 
the only the only thing that I want is for there to be a healthy enough space for the stuff that I like to thrive. That's basically all I want. Um, I feel like you look at the video game world and that's like a lot easier thanks to like the flourishing of the indie sort of space, middle market space. That there's like a lot of stuff that can find success, even if, you know, something like Call of Duty, for instance, is like hugely dominant. Um, if it was like the film industry is going through a bit of a tough time, though, at the moment in terms of uh, like original stories, smaller stories, like being able to carve out a space for themselves. It used to be like 40 years ago, you could have just like a very serious drama that isn't trying to be a crowd pleaser end up becoming like the most successful film, whereas now it's all franchise stuff for the most part. Like, I, I don't yeah. know, like that, um, like if I, like if I looked up the highest grossing film of like, I don't know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can, Wikipedia, help me. Um, yeah, like if, if you look at like 2022, the highest grossing films of 2022, Top Gun, Jurassic World, Doctor Strange, Minions, Black Panther, The Batman, Thor, Love and Thunder, the Battle at Lake Sh Shenzhen too, and it's like you, you you run through that list. It's like man, a lot of sequels, a lot of franchise stuff. Meanwhile, if you decided to, I don't know, jump back to like some year in the eighties, probably yeah, like you look like in nineteen eighty five. What was the highest grossing film? Oh well, maybe that wasn't a great year to pick. Back to the Future, the first one, but then Rambo two, Rocky four. Uh, but then it's just a bunch of other films like The Color Purple out of Africa. Like, yeah, it just seems like there's a lot more, uh, there was more room for uh, original standalone films to, to like find and carve out some success for themselves. Now it just seems like way harder for that to happen, way less likely. Yeah. I, but I don't know that that changes. I don't know that anything changes on that front, you know? I feel like franchises, studios like their franchises. They're nice, safe bets. Well, and it's a nice, it's nice when they're good. <laughs> Just it, it is, is nice, nice when they're good, good to be sure. Yeah, no, nobody's be... saying like, how bad is it that the Mission Impossible franchise is still going and pumping out all these? It's like, as long as it's good, man. Yeah, if it's good, I'm for it. I got work twice during this EFAP. Don bless. Keep being massive. Does that make sense? That it could happen, yeah. We a lot of people get very shocked with the 24-hour ones. People are having it with that synthetic man one. People were like, I went to sleep and you're still going. It's like, yeah. yeah Remember when 11 sometimes. and a half hours was just like common for EFAP lengths? Oh, I'm glad we, I'm glad we can't, we don't do that all the time. Fuck we got no, limits. It's just, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> a lot of the time when you finish, you're just yeah. like, eh. I got that post-Kenobi clarity. Uh, it does happen. I mean, the thing is, a lot of people loved it as they were watching it. Especially because of that moment, right, with, with Anakin and Obi-Wan. Data mask breaking, it's like, incredible. But then, like, you sit on it for a little bit and you're like, man, oh shit. The whole thing. At least we got that line, that hilarious line of, um, so you've come to destroy me. That shit was fucking pop That was hilarious. Comedy. It catches you off guard when he says it. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, what, Vader? <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Vader, what are we doing? <laughs> Vader, you, came, you walked out of your spaceship. Do y'all have any interesting but kind of useless skills? Like, I'm really good at whistling. Thanks for nearly 100 days and worth, hours worth of content. Whistling's not useless. Whistling um, is not useless. It's, it's, no. it's generally useless, but... Well, but like, it, be... it serves the purpose it, it is built for. It's just fun. It's yeah, just fun thing to do. I, uh, cause I, I would say that I'm pretty good at whistling, and I find that to be very valuable. I, uh, I find it super duper valuable that I can do that. Really? Why is that? I like being able to whistle because it means that I can create tunes for myself to listen to and enjoy uh, without needing, like, my headphones or anything. Because I think it's, yeah. it's pretty easy for me, like, if I whistle something for for uh, the song itself to kind of coalesce in my head much more clearly than if I just sort of sat there and tried to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, f I find whistling to be, like, super duper valuable. That's kind of what um, I'm saying. Like, a, a skill. Okay. The main capacity I use whistling is singing along with or while remembering songs I like. And if someone said, like, that's yeah. not very useful, I'd be like, well, it's as useful as it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it didn't well, cost me anything. It's really. useful to me. I, can, I, can, I, can, useful, yeah. I would I hate to not off. have it as an ability. I like it a lot. If I don't have my phone and I want to whistle God of War, I can do that. <laughs> and then I start to hear the song very clearly in my head. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, but then I guess it gets to the point of saying, so what is a useless skill then? I uh, don't know. Because I feel like if it's a skill, it's got some utility. 
I don't know if I have any yeah, useless um, skills. Useless skills? I mean, if if we want to go with it, probably won't ever be put into some important use. I'm I'm sure. Like like I'd mentioned orienteering before. I think I've gotten all my money's worth, and you know, you know, distance out of that, so to speak. I don't think I'll ever use that again. I don't think it'll ever be ever be necessary for me to use. But it was it was really nice to you know know how to do it and use it to you know you know as I did. But um, I'm sure there's all kinds of things like being able to balance a like a, a broom at the end of your finger or um uh da, da, da. i don't know maybe i'm sitting here thinking i i don't know you don't often think about useless skills um that you have uh yeah i i don't know i just don't know a lot that comes to mind you know, if you have like a water bottle in your hand, I can spin it on one hand. But uh, the reason that developed was because I kept picking up bottles in ways that were they were upside down, and so I'd spin it, and then eventually got to the point where I was really good at it, and someone noticed, and they were like, "How the fuck do you do that?" And then I was like, "Oh, I guess anyone can do it. It's just not something that's it was accidentally developed, and I can't release." It would be like I could see showman type people probably are good at it. It's like a sleight of hand thing, but it's not something I can use any way other than when I pick up a bottle the wrong way around. Mm. That's about it. <laughs> so I don't know if that counts as useless or not, but that's still kind of <laughs> useful. I mean, yeah, it's it. You know, it's kind of under that umbrella of useless. You know, like, but you know, I guess it's nice to have little things like that. Like I could, if I pick up something backwards, I could flip it around in my hand, which saves like valuable Some seconds exertion, over the course yes. of my life. Yeah, you know. Well, there you go. <laughs> And they said thanks for nearly a hundred days and hours worth of content, so no problem. Oh, you're welcome Lama. very much. I'm glad you've enjoyed them. Hi, Rags. Hello. I'm a time traveler from the past. Ooh, Started episode wow. one in October 2021, caught up at episode 197 at the start of August. Also, that doesn't make you a time traveler, but cool. Cool. Also, Forward Star Wars... very slowly. Episode nine, Kylo's ship explodes in desert, then undies for Rey to steal on ruins. You notice? Um, well, I, I guess, guess they want you to believe one. he got a new one, yeah. Yeah, they provided him with a new ship. I guess they have... They got room in the budget for Kylo's ships. Maybe this is a regular thing. He's just always ruin them, ruining them. We are too long and oft misunderstood. Oh, wait, they said we too are long and oft misunderstood. Ah, uh, yeah. Hour-long videos about media are also huge right now. Why is Mauler the exception? Because Quinton can make three eight-hour-long rambly videos about iCarly. Yeah, I mean, the, the, a lot more long videos started to become more of a thing over time, which is neat. Very in favor of the long. We're pro-long. Long man, friend or fed? Mm. I don't think they'd let me be a fed. As long as I get to talk about media. Jared man, anyway home. In anyway. Anyway. Every home. sentence almost. You'd be like, you'd get to the point of summarizing his video, like reaching the end of it several times in the video. The first one coming in at like, you know, 20% into the video. Uh, how can I submit a Halo Left 4 Dead 2 mod collection so you and the crew can play on EFAB Gaming? There is also an Alien and Lord of the Rings collection if you're interested. Well, I mean, we can find those, right? If we ever start playing a lot of Left 4 Dead. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. We're playing the Lord of the Rings one a whole bunch. On Helm's Deep, the map? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nasuverse has a lot of standard anime storytelling mess. However, every different story is a different universe. There is essentially no continuity. Nasu verse? Is that like an anthology then? I have no clue. Hello! Been a fan of EFAP for two years now. You guys are awesome. Wow. I was wondering if you guys had any tips and advice for someone thinking about starting their own YouTube channel. Oh, get a good microphone. Um, get make sure you talk about, about the topics. Yes, make sure that you are passionate about and you care about the um the the, the topics that you're you're you know covering yeah. it is it is important that you do that 
Yeah, that's the main advice, honestly. Those two things, and you're almost set to go, because uh, even if you make incredibly low edited videos, like just a poster and you talking about a movie, you'll be fine in terms of starting up. And then chip away at improving maybe the relevant visuals or script writing. Just uh, another thing people often say is just, hey, start making so you have something to build on. Um, of course, good luck. You got anything for me? Nah, not really. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that could be said about in terms of like advice for how to start a YouTube. I'm not even sure where to begin. Even simple foundational stuff. Uh, just you know, writing your scripts and redrafting, revising, super duper important. Um. Yeah, that's Maybe, what I got you know, for now. Have something to say that's uh, something you haven't heard. Uh, yes, I think um, I think that what really makes for something being valuable is uh, yeah, like to try and to, yeah, to try and have something to say is pretty important. I would say. Um, I guess I guess there's a difference between the advice on how to make a successful YouTube channel versus a good one. <laughs> But hopefully the goal is to create a good one and then hope that that leads to some level of attention. Yeah. Congrats. Got caught up before 199. You've helped me tons in my own writing. Love you guys. Hi, Rags, Fringo, Moles, and Kick J in the face. Damn. Oh my goodness. Violence. Hello, though. But yes, hi. <laughs> this one just says, you're a devil. All right. Oh. Could be worse. Yeah, I suppose so. How long would it take Shakespeare to clean up the milk? I don't know. I'd have to know how much milk there is to clean up and what how fast Shakespeare is at cleaning up milk. Yeah. Because if he has like a um, some sci-fi cleanup device versus just like a hanky. Yeah, I have to know the milk to time uh, ratio for him. Congrats on 200, you massives, and thanks for the long. No problem. Hello there, long ladies and gentlemen, doggos, froggos, memes, metals, massives, and many more. Happy 200, you talented team of toxicity, and thank you for helping me through some tough times. See you for 250. Oh, absolutely. See you there. Yeah. Won't be that long. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. EFAP 200, madness, rage, and two bat whammon all at once. All those people oh, I bat. sacrificed to Cthulhu were totally worth it this time. Also, high rags. Hello to you. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Well, yeah, sorted right out. Means a lot. Um, is there going to be a Tosspot story hour? Glidus Gizaris would suffice, I guess. Uh, there wasn't. I was unable to set up, but um, I've been trying to sort out getting him on just talk about stuff. E media. So perhaps in future you shall see some more Professor Maybe. Tosspot. Uh... I'd name my son Hugh Philippinus. Then he'd be Hugh Penis. Are they going for huge? Because Hugh doesn't really do it, does it? You no, because yeah. remember in the Simpsons it was Hugh Jass, which gets the huge. And that was yeah. yeah. So close. Now he's just called Hugh Penis. Just uh, weird. <laughs> yeah. Strange. To EFAP and crew, thank you for four incredible years. Here's to many more episodes and to even more memories, laughs, and memes. May the dawn bless you. Also, hi, Rags. Hello to you. Very much, yeah. I uh, wanted to get in before it's over. Hi, Rags. Hello. I guess we're getting close to the end, then. Oh, so. Uh, would you believe the boys' TV show is better than the comic? No. Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, uh, not after season two. Uh, well, I would say two and three are, are just fucking bad. And, uh, and the fact that I often see people be like, oh, they've ruined the comic. It's like, maybe the comic isn't particularly well written, but I'm sure it's better than what I got on that show, right? Surely. Surely. Um, hey, Mola, what's your star sign? I think Libra, right? Six, I don't know. I don't care, I think though. that's Libra, yeah. But what well, are you talking no, about? No, but if the stars, stars are in a certain location, that defines yeah. your personality. It'll ah. determine whether your YouTube videos are good or long enough. I see. Or something. Um, Mull, well, have you seen the cringe that is Pond's story in his review of Half-Life 2? Congrats on EFAP 200. No, I haven't. But he's the guy that said there's no such thing as bad graphics, right? He's the crazy guy. 
Yeah, I've, I've seen him shared every once in a while on the Discord. It's... Yeah, he's. A... There's no such thing as bad graphics. That's a video he has. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I don't. I guess I don't even to... understand like the premise there. Well, the first th thought I have is like, oh, are you going with the whole like, there's no such thing as bad or good anything? Cause it's all subjective and relevant uh, relative to like the human experience or whatever. I was like, yeah, but surely colloquially you understand exactly what it's referring to. You would you think not? so, I yeah. Know. I remember someone summarizing it in Discord, so this could be unfair, but I remember them saying something like, he said, it's all pixels. All of it is just pixels anyway, so. Well, sure, but like, I don't know, all of the text on a book is just ink printed to a page. Like, then, then you know, like, doesn't really mean anything. It reductive, like, yeah, that's yeah. true, but it doesn't tell me anything. Everything is everything. Everything is just atoms. So what do we what do we mean to say when we make any categorization kind of anything? Well, I guess it's just like, I don't know, it seems a bit silly. Like, how about we get real, you know? <laughs> like if that well, presuming that that's presuming that that's like the uh the claim. Uh the last video reminds me so much of old tonald. Uh yeah. I don't remember what video we covered, but we should watch on stream, hopefully, uh, Donald's Ragnarok review. I want to see oh, how it compares, because yeah, yeah. I'm genuinely I'm at the curious. point of thinking like it might actually be more thoughtful than uh, most reviews you see. I'd be curious. I think it's very hmm. possible, yeah. If he takes up a passion for it, I can absolutely believe that. <clears throat> Sometimes channels like these hire people to speak their scripts for them that they've translated and they don't get someone to proofread. Oh god, this was the guy, remember? We covered the guy who was saying insane crazy shit? Right at the end of the uh, EFAB anniversary? Destiny was, was there this? Yeah. after it. Um, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Fuck, I, I think... He, he was... What did he say? What was the crazy shit that he said? He, he was... His language was all over the place, like someone had badly oh, translated it. Oh, I think I it. know... I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the specifics, because that, that shit would have been sent to the memory hole because I was so tired at that point. Likewise. I think even we were even questioning, like, is this because we're tired or because he's actually not speaking English? And chat was like 50-50 <laughs> on that. <laughs> uh, racial minorities and sexual minorities. Are there age minorities and weight minorities as well? Well, there's got to be, right? Yeah, there's got to be. Uh, the way it works with age... What are the age minorities? Is it like it's both uh, ends of the scale, which right? Country, I guess, super, right? Because in a, a lot of would it depends. In a lot of developing countries, it's old people, but in a lot of developed countries, uh, it's younger people. Or like for for instance, I'm pretty sure in Japan, there's a lot more people over the age of sixty five than there are like under the age of twenty five. Like a lot more, um, because of the, it's just kind of the nature of like population, the way that populations are spread out. Um, developed countries tend to they tend to drop below the replacement rate. People live for a lot longer because medicine improves. People have less kids, and so it starts to skew a bit. Where like the minority ends up being younger demographics, but then in a lot of uh, developing countries, it's older demographics because lots of kids uh, and people don't live for as long. So it depends on what country you're talking about. So, like, in Japan, I'm pretty sure that the age minority is, like, people under the age of 25 or 30. Um, but, like, in, I don't know, Sierra Leone, it would be people above the age of 65. What was the other one? Wait. Uh, yeah, of course, right? It would, yeah. But, again, it depends on the country. If it's a developed country, fat people aren't as much of a minority <laughs> as they are in developing countries. <laughs> I think I might have had a typo. What I meant was the boys' comic is worse than the show. Oh, that's what I read it as, but... Uh, and, and it's possible, I just doubt it. That's yeah, it could be. I've heard that the comic isn't great. Um, that's what I've... But Very the show edgy, is not as far as I know. Uh, happy fourth anniversary. Thanks for all the discussions and laughs. Uh, mm -hmm. This is ER with a little heart. Did pop on for a decent chunk of time, actually. That old yeah. coin. Somebody wake up the bird. Hey, this was like in hour 23 and 4, right? We were... <laughs> I was, I was tired. real tired. I think we um, all were, yeah. Also high ranks. Hello. Uh, are you people still up? What the hell? Anywho, thank you all for hosting one of the best podcasts I've found. Keep up the good work and high ranks. Hello. We were still up. Thank you. Here's to four years, you lovely massives. Keep up the fantastic work and high ranks. Hello to you. 
Um, anime has clear, dark, and adult content that's still aimed at kids. One Piece and Dragon Ball Z have violence and nudity, but it's still for everyone. Um, I haven't seen the level of which those would qualify, but of course... Yeah. Sure, it's about how much. Yeah, like, because someone getting punched is, like, violence, but kids can see that. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and nudity is the same thing. You could have, like, cutesy, you know, giggle at it nudity, but you could also have, like, sexual nudity. Yeah, like, child-friendly nudity often includes, like, woman's shirt comes off but still wearing other things. Like, yeah, oh or you see, like, God. you see some cartoon butt cheeks and it's like, everyone's embarrassed by it, and he goes, oh, and he runs and grabs a towel. Yeah. Something like that. Why is he going so hard at original Disney? I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember. It was the video that was talking about something to do with like how Disney had created the attitude that animation is for kids, wasn't it? I think. Was it? The, like okay. that was Disney's fault that uh, that, huh. that was facilitated. And he was talking about the Hayes Code, I think, and all that. Oh, yeah. I remember all that. Those, like back in the 30s and 40s, all of these sort of restrictions on like the types of stories that could be told. EVAP201 should just be reviewing all about film videos since he can't speak right and makes hilarious statements. All right. I can't remember what EVAP201 was about. I think we usually, the follow up EVAP from like an anniversary is usually like a calm down EVAP. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm sure you probably covered it and I missed it, but has the gang gone into Diabito's hate boner to Mola's latest video? That's a video we still have yet to cover. He uh, mm. said things about my video, but I, I, I haven't even seen what it is yet. I haven't I'm either. I'm very curious. It's lasted 45 to 50, you know, a, a minute long. That's just bad writing. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, when when your sentences are so long that people begin to lose track of what you're saying. Yeah, that's the big thing. It's like, it's hard to understand the sentences when they well, last that long. If only our brains were as big as his. The goal of communication is to convey information effectively. That's like the, that's the point of speaking. It's to convey information in your head to someone else wow coming from the long people and then it's like yeah yes, yes. we're conveying a lot of just, information a lo just full stops your friend because yeah. of course you'd be like well it's still gr grammatically correct it's like yeah sure but like holy shit dude <laughs> like just a full stop every now and then wouldn't hurt if, if you're getting to the point where your sentence is so long that you have to like pause to breathe it's worth considering shortening that Thoughts on Super Eye Patch Wolf and Pyrocynical? I don't know who th I've heard of Pyrocynical, but I don't know who they are really. Apparently, Pyro has turned himself into quite the long man, and I've had his videos recommended a couple times, but I haven't seen any of them. Super Eye Patch Wolf, um, I thought was neat until I started to notice that he does like the same thing for every video. Uh, that was always my take on it. I could be wrong at this point, but that's. I like found his video on Simpsons compelling and then I realized that he does the exact same thing for everything. Like felt like it wasn't genuine that it was more so just to make things work for an algorithm sort of thing. But I mean the information I guess was still pretty on point, so um I'd say approval of both channels. It's just that I haven't seen enough of both of them to really have a meaningful approval of either channel. So uh, have you seen anything about him there, Bringy? Oh, I've heard of Pyrocynical. I haven't heard of the other guy, but yeah, not really familiar with Pyro Pyrocynical's content. Are you guys aware that you used Guts theme from 1997 Berserk anime at the end of Batwoman in Season 2, Episode 9? Great choice. Also read Berserk. Well, that would have been Das Bullshit's choice, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Julio. That was the guy. I mean, Harry is still a kid, so it makes sense. He's not going to be completely mature and then just stop needing to learn. He has to keep learning. Am I Harry Potter? I don't know. Because this would be really right at the end now where we're talking about stuff with... Uh, I think Destiny would have been on at this point. Yeah, I think so. SpongeBob has surrealism for kids and well-written dialogue and cynicism for adults. Episodes like Squidville and Dying for Pie have a contrast between a bitter adult like Squidward and a fun kid at heart like SpongeBob. I mean, yeah, like, you don't need to, like, animation, and including animation that's directed at kids, can be, like, full of meaning and thematic weight. Absolutely. Yeah. The Rescue Me TV show did the same crap of the main character evolving and then devolving at the end and start of every season. 
like his character development. Oh, well. Oh, that was never a seen the show. Of, um, but... American Dad was that he learned to not be bigoted like several times, like like fifteen Rapidly episodes. Rapidly reset. Yeah, because that's the kind of show it is. When watching Tenet, think of it as a glorified music video. Have a couple beers, turn the volume all the way up, and enjoy the cheesy ass dialogue. We are being attacked by the future. Oh. Uh -huh. They said they loved it. Well, whenever I see someone compliment Tenet, it's always in the framing of it being, like, conventionally bad. There's that yeah, video that someone sent a thumbnail of where it said, uh, it's, like, on the viewer to make sense of it for themselves, because everyone's saying it's nonsense. Uh, it's like, oh, that's, I, don't, I don't like to hear that. No, I don't like to hear that either. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Like, when you bring your own interpretation, it's like, uh, hmm... You know, most things don't have to rely yeah. on that as a way of yeah. escaping uh, Aya. We'll see it uh, someday, I'm sure. The projector froze yeah. while I was watching the butterfly effect. The frame melted because of the heat. It looked crazy, and it took us a minute to realize it wasn't just part of the film. Huh. Oh, wow. Kind of fun. Interesting. I've also. never seen that. Batman and Robin is the best Batman film. Arnold carries it all on his own. True. Wow. True, though. It's a high scorer. I would say, uh, like, low-balling it 11 out of 10? Probably at least 11 out of 10. There's never been a finer Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Alfred, Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy. or Poison Ivy. Or I Commissioner mean, Gordon. Tenet's music was much better than Tenet's dialogue, so maybe the audio mixing wasn't an accident. Hmm, big thing. I don't know, man. Just, just judging from his filmography, people often pick up his audio mixing as getting fucked, which is really weird to have as a problem when you're that famous and well-versed in film. But if you're like, well, it's always deliberate, you're like, all right. Strange choice, but all right. Cage match. Mola versus Destiny. People still want us to have that uh, Star Wars discussion. Maybe one. About... About which one it was was about Last Jedi, right? Yeah, basically about whether or not uh, it's. Uh, well, he put he's the thing that he was saying. I think that was the thing I was wanting to challenge. Was like I think he puts it above the prequels by far. It's like, uh -huh. but uh, his main argument being the prequels failed at what they were supposed to do, while the sequels succeeded. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of like, what does that even? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? When are we getting the real ending for Game of Thrones? Have to go to fan fiction for that, my friend. Yeah. Best you got. Game balance is so important for abilities, weapons, and difficulty. Forcing an easy mode requires rebalance. True, yeah. If you, because that's the thing, right? If someone said, oh, there should be an easy mode, and you introduce one, and you just make every enemy have a third of the health they had on the other modes, it's like, you can do that. But it's probably going to have uh, ways of being fucked with that you don't realize in terms of how everything else is balanced if you put a lot of work into making everything match everything. This is kind of what I was trying to bring up, but I wasn't articulating it very well when um, Synthetic Man said that the range on the Blades of Chaos is smaller than in the original games as a criticism. And it's like, but the, the game is built to have much less in terms of what enemies you're fighting in smaller areas. Of course, like the yep. range would then have to be balanced. That's how everything works yeah. when you're like considerate about how everything works with each other. Well, they certainly thought about it while they were making the game. Yes. Uh, congrats on 200. Get dobbed, Fringy. Bye, Rags. Get dobbed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get dobbed. No. Good night, oh, Longman, God. Frog Daddy G, and Ragalicious. Good night. Goodbye. Good night, past person. To the whole EFAB crew, you have helped me get through some very hard times. Having something to listen to and make me think and focus on why I came to the opinions I have is part of the reason I'm still here. Thank you. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that we helped you out there. Yeah, hope you're doing all right. And uh, it's Absolutely. good to hear. Inspire, mm -hmm. or even simply entertain, even for a fleeting moment. Uh, thank you all for four wonderful years. Continue being long. Drink the rhino milk. Praise the dawn and high rags. Hello to you. Happy 200, long people of the long. Check out Scorn by Ebb Software. It looks really interesting, especially for spooky season. <laughs> it does look interesting, you bet. It sure does. Well, you're in luck. We got an EFAP episode about it. Go Your check it out. Your dream came true, yes. It, uh, someone recommended it on uh, an open bar, and I was like, oh. <laughs> they were like, it's really good. I was like, oh, no. Um, so, uh, 
so long and thanks for all the fish. No so problem. So long and thanks for all the fish. I do love oh. me some fish. And I like fish. The final super chat is good night. Oh, well, good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. And that's good night it. to you. That's every message we got during EFAP 200. Wow, we caught up. On that, yeah, we still got some other things to catch up on, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, what, what can be said? Sorry that it took this long to get them all done, but they are now collected. I'll label this properly and release it soon enough. That'll obviously be relative, but um, seriously, thank you all so much. Very much yep. appreciate it. It keeps all the lights on. And, Absolutely. Uh, Obviously, the the engagement and, and and just back and forth with you in chat and the sort of the, the, the just letting us know about what the show does for you. It's, uh, it really helps keep us motivated to keep it going beyond just the chats that we would have as friends anyway. Two hundred was a bit of a milestone. It is kind of insane to know how far and how long the show's been going. I've said before, but. If it were to end in a, some kind of natural way, I'd feel like we we went for a fucking really long and healthy time. It was kind of nuts. Absolutely, um, we would have un undoubtedly. But I don't see any reason to stop to anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> Not on my plans. Um, but yeah, EFAP has been a crazy thing. And that's to know that we're already on our way to the fifth anniversary. It won't be that long. There we go. Yeah, we're almost. Yeah, we're good. What? Forty percent of the way, something like that. Yeah. It's like, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely absurd. It, yeah, cause it's been four, nearly four months since the anniversary. Yeah, which means we're actually a third of the way there. Yeah. Sade. Uh, that is. Not prepping it. <laughs> like, in terms of topics and guests and warnings and stuff. Oh, if only we'd made it every two years. So I, I feel like that doesn't have the same sort of... That people like anniversaries, you know? I wonder why. Made that a thing. Who came up with the idea know. of a year? Um, I don't actually know. Um, I guess the first civilization that really, well, even before then, we would have, we, we would have, we, before proper civilization, humans would have noticed patterns in the seasons. And that they set a um, time for how it resets. Yeah, even if it wasn't exact, they would know that cycle and be it's able crazy to recognize to know. it. crazy to know. All the way back then, they were thinking about our podcast and how we need to do one per year. That's why they did yeah. that. One day, too long people <laughs> on magic boxes talk across world to talk about stories. About, talk Which about is... story. Then they say, yeah, you're crazy. You're oh oh and Grog, was, you're you're crazy. He was proven right. Proven right. He was. Right. He doesn't know it, but he was proven right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like I said, thank you all so much. And I imagine this is being released alongside all kinds of other things. EFAP ain't stopping anytime soon. Nope. Arcs be coming. Uh, as for us, we're going to keep on catching up because we're still behind. <laughs> so thank you all. Yep. And we shall see you for the next anniversary or video, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, Goodbye.